The guy was in the hospital, except for his brain. His body was completely motionless, like a vegetable. He is chained to this room and bed. He has been in the hospital for three years. He can neither cry nor laugh. He can't make even the slightest sound. There's always someone next to him. His name is Su Xiaobai. He is 18 years old, and he is incurably ill. Besides this TV on the wall, he sees his mother shedding tears every night. Suisha Alabe's attending physician told his mother that his illness was progressing very quickly. He already needs to switch to the device, and at any moment, he may stop breathing. The doctor also asked to prepare everything necessary. He is afraid of death, but it is better than such a life. He hopes that when he dies, he will meet God, because he did nothing wrong. The golden-haired girl asked her master to wake up quickly, because there was no way he could die here. Su Xiaobai rubbed his eye with his hand and was surprised that his hand was moving. The girl sat on top of Su Xiaobai and said that her master had finally woken up. When he saw the girl, he asked who she was. Su Xiaobai was surprised that he could speak and did not understand how it was possible. The girl said that her name is Zhao Ping and today she is his personal guard. Su Xiaobai asked her to wait. He told her that he didn't understand anything about what was happening here, but this girl was dressed like that and was also sitting on top of him. The guy got embarrassed and started mumbling about how he was already 18, and she was so beautiful he could... Before Su Xiaobai could finish speaking, he felt an unbearable pain that could not be endured. The guy didn't understand why he had such a painful sensation in his crotch. He understood that he was not sleeping. Zhao Ping stood aside and did not understand what was happening to him. Su Xiaobai thought that he should have died already, but why was he here? In addition, he was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis, and it disappeared. Zhao Ping asked Su Xiaobai if he was okay. Su Xiaobai turned his head to Zhao Ping and said that he felt great, but he was just wondering why she called him master. Zhao Ping told him everything. He clarified that he is the heir to the throne of Protoss and he was chosen by the heavenly lord Lung Min. Zhao Ping told him that she would sell the only inhabited place left by humanity, that is, the king of Protoss, the king of all people, and also the owner is responsible for all people. Su Xiaobai said that while listening to her, Long Ming allegedly brought him from another world. But for him this is such nonsense, because he only believes in science. Zhou Ping bit her finger, until it bled and said that since her owner didn't believe her, she would provide him with evidence. Zhao Ping explained to him that the smell of blood should attract predators in the area. When the owner meets them, he must understand everything. Su Xiaobai heard a rustling noise coming from the trees of the forest. When he turned towards the source of the sound, he was stunned by what he saw. He saw a horde of zombies approaching them from the depths of the forest. Su Xiaobai asked about these being predators. Zhao Ping replied that it was true, and most of the territory was inhabited by them. Zhao Ping said that these zombies turned their world into horror. Su Xiaobai asked that her name seemed to be Zhao Ping. He told her that it seemed that she was not deceiving him. He told her to quickly leave, and he would deal with them. After being in bed for three years, he can finally move his muscles. Zhao Ping told him that there are so many zombies, and he is not afraid of them. Su Xiaobai told her that he was afraid, moreover, he was terrified. But even more, he does not want to see her death before his eyes. Zhao Ping smiled at him and said that she understood him. After that, she flew into the air and thought that Mr. Long Ming had chosen a good heir. Su Xiaobai thought that they were almost no different from corpses, they must be immediate. If he runs as fast as he can, they shouldn't catch up with him. As soon as he thought that they were slow, the zombies began to approach him at a fast speed and jumped very high as it turned out. Su Xiaobai heard a voice in his head. This voice told him not to be afraid. The voice demanded to show Su Xiaobai's courage. Su Xiaobai didn't understand who was saying this or what kind of place this was. Su Xiaobai Wu saw a man with long white hair in front of him. He told him that, this is his inner strength. He is his inner strength. They have one soul. Zhao Ping asked Mr. Long Ming if his consciousness really still remained in this world, then let her know about it. A horde of zombies piled up on Su Xiaobai, 
Zhao Ping watched from above. She wanted to see Long Ming's one and only endless darkness power. There was an explosion with a purple glow. The zombies scattered in different directions and into small pieces. Su Xiaobai was surrounded by a purple aura. He wondered if this was a feeling of rebirth. Su Xiaobai began to absorb energy. He felt warm, all this energy concentrated in his body. Zhao Ping landed and said that there was no need for Su Xiaobai to panic. This is definitely Long Ming's master's endless darkness ability. Zhao Ping explained that endless darkness can not only absorb energy around, but can also absorb energy from opponents during battle. Su Xiaobai thought about how bad this ability sounded. He thought that this world has supernatural powers. He realized that his myasthenia gravis was cured due to super strength. Su Xiaobai asked Zhao Ping what she was doing. Zhao Ping bowed her knee in front of him and said that the Protoss would not last a day without a master. Zhao Ping asked him to return to Protoss and inherit the crown. Su Xiaobai and Zhao Ping walked along the bridge that leads to Protoss, dragon-like creatures flying above them. Zhao Ping asked that he was not very happy to be king. Su Xiaobai asked why it was so necessary to return to Protoss right now. As they walked across the bridge, Su Xiaobai's stomach growled. He said the most important thing was to find a place to fill his stomach. When they approached the city wall, he asked that this was the fortunately surviving shelter. He noted that the wall was very high, but that's all. Su Xiaobai said that there was no gate here. He hoped that they did not need to climb over the wall. Zhao Fing told him not to worry. It was just a security system. The Protoss resident is able to open the gate. Zhao Ping touched the wall and said that this wall is 700 meters high and 20 meters thick. This is enough to deter any predator. When the gate opened, the system greeted Chao Zhao Ping and said welcome home. Zhao Ping told Su Xiaobai to follow her. Zhao Ping said that although everything looks abandoned from the outside, inside Protoss the inhabitants can still lead a peaceful lifestyle. All this is thanks to the Protoss guards. Su Xiaobai watched the gates close and asked about the Protoss guards. Zhao Ping told him that they were the protectors of the Protoss. Zhao Ping explained that Protoss was surrounded by a huge abyss. There are only twelve entrances to Protoss, each of them guarded. She said that they are all elite fighters who have gone through multi-level selection. According to strength, they are divided into levels from strong to weak. There are five levels in total. S. A, B, C, D. Su Xiaobai wondered if there wasn't just one person watching the gate. When they entered the city, C-rank Protoss guard Tian Meng confronted Zhao Ping and said that she was violating the ban on leaving the city again and again without telling him or getting permission. Zhao Ping answered him that he had misunderstood. She was just looking for Mr. Long Ming, and that's all. People whispered that she still couldn't give up searching. They said that she was so stupid. Tian Meng said that he died three years ago. She is looking for his corpse. The crowd behind Tian Meng laughed out loud, which made Zhao Ping very angry. Zhao Ping remembered how she tried to find Long Ming under the downpour. She was able to find a battlefield where only dead bodies lay. Su Xiaobai stretched his hands and told Tian Meng to take better care of the gate. Su Xiaobai walked towards the crowd and told them that there were so many of them to offend one little girl. Su Xiaobai said with a self-confident face that it was not beautiful and they should be ashamed. Su Xiaobai continued to warm up. Tian Meng asked about the fact that he was a stranger. People began to whisper that this kid dared to anger Tian Meng. Because he has a C rank, he is the most important at this gate. Tian Meng jumped up to punch Su Xiaobai and said that Protoss is not happy with strangers. Su Xiaobai was able to easily dodge Tian Meng's attack. Su Xiaobai thought that the body had become so light, he was sure that this was the effect of energy absorption. Tian Meng's subordinates shouted at him that he was a bitch. How dare he raise his hand to guard? They ran towards him in a crowd to beat Su Xiaobai. Before they could reach Su Xiaobai, they fell, as if they were magnetized to the ground. Zhao Ping activated a magic circle that magnetized the ill-wishers to the ground. Zhao Ping said that as long as she was here, no one would touch Su Xiaobai. Tian Meng said that the SR rank ability, Force Attraction, creates earthly gravity in a radius. 
It's a pity that the attraction is insignificant, only tenfold. But Tian Meng did not feel anything and was able to get off the ground to attack Su Xiaobai. Su Xiaobai caught Tian Meng's fist and did not let go. The force of Tian Meng's blow was so strong that the asphalt in the city was pressed under Su Xiaobai. Tian Meng was surprised by the purple glow and did not understand what was happening. His strength was leaving. Su Xiaobai asked Tian Meng with a grin that he did not expect such an outcome. Su Xiaobai was absorbing Tian Meng's power and he asked him to stop. At the same time, somewhere in Protoss, someone contacted Count Dracula. Nine tailed fox Wu Yue said that he also felt it. Holding the glass in his hand, Count Dracula said that he felt the power of Long Ming. Tian Meng backed away from Su Xiaobai and said that this is endless darkness. Tian Meng was dried up like a lemon. Only skin and bones remained on him. He brightened up that wasn't this the strength of Mr. Long Ming. He asked Su Xiaobai who he was. Su Xiaobai was surrounded by an aura and angrily said that he was his daddy. Su Xiaobai called Zhao Ping and asked if they could go eat. He felt like he was about to die of hunger. As they walked, Su Xiaobai said that his eating power was enormous. Zhao Ping walked next to Su Xiaobai and was very cheerful. She told him that it was okay. He could eat as much as he wanted. People were scared that this kid had just arrived from outside and could easily defeat a C-rank guard and could also use a UR-rank ability. Two darlings came to meet them. One of them asked where he came from. Zhao Ping was surprised that a girl came to them, whom Zhao Ping calls Little Sister Qin. Her name was Lan Qin, and she was part of Su Xiaobai's personal guard. She asked Zhao Ping about her difficulties with Tian Meng, and she came to help her to chop him into pieces. The second girl told Zhao Ping that she couldn't do whatever she wanted without them. This girl with green hair is called Li Xin, and she is also from Su Xiaobai's personal guard. Su Xiaobai was surprised that Zhao Ping also had warrior friends. Zhao Ping asked her sisters not to worry about her. Zhao Ping hugged Su Xiaobai's hand and said that the owner had already helped her. Su Xiaobai asked her not to do whatever she wanted. Last time, she heard him. Lan Qing asked about her calling him master, and Li Xin said that it couldn't be that he... Zhao Ping said that there can be no mistake. Su Xiaobai can use endless darkness. Long Ming chose him. He is the heir to the throne. These girls also want to protect their lover without sparing their lives. They unanimously said that Su Xiaobai is now their new master. They all came to Long Ming's residence together. Su Xiaobai devoured the noodles with great speed and said that they were very tasty. Lan Qing sat with her eyes closed and didn't pay attention. Li Xin rolled her eyes at the way he was eating, and only Zhao Ping looked at Su Xiaobai with loving eyes. After finishing the noodles, Su Xiaobai put the plate on the table where there were a bunch of other empty plates and said that he had eaten too much. Li Xin thought about how many years this guy had not eaten, and who would have thought that Mr. Long Ming would choose such a person? Zhao Ping asked that the owner liked her dishes. Su Xiaobai said that her dishes are delicious. Lan Qing abruptly stood up from the table and addressed him by name. She told him that although she did not understand how Mr. Long Ming gave him the ability endless darkness, but if he did not live up to Long Ming's hopes, then he would not expect mercy. Li Xin said that Lan Qin is right. Being their master is not that easy. Li Xin explained that he must fulfill Mr. Long Ming's last wish and become the king of Protoss and destroy all monsters. After the conversation, Su Xiaobai trained in his room. He did a hundred push-ups and ended his evening training. Su Xiaobai was indignant that everyone was telling him to ascend the throne. After all, why the hell should it concern him? Long Ming appeared behind him and told him that this concerned him. Su Xiaobai turned around and saw the Protoss king Long Ming sitting in a chair in his room. Long Ming told Su Xiaobai that he was not as stupid as he thought. Su Xiaobai pointed his finger at him and said that he should be dead. Long Ming continued to sit in the same position and said that his physical body was dead, but his soul survived. Su Xiaobai repeated the words that only the soul survived and suggested that he was now. Long Ming showed through like a ghost and said that now he is completely powerless and looks like this, 
and no one else can see him except him. Su Xiaobai went to Long Ming and told him that he pulled him out of another world and also placed his own soul into his body. When Su Xiaobai leaned towards Long Ming, he said that he just wanted to use him and his body. Long Ming told Su Xiaobai that he was not interested. Long Ming moved to the bed and said that he had only called him to Protoss to make one deal and nothing more. Long Ming explained that he gave him the strongest ability in this world, allowing him to have endless wealth and the highest status. He just needs to become the king of Protoss. In return, he needs to find those who staged a palace coup and killed Long Ming three years ago. Su Xiaobai listened to him and replied that he didn't care, he wouldn't do it. Long Ming said that it was a shame, but he was in a position where he couldn't refuse. Su Xiaobai took the banana and said that since he had summoned it to this world, then he definitely had a method to subdue it. Opening the banana, Su Xiaobai asked him to tell him, and he would listen. Su Xiaobai wants to know what his trump card is. Long Ming said that Su Xiaobai is smarter than he thought. Long Ming said that he put a seal on his body. You can get rid of it only after fulfilling its condition. This seal is activated when he becomes attracted to a woman. He will feel unbearable pain. It is better to die than to live like this. If he refuses, his life will be like that of an unsuitable man. It was as if the body had been pierced by a thousand needles. Su Xiaobai told him that he really didn't expect the Protoss king to blackmail a pawn like this. Long Ming coldly replied that it was just so that he could listen to him, that's all. Su Xiaobai asked why him. After all, Su Xiaobai is an ordinary person. He should have chosen a more suitable candidate for revenge. Long Ming listened to Su Xiaobai and said that in other words, for some reason, he could only choose him. Long Ming thought that this kid was guessing everything correctly. Due to an incurable disease, his muscles had completely atrophied. He was like a blank sheet of paper. He was best suited for endless darkness. Su Xiaobai sat down in the chair where Long Ming had recently sat and told him that he had given him a second life, and he was very grateful for it. But he was a living person, not his toy for revenge. Long Ming smirked and said that he had underestimated him at first. Lan Qing sat on the roof of the house under the full moon and thought about how he was talking to himself at night, and finally finished. Su Xiaobai lay down on the bed and thought that after all, it's not a fact that the seal really exists. He can't wake up every morning in pain. When Su Xiaobai had already fallen asleep, someone came into his room and pointed the barrel of a machine gun at his head. When Su Xiaobai woke up, he saw that a girl with pink hair was standing over him. She was very angry. Su Xiaobai was afraid of her and asked what she wanted to do with him. She asked Su Xiaobai that he was the owner of the power of endless darkness. Su Xiaobai asked her to calm down and who she was. He noticed that she had a very large gun, naturally not for games. She ordered him to shut up. She told him that she was not like Zhao Ping. She was not so naive. He used some sneaky trick to get the power of Brother Long Ming. This girl's name was Wang Shiyu. She is Long Min's sister, nicknamed Little Demon. Su Xiaobai tried to understand about Zhao Ping and Brother Long Ming and asked her if she shouldn't be his personal guard. After these words, he fired a burst from a machine gun at the pillow. Su Xiaobai called her petty trash and that she really wanted to kill him. She asked him to tell him in detail how he obtained Long Ming's power, otherwise he would end up like this pillow. Su Xiaobai told her everything. She cried and asked that Long Ming really didn't die, and his soul was in Su Xiaobai's body. Su Xiaobai asked for a quieter voice. Long Ming's enemies must not find out, otherwise they will also kill Su Xiaobai. Wang Xia wanted to hug Su Xiaobai, thinking that he was her brother Long Ming. Su Xiaobai caught Wang Xiu and asked her not to cling to her. He is Su Xiaobai, not her brother Long Ming. He told her if she really wanted to please him, tomorrow night she should take him to a place. With tears in her eyes, Wang Xiu asked what place this was. The next evening, Wang Xia sat under an establishment with pink lanterns. A crowd of onlookers gathered around her. She told everyone that it was busy inside, and if they wanted to live, then let them get out of here. She was ashamed of this and embarrassed. She thought 
that if Su Xiaobai dared to order her to do this again, she would turn him into a sieve. The girl said that from the looks of it, Su Xiaobai was visiting them for the first time. Another girl told him to relax and give in to his desires. The girls noticed that judging by his complexion, he didn't seem to be doing very well. Another said that his face looked very tense. Su Xiaobai rolled his eyes. He thought that if painful sensations appeared now, then he should get rid of Long Ming's control, that is, get rid of the seal. He must endure. He was in pain. He held on with all his might. Su Xiaobai thought that he should be persistent. Worries bring vanity. The girl hugged the back of his head and whispered in his ear for him to say this to her. This was the last straw and he couldn't stand it. He screamed in pain so that even the street could hear him. Su Xiaobai immediately went outside. Wang Xiu sat and obediently waited for him in front of the establishment. Wang Xiu smiled sarcastically and told him that he had lost heart and everything was clear with him. She called him a dirty pervert. Su Xiaobai had a blank look and told her that she understood. He was fighting with fate here. Su Xiaobai thought that this Long Ming was a bastard, since such a painful seal. While heading towards the house, Wang Xiu told him that next month there will be a new selection of the Protoss Guard group, and isn't he going to prepare well? He asked what was needed for preparation, and he would not be watching the gate. She told him that in order to become a Protoss Guard and inherit the throne, he must fulfill one condition. Su Xiaobai turned to her. She asked him if he had changed his mind. Su Xiaobai replied that no, he had drunk some water and wanted to go to the toilet. When Su Xiaobai relieved himself, he noticed a ball with a mouth jumping past him. Su Xiaobai picked it up and wondered what kind of toy it was. It looked quite unusual. A large ball fell from the roof of the house. A predator fell to him, a demonic level, a demon devourer. Wang Xu stood around the corner and thought what happened to Brother Long Ming that he chose this man as the heir to the throne. A scream came from the alley where Su Xiaobai was. Wang Xu was interested in what this little man was doing there. When I turned around, I saw Su Xiaobai jumping out of the alley trying to avoid the attack of this demon. Wang Xu was told that there was a demonic level predator inside the city. Su Xiaobai realized that he would not have time to evade. The little demons that were flying towards him were scattered into pieces by Wang Xiu's machine gun. Wang Xiu held the machine gun on her shoulder and asked Su Xiaobai about urinating his pants, the dirty pervert. Su Xiaobai replied that she is the most perverted and her whole family are also perverts. Wang Xiu turned her gaze to the roof of a neighboring house and told the person on the roof that she could see her and need not hide. Wang Xiu said that a person who is capable of controlling demonic-level predators can also bring them to the city. In all of Protoss, no one except her is capable of doing this. Wang Xiu called her brother's wife. Su Xiaobai pointed his finger at her and said that she was Long Ming's wife. Wang Xiu told Su Xiaobai that she had a Protossi marriage contract on her body, and at twenty years old, she was supposed to become the wife of the Protoss king. Wang Xiu said that at first she thought that she would become her little sister, but now she thinks she is just cheap. Su Xiaobai didn't understand what was happening here. The girl jumped from the roof onto the demon and asked Wang Xiu not to joke like that. How could she marry such a loser? When Su Xiaobai saw her closer, he was surprised and embarrassed. His heart began to beat a hundred times faster. Mu Yuan said that you just need to kill him and the marriage contract will be lost. Su Xiaobai remembered how he was rejected by a classmate who looked like Mu Yuan. The classmate then told him that he was not her type and asked him to leave her alone. After that, she turned around and left, and Su Xiaobai was holding the love letter that he wanted to give to her. Su Xiaobai was blinded by Mu Yuan and thought that this girl was a goddess. Wang Xu thought why this guy was so strange. She hoped that he didn't touch his head. Su Xiaobai did not notice anything except herself. He asked, did she really come to this world for him? Mu Yuan jumped off the demon to hit Su Xiaobai and asked what kind of goddess. The force of Mu Yuan's blow was so strong that Su Xiaobai flew into the wall that was a couple of meters away from him and slammed into it. Wang Xiu was angry at this act and said that she really hit him and let them think that if she is a bride, 
he will not dare to defeat her. Mu Yuan replied that she had already said before, if she kills him, the marriage contract will be lost. Mu Yuan turned her gaze to Wang Xiu and said that how could she marry someone who seeks sexual pleasure in brothels? Wang Xiu said that she doesn't care, but this is the last will of the Long Ming brothers, and if she wants to kill him, she will deal with her. Wang Xiu turned to the demon controlled by Mu Yuan. The demon opened its mouth. The demon swallowed Wang Xiu and her machine gun shattered into smithereens. Mu Yuan said that she would kill Su Xiaobai before she was digested in the demon's stomach. Mu Yuan walked towards where Su Xiaobai flew and thought that she had hit him with all her strength. Even if he didn't die, he must have suffered greatly. She wanted to finish him off quickly. From the cloud of dust where Su Xiaobai was, a hand stretched towards Mu Yuan. At the last moment, Mu Yuan managed to react and dodge him. Mu Yuan jumped to a safe distance and was surprised, because this is impossible, he still has the strength to respond. Su Xiaobai said that just a little more, and he would have caught her. Mu Yuan thought that he was using endless darkness, and was breathing calmly. Although he had just been slammed into the wall, he was only here for the second day. But he had already mastered this power to such a level. Su Xiaobai clenched his fist and said that it was very good that she made him come to his senses with her blow. Goddess, after all, in all three years, she never came to see him at the hospital. Naturally, how could she come into this world for his sake? He said that they were just very similar, and that was all. Mu Yen said that he already has a loved one, then especially she will not marry him. She declared that today he must die. Su Xiaobai told her not to be mistaken. How much time had already passed, and he had not felt anything for her for a long time. In addition, he had already been informed that he could become the king of Protoss. She must not be the only one who wants him. He told her that she should not hold on to him and should not be jealous of him just because he went to the hotel. He asked her that she really liked him? Mu Yuan was shocked and angry at his words, and said that what he was talking about was complete nonsense. Mu Yuan activated her power and said that it was simply because she had a marriage contract on her body, and that is why she came for it. The asphalt under Su Xiaobai began to crack and demons came out and beat him from all sides. The demons ricocheted off the buildings and all together hit Su Xiaobai so that they slammed him into the ground. Mu Yan said that it was all over and the eaters would not leave a bone of him. She went to Su Xiaobai and told him that she didn't want to kill him at all. He was just unlucky to get to this place. When the dust cleared, Su Xiaobai was covered in the aura of endless darkness and said that he was really so unlucky with the place. Mu Yuan noticed that all the eaters had dried up. Su Xiaobai walked to Mu Yuan and said that he actually had no intention of becoming the king of Protoss. He doesn't want to become a king just because his body has infinite darkness. Everyone insists that he go a certain way. Nobody cares what he wants. He has already died once, and he wants to live this life for himself. The devourer's mouth began to open, and Wang Xiu asked if she knew why Wang Xiu was using a machine gun. Wang Xiu opened the devourer's mouth wider and continued to say that her power was too great, and if it was not controlled, who knows what could happen to the innocent. Mu Yuan thought that this was impossible because the compression force of this demon was two tons. Wang Xiu uses the R-rank power cell enhancement. By changing her cells, her power becomes limitless. When Wang Xiu fully opened the demon's mouth, she pushed away from the demon and flew towards Mu Yuan at high speed and said that if she hit, then little sister might die. Mu Yuan managed to dodge Wang Xiu's blow by jumping up. Mu Yuan jumped up from the walls to avoid being reached by Wang Xiu. Su Xiaobai covered himself from the stones that were flying at him and thought that she was very hot-tempered. Mu Yuan hovered in the air and thought that this girl would be difficult. She has such amazing explosive power. Since they were standing together, she had only one choice, hit or miss. Mu Yuan's eyes began to change into the color of the blue moon. Wang Xiu said that Mu Yuan runs too fast. The moon has become the same as Mu Yuan's eyes. Her ability is called Blue Moon. Su Xiaobai and Wang Xiu were affected by her power. 
The power of a Blue Moon rank SSR is that simply by making eye contact, she can control weak predators. But if you use the light of the moon, the power increases significantly. It can control people for a short time. There was a sharp sound as the sword was taken out of its sheath. Lan Qing flew towards her. Mu Yan saw the reflection of the katana blade reflecting from the moon. Lan Qing hit Mu Guan to protect Su Xiaobai and Wang Xiu. Before Mu Yuan fainted, Lan Qing told her that before she wanted to kill Su Xiaobai, she should ask Lan Qing first. Mu Yuan fell from the height of the roof down unconscious. Su Xiaobai ran and jumped to save Mu Yuan. Su Xiaobai tried to bring her to her senses. He asked her to wake up and said that she could not die here. In Mu Yuan's eyes, Su Xiaobai began to blur and her eyes closed. The last thing she heard was him asking her not to close her eyes. After some time, Mu Yuan came to her senses. She looked around and tried to figure out where she was. Mu Yuan checked herself and noticed that there was no wound on her chest, but she was sure that she had been hit with a ball. Mu Yuan remembered that girl and the way she unsheathed her katana in an instant. She thought she saw a demon. Mu Yuan realized that Lan Qing had terrible power that gave her goosebumps. Mu Yuan looked around and thought that her chest still hurt. If Lang Qin was around, she would never kill Su Xiaobai. She saw through the glass door a balcony where Su Xiaobai was sitting on the fence and talking to someone. Su Xiaobai was talking to Lan Qing. He asked her how she found them and said that from the very beginning she looked at him with contempt. Lan Qing explained to him that she is his personal guard and is obliged to ensure his safety in Protoss at all times. Not only Mu Yuan wants to kill him. Su Xiaobai said that she understood this. Lan Qin said that Long Ming's killers should now come out from behind the scenes soon. His every moment is under threat. Lan Qing remembered that the other two heirs, Count Dracula, who has great influence in Protoss, and Long Ming's eldest sister, Archangel Long Yan, were also not happy with him. She also added that now he creates the impression of a weakling. In the future, there will be losses in any case. Mu Yuan overheard their conversation. Su Xiaobai told her that she was talking about it so easily and he couldn't just watch her fall to her death. Mu Yuan remembered that he caught her in the air and helped her. And who would have thought that it would be him? She realized that the Blue Moon ability had no effect on Lan Qing. She would have killed her, but he saved her. She wondered what he wanted to achieve by this. Su Xiaobai said that although he is not interested in being the king of Protoss, he also does not need a wife for nothing, so she cannot die. Mu Yuan opened the doors to the balcony with all her strength, and the door made a very loud sound. When Su Xiaobai saw Mu Yuan, he was scared and told her to forget what he just said. Mu Yuan was furious and told him that whoever would become your wife for nothing and that he was a damn brat, he didn't even dare to think that if he saved her, she would marry him. She told him that she would never marry him and forbade him to have delusional dreams. Su Xiaobai didn't understand why he was being rejected so cruelly. It seemed too straightforward to him. Lan Qing started to take out her katana when she saw Mu Yuan and said that if she wants to kill him again, then this time she will not use the sword hilt. Mu Yuan was scared and thought that it was not surprising that she did not have a wound because she had hit her with the hilt of the sword. Su Xiaobai jumped off the fence and thought that Mu Yuan seemed a little scared. Had Lang Qing's sword damaged her self-esteem? Mu Yuan thought that as long as Lan Qin was with Su Xiaobai, she should think of something else. Mu Yuan jumped high into the air and shouted Luan Yao's name. A bird flew in. It was so big that the shadow of this bird covered the floor of the roof of Long Ming's residence. Su Xiaobai and Lang Qin were surprised that this was also her beast, although it was completely different from that demon devourer. Mu Yuan jumped onto the bird's back. The bird told them that they were two tiny people. Dare to address a celestial being without respect. Lan Qing said that according to the ancient scriptures, this is a high-level beast. Lan Qing began to take a stance to deliver the killing blow. She said that then cutting him down should be very interesting. Mu Yan shouted to Su Xiaobai that he wanted to marry her, so she wanted to discuss their engagement without other people. 
Su Xiaobai was thinking that Mu Yuan wants little sister Qin to leave, but her face is so serious, it's actually scary. Su Xiaobai asked Lan Qing if she wanted to rest for a while, and he would talk to her. Lan Qing replied that she did not want to. Su Xiaobai told Lan Qing to calm down. He said that if Mu Yuan wanted to kill him, it was unlikely that she would succeed. She had just barely jumped on her animal. Lan Qing sheathed her katana and said that if he wants to die, then fine. Su Xiaobai told her that everything was fine and he could take care of himself. Su Xiaobai said that there was so much effort for little sister Qin to leave and asked Mu Yuan that she was afraid of her. But if that's what she wants, now it's just the two of them. And he asked her to say what she really needed. Mu Yuan said that she admits that he is not as bad as she thought, but that doesn't change anything. He only relies on one power, endless darkness. For higher people, he is just a pawn and nothing more. Su Xiaobai was angry that she insulted him. He asked her that no one told her that her speech was very offensive. Mu Yuan said that in a month, the annual guard selection process will take place in front of the delegation. While straightening her hair, Mu Yuan added that he could defeat her and become a Protoss guard. Then she will help him ascend the throne. Su Xiaobai said that he had already been told about this, but he did not understand what it was. She explained that in the process of fighting predators, Protoss guards often die. The qualifying round takes place in two stages. In order to identify outstanding newcomers, they replace deceased guards. So the Protoss can provide itself with guards of 72 people. This allows the Protoss to provide protection and preserve the human race. Su Xiaobai asked that if he wins it, then their marriage contract will come into force. Mu Yen asked not to lose her head with joy. She explained that becoming a Protoss guardian was not enough. The main condition is to ascend to the throne. She can only marry the king of Protoss. Mu Yen said that the first rank S class, the strongest guard who is relied upon by the entire Protoss as a hero. When Mu Yen remembered what Long Ming looked like, she became embarrassed and said that he was such a man, and asked Su Xiaobai if he could become like that. Su Xiaobai wanted to ask if she was in love with him, but she screamed out of embarrassment so that he would not say this. Su Xiaobai was confused and didn't understand how this deceiver did this. He's gray-haired, he's not particularly handsome, and he has the face of a wimp. Mu Yuan warned him that whoever did not pass the first round, the competition would stop for him. As for him, this means defeat is equal to the price of the throne. Mu Yuan, with a grin on her face, asked what was wrong with him, had he changed his mind about going. Su Xiaobai said that he would be willing to join him. A month has passed. The selection of guards began. A guy without outerwear and with large bracelets on his hands said that what a strong pressure, this force, this place is worthy of the birth of guards. He stood in front of the Colosseum. He thought that there were so many participants, and they looked very strong. The blood of hell in his body is about to boil. He has a lot of work to do today. This guy's name was Ma Fugi, and he was a resident of Majiadong village. When Ma Fugi thought that indeed, the level of this arena is worthy of his fist. Ma Fugi noticed that one of the participants fell to the ground. A guy in a suit and with gold-rimmed glasses told this guy not to touch him with his dirty hands. The guy who fell to the ground shouted to him that he was pulling like that. He didn't do it intentionally. Other participants discussed that the selection has not even begun yet, and this is already interesting. The guy jumped up from the ground. His fist was engulfed in pink flames, and he said that he was stronger than him, so everything would be fine with him. The guy with the glasses got ice on his fingers and told him that this was a cruel move. The guy in the suit froze the other one. The frozen guy's thoughts were that he just touched him. He was too scared. He didn't understand who this guy was. The member with the red cloak said he remembered him. He said that he has SSR level elementals, extreme ice abilities, and a love for purity. And if he is not mistaken about the love for purity, then... He should be the number 10S. Rank Archangel son of the Long Yan family, Long Ming is an ice soul eater. The girls immediately fell in love with him and shouted that they loved him and shouted that he was handsome. Mafugi took Long Ming by the shoulder and said that he seemed very strong to him. 
All the participants were surprised that this hillbilly wanted to die because he touched Long Ming. One of the participants recognized Ma Fugi and said that he was from Ma Jiadonger, killing dozens of ghost-level predators last year. He's a complete battle madman. Mafugi said that he also had SSR rank elemental abilities and asked if they would fight. The woman from the podium told them that they were too full of energy. She asked them to wait until the selection began, and then they could start fighting. This woman was the nine-tailed Yao Lu Wu Ju. Mafugui told her not to misunderstand him. He just said, hello, L. Long Ming shook his shoulder and thought that they were all so rude. Long Ming wondered if the outsider who inherited the endless darkness would come. The participants were glad that the master stopped them, otherwise it would definitely have affected them. Others discussed that two super rookies with SSR level abilities that they could probably say they were already knocked out of the game. After some time, Yao Lu Wu Ju said that the time is up and we need to start. Someone from the crowd raised his hand and shouted to wait. It was Mu Yuan. She said that there was another player. Su Xiaobai did not show up. Long Ming recognized Lady Blue Moon. He thought that she also came for Su Xiaobai because of the marriage contract. Yao Lu Wu Ju asked about the guy who received endless darkness. She would be much more interested in hearing that he defeated Class C Zhang Tianmen. She said she would only wait for him for five minutes. Five minutes later. All the members started talking about how he seemed to be afraid to come. Of course, he only got Long Ming's ability with luck. The selection of guards is a real talent competition. He thinks this is normal. This bastard must have been afraid of being knocked out in the first round and thus losing his inheritance. Long Ming thought that this guy really wouldn't come. Mu Yuan thought that Su Xiaobai had deceived her. Mu Yuan saw Su Xiaobai enter the arena and was glad that he kept his promise. Su Xiaobai walked in with his personal guard, which included Zhao Ping, Lan Qin, Li Xin, and Wang Xiu. Su Xiaobai said that so many people had gathered, but these guys looked very unfriendly. All the participants were furious that he had been waiting for so long. They told him not to pretend that someone was forcing him, and the participants agreed that it was better to work together to kill him in the first round. Someone noticed that he also brought Long Ming's bodyguards. Someone asked that they wanted to illegally form a team. Only Ma Fugi thought that it must be hot for him to wear so many clothes. Su Xiaobai told them that the girls were only responsible for the selection process, and he alone is enough to cope with them all. Mu Yuan thought that he was really bullying them amazingly. After his words, he would become their number one target, and about the rest, she thought that they needed to wait, and they would see how it would end for them. Yao Lu Wu Ju jumped from the stands and said that since everyone is here. Then she asked everyone to stop talking nonsense. She announced a conference for the selection of guards, officially open. Yao Lu Wu Ju opened the portal using her smoking pipe. The participants wondered why she opened the space portal, because nothing like this had happened before. Yao Lu Wu Ju explained that the selection is divided into two tournaments. The first round is very simple. This portal will randomly send them out of town. All they have to do is be in the designated area. You need to live for five days. She also added that only those who survived are eligible to participate in the second round of selection. The participants were outraged that it was impossible to live outside the city for five days. One of the participants said that if this teleportation accidentally takes you to the predator's lair, you will definitely be killed on the spot. Yao Lu Wuju told them that it is the duty of the Celestial Spirit Guardian to protect the Celestial Spirit family. If they are afraid, they may abstain from voting to maintain their right to participate next year. Many participants began to raise their hands and say that they would abstain and would come again next year. Yao Lu Wuju told everyone who did not vote that now it seems that those who are ready for the test remain. She asked about who would go first. Su Xiaobai stepped forward and said that he was ready to go first. Mu Yan wondered what he was going to do. Long Ming silently watched Su Xiaobai. Su Xiaobai thought that Mu Yuan was definitely not the only one who wanted to beat him in the selection. He may be the first to experience the area before them, and this will give him an advantage that he must not miss. 
Zhao Ping grabbed Su Xiaobai's cloak and said that she had a bad feeling. Su Xiaobai told her not to worry, and he would meet them after completing the first stage. When Su Xiaobai walked through the portal, he walked straight into a squid-like monster. He thought that he was very unlucky. The monster was on the level of a ghostly predator. The monsters told him that ordinary people dare to invade his territory, and he must die for it. The monster attacked Su Xiaobai with its tentacle. Su Xiaobai caught its tentacle with one hand and said that he was indeed incredibly lucky to teleport to a ghost-level predator. Su Xiaobai added that he did not have time to fight him and had an appointment. The monster directed all other tentacles towards Su Xiaobai. Su Xiaobai was surprised that his tentacles were very fast. He jumped away, thereby dodging the blow, and jumped onto one of the monster's tentacles. The monster told him that these were not bad abilities for an ordinary person. Su Xiaobai thought that if he did not stop him, his position would be exposed and decided to finish off the monster as quickly as possible. Su Xiaobai pushed away from the tentacle and aimed a punch at the monster's head. Wang Xiu asked that this pervert was really okay. If he was killed, he would not get the throne. Li Xin said that although Pinger is quite strong, the change in the competition system this time does not guarantee that he can advance to the second round. Lan Qing said that Su Xiaobai was not idle, and he is by no means as simple as he seems. Wang Xiu and Li Xin listened carefully to what Lang Qin told them, that from the first day Su Xiaobai entered the Celestial Spirit Garden, he was extremely self-disciplined, going to bed at half-past ten in the evening and getting up at seven in the morning, strictly adhered to the ideal schedule. Su Xiaobai did abdominal exercises a hundred times a day, a hundred push-ups, a hundred squats, and a long run of ten kilometers he never stopped despite the wind and rain. There is always energy in his body, and if he cannot move, he will die because of it. He is the same as Lan Qing, they have a fighting instinct. Su Xiaobai hit the monster in the head, and the monster's eyes flew out from his force. After the blow, Su Xiaobai began to absorb the energy that remained from the squid. A dead thing crawled out of the squid's head. Su Xiaobai realized that the monster was not dead yet, and he was giving a signal that attracted other predators. The monster was covered with a large amount of ice. Long Ming came out of the trees and told Su Xiaobai that the ghostly predator was asking for help from his kind. Long Ming told him that they were originally humanoid predators. People who eat too much just become like this. Su Xiaobai asked who he was and said that he stole his loot and had the nerve to spy on him. Long Ming told him that if it weren't for him, he would now be surrounded by predators, and he helped him. Long Ming asked that, shouldn't he be grateful? Su Xiaobai turned around and started to leave and said that he did not have time to fight him. He must find the person he is going to meet. Suddenly it began to snow, so Xiaobai activated the power of endless darkness and enveloped himself in its aura. He asked Long Ming what he wanted to do. Long Ming asked what he remembered about the rules for this round. Long Ming added that he could only qualify for the next round if he lived outside the city for five days. Long Ming said that this means that the rules allow you to kill any threatening opponent. Su Xiaobai asked about the threatening opponents and said that he meant Su Xiaobai. The guy was running away from monsters. Something was ticking. He thought about his bad luck teleporting to a group of predators. The guy began to pass through some kind of barrier. As soon as he crossed the barrier, he exploded. Zhao Ping killed all the monsters and exhaled that she was finally finished. She wondered where her master had teleported to. She needs to find him first. As she walked, her bracelet began to beep. She looked at it and thought that this locator, which is given to the player upon entry, was warning her. Zhao Ping recalled that she was told that there was only one rule of the game, survive outside the city in your area for five days. If they go out of bounds, they will be excluded. Zhao Ping went in search of the owner and asked him to wait for her. The unknown person watched Zhao Ping as she tried to find Su Xiaobai. The unknown person raised his hood and laughed. He said that she had been found. Zhao Ping noticed that she was being pursued. She suddenly stopped and turned around to face the pursuer. She said that he was caught. Zhao Ping ordered him to show up and asked him why he was following her. He jumped down from the tree and continued laughing. 
He said that she was worthy of being Long Ming's bodyguard and asked her what time she noticed him. Zhao Ping told him that she had noticed him at the very beginning and she demanded that he answer her question about what he really wanted. He grabbed his cloak and said that he needed her master, Su Xiaobai. Throwing off his cloak, he said that someone wanted him dead and asked to lead her to him. Zhao Ping answered coldly so that he wouldn't even dream of it. Zhao Ping said, times 10, 220. After that, he sank into the ground and was surprised at this. Zhao Ping continued to say 30 times the gravitational field and go to meet him. He laughed and said that she could change gravity. Long Ming told Su Xiaobai that he was not threatening him now, but Su Xiaobai could not be Long Ming's opponent. Su Xiaobai was thinking about what an impudent bastard he is and what he wants from him. Long Ming asked him not to be nervous because he came to tell him one thing. Su Xiaobai asked what he wanted to tell him. Long Ming walked closer to Su Xiaobai and asked him to do his best to stay alive. Long Ming was leaving. Su Xiaobai asked why he was saying that. Long Ming told him that someone wanted him to die. Su Xiaobai replied to Long Ming that many people wanted him to die. Long Ming didn't stop and continued to walk away. He told Su Xiaobai that he still didn't understand. Long Ming guessed when the rules were announced. Long Ming explained that this time the rule is different from before. The purpose of the rules has changed. We need to make it easier for Su Xiaobai to be killed. Anyone who can change the selection rules is definitely not a nobody. Long Ming walked further and further and said that if he wants to be in the Celestial Spirit Garden, he must survive the first round. Su Xiaobai didn't understand who this guy was and why he was helping him. Su Xiaobai felt a strange feeling that there was danger and he should move in that direction. Zhao Ping fought with a man nicknamed Electric God. She blocked his blow. He was able to break through her block. His blow was so strong that she flew off. She flew away with such force that she demolished trees with her body. Zhao Ping didn't know that he had the power of lightning, so how dare he use electric shock to speed up? She realized that he was a former soldier and should not have done this. Because of his blow, she suffered greatly. When she stood up, Zhao Ping was trembling in pain, and the only thoughts in her head were that he was too dangerous, and she couldn't let this guy find Su Xiaobai. This guy took out his dagger that sparkled from lightning and said that since she would not lead him to Su Xiaobai, then he will catch him with the help of her corpse. For him, it's the same thing. Zhou Ping said that as long as she was here, he would not dare to touch even a hair on her master's head. Su Xiaobai ran at high speed. The guard selection participants who saw him said that this was the guy they were told about. One of the three participants said that the three of them had just been teleported here, and he was unlucky to meet them. Su Xiaobai ran through them, and his speed sent them flying in different directions. When Su Xiaobai fled, he felt that Zhao Ping was in danger. Zhao Ping tried with all her might to get up and thought that she was here for the owner to help him advance to the second round, and she couldn't die here. The electric god told her that she was a very beautiful girl and asked why she followed such a weak and short-lived master. He swung his dagger, which was filled with electricity, to deal her the final blow and said that he was so sorry that she would have to die. The electric god noticed a bright purple glow behind him that was getting brighter and brighter. Su Xiaobai hit the electric god's neck with all his strength from his elbow. The electric god flew several meters away and slammed into a stone. Su Xiaobai stood nearby and watched to see if the electric god had died. Su Xiaobai caught his breath and said that he was very glad that he made it on time. Su Xiaobai sat next to Zhao Ping and asked her forgiveness. It was because of him that she suffered so much. Zhao Ping tried to calm him down and said that these were just minor scratches. She needed to rest a little and she would be fine. Zhou Ping became sad and said that as a bodyguard, she could not protect her master. She believed that she was the one who needed to apologize because Su Xiaobai had to protect her. Zhao Ping said that this forest is very large and asked how the owner found her. Su Xiaobai told her, that she would never believe it. Su Xiaobai told her that he felt that she was in danger and he could even sense her location. Zhao Ping asked again about how he could feel where she was. 
There were thoughts in her head about what kind of supernatural ability Su Xiaobai had. The DNA cells of the electric god gave signals that he was alive. When the wind thought, Zhao Ping began to cough from the cold. Su Xiaobai took off his jacket and told Zhao Ping to put it on. Su Xiaobai asked her to put on a jacket and rest well, and he would look after her. Zhao Ping told him that he was not obliged to do this. Su Xiaobai told her that she had been taking care of him for the past month and was in pain because of him. Now it's his turn to take care of her for the next few days. Zhao Ping smiled tenderly and thanked Su Xiaobai. While Zhao Ping was sleeping, Su Xiaobai was guarding her rest. Long spikes came out of the ground to kill Su Xiaobai in the back while he suspects nothing. Su Xiaobai sensed it and managed to react to protect himself. He tore off these thorns and held them in his hands. Su Xiaobai told the electric god that he was surprised why he did not automatically absorb his energy. Su Xiaobai guessed that if he couldn't absorb energy, then he was pretending to be dead. The electric god thought that if he had not been injected with the predator serum, this elbow strike would have killed him. He told Su Xiaobai that he was not so easy to kill. The electric god returned his hand to normal. He was thinking that this guy had absorbed the energy of C-class guard Zhang Tianmeng. Plus, he has grown over the past month. Perhaps he can reach level B. The electric god's body began to change. He told Su Xiaobai that it was too early for him to rejoice. Many spikes came out of his body, and the electric god told him to try it. Su Xiaobai was shocked by what he saw and did not understand what was happening to him. The electric god said that this is his highest form, the strong body of a predator plus SSR rank lightning. The electric god laughed hysterically and said that he was the best among class B, and Su Xiaobai was now a dead man. Su Xiaobai hit him in the face and ordered him to shut up. Su Xiaobai grabbed his face with his palm and slammed the back of his head onto the ground with all his might. Su Xiaobai stood over him and in full rage told him that if he is the best in Class B, then he is at the top of Class B. The Electric God thought that the worst thing about the Dark Infinity is that it drains so much energy from the opponent in a moment of confusion. He didn't understand why Su Xiaobai had mastered the Dark Infinity. To this extent, and this is in just one month, he realized that this mission ended in failure. A man in a protective biochemical suit asked what he was sure of. The scientist said that the predator serum is still in an experimental stage, its actions are unstable, and its life may be in danger. The scientist explained that object number one has a strong rejection rate. The heart rate exceeded 210 beats. He was asked if he wanted to stop the experiment. Through the pain, he told them not to stop. After some time, the electric god listened to what he was told, that although he survived the experiments, he received a strong predator body. But the fusion of the predator's cells with his cells was not enough, and no second force was awakened. He was told that in the end, it was a failure to create an artificial predator with double strength. They were still missing one thing. They want Su Xiaobai's body and his dark infinity crystal. Su Xiaobai was preparing to deliver the killing blow and had several questions for him. He asked how he managed to take on the appearance of a predator and how he managed to remain sane. Su Xiaobai stood over him and asked, who is his boss and what is their goal? He ordered him to lay out everything he knew. The electric god answered him that he thought he would tell him everything. The electric god told him that according to his calculations, Su Xiaobai could not be his opponent. He is very curious about why Su Xiaobai is so much stronger than expected. Su Xiaobai told him it is because he has extraordinary talent. It began to rain. The electric god realized that luck was on his side. The electric god laughed and asked Su Xiaobai if he knew why lightning strikes when it rains. Su Xiaobai asked what were his last words. The electric god continued to say that the electric charge in the clouds which attracts negative charges, is an electric discharge. Zhao Ping ran to Su Xiaobai and shouted to him that it was dangerous. Zhao Ping pushed Su Xiaobai away and exposed herself to very strong lightning. When the lightning dissipated, there was horror in his eyes. He saw Zhao Ping unconscious. Su Xiaobai thought that she had died. 
The electric god walked past the lying Zhao Ping towards Su Xiaobai and continued to say that he would create enough negative charge to attract lightning. It's easy for someone like him. He said that this girl was willing to die for him and that ruined the electric god's plan. The electric god said that the lightning gave him enough energy, even the heavens helped him, and Su Xiaobai lost. Su Xiaobai was furious and told him how dare he do this to Zhao Ping. Su Xiaobai jumped on him shouting that he would kill him. The electric god attacked him back and said that he had met his death. The electric god's spikes pierced Su Xiaobai's body. The electric god thought that this guy was crazy and he tried to hit him despite the counterattack. Despite his injuries, Su Xiaobai was able to achieve his goal and slammed him into the ground with one blow. Su Xiaobai dealt a large number of blows to him and shouted for him to die as quickly as possible. Su Xiaobai slammed the electric god into the ground so that one lifeless body could be seen. Su Xiaobai said that he doesn't care who he is and doesn't care who is behind him. He promised that he would find them and get even with everyone. Su Xiaobai began to absorb the energy of the electric god. But due to severe wounds, he lost consciousness. A month ago, Zhao Ping gave Su Xiaobai a bottle of water to refresh himself. She told him that the tests could be dangerous, and did he really decide to participate? He wondered why she was asking this and didn't they all want him to participate. She told him that, naturally, as a bodyguard, she wanted the owner to participate. But as Su Xiaobai's friend, she doesn't want him to get hurt. Her answer surprised him. He thought that they all considered him to be Long Ming's instrument of revenge. He didn't know that Zhao Ping cared about him from the bottom of his heart. Zhao Ping got up from the bench and said that she was not a Protoss guard, which meant that she also had the right to apply. She said that she would go with the owner, so she wouldn't have to worry. The girl counted down that the operation had failed. The electric god signal had disappeared. She said that with his strength, it was impossible to lose to this stranger. She wondered if perhaps their information was incorrect. The old man said that they made one mistake. Behind this guy is someone else who has been training him this whole month. The girl in the red dress said that she thought that there were only four bodyguards with him. The old man said that this is not what they should be worried about now. There are four left until the end of the selection. She must return the corpse of the electric god. Mu Yen stood over their bodies. She thought that she should take the opportunity to kill him. Then, the engagement could be broken off. Mu Yan moved closer to Su Xiaobai and took a stance to finish him off. She asked not to blame her, because this was fate. Mu Yan tore out the heart with her strength, but it was the heart of a predator. She protected Su Xiaobai and Zhao Ping. The smell of blood attracted predators, and she was surrounded by a horde of predators. Mu Yuan told Su Xiaobai, who was lying unconscious, that she was only helping him because he was unable to fight. Mu Yuan quickly dealt with this entire horde of predators. She stood on the corpses of predators and said that they were no match for her and their numbers did not matter. Something very large came out of the ground. It was a demonic level predator, the Arbiter. He told her that she was worthless and that attacking his minions was a terrible mistake. The arbitrator swung and told her that he was condemning her to death. Mu Yuan managed to dodge and landed on a tree post. Jumping away from the tree, she flew back to the Arbiter. She asked him that he couldn't keep up with her because he was huge. The Arbiter was clever and was able to push her back into the ground. Mu Yuan was covered in a lot of wounds. She recalled that the level of predator depends on the number of people eaten. After eating a hundred, he immediately gets a ghost level, but this time it's much stronger. Did he really eat a thousand people and reach the demonic level? The arbitrator repeated that right now he was condemning them all to death. Mu Yuan that he is not attacking her, but Su Xiaobai and Zhao Ping. The arbitrator said that no one can escape his justice, and she is no exception. He continued to unleash a large number of fast and powerful attacks on the ground. When the arbiter finished delivering his attacks, only craters remained around him. Someone big appeared in front of Mu Yuan. The referee told him that he was able to stop his shot. A ghost-level predator, Macho Rhinoceros, appeared in front of him. He was delighted. He felt pleasure from the strong and ferocious blows. 
this was just the thing for him. Mu Yuan thought that fortunately, the more you beat him, the more he gets excited, he still came in handy. She looked at them and saw that they were still alive and could not leave them. Su Xiaobai saved her once, and she will repay him for it. The macho rhinoceros played with his muscles and coquettishly asked him to hit him harder. He asked the arbiter to please him. The arbitrator did not understand what the little people did to him. The arbiter punched macho rhino in the face and told him that he would die too. The macho rhinoceros took pleasure in the arbiter's blows. He said that he was very pleased and loved this. Mu Yuan thought that macho rhinoceros is tough, but everything has its limit. At this rate, you can lose. Mu Yuan took out a card with the phoenix character from her pocket and decided that now it was their turn. The referee shouted at the rhinoceros to die already, and he wanted to hit the macho rhinoceros with a professional jab. Mu Yuan entered visual exchange mode. The referee stopped and said that he could not move. He realized that she mastered control techniques. The referee told her that at this level, it would not be possible to hold him back for more than three seconds. The blue hurricane that rushed towards the referee told him that three seconds would be enough to deal with him. The blue phoenix's stabbing blow pierced right through the arbiter. The referee said that he was not ready for this. These were his last words, after which he fell dead. Mu Yuan was happy that they won. The blue phoenix told her not to relax. He just fell, but did not die yet. Consciousness will return to him. The blue phoenix said that the arbitrator has a unique ability, exploitation. With its help, he can enslave creatures located on his territory, appropriate their life energy, even if they defeat him again, they will continue to supply him with energy. If they continue to fight here, victory will not come to them. It is best for them to move away, taking advantage of the opportunity. Mu Yen didn't like the idea that they would have to escape. Four days later, Su Xiaobai woke up abruptly with the word Pini, as he affectionately calls Zhao Ping. He did not understand what kind of place this was and how he got here. He began to look around and look for Pini. Pinny was surrounded by a green aura, and some animal was sitting next to her. It looked like he was treating her. It was a low-level predator, a white hedgehog. Su Xiaobai wondered what he was doing with Pinny. The hedgehog began to climb on Pinny, Su Xiaobai angrily said where he put his paws. Mu Yuan entered the cave and asked not to scare him. He was healing their wounds. Su Xiaobai asked her that she brought them here. She answered him so that he would not misunderstand her. She just did not want to remain in debt. If she saw them being devoured by predators, she would have nightmares. Su Xiaobai asked if it would be possible to cure her. Mu Yuan replied that she very much doubts it. Mu Yuan looked at Zhao Ping and said that people usually don't live with such injuries. But her pulse is fine, and she's never seen anything like it before. The early days are very serious. Even if she comes to her senses, she won't live long. Su Xiaobai was angry because she was injured while protecting him. He asked her if she could help him for Zhao Ping's sake. Su Xiaobai said that he must find the one behind all this. A month earlier, Long Ming said that he would spend the entire month learning how to use endless darkness. They have little time. He will tell everything he knows. The rest is up to him. He also added that they would train instead of sleeping and that he would be ready for it. Su Xiaobai told him that he understood. It was impossible for others to notice. Long Ming asked him, and he guessed why. Su Xiaobai chewed an apple and said that he became the subject of discussion when he first entered Protoss and used endless darkness. If they see him using it again, they will be considered a braggart, and this is certain death. Su Xiaobai told Long Ming that he would tell him something like to have fun to the fullest have fun from the heart, and do whatever comes into his head. He added that because of the marriage contract, Mu Yuan wanted him dead, and Long Ming knew that this would happen. Su Xiaobai added that if he just went to sign up for the city guard qualifying competition, his plan would be immediately seen through. Or maybe he won't live to see the day, who knows? Long Ming thought that since he was full of strength and ardor, he would take part for the sake of a beautiful woman. That's what he was counting on. Long Ming told him that for an 18-year-old, he is very perceptive. 
The final day of the first round of selection for the Protoss Guard has arrived. Su Xiaobai was hiding in the leaves of the trees. The one he is looking for does not follow the rules of the competition so as not to be exposed. Now is the last day of the qualifiers. If he wants to continue to remain in the shadows, he will send someone here to remove the body and evidence. He decided to set up an ambush here and would hope that he would get lucky and catch his man and find out who he was. A girl in a red dress came to the corpse. She was a weapons master, Mo Yan. Using the weapon, the Kusarigami launched a chain towards the corpse. The chain grabbed the corpse along its entire length and with great force pulled it out of the ground. When the corpse fell at her feet, she told him that he had been turned into a predator and he was still weak. She wanted to meet Su Xiaobai. Mo Yin noticed that lightning was flying towards her. Su Xiaobai said with a satisfied face that for the first time he tried to concentrate and release energy from his fingertip. It turned out to be not that difficult. He said that he had completely mastered its power. She blocked Su Xiaobai's attack. Mo Yang said that she has an SR rank ability. She can change the type of her weapon at will. Mo Yan told him that she was sent to remove the corpse, and he attacked from an ambush. It was resourceful. Su Xiaobai released his energy and asked her who had a grudge against him. Mo Yan thought that he had mastered Long Ming's ability in a few days and was able to release such a powerful electrical charge. She underestimated him. Mo Yan rushed off to attack Su Xiaobai and thought that this time she would carefully check what Su Xiaobai was capable of. Mo Yan changed the shield to Guandao Dragon Crescent shape. She swung at Su Xiaobai in the air and asked what he wants to know. Who is she working for? Mo Yan carried out the attack and told him to force her to tell. Su Xiaobai blocked her attack and said that since she was using a weapon, he would too. Mo Yan was shocked that he made a weapon out of lightning. Mo Yan used a smoke bomb to hide. Su Xiaobai looked around and tried to find her, but he realized that she had disappeared. Mo Yan hid in the bushes at a fairly safe distance and changed her melee weapon to a sniper rifle. Mo Yan is a killer with incredible accuracy. Acts without fear, without delay. Her smile hides her intentions. As soon as the victim relaxes, she will immediately shoot accurately in the head. Mo Yan took a good aim at Su Xiaobai's head and fired. Su Xiaobai heard the sound of a shot, stamped his feet, and the stone flew up. The bullet hit the stone and changed its trajectory. Su Xiaobai told her that he had found it. Mo Yan was extremely surprised that he changed the trajectory of the bullet to the pebbles. She couldn't believe that this was even possible. Su Xiaobai grabbed the zipper with both hands and said that he knows how to face the sniper. Now it's his turn. Su Xiaobai swung the lightning and threw it at her. Mo Yan realized that much stronger than last time, she ordered the rifle to turn into a sacred shield. The shield saved her, but it broke. She was sad because she was a weapons master and there were no weapons left. She was overcome by hopelessness. She asked if this was a feeling of humiliation. Su Xiaobai is much stronger than her. Su Xiaobai walked towards her. Mo Yan told him what he was doing with the belt and what he was up to. Su Xiaobai unbuckled his belt and asked what she told him. What should he do there? He told her that since she didn't want to tell who she was working for, death would be an easy way out for her. Having thrown out the train, he said that the situation was wonderful. They were alone here, and it was so beautiful. If he does something wrong, she won't be offended. Mo Yan backed away and watched the belt fall to the ground. Su Xiaobai continued to say that his bodyguards say he is the best of men. In a brothel, girls cannot get enough of it. She will be satisfied. Mo Yan was embarrassed and thought that today she would not only be offended by the defeat, but would also be defamed. Mo Yan ordered him not to approach and asked him that he wanted to know who she was working for. She told him that she would tell him everything. Mo Yan said that he is the dean of the Academy of Sciences, Liu Jianyu. Su Xiaobai asked why he wanted to kill him. The Protoss throne shouldn't bother him. Mo Yang said that it is not about him, but about his endless darkness ability. Su Xiaobai squatted down and asked why he wanted to kill him because of her. Mo Yan answered him that this concerns the theory of its origin. The abilities and predators originate from a meteorite kept in the Academy of Sciences. 
The Dean used it to transform predator guards and create powerful warriors. But the experiment failed. They acquired the bodies of predators, but also adopted their bloodthirstiness. The transformation effect was unstable. Su Xiaobai told her that they sent one of them to kill him, and it was no wonder he lost. Mo Yan told him that the experiment was considered a failure, not because of bloodthirstiness, but because the power of the meteorite is imperfect and they could not obtain the ability. Su Xiaobai guessed that his ability could make the meteorite's power perfect. Mo Yang replied that he was right. The dean found two cores of light and darkness in him. She explained that the ability of light is radiation, and the ability of the core of darkness is absorption. If they are combined, the meteorite will gain full power. Mo Yang said that endless darkness is the core of the darkness that is inside Su Xiaobai. Mo Yang said that with the help of his darkness core, the dean would be able to create an artificial predator with a strong ability. He asked her why he needed it. Mo Yan told him that it was obviously to strengthen the Protoss guard and counter the many predators outside the city. Su Xiaobai thought that she really sincerely believed these lies. Su Xiaobai zipped up his fly and said that he had a friend who worked at the academy. He would need to make sure of her words. He warned that she had better not try to deceive him. Mo Yan thought that he was not going to kill her, even though she was a witness. She asked him that he was leaving. Su Xiaobai grinned at her and asked if she was against it or was she waiting for something to happen. Mo Yan saw a fist flying towards Su Xiaobai and shouted at him so that he could react. Su Xiaobai stopped the arbiter's fist with one hand. The referee did not understand how the little man stopped his blow after all. He had regained his strength. The arbitrator thought that maybe there was something wrong with the exploitation. Su Xiaobai said that it was not his fault and that he should not blame himself. Su Xiaobai activated the power of endless darkness absorption. The arbiter's power was dwindling. Mo Yan learned that this is endless darkness. The predator can't even hit him. Mo Yan noticed that not only the predator was weakening, but the plants around were also withering. Mo Yan fell in love with Su Xiaobai. She thought about how an entire area of forest had been depleted, which was amazing. He became stronger several times. Su Xiaobai got ready to leave and said that the last day of the qualifiers was about to end, and he couldn't waste time here, so he said goodbye to her. Mo Yan jumped up from the ground and said that he forced her to tell about the dean and how now she would return to him, he would kill her. He asked her what she was offering. Mo Yan said that she had nowhere to go and asked to take her with her. Count Dracula was informed that time was almost up. In the first round, out of 33 people, eight remained alive. Count Dracula was disappointed that so few people survived. The Nine Tails asked Count Dracula not to be upset because there was good news. She told him that in the territory chosen for the competition, three demon-level predators were destroyed. Count Dracula wondered who these three were. Nine Tails said that judging by her data, it should have been the Ice Soul Eater, Long Ming, the owner of the Hellfire ability, Ma Fugi, and also Su Xiaobai with Endless Darkness. Count Dracula thought this was very entertaining and said that time was up and ordered her to return them. Su Xiaobai stood in front of the portal and asked Mo Yang that she had decided to go with him. Mu Yuan stood next to Zhao Ping. The portal opened in front of her and she realized that time was up and Su Xiaobai never returned. Mufugui was sitting on a mountain of predator corpses and gnawing on the hand of one of them. He was disappointed that it was all over, but he hadn't played enough yet. A special predator came to Mufugi. He said that he was lucky because another one came. The predator told him that behind him was a portal leading to Protoss. Mufugi asked, what if this portal leads to Protoss? The predator asked to let him pass through it. Mufugi had cuts all over his body. It was an illusion. Mufugi began to feel short of breath. He thought about how piercingly cold it was. At the beginning, he even began to choke. He looked at him and did not understand what he was. Demon-level predator. He realized that no. Demonic-level predators grow larger depending on the number of people they eat. And this one is similar in physique to a human, 
Is he really a legendary spiritual level predator? Mufugui broke his bracelets and realized that if he was allowed into the portal, it would be difficult to imagine the consequences. The tattoos that were under the bracelets began to light up. Mufugui's palms were covered in flames. He told the predator that this would subdue him in no time. The predator told him that it was not bad for a boy. Mufugi activated the dragon flame stream and sent it towards the spirit level predator. After the stream of dragon flame, only a hot path remained that stretched for several tens of meters. Mufugi was happy that that was all. He said that this is his strongest ability. No matter who he fights, this move will turn them into ashes. Mufugi was surrounded by a blue mist. He did not understand where it came from. The fog began to penetrate his body. When the mist completely penetrated his body, he opened his eyes. It was no longer Mufugi. Mufugui came out of the portal and saw how everyone who was alive was looking at the hologram of Count Dracula. Count Dracula congratulated everyone on passing the first round, the survival test. He asked them not to rejoice ahead of time. The tests of the second round will be much more difficult. The remaining eight people will compete in a knockout competition, only two of whom will become Protoss guards. They will be given one month to rest. Mufugui, possessed by the predator, listened to what Count Dracula was saying. Count Dracula said that when the time comes, the whole city will gather to watch their fight. Su Xiaobai thought that it was only one month. He wondered if Pinny would have time to recover. Mo Yan looked at Zhao Ping with envy that she was clinging so tightly to Su Xiaobai. Count Dracula finally said that they had already been assigned to pairs, and he wished everyone good luck. The remaining participants were surprised that they would not draw lots. Mu Yuan will fight against Zhao Ping. She understood that Zhao Ping was seriously injured, and defeating her would not do her any honor. But in the semifinals, she will be against Su Xiaobai. It seems to her that he has become stronger, but he cannot stand against her. Mu Yuan became embarrassed and turned to look at Su Xiaobai and thought that if she suddenly lost, then she would have to. Su Xiaobai stood with a stony face and picked his nose. He asked, What is it? Mu Yuan turned around sharply and said that he was watching her. She had only one thought in her head, that he was picking his nose in front of everyone. Su Xiaobai thought that she was angry. Long Ming looked at Mufugi and thought that he was in the same block with him, but his energy was not the same as before. Possessed Mufugi felt this scent calling to him. He left the arena and stood on the edge of the cliff. He thought that for exactly ten years he had searched every corner of the continent, but he was nowhere to be found. But the only place he wasn't was Protoss. He realized that the meteorite was really here. The source of the origin of predators and abilities is the gift of light. If he acquires it, he will surpass the spiritual level and achieve perfection, and he will become the ruler of this world. The next day, Protoss Central Hospital. The doctor said that they had done everything they could, but Zhao Ping's condition was not improving, and there was nothing they could do to help. Su Xiaobai asked, Did he really do everything he could? But he doubts it. Wang Xu and Lan Qin were ready to kill the doctor. The doctor said that they were robbers and asked them to calm down. Li Xin stood behind them and asked them to leave the doctor alone. The doctor sighed with relief. Li Xin said that there is one person who can help her. Wang Xu asked who he was and said that she would bring him to Zhao Ping. Li Xin said that this is impossible. Lan Qing asked how strong this person is. Wang Xiu did not believe that some doctor was stronger than her. Li Xin said that he is not a doctor, an S-rank guard of the second squad, the strongest person in Protoss at the moment. Li Xin said that his mind power is perfect. If he agrees to cure her, she will surely be healed. She was sorry that he retired many years ago and disappeared without a trace. They tried to find him, but to no avail. Mo Yan said that he is a master of mind flow control. An S, rank Protoss guard of the second squad, age 56 years old, height 188 centimeters. She said that his ability was the most ordinary, N rank, 
but he perfected it and became a master. After Longming's death, he could have ruled Protoss, but he was never interested in power. He voluntarily gave up the right to rule Protoss, so the right to rule passed to Count Dracula from the Third Detachment. Now he lives on the top of a snowy mountain, far from everyone. Li Xin asked how she knew so much. Wang Xiu said that it was about Zhao Ping's life. Why should they believe her? Mo Yan said that the dean has his own secret informants, so he knows everything about the guards. And now she is with Su Xiaobai, and at the same time with them. She has no reason to lie to them. Mo Yan said that his character is strange. Whether he will agree to save Zhao Ping is unclear, Su Xiaobai said, since he is a master of mind flow control, that means. He would take Zhao Ping to the mountains and find him for her sake. He will grab any opportunity. Su Xiaobai carried Zhao Hing to the top of the sacred mountain. When they arrived, he saw a mansion and a white hedgehog who was making a snowman. When the white hedgehog saw him, he tried to run away. Su Xiaobai ran after him. He told him where he was going. He told him after him that it seemed they had already met. Su Xiaobai said that he was Mu Yuan's pet. And this seems to be the home of a master of mind flow control. Su Xiaobai asked him what he was doing here. Someone came around the corner of the house and said that she had broken into his place without an invitation and was also hurting his pet. S. Rank Protoss Guard, the second squad master of mind flow control, Mu Xia came out to him. He called Su Xiaobai an arrogant brat. Mu Xia warned him that he did not belong here. Su Xiaobai noticed that he was strong. The snow melts as soon as it touches it, as if he is surrounded by a protective mantle. Next to him, anything will dissolve like snow. He was amazing to him, and he realized that in front of him was the strongest Protos man. Mu Yuan came after Mu Xia and asked her father that who he was talking to and they had guests. Mu Xia replied that Su Xiaobai had come to them. Mu Wen asked why Su Xiaobai came to her house. Su Xiaobai was in a stupor and asked that this is her house and he is her father. Su Xiaobai said that he understood that his arrival was reckless, but this was a forced necessity. He asked them to understand him. Zhao Ping was seriously injured. In all of Protoss, only he, Mr. Mu, was able to help her. Mu Yuan thought that he came all this way for her sake. Mu Xia listened to him silently. Su Xiaobai said that he would pay any price. He asked to cure her with the ability that Mu Xia possesses. Mu Xia said that he refuses to treat her. Mu Yuan knew that his answer would be so obvious. Su Xiaobai asked for the reason. Su Xiaobai asked that Mu Xia's strength will suffer if he helps her. Mu Xia answered him that saving her was easy, but they were nobody to him. Why help him? Mu Xia explained that if he helps them, everyone will start asking for help, but he doesn't need it. Mu Yuan asked if she asked him, would he help her? Ma Bu Yuan explained that Zhao Ping is her opponent in the next round. She doesn't want others to think her victory is undeserved. Mu Xia didn't understand why Mu Yuan was on their side. Mu Xia explained that during the treatment, his ability would cause cell regeneration. Because of this, her temperature will rise greatly. To do this, you need to undress her. He asked Yuan to help with this. Mu Xia activated his ability and a blue aura appeared around his two fingers. He ordered her to comply. Mu Xia touched the back of Zhao Ping's head to take control of her body. Mu Xia learned that Zhao Ping was gifted. Su Xiaobai was embarrassed and thought that Mr. Mu Xia was actually treating Zhao Ping. Mu Yuan told him not to peek. Zhao Ping opened her eyes and didn't understand what was happening. She feels so hot like she's on fire, but she feels so light. Zhou Ping noticed that she was not wearing clothes. She screamed, Mu Yuan and Su Xiaobai ran into the room. Su Xiaobai blushed and turned away so as not to look at Zhao Ping. She asked what they did to her. Mu Xia said that she seemed better already. Su Xiaobai thanked Mr. Mu Xia for his help. Mu Yuan said that this is Su Xiaobai's room, and Zhao Ping will be in the next room. Su Xiaobai was happy that everything had finally settled with Zhao Ping and could now have a good rest. Su Xiaobai thanked Mu Yuan for his help. Mu Yuan asked that Zhao Ping was just a bodyguard. Was it worth the effort? 
Mu Yen said that even she could not get here without the help of the phoenix, and he walked all the way, carrying her on his back. If a snowstorm had started, he could have died. He risked his future place on the Protoss throne for her. She wondered if it was worth it. Su Xiaobai told her that it was quite possible. Zhao Ping is not just a bodyguard. She is his friend. He said that he once had several close friends, but they all abandoned him. Then he realized that those who care about him will always be on his side, even if the whole world turns against him. She risked her life for him, and he did the same for her. Mu Yuan turned around abruptly and began to leave the room and told him to rest until Zhao Ping fully recovered, after which she would help them go down to the foot of the mountain. Su Xiaobai realized that Mu Yuan was jealous. Zhao Ping stood on the balcony and looked at the snow-capped mountains. She didn't think that her master would do so much for her. As she looks at the snowy landscape, she remembers how he carried her. Musha said that the wind was strong and asked if she was afraid of catching a cold. Zhao Ping asked Mr. Mu that he was still awake. He told her that he couldn't sleep and decided to drink tea with milk. Pin thought that he could make him fat. Musha asked if she knew about the gifted ones. Musia explained that anyone who is illuminated by a meteorite can gain one ability, but there is a tiny chance that there will be two abilities. Such people are called gifted. Musha said that she was the second such person in his memory. Zhao Ping said that he had guessed it after all. He told her that with her injuries, a commoner would probably have died, but she was able to survive. Musia asked her that one of her abilities grants immortality. Zhu Ping said that the ability is called paragenesis. She cannot die while the one connected to her is alive. But at this time, she is in agony. Musha said that this is amazing. He wondered who he was. Zhao Ping said that the ability itself chooses who will become it. They are connected to her. She only recently realized this. Zhou Ping told him that since he saved her, she will answer and hopes that this will remain between them. Musia told her not to worry. She said that she would have a request for him. She doesn't know how he will feel about this. She asked to become her master's mentor. Musha said that he was tired of teaching and was too busy. She apologized and said that she hadn't thought about it. Musia said that he did not want to teach him, but considering the journey he had come here, he would do him a favor. Musha and Su Xiaobai were flying on a blue phoenix. Su Xiaobai asked where they were going. Musha asked that he had not yet been illuminated by the meteorite. Musha explained to him that there are many people in Protoss with abilities, often similar, and based on rarity, they are divided into ranks, of which there are only five, N, R, S, R, S, S, R, U, R. Musha said that he has two abilities, U, R, rank Endless Darkness, and S, S, R, rank Clap of Thunder but they are not innate to him. Su Xiaobai thought that he knew so much about his abilities. Mu Xia looked at him and said that today he will find his own. Su Xiaobai. I realized that they were heading to the Academy of Sciences just when he would be able to find out more about the Dean. When they arrived at the Academy of Sciences, they were stopped by the Academy's guards and asked what they needed. Mu Xia said that he had not been in society for a long time, People no longer remembered him. Su Xiaobai said that they do not understand who they are dealing with. The guard asked what they were whispering about. If they don't need anything, then let them get out of here. The academy is not a place for walking. The guards took off and did not understand what it was. Their body did not obey them. They understood that it was his doing, but he did nothing. Su Xiaobai thought that was true. Mr. Mu just stands there even though his body is motionless. But the power of the mind, as if alive, filled the space. He realized that it was not surprising that the snow did not touch him. That was the point. An old man with a cane came out to them and said that this dense, unique aura could belong to only one person. The old man said that Mr. Mu was somewhat uninterested in anything that was happening in the city. He asked why they came. This old man was an S-rank Protoss guard of the 9th Division, Liu Jianli. Musia told him that his friend still had not awakened his ability. He thought Dean Liu could help with this. Su Xiaobai thought that this blind man was the Dean. The Dean asked where his friend came from. 
He has been living away from everyone for many years. Musha told him not to underestimate his charisma. He told Su Xiaobai to say hello to the dean. The dean was thinking about how he managed to meet Musia. This boy killed Li and kidnapped Mo Yan. Su Xiaobai must know that he was chasing him because of the Darkness Corps. Who would have thought that he himself would come to him? Su Xiaobai told him that he heard that they have a meteorite that can awaken the ability. The dean thought that Mu Xia was supporting him. It would not be easy to deal with him. Su Xiaobai asked to show him the meteorite. The dean said he couldn't. Every use of the meteorite had to be approved by Count Dracula. He has no right to personally dispose of it. The dean told him that since he was Mr. Mu's friend, he could put in a good word for him with the count. Su Xiaobai realized that he was talking nonsense and simply did not want him to gain the ability. Su Xiaobai thought that since he doesn't want it in a good way, it means it will be in a bad way. Mu Xia was faster than Su Xiaobai, and he wanted to understand what he was up to. Mu Xia ordered to let them through and said, he won't contradict him. Dean Lu felt such power emanating from him that it took his breath away. His reason tells him not to resist this man. Dean Lu thaws, then asks them to follow him. Mu Xia thanked him for his understanding. Mu Xia asked the dean if they were going the right way. The dean told them not to worry. Although he was blind, he remembered the way. He knows every corner of the academy like the back of his hand. Su Xiaobai followed everyone and thought that the security system here was impressive. They had already completed four posts, and before each one, they required the presence of a dean. They wouldn't have made it without him. In addition, he felt that the closer the meteorite, the more endless darkness reacted to it. When they arrived, the dean told them they were there. He explained that the meteorite was behind this door. As they entered, they listened to his instructions. Mu Xia told him not to hesitate and opened the doors. When they went inside, Mu Xia asked if this was the source of the abilities because he was seeing it for the first time. He examined the meteorite and said that it seemed nothing special. Mu Xia asked Su Xiaobai, Is he listening to him? He told him everything, so what's the problem? The dean thought that light and darkness were whole in the beginning, attracting each other. When Su Xiaobai comes into close contact with the light core, it may react. If Su Xiaobai loses himself, the meteorite will merge with him. And when his power is restored over time, Dean will be able to fulfill his dream and create an army of predators with abilities. All this is thanks to Mu Xia. He himself brought him the core of darkness. Mu Xia started beating Su Xiaobai to make him come to his senses. He told him to stop hanging in the clouds and listen to his elders. When Mu Xia finished with Su Xiaobai, he hugged Dean Liu and asked if he could activate the meteorite now. The dean replied that of course he could. The dean activated the meteorite and it began to sparkle and glow yellow. The dean was wondering what ability he would receive. The dean wanted him to get the weakest N rank ability. The meteorite lit up with a bright light and it was all over. Musia asked what this was all about. The dean asked if he felt any changes. Su Xiaobai Said that apart from the fact that the bright light hurts his eyes, everything is the same as before. He doesn't feel any new ability. He asked the dean that he did not want Su Xiaobai to gain the ability, so in order to fool Mr. Mu, he led them to a fake meteorite. The dean started shouting at him and said that, how can he say that if he thinks to use the meteorite once, he will get the ability. The dean added that he had nothing to do with it. Su Xiaobai Said that he didn't feel anything. If he didn't mind Su Xiaobai getting the ability, then why did he lead them to fake it? The dean understood that he probably had a rare ability, and he says so as not to show it. Su Xiaobai Said that since he doesn't like them so much, they won't leave. He told Mu Xiu that he knew where they made excellent milk tea nearby and invited him to go have a drink. When they left, Mu Xia said that he only drinks with sugar. Su Xiaobai told him that no problem, he could also order coconut pudding and grass jelly. The dean thought he was a brat and insulted him, since he thinks if he is with Mu Xi, then he will not dare to kill him. The dean pulled a blade from her cane, and he thought 
that they had turned their backs on him. If he attacked now, even Musia would not have time to react. And he will kill him in front of Musia. Musha turned to the dean with a very angry face and said that he had already forgotten what it was like to cross his path. The dean hid the toast and asked for forgiveness. He said that he would not detain them any longer. Su Xiaobai saw that there was so much rage in his eyes. If the dean had not retreated, he would have already been dead. He looks harmless, but there is a lot of power hidden in him. He realized what the strongest Protoss man truly was. When they flew back home, Mu Xia drank the tea in one gulp. Su Xiaobai thought that he liked milk tea too much. Mu Xia turned to Su Xiaobai and said that now it was just the two of them and asked him to look at his awakened ability. Su Xiaobai told him that nothing could be hidden from him. Su Xiaobai explained that he didn't want the dean to know what ability he had, so he fooled him. It had just awakened, and he hadn't tried to use it yet, so he didn't know if it would work. Musha told him there was nothing wrong and told him not to move. He would take a look himself. Musha was transported into Su Xiaobai's mind and realized that his new ability was connected to an evil spirit. He realized that this ability to control evil spirits was extremely rare. He wondered what rank it was. It's hard for him to say yet. It depends on the rank of the spirit. Musha sensed this spirit. The spirit came to him, and he thought that this spirit was huge and evil came from it. Su Xiaobai stood motionless and thought how long he could not move. He was already tired of standing. Musha opened her eyes and said that he was lucky. Su Xiaobai asked about some terrifying ability, or the meteorite gave him the gift of light. Musha said that he was daydreaming, because the gift of light is the greatest treasure of the Protoss. But his ability is also extremely rare, not only strong, but also associated with evil spirits. So he stuck around and taught him a little lesson. Su Xiaobai asked what kind of ability this is. Musha said that she has an SSR rank and is called Spirit Ashura. Su Xiaobai said that Asura Spirit is some kind of simple name. Musia said that it is not simple but very chic. Musia saw that there were still balls at the bottom. Musha clarified that this spirit is extremely strong, as are his thoughts, and if he resorts to his help, he can rebel against him. Musha recommended not to use it unless absolutely necessary. A month has passed since Su Xiaobai awakened a new ability. Today, all Protossians climb the sacred mountain to enter the arena. After all, this is the most important day of the year. But not only because of the final competitions. What is more important is that S-rank Protoss guards will be present here. The viewer saw Count Dracula and Miss Wu Yue. This is the first time she sees them live, previously only on TV. The guy said that many S-rank and A-rank guards would gather here. Wu Yi told the Count that there was no need for the mind to come so early after all. He is the most important person in Protoss, making people wait for him such an appearance at the time of his status. The Count answered her that he likes to wait. This reminds him of waiting for the moon to emerge from the clouds. The Count told her that their participants are like the moon, and he hopes they will not deceive his hopes. The Count felt that someone was sitting upstairs. He noticed that it was difficult to remain still while sitting on the canopy. The Count walked through the canopy and said that he had guessed that it was him, Mr. Mu. The Count asked that he was not indifferent to this kind of event. The Count assumed it was either because his daughter was participating and he specially came to watch the competition. Musha said not really. He said that today there is a discount on tea and they also have a new product, giant pearl milk tea. He invited the Count to try the tea. The Count said he would abstain. He explained that sugar accelerates aging. Musia told him that he was no longer young, so why worry about appearance? He advised him to live for today and enjoy it. P. S. Count Dracula is 56 years old. He and Musia are the same age. A woman came to their podium and asked what they were talking about. Wu Yua thought why she came here. Having not heard an answer, she told them that they were really discussing who, besides her son, would become the new guard. This woman was the leader of the Milky Way faction, 
an S-rank Protoss guard, the 10th Division, Archangel Long Yan. Wu Yu asked why she is so confident in Long Weiyang. Wu Yu said that she didn't know how her presence would affect him. Long Yan replied that she was his mother and had simply come to support her son. How might this affect? Wu Yue said what she thinks if he sees the one who left him with his father. Wu Yu did not finish, because Long Yan interrupted her and ordered her to hold her tongue. Long Yan told her that who was she to judge her? Wu Ye told her that she was just reminding her. The two girls listened to them quarrel and felt awkward. The girl with black hair asked why Long Yan and Wu Yue were arguing. She answered with popcorn that she didn't know for sure, but there were unflattering rumors about Long Yan. She said that Long Yan abandoned her child and seriously ill husband to become the leader of some faction. Many people call her corrupt. The girl also whispered in her friend's ear that Long Yan doesn't seem to have any abilities. She received S rank with the help of Long Ming. The blonde girl said that she felt sorry for Wei Yang. She said that he is so handsome. Why does he need such a mother? A guy approached the girls and asked why they called him handsome. This guy is an S rank Protoss guard. The seventh squad is the personification of the seven deadly sins, Feng Mian. He used his ability on the blonde girl. She didn't understand what this feeling was. Her heart was beating faster. She was getting hotter. She couldn't control herself. All sorts of unnecessary thoughts arose in her head. And it was very awkward. She could not contain herself and asked someone to help. Feng Mian said that she is a lustful girl. Someone told him that he was acting very low. Feng Mian recognized her and asked Li Su that she also wants to feel real pleasure. Feng Mian tried to use his ability on her, but she said that he had already tried it many times, but still didn't understand that it wouldn't work on her. This girl was an S-rank Protoss guard, 6th Division, Paladin Li Sa. She ordered him to let her go, and if this happened again, she would sue him. Feng Mian snapped his fingers to cancel the ability on the girl. He wondered why his technique didn't work for her. He asked himself, that she had never fantasized about such things? Lisa asked what he was whispering there. Feng Mian told her that he simply admired her beauty. Lisa turned away and told him to shut up. Feng Mian told her that she was embarrassed by his words. An hour later, Wu Ye announced the start of the qualifying competition. Wu Yu asked all the participants to enter the arena. The crowd cheered them on, wished them luck, and to try their best. Wang Xiu shouted at Su Xiaobai to let her deal with them. Mo Yan wished him good luck. Wang Xiu shouted to him that if he lost, he might not return home. Su Xiaobai didn't understand what was wrong with them. Su Xiaobai told Zhao Ping that he didn't see Li Xin and asked why she didn't come. Zhao Ping said that she couldn't come because she was on duty at the academy. Su Xiaobai realized that the dean knew that she was his friend and therefore detained her at work. Su Xiaobai thought about what this damn old man thinks. Because of this, he will be less collected. Long Yan saw Wei Yang. She thought that his mother was here and she missed her very much. Wei Yang noticed her and looked in her direction. Long Yan saw that he looked at her. She thought that he might have already forgiven her. Long Yan wished him good luck and shouted that she loved him. Wei Yang turned away from her and remained silent. Wu Yu announced the conditions for winning the competition and said that they were quite simple. First, the opponent must either fall unconscious or be immobilized for ten seconds. Secondly, he must admit defeat. Finally, after this, the results will be announced. Wu Yi warned that if there was a threat to the participant's life, she would interrupt the fight. She asked that everyone understood everything. Su Xiaobai yawned and said, that's clear. He asked, what can we start already? Zhao Ping noticed that Su Xiaobai looked tired. She assumed that he did not get enough sleep. Musha wondered if Su Xiaobai really didn't listen to his advice. Wu Yu asked the participants to leave the arena. She announced that the first battle in the qualifying competition for the Protoss Guard would take place between the owner of the Endless Darkness technique, Su Xiaobai, and the warrior Kolake. Su Xiaobai and the Kolake warrior stood and looked at each other. The boy said to his mother, howling, that this guy in the raincoat was so handsome. I asked him how strong he was. 
Mom told him that he was a frequent guest at these qualifiers. She said that among ordinary people, he is the strongest. Kolek said that he has been taking part in the qualifiers for exactly five years, every time he faces a very strong newcomer as his opponent. He said that he thought this time he would be defeated by the newly minted prodigy, Long Weiyan. And strangely enough, God sent him Su Xiaobai's rivals. He told him that his ability would overcome his endless darkness and Su Xiaobai could not defeat him. Su Xiaobai told him that what made him think that only endless darkness would be used. Kolake told him, what if Su Xiaobai absorbs energy? Kolake told Su Xiaobai that he had not had this ability for a long time and he was an amateur, but he is battle-hardened. After these words, Kolake ran to attack Su Xiaobai. Kolak disappeared. The crowd shouted that this was the power of Kolak, R rank flying dragon ability. Kolaka was running around Su Xiaobai. The naked eye couldn't keep up with him. His speed was abnormal. Kolaki thought that there were two ways to absorb energy with endless darkness. Either when the enemy was dead or unconscious, or you need to catch him. And he is so fast that you can't grab him. All he had to do was wait for Su Xiaobai to expose himself and attack. Then victory would be his. Kolak noticed that Su Xiaobai began to yawn and became distracted. He realized that this was the most opportune moment to strike. Su Xiaobai noticed him. Kolaki immediately jumped back. The spectators did not understand why he did not attack. They thought he had succumbed to a newbie. One of the spectators said that this was stupidity and that it was a great opportunity for him to become a guard. They didn't understand why he should retreat and what happened. Kolek's face was horrified. He thought that he almost died from fear. For just a moment, he seemed to be surrounded by a thousand eyes, piercing right through him. He didn't understand, did he imagine it? Kolake thought that Su Xiaobai looked quite ordinary. So where did Kolake's fear come from? Su Xiaobai told him that he seemed to want to defeat him and asked why he folded. Kolake's fans shouted at him not to be a coward and not to give in to the newcomer. They only came to see him become a guard. He understood that the audience was very excited. If he surrenders, his image as a brave man will be destroyed. All his fans will turn their backs on Kolek. He decided that he needed to take a risk. Kolake said that he saved his trump card for Long Wei Yang and Mafugi, but so be it. He will show it to Su Xiaobai. The self confident Su Xiaobai told him not to bother him and quickly show his trump card. Kolake prepared himself and said that before he could blink, he would destroy him. Kolake activated supersonic bounces. Stones flew throughout the arena and he jumped away from them. Kolake understood that the disadvantage of this technique is that the stones will crumble if you overdo it. But this technique is excellent. Kolake chose the moment to hit Su Xiaobai and thought that now everything would be over. Su Xiaobai slapped Kolake once and told him that he had been waiting for a long time for Kolake to jump. Kolak thought that this was already the sixth time. The spectators were shocked that he defeated Kolake with one blow and did not even use endless darkness. Su Xiaobai said that he forgot to tell him that he reached B rank last month. Su Xiaobai yawned and left the arena. Wu Yue announced that Su Xiaobai won the first fight. Musha noticed that he was depressed, barely walking and hardly noticeable. But this was an indication that Asura would soon rebel. Musia realized that this kid could not resist the temptation to use him. Wang Xiu said that he did a great job and now they are waiting for a fight between Zhao Ping and Mu Yuan, the daughter-in-law of their owner. The head of the Iroquois, Liu Junqing, said that now it was the turn of Mr. Mu's daughter and Su Xiaobai's bodyguard. He noted that both were very beautiful. The owner of the wind sword, Lin Yiheng, asked Junqing who he thought had a better chance of winning. Junqing said that it was difficult for him to say their chances are equal. Mu Yuan asked not to do her any favors just because her father helped Zhao Ping. Pin told her that, of course. Zhao Ping said that she would fight with her at full strength. Zhao Ping thought about being a bodyguard, but often did not give it her all. But Su Xiaobai boldly goes into battle when they are in danger. 
He helps her when she is in trouble. He protects her when she herself cannot. It was he who carried her to the top of the mountain when she needed help. Zhao Ping wants to prove to her master that she is worthy of being his bodyguard. Mu Yuan asked to show her what she was capable of in order to find out which of them was stronger. As soon as the fight began, Zhao Ping lifted a huge boulder. Mu Yuan was clearly not ready for this. The spectators were shocked and wondered if she had lifted almost all the earth from the arena area. Su Xiaobai had no idea how much strength she needed to hold such a huge piece of land. He thought that this was beyond her capabilities and she would not cope. Mu Xia thought that she had used all her strength, which meant she intended to finish with one blow. He understood that she wanted Su Xiaobai to see her win. Mu Xia knew that Yuan would be able to withstand such a blow. Mu Yuan realized that this was not a bluff. She had actually put all her strength into this technique. Yuan knew that although the area of the land was huge, with her speed, she would have time to evade. Zhao Ping applied a hundredfold increase in gravity to the arena. Mu Yuan realized that Zhao Ping had figured out her plan and increased the gravity of the earth so that Yuan could not move, and admitted defeat before the block fell. Mu Yuan shouted that no matter how hard she tried, she would never give up. A block fell into the arena. Fragments flew in all directions. The blow was very powerful. The block shattered into pieces. Everyone was wondering if they were even alive. Su Xiaobai was worried about Zhao Ping. Mu Xia was worried about Yuan. When the dust cleared, Mu Yuan stood up and shouted that she was pleased. Strong and fierce blows were just right. Mu Xia realized that she had teamed up with the macho rhinoceros. When united, she adopted both his strength characteristics and his quirk in the form of a strange character. Yuan screamed that she wanted more and to be hit again. The spectators' noses began to bleed. They were surprised that she had survived and was now provoking her rival. They didn't know that battles could be so exciting. Mu Yuan realized that her consciousness had returned and she was unharmed. She didn't expect gravity to return to normal. Otherwise, the macho rhinoceros would not have saved her. Yuan thought that Zhao Ping must have seen that she was not going to give up and allowed her to evade. Yan noticed that after everything, Zhao Ping had no strength left. Zhou Ping could no longer hold herself in the air and began to fall down. Su Xiaobai jumped and thought that he would not allow anything to happen to Zhao Ping. Su Xiaobai caught her and said that it was just a competition. She didn't need to risk her life. Pin apologized for this. Wu Yu said that since Zhao Ping could not fight any longer, the result of the round was obvious. Mo Yang said it was a pity because Pinny was close to winning. Wang Xu almost cried and said that she had been training for so long. Wu Yu wanted to announce the winner, but Yuan interrupted her. Mu Yuan said that she was giving up. It's hard for her to admit, but if Zhao Ping hadn't weakened gravity, she wouldn't have been able to cope and would have lost. Mu Xia was proud that she was his daughter. Su Xiaobai thought that Yuan preferred losing to an easy victory. He noted that she was very proud. Zhao Ping pulled Su Xiaobai's collar and asked, What did she win? He said yes. He praised her and said that she was very strong. Ping was very happy and hugged Su Xiaobai so tightly that he began to choke. When Yuan saw them hugging, she became furious and shouted at the two to control themselves. Wang Xu saw that their daughter-in-law was jealous. Lan Qing agreed with her. Mo Yan was jealous of them. She thought that hugging like this was sure to be very pleasant. Wu Yu announced that contestant Yuan admitted defeat, and the winner is Zhao Ping. She also announced that the competition would be postponed for an hour while work was carried out to restore the arena. She offered her sincere apologies to all viewers. Su Xiaobai told them that they both had done well, and there was no need for them to quarrel over competition. Yuan apologized to Su Xiaobai for dropping out at the very beginning and not fighting him as promised. Yen said that despite this, she had already realized that she was no match for him. Yuan added that she therefore no longer opposed him taking the throne, and she wanted to say something about the engagement, but didn't have time. Dean Lu came up to them and said that the boy was very successful with women. Su Xiaobai told him not to pretend that he had come to congratulate him on his victory. He still wouldn't believe it. The dean told him not to talk nonsense. He humiliated him several times, 
relying on Mu Xia being nearby. He asked him what they thought, that he would just leave it like that? Su Xiaobai thought that he, the old fox, still wants to get to his core of darkness, and at the same time belittle him in front of others. The dean took out a blade and said that he had already checked Mu Xia. He had gone to buy tea. They had a little time before he returned. He told him that now we will see who will protect him now. Yen said that he is a nasty old man and allows himself too much. After all, according to the contract, she is his daughter-in-law. Zhao Ping said that he is a member of their family and should not even think of harming him. The dean told them that he was sorry that Mu Xi was not here. He would have supported these kids. Su Xiaobai told him that Dean Lu was serious, but the choice of place was unfortunate. There are plenty of witnesses here. It would be unreasonable to kill him in front of them. This will disgrace the Protoss guards. Su Xiaobai asked him if he was sure that he needed it. He said that Count Dracula would bring him to justice. The dean told him that Count Dracula was only a deputy, not the king of Protoss, and it was not for him to judge him. Su Xiaobai felt that his energy had changed and he would still attack. Dean Lu attacked Su Xiaobai and told him that he was too young to teach him. Someone blocked Dean Lu's attack. At first he thought it was Paladin Li Sa, but he is not inferior to her in fencing art and she has no reason to stop him. He said that of all the Protoss swordsmen, besides Li Si, he did not remember anyone who could stop him. He asked who he was. She said that Su Xiaobai's bodyguard is Lan Qing. The dean remembered that she was one of Long Ming's bodyguards. He studied information about her, but still underestimated her strength. Wang Xiu said that they were looking for this blind man, and he himself came to them. Wang Xiu asked if he really thought that they would offend the owner. Mo Yan told him that for the sake of his selfish plans, he had already killed many innocents. And this time, she won't be on his side. They said that if they wanted to harm Su Xiaobai, he would have to go through them. Mu Yuan and Zhao Ping simultaneously said that they would not stand aside either. Dean Liu said that he is not afraid of anyone. For him, they are far from opponents who will die just like that. Following this, feeling his heart touching his shoulder, Dean Liu was surprised and said that it could only be him. Turning back, Dean Liu saw Mu Xia, and he told him that there is no need to be afraid of anyone. You just need to watch your words. Events are transferred outside the arena, into a small forest. In this forest sat Ma Fugui, who was called by his brother, Ma Zhao Kai, in a childish voice. He hadn't seen Fuguya for a month and couldn't find him. He thought he was learning a new deadly technique alone and wanted to wish him luck. The brother did not hear any response from Ma Fugui and thought that he had run out of money. He has never offended his little brother with money before, and perhaps this is why he is so taciturn. But then, sharply, Mafugi said that he did not know him, and he did not know how to behave in this case. Little brother was also surprised by the absence of the Hellfire Seal. He thought that it disappears only when Fugi is in mortal danger. Majao Kai also said that this ability is very cool. With one hand, you can inflict enormous damage on your opponent. It was for this purpose that he sought out the best blacksmith in Protoss to carefully seal his hellfire. The sealed state had no effect on the further fight against demon-level predators. Having removed this ability, he thought that he was preparing a new technique. He understood that it was he who would help defeat his rival from the heads of the Iroquois. But maybe it's not necessary. In case he harms the audience, think carefully. Majo Kai was unable to convince Mafugi, and once again strongly suggested that he reseal his ability. He was sure that she would be the one to bring victory. Mafugi was so displeased with his brother's prejudiced insistence that he willingly wanted to kill him. Majao Kai realized that something strange was happening to Mafugi. He had become too dangerous for him, so he should run away. The brother was very frightened and it was impossible to understand who was standing in front of him. Meanwhile, renovation work on the arena had already been completed, which meant that the competition had resumed. And so Mu Xia brought Dean Lu to watch the fights. Dean Lu grumbled for a long time. He said that he was blind and couldn't see anything. He didn't want to just disturb the youth. Despite all this grumbling, Mu Xia managed to persuade Lu. 
Hearing these conversations, Su Xiaobai, who was standing next to him, told Li Su that the old man had become like silk in the presence of Mr. Mu Xia. At this time, it was announced in the arena that there would now be a fight between the head of the Iroquois, Liu Qiongqing, and the owner of Hellfire, Ma Fugi. Looking into Fugi's eyes, Qiongqing told him that he knew many people who wanted to see him fight. Liu Qiongqing is not afraid of Fugi. He will not allow anyone to look down on him. Everyone wants to get his ability. Anyone will be shocked to see this ability. And then Chun King abruptly tore off his mohawk and said that it was he who was his main weapon. His hair grows very quickly. It can kill with its harshness and sharpness. Watching from above, Muxia told Dean Liu that using such an ability was a good weapon, to which the old man agreed. As soon as the battle began, in which Kyon King looked at Fugi with menacing eyes, he began to demonstrate his deadly technique. He began to tear off his Iroquois, throwing a serious dry barrage towards the enemy. In response, Mafugui quickly said that Cheong King talks too much. At that moment, he extended his hand and released fire towards the enemy. The fiery force engulfed Kunchen so much that he, shouting to the judge, decided to simply give up. Seeing all this from the outside, the viewer was surprised that Chongqing gave up after the first blow, that he did not expect anything less from him. The judge admitted Kunchen's defeat and announced that the winner of the battle was the owner of Hellfire, Ma Fugui. Next, the judge asked the next participants to enter the arena. They turned out to be the soul leader, Long Wei An and the owner of the Wind Sword, Lin Yi Heng. After the announcement, the judge couldn't figure out where Long Wei An was and why he hadn't come out yet. At this moment, outside the ring, Long Yan was thinking about how to tell Wei Yan that she wanted to book a table for dinner at a first class place in order to have a good time with him and celebrate his victory. She knew that he would be entering the arena now. This was a good opportunity for her to talk to him and build rapport. She was sure that Wei Yan was angry with her that her words would have a bad effect on his composure before the fight. Long Yan was very worried because he was about to leave, but she still could not figure out how to deal with this situation. All this time, Wei An stood behind the wall and looked at the family photo with wonderful memories. Looking out from behind the wall, he saw Long Yan and thought that maybe he should go out and say hello. After all, it's not difficult. With her back turned, Long Yan felt a touch on her body and the first thing she thought was that it was Wei Yang. Turning around, she saw that it was Jin Zhongshan, who said that she was only thinking about this ungrateful child. He asked why she was being so intrusive, because he didn't want to pay attention to her. Looking with a willing glance, he added that he was the one who could keep her company. Long Yan said that he was still too young and took it to heart, because he had no right to talk to her like that. Although his father is her boss, she is far from a toy for him. In response, Zhongshan said that this old man would be gone in a couple of years anyway, and since she values her work, she should be more polite with him. She said that he is such a vile Zhongshan, and quite vile. Suddenly it began to snow in the palace. Zhongshan and Longyan could not understand where it was coming from. She tried to guess for a long time, but did not come to a final conclusion. It turned out to be Wei Yan himself who has the power of a freezing hurricane. Zhang Shun immediately realized that this kid could attack him, after which a huge wave of snow carried this Zhang Shun straight into the ring. Seeing him carried into the ring, Lin Yiheng guessed that it was someone from the Milky Way faction, and his family held control over the energy sources in Protoss. It was he who fought with Long Ming for the throne. Coming closer to him, Lin Yiheng also suggested that he was somehow beaten very simply. Perhaps Zhong Shunya turned out to be cowardly. He was inclined to believe that it was Wei An who did this. After that, Long Yang saw Wei An going somewhere, and she told him to wait. When he stopped, she said that she did not expect such an act from him. She was so glad that he stood up for her, she assumed that he had not stopped loving her yet. Long Wei Yang passed by and said that it was not true, he just stopped him from passing. The spectators were waiting for his appearance when he came out, they said that he was the son of an S-rank Protoss guard and the nephew of the former Protoss king Long Min. Everyone was waiting for his fight. His fans shouted to him that he was very handsome and they loved him and wished him good luck. 
the owner of the windsword, Lin Ye Hen, thought that he was popular. As soon as he appeared, the public became animated. Just think he's strong and handsome, but he still infuriates him. He thought that Long Wei Yang was not scary at all and had already figured out how to defeat him. Lin Ye Heng turned to the judge and said that he had a complaint. He said that Long Wei Yang beat up an innocent spectator, and he, by the way, is the son of the faction leader in charge of energy resources. This behavior on his part is a violation of the principles of the guards who protect their people. Lin Ye Heng said that he should be disqualified. The fans shouted that he was worthless. How could he expect to win like that? Lin Yi Heng thought that let them complain as much as they want. It covers half of the costs of maintaining guards. Dracula would not dare Radio Wayan to turn a blind eye to this. He believed that the round was his. Count Dracula said that he personally did not see Wei Yang beat anyone. He asked Wu Yue if she had seen anything. Wu Yue said she didn't see it. Count Dracula ordered Jin Zhongshun to be taken to the hospital. The competition continues. Lin Yi Heng thought that Count Dracula had gone crazy. For his sake, I'm ready to ruin my relationship with my sponsor. Long Wei Yang said that since everything was settled, they would start, and since he was using a weapon, Long Wei Yang will be there too, because it's fair. Lin Yi Heng did not have time to gather himself and asked to wait. Long Wei Yang did not listen to him and ended the fight with one blow. Long Yan thought about how he had grown up so much and that she was proud of him. The guys heard that the semi-finals of the competition will begin soon. The first battle will take place between the owner of Endless Darkness, Su Xiaobai, and the Blessed Daughter, Zhao Ping. Wu Yue asked the participants to get ready. Su Xiaobai said that they were next and asked if she was ready. Pin giggled and told the owner not to worry. Pin raised her hand and said she was giving up the fight. Zhao Ping explained that they are not rivals. Besides, she had already spent all her strength in the first battle and would not be able to fight now. Su Xiaobai said that a month ago, when the opponents were announced, she decided that they would do this. Zhao Ping was embarrassed and said that nothing could be hidden from him. She thought that there could only be two guards. She wanted to provide the owner with a guarantee of reaching the finals. Now he will definitely become a guard. Victory or defeat in the final itself does not mean anything, since only the strongest individual will be determined there. Wu Yi announced that participant Zhao Ping withdrew from the fight, Su Xiaobai will advance to the finals. She explained that he was also being promoted to Protoas Guard. The rating would be announced after the final competition. Warrior Kalak thought that why is he so lucky? Such a beautiful girl gave in to him. He's about to cry. The next battle will take place between the Soul Eater, Long Waiyan, and the owner of Hellfire, Ma Fu Gui. The winner of this round will become the guard. Long Waiyang looked at Ma Fu Gui and thought about what he was doing and why he was not attacking him. Ma Fu Gui summoned a large pillar of flame. At the end of this flame appeared the form of a dragon. Su Xiaobai was surprised that his ability had taken shape. Count Dracula thought that it was not easy for a beginner to release so much energy. Long Wei Yang thought about starting with a trump card, self-confident. Ma Fu Gui made a dragon form from the hellfire and is ready to attack Long Wei Yang. The predator thought that such power was hidden in this body and why seal it. The spectators were surprised by this power and were afraid that the flame would spread to them. Wu Yu said that Ma Fu Gui could harm the spectators and asked what she could do to stop the fight. The Count said there was no need. Ma Fu Gui attacked with his dragon breath ability. Long Wei Yang told him not to underestimate him. Long Wei Yang placed an ice barrier in front of himself. The predator inside Ma Fu Gui asked him that he thought he could stop him with this, and even if he didn't even dream of it. After the explosion, Long Wei Yang coughed. The possessed Ma Fu Gui was surprised that he was still alive. Long Wei Yang was burned and had almost no clothes left on him. Long Wei Yang told him that his strike would not be able to overcome the ice barrier. But besides this, he did not take into account two more things. Long Wei Yang said that firstly, because of the barrier, he could not see everything. Long Wei Yang's reflection began to crack. Long Wei Yang attacked him from behind and said that secondly, thanks to him, he had time to get behind him. 
Ma Fugi dodged at the last moment and said that he was not bad and he had underestimated him. Ma Fugi carried out a counterattack and was able to hit Long Wei Yang. Ma Fugi said that that was all. Long Wei Yang was furious and spat out the blood that appeared in his mouth due to the blow. Long Yan thought that things were bad, his gaze changed. But Wei Yang is very proud, and the fact that he was hit is unthinkable for him. Long Yan realized that Wei Yang was now furious. Wei Yang swung his scythe and said that he would not leave it so easily. Ma Fugui caught Long Wei Yang's attack and said that it was nothing to him. Long Wei Yang didn't understand how it was possible that he stopped the scythe with his bare hands. Long Wei Yang thinks that she is capable of this, only an S rank god. The predator was thinking that he attacked so suddenly that he had to rely on his own strength and he needed to be careful. You can't let others guess. There are guards everywhere here. If they notice something is wrong, he won't get out alive. Ma Xia began to suspect something. Possessed by the predator, Ma Fugai thought that he possessed him in order to get into the prosthesis. He seemed to him the strongest among the participants. Winning the competition is not his goal. But losing to the newcomer was also not part of his plans. Wang Xu noticed that they were both very strong. She doubted that Su Xiaobai would win if she fought either of them. Lisa thought that the semi-finalists were amazing and they both deserved to win. They exchanged blows and when both were exhausted, the predator thought that he did not expect this from him, but it was for the better. The predator realized that he couldn't squeeze more out of this body. If he surrenders, no one will suspect anything, and he can calmly go about his business. His relatives could not get into Protoss before because of his guards, which includes the strongest S-rank guards, of which there are ten in total. He looked around the arena and saw that six of them were here. In addition to Long Min who had died, there were three more missing. Since they are not present at such an important event, it means something happened. The predator realized that the gift of color is now hardly protected. He just has to wait for the right moment. He will admit defeat and will be able to escape unnoticed. Mafugui raised his hand and said that he was giving up because he had no strength left. Long Wei Yang was surprised that he was giving up. He thought it was a joke. He tried to dissuade him from this and asked that he could not do anything else. And did he really not have a trump card? The predator told him that since he survived that attack, he would not win. Long Wei Yang said that a person who is obsessed with fighting admits that he is a loser. This is so unlike him. The predator did not understand when people would understand that there is no point in trying if it is obvious that there is no chance. The predator turned around and left. Finally, he told Long Wei Yang that he admitted defeat, and Long Wei Yang got off easy, so don't pretend to be anything. Long Wei Yang thought that he behaved differently in the first round. Long Wei Yang thought this was very suspicious. Su Xiaobai and Mu Yuan listened to Wu Yue's announcement that Ma Fugi had admitted defeat, and Long Wei Yang was declared the winner. Two participants who have received the title of guard will compete in the finals. The final competition will begin soon. Zhao Ping thought that the final battle with Long Ming's nephew would be interesting. Su Xiaobai thought about Long Wei Yang helping him in the first round. He wondered why, if it was because of Long Ming. Possessed by the predator, Ma Fugi walked down the steps into the city. He noticed that someone was following him from the arena itself. He asked what he wanted. The man with the bag on his shoulder told him that he was not Ma Fugi and ordered him to identify himself. The predator asked how he realized that he was not Ma Fugi. He asked that they knew each other. The man replied that he was his mentor. His name is Ma Fei. He is an S-rank Protoss guard of the 8th Division. The predator said, that's it. He exposed him in the arena. The predator was in danger. The predator asked why he came alone. Was he really looking for death? Ma Fei slapped him in the face and told him not to talk nonsense. The predator did not understand who he was. He hits with all his might. But this is the body of his student. Ma Fei kicked the predator and said that he and Fugi had been through a lot together. Ma Fei hit him with such force that he flew down very quickly. Ma Fei landed after the predator. He caught his bag as if nothing had happened. Ma Fei picked him up by the leg and said that it didn't matter who he was. Ma Fei asked to leave Fugi's body, otherwise he would kill him. 
even if he continued to hide in it. The predator cleared his throat and asked if he was crazy. Ma Fei told him that this was not the first time he had heard this address to him. The predator activated his ability and ordered his release. Ma Fei disappeared, and the predator fell to the ground and hit his head. The predator was glad that he succeeded, although he doesn't know who he is, and it doesn't matter anymore, but in his prison. He will remain forever. The souls of the people he once devoured will gradually drain all his strength. The predator stood up and said that Ma Fei had delayed him a little, but he needed to hurry to get the gift of light while the finals of the competition were taking place. Long Weiyang said that Su Xiaobai has already become a guard, which means he has become closer to the throne, but let him not rejoice ahead of time. Uncle Long Ming was both a teacher and a close person to him. Long Wei Yang said that he wants to help him, but first he must show what he can do himself. Let him prove that he is worthy to take Long Ming's place. Su Xiaobai understood why he helped him back then, because I wanted to see for myself if he was suitable. Su Xiaobai released his power and told him to see what he could do. The sky was covered with dark clouds and black lightning struck in all directions. Long Wei Yang looked at Su Xiaobai and thought that it was breathtaking. He was wondering how he managed to make the lightning black. The audience did not understand what kind of terrifying atmosphere this was. They didn't know that Su Xiao Bai had such a strong ability. Warrior Kalake felt some strange feeling. He felt the same terrifying energy as in their fight. Liu Junqing said that they are both monsters. Dean Liu said that the energy is similar to Asura. He realized that Su Xiao Bai had awakened. The dean asked Mu Xia if they called him. Mu Xia understood that there could be no mistake. This was Asura. He told the dean that they did not call. He has no idea how Su Xiaobai managed to use this power. One thing was clear. He had combined two abilities. Su Xiaobai asked Long Wei Yang, What will he say now? Aren't you disappointed? Long Wei Yang told him that he was indeed special, besides his uncle's endless darkness. Obviously, he himself had the ability. Su Xiaobai told him not to take him out. A month ago, he was not a worthy opponent. Now everything is different. He won't be using endless darkness in the competition. Su Xiaobai rushed forward to hit Long Wei Yang. Su Xiaobai shouted and said that he would use his own technique. Long Wei Yang managed to raise the ice barrier. Su Xiaobai broke through the barrier and said that the technique was called spiritual lightning. Long Wei Yang jumped back from Su Xiaobai. He was thinking that in the first round, he was not that strong, and it was not yet clear what the effect of his technique was, in addition to feeling very anxious. Long Wei Yang noticed that Su Xiaobai still hit him with his spiritual lightning. Mo Yin said that now was the time to attack, but she didn't understand why he stopped. Lan Qing noticed that not only Su Xiaobai stopped, they both froze. Su Xiaobai said that that's all. He should have already guessed that his senses were under Su Xiaobai's control, and there was no point in continuing the fight. He suggested that he give up, because he could not win. Wu Yu asked Count Dracula that causing fear and controlling the enemy's senses is Asura's ability. The Count replied that she was right. Yue had a question. Aren't spirits usually used for summoning? So why didn't he summon Asura? After all, this is a great opportunity to demonstrate your strength in front of all the inhabitants of Protoss. The Count explained that Asura is an unusual spirit. Su Xiaobai does not have the strength to tame him. If he calls now, the damage will be colossal. Moreover, he can rebel against his master. Instilling fear is a passive ability, so the risk is minimal. Count Dracula said that by combining it with lightning, he enhanced the attack. One small wound is enough to ensure victory. The Count said what is the minimum effort and what is the result. He realized that Su Xiaobai was not stupid. Su Xiaobai yawned and thought that he refused to give up. He couldn't even move. He didn't understand what was the point of continuing to fight. Long Wei Yang told him that he had taken control of his senses. Why won't they be forced to admit defeat? You have to be so close-minded not to take advantage. Su Xiaobai got angry and said that he himself was narrow-minded. Long Wei Yang told him that if he lost now, it would only be because of his gentleness. 
Long Wei Yang used the glaciation technique and the entire arena was frozen, and Su Xiaobai's legs were also covered in ice. Su Xiaobai looked around the arena and saw that it was covered in ice. Su Xiaobai said how stubborn he is. He gave him a chance to just give up. Why does he refuse? Su Xiaobai did not expect that it would come to a fight, but he froze the entire arena just to immobilize him. Su Xiaobai completely forgot that he can't hear a word since he controls his senses. Long Wei Yang told Su Xiaobai that he was the first besides his uncle who was able to resist him. He recognizes his talent, but he missed something. Long Wei Yang told him that ice was his sixth sense. Su Xiaobai was shocked. Long Wei Yang explained to him that he froze the arena to know his location, not to immobilize him. Long Wei Yang told him to get ready. Long Wei Yang summoned his deadly ice weapon. Long Wei Yang summoned the sword Excalibur from the ice. Long Yan was thinking that Wei Yang had already received the position of guard. Why would he bring it to this point? She was worried that something might happen. What should she do then? Zhu Ping prayed to the gods and asked Su Xiaobai to be careful. She didn't want him to put himself in danger. Spectators said that this sword was huge and its cold chilled to the bones. No one knew that Excalibur was in Long Wayan's possession. Su Xiaobai admired his strength and said that he underestimated him. Su Xiaobai collected the black sphere in his right hand. He told Long Wei Yan that since he was fighting with his full strength, he would not give in. He was interested in who would defeat whom. Su Xiaobai collected a very large sphere and threw it towards Long Wei Yang. Su Xiaobai shouted to him that they will find out who is the strongest among them. Mu Yuan thought that their strength was equal and at this rate both could suffer. The black sphere and Excalibur exploded and shattered into pieces. The spectators were shocked. They did not understand what kind of power this was. They noticed something in the sky. Su Xiaobai began to absorb energy with the help of the endless darkness around him. Li Xin watched Su Xiaobai's fight through the TV at work. She said that he had been training day and night for the whole month. Now he was reaping the benefits of it. If he could defeat Long Weiyan, his guard rating would be very high. There was a strong blow that shook her thoroughly. Li Xin was indignant that all the popcorn was spilled. She thought that an earthquake had happened. Li Xin saw from the cameras how Ma Fugi killed the academy guards and went into the room to the meteorite. She recognized him because he was one of the participants in the competition. Mafugi stepped over the corpses of the guards and he felt that he was very close. Mafugi knocked down the door to the room where the meteorite was kept with one blow. Mafugui looked at the meteorite and thought that he had finally achieved his most cherished dream, the gift of light. With its help, he will overcome the spiritual level and become the crown of evolution. B. Rank Protoss Guard Commander-in-Chief Wu attacked Ma Fuguya with a sword and said that by order of the dean, access to this compartment is prohibited. Ma Fugui grabbed his face and slammed him into the wall. Ma Fugui asked him where he was going, and so as not to dare to distract him at such a moment. Li Xin watched all this through the cameras. She saw that he killed him instantly B, rank, for nothing. He came for the meteorite. If the commander-in-chief couldn't stop him, what could she do? She got a job here as a secretary just to bring Long Ming and Su Xiaobai to the dean. For the sake of business, he will not risk his life. She decided to pretend she didn't see anything. Long Wei Yang came to his senses. He was thinking that the time for the fight had already expired or Su Xiaobai had let go of control. Long Wei Yang saw that Su Xiaobai was absorbing energy. Long Wei Yang asked him about what he said that he would not use endless darkness and asked him to explain why he was doing this. Su Xiaobai said that this ability is passive. He himself can barely control it. Su Xiaobai said that he returned his feelings as compensation. Long Yan cursed this endless darkness. After destroying the sword, Wei Yan had no chance of victory. She understood that the endless darkness does not obey the will of the owner and absorbs the surrounding energy on its own. Su Xiaobai not only won the duel, but also became stronger, and Wei Yan weakened. Long Yan decided to leave because the fight was over and she could not see him lose. Thunder sounded. 
Dean Liu asked Mu Xia where the sound came from. Mu Xia said that it seems to be from his academy. The predator understood that everything was going exactly according to plan. S rank guards are about to arrive, but it will be too late. The predator thought about what he had been looking for for ten years. Now he could absorb the gift of light and surpass his current level. Li Xin formed a triangle with her fingers and said the word grab. Mafugui wanted to absorb the gift of light, but it disappeared. He looked towards the door and was upset that someone was using teleportation. He asked how this puppy survived. Li Xin said that she did not want to interfere in something that was not her own business, but as a Protoss resident, she could not stand by and watch the murder and theft of their greatest treasure. She won't allow it. Mafugi told her to stop chatting and asked where she teleported the gift of light. Li Xin that it is none of his business. The tentacles engulfed Li Xin all over her body. She had not seen such a technique used at the competition. She felt that something was wrong with his dark energy. She doesn't look human. The predator told her that he would give her five seconds if he didn't want to die from suffocation, then let him tell her where the core was. She asked if he thought threats would change anything. She understood what she was getting into. He will not kill her, because then he will not know where the gift of light is. Li Xin said that she placed a seal on the gift of light before teleporting. The barrier is blocking his connection with the outside world. Ma Fugui said that indeed. Now he does not feel the energy of the core. Li Xin warned that if he killed her, he might forget about the search. Ma Fugui said that she was smart for taking advantage of his weakness. He really can't kill her, he asked. What about torture? Ma Fugui began to strangle her with his tentacles. Li Xin screamed in pain. He asked her if there was a desire to tell. After catching her breath, she told him that he was where he would never be able to find him. Lan Cheng rushed towards the Academy of Sciences. She understood that the light came from there and Li Xin was now on duty. She hoped that everything would work out. She noticed that she and Dean Liu were heading to the Academy of Sciences. Count Dracula and two S-rank guards also arrived. She realized that something serious had happened. Lan King ran to the academy. There were corpses everywhere, and Li Xin's body was not among them. She came to the place where the meteorite was. Dean Liu was cowardly and worried that his core, his gift of light. Lan Qing thought that the old man was crazy about the campaign. Lan Qing looked around the room and saw Ma Fugi's body with a hole in his stomach. Lan Qing jumped down to Ma Fugi's body. She was thinking that he had quietly left after his fight to sneak here. He would be in trouble. But from what she sees, she can tell it's strange that the wound looks like he did it to himself. She didn't understand that he wanted to hide something. She sat him down and asked him to do a favor, and if he was still alive, then let her know. Ma Fugui began to cough up blood. She was glad that he was breathing. Dean Liu swung his blade and said that he must know where Li Xin is, and he must know where his core is. Dean Liu swung his blade again and said that it was important for him to know where it had gone, and asked for an answer to his question as quickly as possible. In response, Lan Qing said that everything has to come in time. You just need to wait until she finishes the conversation with him. The old man didn't like the fact that Lan Qing blocked his blow twice and put some discussion about the secretary's life on the same page and not his gift of light. Dracula, who had been standing aside all this time, said that there was no need for any fighting. The surveillance cameras turned out to be broken. He also added that Ma Fugi might be the only eyewitness who was about to die, and they would not be able to find out anything. Dracula already knew perfectly well who could help cure him. He brought Fugi to Musha, who watched and helped him come to his senses. Slowly, having come to his senses, Mafugi could not understand who was standing in front of him. The face seemed very familiar to him. After a while, he fully regained consciousness and immediately said that he could not understand how he ended up here and how Musha saved him. Musha answered him that he was a worthy student who had not gone through the school of teacher Mafei in vain. With wounds like yours, 
It is unlikely that anyone will survive. This is not the first time you have had such heavy fights. Fugi could no longer lie still for a long time. He was eager to save the teacher from something that had sealed him. Such zeal of Fugi made it clear to Muxia that he was very similar to his teacher. Mafugui really regretted that he could not defeat that creature, and it was he who was to blame for all of this. Dracula supported him, saying that there was no need to worry about the teacher, he was very strong and would not die just like that. He also asked Fugi to tell him what he knew. He said there was no need to go anywhere, and he could take care of everything himself. Events moved to a dark forest. In the forest, someone said that they need to leave here as quickly as possible, since the guards might grab them. At this moment, another voice answered that he was very annoyed, and apparently his plan had failed. With a surprised note from another voice, it was also said that this was an exchanged body. As it turned out, this other voice belonged to the traitor of the spiritual level sorceress, Yin Yu. She was surprised that the body she saw belonged to the red-haired guy. She didn't understand why it changed to a woman's. Was it possible that others were so bored with her body? During this conversation, Yin Yu also realized that all this time she had been conducting a dialogue with the spiritual level traitor, the Dark King, Bass, whose body was the only one that knew the location of the Gifts of Light. As he began to walk, he told Yin Yu that we were running out of time, we needed to move out. To which Yin Yu replied that he needed to wait for her. Standing behind the tree all this time, the ghostly level traitor of the six-eared monkey, away realized that they were still cunning. They decided to leave him, but if left on his own, he might get lost. The events flashed back again with the phrase, so this is what happens. Count Dracula said that he was a traitor, and his ability was to inhabit other people's bodies. He had not seen such a spiritual level for a long time. To resolve this issue, he cannot leave the city, since all power is in his hands. Turning to Li Shai and Feng Min, he entrusted them with the task of rescuing Li Xin. They need her safe and sound. As for the traitor, kill him. In response, Li Sa said that she understood the task and swore that she would fulfill it. Feng Min also said that he understood this task and was ready to carry it out. After that, Su Xiaobai abruptly comes to them and says that he is ready to go on a mission with them. Lan Qing followed him in, and she also expressed a desire to go with him. Su Xiaobai added that the teacher is his bodyguard, and he is 100% obliged to save her. Lan Qing once again let it be known that she is Xiaobai's friend, and she wants to help him. Mu Xia thought he could not understand why Yuan Yuan was his daughter-in-law. It turns out that his whole family will become predators. He is now somehow anxious about resigning. Dean Liu said that he was still a youth, and it was better for him not to go on this mission. The enemy has a huge spiritual level, and he may not be able to handle it. Zhao Bai replied to the old man that he only thinks about his core. He is not interested in whether she is alive or not. Lisa supported Su Xiao Bai and told him not to worry. This task is not so difficult for her. We better not take unnecessary risks. She herself can bring Li Xin back. Mu Xia stood up for Xiao Bai and said that they should not suppress his enthusiasm. He defeated Wei Yan and became a Protoss guard. This task will be training for him. At this moment, Xiao Bai placed his hope in Mu Xia. He thought that he was the only one who could convince them. Mu Xia at this moment doubted whether Dracula was against him or not. We need to hurry. Otherwise, he will grow old without having breakfast. Dracula said he didn't mind one bit. So that he would not think that Dracula was angry with him, he shared a discount coupon with him. After that, he turned to Xiao Bai and said that the rush might prevent them from dedicating him to the guards. Therefore, in front of everyone, he quickly initiated him into the defenders of Protoss. He also added that he is ready to appoint him to, thinking at this moment, Fugi never expected that he could win against Long Wei An. After the appointment, Xiao Bai said that the four of them were going on a mission. We need to work as a team. In addition, he shouted to them that she must be saved at any cost. Having moved forward, Xiao Bai realized that this road was familiar to him. Even then, after the first rounds of the competition, he began to explore the territory of Protoss. 
He was sure that in addition to the territory marked unexplored, there was another one marked forbidden entry. It was this place that Xiao Bai had entered. He said that anyone who gets here may not come back alive. This place is called the guard's graveyard. Lisa, walking next to her, thought she could not understand how Xiao Bai could remember this forest road. There are thousands of them. That's why he has a good memory. Feng Min told Su Xiaobai that he was an entertaining person and went to study the map in his free time. Su Xiaobai said that this habit is from a past life. Su Xiaobai said that he wanted to hide from them. He must have already reached the guard cemetery and needed to catch up quickly. Ah Wei said he was bored. They told him there would be a fight so he went with them, and they turned out to be liars. Yin Yu said that the signal trap judge, the guards will soon catch up with them, and there are four of them. But then I felt that there were not four of them, but five. And Wei wanted to fight and asked permission to detain them. Yin Yu asked that one against five. Did he think well? Bass said that Yin Yu would take care of the pursuers, but he had a more important task. A Wei asked that this was the important task he was talking about. A Wei said that Bass was just using him. Bass replied that they did not know what they were capable of. There was no point in taking risks. He needs to quickly obtain information from this body about the location of the gift of light. To do this, he will need a lot of energy. He needs to fully concentrate. Nothing should distract him. Therefore, a way will carry and protect him. Bass said that if they get to the guard's graveyard, then consider them safe. A large boulder was flying towards Su Xiaobai. He realized that it was an ambush. Lan Qing cut this cobblestone with thirty blows of her blade. Lan Qing ordered not to hide and show herself to them. Yin Yu appeared in front of them and said that she just wanted to say hello to them and that's all. She told them that they would have to pay with their lives to pass further. Lisa said that she was the one who would pay for her interference. Lan Qing agreed with Li Su and said that it wouldn't take much time to deal with her. Su Xiaobai stepped forward and told them not to make a fuss. She was only trying to delay them, if he believed correctly. Then this was not the only trap of time running out. A new plan was needed. Feng Mian thought that he was a good man. He did not cower in the face of danger. Su Xiaobai said that while he was dealing with her, they should find a new opportunity to break through. If you stumble upon a trap, follow the same plan. Dodge and move on without looking back. Xiaobai said that they needed to catch up with the enemy at all costs before he reached the guard cemetery and save Li Xin. Lisa thought about how he analyzed the situation so quickly and made a plan. The strategy is good and doesn't look like it was invented by a newbie. Lan Qing jumped forward and said that she would delay her and they should look for a way to pass. She thought that if all this was to detain them, then it would be better if those who were stronger continued the persecution. Lan Qing looked at Yin Yu and thought that she was alone against four, but she is completely calm and reeks of danger. Lan Qing thought that it was impossible for Su Xiaobai to take risks. Lan Qing attacked with a sequence of blows. Yin Yu defended herself from her attacks with the help of weaving bonds. The girls exchanged blows, but none of their attacks could reach. Their blows were too fast for a common man to follow. While they were fighting, Lan Qin shouted to them that now was the right time to move on. Yin Yu told them that they would not pass so easily. Her hair lengthened and went underground towards them. With her ability, she raised the upper ball of the earth to form blocks and thereby prevent them from passing. Lisa took out her sword and told them not to stop. She would deal with it. Lisa used divine light. Yin Yu saw that she broke her bonds. She did not understand how she did it. Xiaobai jumped over Yin Yu and said that they managed to break through. Su Xiaobai said that he would never die and would bring Li Xin home. Yin Yu thought that since they broke her bonds, then okay, but the fact that the three of them ran away is unforgivable. Yin Yu got angry and said if this caused her to lose Bass's love, it would be Lang Qing's fault. Someone rushed past them at very high speed. They were both in shock. Lan King noticed that it was Dean Liu who was rushing. She realized that the old man had been following them all this time. It completely slipped Yin Yu's mind. I got so carried away and forgot about the fifth one. If their plan fails because of her, then Bass will never touch her again. 
Lan Ching stood up and said that a predator is a predator. At the spiritual level, thoughts are still just as primitive. Yin Yu asked her, what does she even know? She said that the entire time Bass was in Protoss, he only thought about the gift of light. She continued talking and said that he had not been around for a month. Lan Ching doesn't know how bad she felt. Lan Ching thought that she was screaming like a cat at night. Lan Ching fell to her knee and began to feel short of breath. She realized it wasn't just a scream. The sound waves were affecting the brain, and she couldn't control her body. Yin Yu herself did not understand what had happened. She didn't know she was capable of this. The sound waves of her scream can affect a person, causing him to lose his fighting ability. Yin Yu ordered the blades of bonds to strike the heart with sorrow. Yin Yu wished Lan Qing to feel how love pierced her heart. Lan Qing thought about whether she would really die here like this. Su Shoubai and the team moved forward, and Wei said that he knew that Yin Yu could not be relied upon and missed the three. Feng Mian noticed another one. He sat on a stone and said that A Wei could deal with all five with one blow. Feng Mian said that his favorite animal is the monkey, so he asked that it be left to him. One of the A Weis stood behind him and said that he was arrogant. Feng Mian was surprised that there were several of them here. A Wei asked that he didn't expect this. A Wei is good at cloning. Each copy has the same strength as the original. He is much stronger than an ordinary representative of the demonic level. Feng Mian picked up Awei's club with one hand and told the two to continue the chase, otherwise he might hit them. Feng Mian activated the seven deadly sins anger. After activation, the red pillar reached right up to the clouds. Feng Mian said that he would deal with the monkeys himself and then catch up with them. Su Xiaobai said that he had changed as if he had become a different person. Lisa explained that there are seven personalities living in it, and this is not the time to think about it. They need to hurry. The copy that was sitting on the stone said that he had unusual strength. He needed to be more careful. The second copy said his breath stank and asked him to close it. Feng Mian flew up to the copy and asked, What is he doing? Does he think Ah Wei will be scared of him? Feng Mian gave one slap and said that he was good at talking. Ah Wei said that even Bass never hit him in the face, and he dared. Feng Mian beat him without giving him a chance to defend himself. He said that he would beat him again and again, and what he would do to him after that. The second copy jumped at Feng Mian and said that he had more than one opponent. Away swung his club, but missed. Feng Mian dodged. And Wei lost sight of him and began to look around where he was. The battered copy said he was in the back. Feng Mian stood on Ah Wei's club. Wei asked that when did he have time and where did the guard get such speed. Feng Mian jumped up and kicked Ah Wei with his feet. Feng Mian said that there are six more in Protoss who are even faster than him. Feng Mian compared him to a domestic animal. With one blow he will become docile. And Wei asked Bass if he had yet to find out where the gift of light was. He said their pursuers are strong. If they catch up, Ah Wei may not be able to cope alone. He asked to quickly find out where the core was and then finish off this girl. Bass rummaged through Li Xin's memories. In one of these memories, Li Xin was sitting near the wall, all beaten and wounded. She thought that things were bad. She had nowhere to go. She didn't want to die and ask someone to save her. The dead man came out from behind and headed towards Li Xin. Lan Qing pierced his head and thereby saved Lan Qing. Lan Qing approached Li Xin and said that if she wants to live, then she needs to follow her. This girl with a sword seemed familiar to Bass. He saw it in the ranks of the spectators at the competition. She often appears in the depths of Li Xin's memories. The base found where the gift of light was located. Li Xin hid Lan Qin inside. Yin Yu pierced Lan Qing right through. Lan Qing did not give up and asked what she wanted to do with her. Yin Yu thought that even with such a wound, she continued to hold the sword. She was an unusual opponent. Yin Yu told her that it wasn't that her scream was irresistible. It was just that she was difficult to deal with. Afterwards, she said that enough entertainment. She wants to hear Lan Qing's screams of pain. Yin Yu's bonds headed towards Lan Qing. Lan Qing asked Li Xin for forgiveness. 
Having prepared herself for death, she finally said that this time she had failed to save her. Lan Qing was surrounded by a golden sphere and broke all the blades of Yin Yu's bonds that flew towards her. Yen Yu didn't understand what else this was. She didn't know that Lan Qing had such a strong ability. Lan Qing could not understand where this power came from, what was surging out from her chest. Yen Yu realized that the gift of light was within her. Lan Qing told her that apparently the heavens favored her and asked her not to be afraid, because Lan Qing's blade is very fast. Yin Yu said that she is not afraid. She is trembling with delight, because the path to the happiness of her whole life is found by Lan Qin. Yin Yu imagined how she would bring the gift of light to Ba Su and receive his love. Lan Qing grabbed her sword tighter and told her that she was daydreaming. In one motion, she cut Yin Yu open before she even had time to react. Yin Yu fell and thought that this is the end. The gift of light was so close, she thought it was a great pity. Lan King said that she was a poor thing. Even before her death, Yin Yu still passionately desired Mr. Bass. A few years earlier, in someone's house, Yin Yu, at the age of 18, sat on her bed and cried bitterly. The man was getting dressed and told her not to cry and to keep what happened a secret. And if she tells anyone, he will make her life miserable. Yin Yu called him a scoundrel and asked if he had any humanity. He hit her with all his might because of those words. The man said she needed to understand something. If he had not sheltered her, then she and her mother would have become food for predators by morning. She held her cheek and listened to him. He said that he spent a lot of money on its maintenance. She should remember his kindness. And pay off your debt with your body. Yin Yu stood on the edge of a high-rise building. Her thoughts told her to jump. If she jumped, then all the torment would stop. Standing on your toes with your arms outstretched, she said goodbye to the unhappy world. She wished that, if there was an afterlife, she wanted to be treated well there. Bass came up from behind and said that death is not a solution. He told her that only force can change something. Bass ordered her to come to him, become his, and he would give her strength unknown to ordinary people. The man in fear shouted at her to get out and not come near him. She asked why he was so afraid. Yin Yu asked him if he didn't want her to pay him back. But this is a great chance to repay the debt. He asked not to take those words seriously. Yin Yu said that he was quite serious. He grabbed her leg and said that he knew that he was wrong and asked her not to kill him. He promised her that he could find other, younger people to eat for her. He can bring as many as she wants, as long as she saves his life. She told him that human flesh was not to her taste. After she killed him, she thought that for someone like him, she had given up her humanity. She wondered if it was worth it. Lan Qing was already leaving, but her legs began to wrap around Yin Yu's hair. She turned around and saw that she had not died after being hit. Yin Yu said that she felt bad, as if all her memories had been erased. She asked Lan Qing if she could help her. And Wei asked what kind of power does the gift of light have, since Bass, who is already strong, is trying hard to get it. Bass replied that he would not understand until he himself reached the limit of his strength. Bass said that he went through a lot to reach the peak of his spiritual level. And now he feels so lonely from the knowledge that he has nothing else to strive for. It seemed to him that there was no one stronger than him in the world. But that was a mistake. Bass said that he had already lost to a young man from the human race. And Wei was surprised that he was losing to a man and asked if he was joking. Bass replied no. He was a true genius of battles. A few days later, he founded Protoss, which was Long Ming. If it weren't for the endless darkness, he wouldn't have lost. Bass said that when Long Ming died, he found his remains. But there was no endless darkness with him, which became a big problem for him. Bass dreamed of receiving the gift of light, and then he would change beyond recognition. He dreamed that with its help, he would be able to resist the power of endless darkness, go beyond the limits of his capabilities, and overcome the spiritual level. Will surpass Long Ming and become the strongest in the whole world. Ah Wei said that they came to the guard cemetery. Ah Wei said that they should leave a note for Yin Yu so that she would know where to find them. 
Bass jumped off our way and said that there was no need. Yin Yu will not come. When he asked her to delay the guards, he understood that she would not be able to resist them. And Wei didn't understand how it was. And Wei asked Boss that he planned to leave her from the very beginning. But she said they were all family. Bass answered him that if in exchange for Yin Yu, he received the gift of light, then everything would not be in vain. Bass told him that, in addition, family is a word from the human world, and predators do not need families. He called Ah Wei with him and told them to go. Here, they will probably be able to hide from persecution. A ray of light flashed centimeters from Ah Wei, and he managed to dodge at the last moment. From this blow, trees scattered in all directions, the wave crashed into the ground. Away was glad that he managed to dodge, otherwise Away would have been left without a head. Bass walked up to a crack in the ground and said that he was impressed by it. With a sword, she cut such a chasm in the ground. Bass said that it was no wonder Yin Yu couldn't handle them. Lisa ordered them to listen to her. She told them that whoever crosses the border will die without the right to pardon. Bass said that this is arrogant. S. Rank cannot defeat him. The base jumped over the depression and told Ah Wei to come with him. Lisa told him that he asked for it. Lisa flew past Ah Wei. He only had time to think that she was very fast and his eyes couldn't keep up. Lisa buried her sword in the shield that Bass managed to put up. Bass told her that she was not lying because this body belongs to their man. But as Bass said, she would never kill him. Bass told her that after meeting with one ignoramus, he created a shield based on the strength of his blow. Does she think she's stronger than him? Lisa replied that he did not know, but in terms of the amount of inflicting the maximum possible physical damage, she has no equal in Protos. Lisi's sword began to pass through Bass's shield. He was extremely shocked by this. He realized that if he didn't have time to dodge, it would be bad. Bass still managed to dodge. He thought that she was excellent with a sword, but she did not take advantage of the opportunity and changed the trajectory. Bass suggested that apparently they also needed information about the location of the gift of light. Lisa said that it didn't work out the first time. She hadn't practiced with a sword for a long time. Bass knew that she was lying. When Lisa took the sword out of the ground, the earth began to come apart as if at the seams. Lisa told him that because of this body, he would not be able to fight at his full strength. He would have to return to his own to fight her, for her next blow will hit the target. She asked to be allowed to appreciate his true strength as a spiritual level predator. Lisa asked that his ability is only to possess others. Bass replied that while he was in this body, she would not dare to kill him. He asked her that who was she trying to deceive with such childish tricks. Ah Wei shouted at Li Shen not to underestimate them. He accused her of ruining his hair with her blow, and Wei wouldn't leave it like that. And Wei swung at her and said that she herself asked for a two-on-one fight. Lisa turned to Ah Wei and asked who told him that she was alone. Su Xiaobai jumped at Ah Wei, and his jaw literally slammed shut. Xiaobai jumped away from Ah Wei's head and told Li Xie to go ahead with the plan. Bass wondered what they were up to. Xiaobai began to create a large number of spirit realms. Basu was familiar with this energy. He realized that this was the energy that had been absorbed by the endless darkness. Xiaobai launched all the spiritual spheres into Basa. He realized that in this situation it was all or nothing. Bas covered himself with a shield and thought that he lacked experience. He spent so much energy but only raised dust. But he realized that there was also his partner. He completely forgot about her while watching Su Xiaobai. For him, she is the biggest danger. Lisa was already rushing towards Bas. The base began jumping to dodge Li Si's attacks. He told them that he had figured out their plan. Lisa told him that he was mistaken and that nothing had worked out for him. Su Xiaobai grabbed Bas in a jujitsu choke and said that their plan worked. Bas didn't understand what was happening. The strength was leaving him. He realized that it was Su Xiaobai who owned the endless darkness. Xiaobai replied that he guessed right. He told him that once he absorbed all of his power, he would leave Li Xin's body. Su Xiaobai began to drain all the energy from Bass, causing them to be surrounded by a bright purple light. 
and Wei realized that the endless darkness that Boss is so afraid of finds in this guy. Lisa was thinking about whether Su Xiaobai could handle this. As it all ended, Su Xiaobai was holding Li Xin in his arms. She was unconscious. Lisa looked at him and thought he was great. She realized that he is not as simple as he seems. Li Xin was saved, and there was not a scratch on her. How cleverly he pulled it off. Su Xiaobai covered Li Xin with the shield he stole from Bas, so that she would not be in any danger. Xiaobai told her to take good rest while she slept. He will wait until she comes to her senses, then they will sort everything out. Bas laughed as if he had gone mad. Su Xiaobai asked what made him so happy. Bas said that he not only found out the location of the gift of light, but now he could also take away the endless darkness. Bass said that the heavens themselves favored him, so why shouldn't he have fun? He called himself the Chosen One. Shobai said that he rejoices early. He said that at least half of his power had been absorbed. Su Xiaobai stretched his hands and asked if the remaining one would be enough for him to take away the endless darkness from him. Bass told him that he cannot lose the same ability twice, no matter how much Xiaobai managed to absorb his energy. Bass asked Ah Wei to tell them what his real appearance was. Ah Wei agreed to do this. And Wei said that he is the lord of the underworld. He can control the souls of the kingdom of shadows. Bass told them that he did not come here to hide from them. The cemetery of the guards, the prison of his underworld. Here in the section there are many souls. They are the source of his replenishing strength. Bass smiled and said that no one could defeat him here. Lisa said that they underestimated him. Zhao Bai said that since this happened, there is only one thing left for them. They simultaneously said that they needed to deal with him and finish the mission. Meanwhile, somewhere in the depths of the guard's cemetery, Ma Fei walked straight. With his body, he broke everything that came his way. Even if large stones were encountered on his way, he did not turn away. He simply walked forward, even through them. Ma Fei talked about what kind of place this is. He walked forward all night, but never got out. Ma Fei saw souls flying somewhere. He wondered if he had dealt with these wandering souls. So why did they appear again, and in such numbers? He thought that the educational process had not been in vain, and they decided to help him get out. Bass said that thousands of souls came to his call. Xiaobai didn't understand where there were so many of them. He was surprised that he killed so many people. Lisa said that he should not be allowed to consume all these souls. The base absorbed souls and told them to all come here and become one with him. He told them that they should continue to live together. They wanted to attack Bas. Zhao Bai said that it was bad. He swallowed them all. They decided that they needed to destroy it quickly. Ah Wei jumped out in front of them and said that as long as Ah Wei was here, no one would bother Bas. Lisa swung her sword and told Ah Wei that he asked for it, and Wei realized that he had made a mistake and did not expect her movements to be so fast. Lisa cut off Ah Wei's head, and his body fell. Su Xiaobai looked at Bass and said that it was too late. Due to the large number of souls, Bass inflated like a balloon. He said he devoured everyone. All these souls filled him. Now he feels limitless power. The base swelled to its limit and exploded from the overflow of souls into its body. Su Xiaobai was very surprised that Bas blew himself up. Lisa asked Xiaobai not to relax because the explosion was not fatal. Bas reincarnated into the form of a spiritual level predator soul devourer. He immediately decided to attack Xiaobai and Li Su. Xiaobai covered himself and Li Su with a shield. He shouted at her to be careful and hide behind him. After Bas's attack ended, all that was left around them was a crater up to several meters deep. Xiaobai said that with just one wave of his hand, he released so much energy, he wondered if this was his full strength. If it weren't for the shield that he borrowed from Bas, then there would be no trace left of them. Xiaobai said that the shield is at its limit, and if he attacks again, he will have to dodge. Lisa looked at him and thought that he had only recently become an A-rank guard, but rushed to protect him. She thought that you couldn't tell from him that he was reliable, but at decisive moments, you could rely on him. The base realized that he had not touched them, but this was not the limit of his strength. 
but only 70%. He wondered if this was the problem. Ma Fei came out to them from the depths of the forest as if nothing had happened, demolishing the trees. He was glad that he had finally gotten out. He told them that he was tired of walking in the dark. Bass looked at him with a puzzled face and recognized him. He asked that he was the same ignoramus. Ma Fei looked at him, tried to remember who he was, and asked who he was. Bass asked him why he forgot it so quickly. Ma Fei replied that what we are talking about, they have never met. Bass said that it didn't matter anymore. He was interested in what Ma Fei did with his spirit slaves. Showing his fist, Ma Fei said that he taught them a lesson with those who were in the forest and prayed for peace. Bass got very angry. He called Ma Fei a bastard because Bass had been collecting them for years. Because of this, Bass seemed to teleport to him and hit Ma Fei with all his strength. Bai told them that although only 70% of his strength remained, it was more than enough for them. Ma Fei quickly stood up and told him that his blow was not very good, and if he took his time, he would show what strength is. Ma Fei threw his bag over his shoulder and said that, alas, maybe some other time they will fight. He needs to quickly go to Protos to reveal the identity of the one who harmed his student. Xiaobai and Lisa jumped out of the crater, and Lisa told Ma Fei that he did not need to go to Protos for this. The one he needs is already here. Ma Fei was surprised that she was also here. Su Xiaobai pointed his finger at Bass and said that he not only occupied and used Ma Fugi's body, but also inflicted a fatal wound on him. Fortunately, Mu Xia saved Fugi. Ma Fei turned to Bass and asked why he met him outside the arena. Bass told him that he didn't immediately understand what he was doing. Bass added what can be expected from someone whose mind is empty. Ma Fei threw his bag at Bass. He caught it and asked what that smell was. Ma Fei hit the base in the stomach with all his might and said that this was his change of underwear. The base flew away from his blow and did not understand where he got such explosive power from. Ma Fei released his despot power, swung it, and said that only he could beat his student. Ma Fei's attack took the form of a dragon. He calls it the dragon style. Bass saw the dragon's form and decided that the power of this attack should not be underestimated. Bass wanted to put the shield in front of him and said that he was sure he could stand it. The dragon form passed through Bass. Xiaobai was surprised that such was the strength of an S-rank guard. He considered Ma Fei a monster. When the dragon form passed, Bass noticed that it had penetrated his living armor and it would be very difficult to restore it. Living armor is armor made from human souls. She can block the damage of three fatal blows. Bass was very angry with Ma Fei and said that he was annoying him. It seems these feelings of hatred are mutual. Meanwhile, at the top of the sacred mountain, the alarm clock sounded throughout the house. Mu Yuan shouted that it was time for her father to get up and stop sleeping. Mu Xia broke the alarm clock and wondered what kind of idiot came up with alarm clocks. He really wanted to sleep. Mu Xia was sitting on the toilet, drinking his favorite milk tea. He shouted to Yuan that he was hungry and asked if she had cooked tomorrow. He called her and called her, but she did not answer. Mu Xia thought this was strange, and where did she go? Yan left him a note tomorrow. It said that he should have breakfast alone and that Ma Fugi was with her. When he read the note, he thought that his obstinate daughter had cleverly pulled off everything. All Su Xiaobai's girls were flying on the Blue Phoenix, and Ma Fugi was flying with them. Zhao Ping thought that the owner and Qin went to save Li Xin, risking their lives, but she couldn't stay away. Mu Yuan did not expect herself to do such a thing. She thought that suddenly he died. What should they do then? Wang Xu was angry that he went there with Qin and didn't invite her. It was unfair for her. Mo Yan thought that Dean Liu must have followed them. She already knows him. Xiao Bai needs to be careful with him. Ma Fugi was jealous that this fool was clearly popular with the girls. They flew over the forest, and Ma Fugi wondered what happened here and why all the trees were cut down. He asked if this was Li Si's doing. Zhao Ping replied that this was not her style. Someone called Qin. Lan Qing turned around and was surprised that it was her daughter-in-law's bird. Zhao Ping jumped down to her and told her not to pay attention. She asked me to tell him 
where the owner was and why they weren't together. Lan Qing said that she was detained here. Yin Yu came out to them. Zhao Ping and Lan Xin immediately noticed her. Lan Qing asked why she was pursuing. After all, Lan Qing spared her life by showing leniency. But she just can't calm down? Yin Yu told her that she was not interested in fighting. It was because of her that she became like this. So Lan Qin is now responsible for this. Zhao Ping realized that it was a predator. But no, a different aura emanated from her. Lan Qing explained to Ping that it was indeed a predator, but after she defeated it, it did not die and was now following on her heels. Lan Qing pointed to the stone in her chest and said that it was probably all about the stone. Because of it, she lost her memory. Mu Yuan jumped off the bird and said that this was a purification effect. She heard her father talk about him. This is the ability of the gift of light. Lan Qing asked, what is this core of light? Mu Yan said that's right. She suggested that apparently Li Xin, out of desperation, decided to hide it in her. Mu Yuan approached Yin Yu and said that purification removes negative effects, but can also erase her memory. Yuan explained that she was now freed from the bloodthirstiness characteristic of predators. Yen thought about it and said that it turns out she is no longer a purebred predator. Since she was previously a human, and now she has gotten rid of the main disadvantage, then it would be wrong to call her a predator. Mu Yuan turned to her and asked her to go with them with a smile. Musha went out into the street and thought that he would like to resign in an amicable way, but there was no peace in his life yet. Ma Fei was fighting with Bas. He could already block Fei's attacks. Bas Yi calmly dodged Li Si's attacks. Su Xiao Bai thought that something didn't add up. At the beginning, he could barely resist Ma Fei, but now he calmly repels the attacks of the two. This could be a problem for them. Xiao Bai looked at Ah Wei's corpse and thought that he should think of something and quickly find a solution. Ma Fei dodged Bass's attack and told Li Shi that he seemed to be getting stronger. Lisa told him that it was so. She said that this is the first time she has encountered something like this. Bass taunted them that they still wouldn't understand. He asked them that they must be wondering why his strength was increasing. He said that this was the difference between their births. He is a predator. It is inherent in nature that people are no match for him. Xiaobai shouted at him that this was a lie. Su Xiaobai said that he understood what was wrong. He has absorbed a huge number of souls, but it takes time for him to absorb their energy. Xiaobai looked at Bas and said that if the part has been learned so far, then the longer the battle goes on, the more it changes. He asked Bas that he was right. Bas told him that he was not stupid and asked how he guessed about his ability. Xiao Bai answered him that it was simple and he himself had a demonic ability. Two copies of Xiu Bai were behind Bas and wanted to strike him. With one wave of his hand, Bas dealt with the copies of Xiao Bai and asked that Ah Wei's cloning technique was his ability. The base pierced Xiao Bai right through with its beam. Bas told him that Ah Wei's soul was supposed to be absorbed by him, but he dared to use him. Since he is in such a hurry to die, he cannot help but help him with this. Xiao Bai laughed and asked why he thought he was the original. The copy disappeared, and Bas realized that Xiao Bai had fooled him. Xiao Bai took control of Bas's body. Bas didn't understand what kind of games these were. He couldn't move. He wondered why there were eyes everywhere. They seemed to look into the very soul, causing fear. Ma Fei asked, What is this mirage? Lisa replied that not at all. She explained that these are the eyes of Asura. She heard that he is able to immobilize the enemy with fear. She didn't know that Su Xiaobai had such power. Xiaobai said that he never used his power, but he forced him to use it. Xiaobai told him that if he is not killed, others will suffer. Xiaobai was angry and summoned Asura's hands. Bas felt that Su Xiaobai's thirst for killing was stronger than that of predators. He didn't understand how this was possible. Xiaobi pinned Bass down with one of Asura's hands. Bass felt that he was no longer in control and could move. Bass realized that another layer of spiritual armor had been broken. He shouted to him that he would finish him off. Xiaobai waved and said that this is not the end. He told him to take care of himself first and start throwing a lot of punches at Basu. 
Lisa noticed that the souls were leaving Bass. She realized that they fear Asura much more than the Dark King. Bass felt that Xiaobai had destroyed the last layer of spiritual armor. Xiaobai shouted to his friends to attack Bass immediately. Ma Fei kicked with his feet and activated the tiger volley. He told him that everything was clear here, even without words. Lisa turned to the Dark King and told him to prepare to pay for what he had done. While she was talking, she charged her arbitration assault ability and struck him. After carrying out the attack, she calmly said that the verdict had been made. Ma Fei added that he crossed the wrong path. The base was almost cut in half and lost an arm and a leg. He did not want to give up because the gifts of light and darkness were right in front of him. He didn't want to back down. Xiaobai was exhausted and hoped that this was the end for Bass. Lisa looked at Xiaobai and thought that his strength of spirit was so great that she thought it was difficult for him to hold it. Xiaobai lost consciousness and began to fall down. Lisa caught him and started to feel embarrassed about the situation. She thought that he was so close to her. Lisa took a closer look at him and realized that he was very handsome. Out of embarrassment, she tried to turn away because she was shy. Mafei told Lijia that she was all red and asked if she was hurt. Because of the awkward situation, Lisa threw Xiaobai out and told Mafei not to talk nonsense. She has the most normal complexion. Mafei thought that she didn't know how to lie at all. Xiaobai regained consciousness and said that he was in pain. He asked that he lost consciousness. He realized that controlling Asura's power requires a lot of energy. Xiaobai had a strange feeling. He thought what could be the matter. Xiaobai pointed at Bas and said that the endless darkness had not activated. And this means that he is still alive. He asked to finish him off quickly. Bas realized that he had been discovered and made one last attempt to win. He released his soul to transfer it to another body. Bass exhaled his soul to take over Su Xiaobai's body. Bass laughed and said that there was so much inside this body, both endless darkness and the spirit of Asura. He smiled and told them that now it was all completely his. Lisa advised him to get out of Su Xiaobai's body. After all, he already knows how strong her blow is. Bass asked, What, will he stab him? He told her that this body was the best he had ever had. Ma Fei walked towards Bass and told Li Zi to control herself. He has more experience in such matters. He told her he would handle it. Lysa asked him what he plans to do. Ma Fei ran towards Bass and said that of course he would smash him to smithereens. Bass blocked Ma Fei's punch with Asura's arm. Ma Fei shouted to him since he blocked the left one, let him taste the right one. Bass told him that it was too obvious and they were of no use. Bass threatened him that he would not be able to defeat Asura by relying only on physical strength. Ma Fei headbutted Bass with all his might. Ma Fei told him that he might not be able to defeat him with his fists, but his head was definitely stronger. The base was knocked out. Lisa was shocked that he actually hit him with his head. Lisa told Ma Fei that he said that he had experience in such matters. She asked how they could now get the predator out of Su Xiaobai's body. Ma Fei said that he had not thought about it yet. He suggested that we could hit him one more time or two. Maybe after this, this scoundrel will come out on his own. Feng Mian came to them and said that he did not advise Ma Fei to do this. Ma Fei asked why. Feng Mian explained that Bas was in a desperate situation. It is unlikely that he will give up a tiny hope because of some blows. His approach is wrong. Ma Fei asked what he proposed to do then. Feng Mian said that in such a situation, there is only one way out. To destroy Bass, they need to rely on the strength of Su Xiaobai himself. Bass was surprised that he, the Dark King, was defeated by a bunch of guards. Bass told Su Xiaobai that if he kills him here, he will get this body forever. Xiaobai told him that he only knew how to talk. Xiaobai started beating Bass and told him that he would take his body back. The base waved his leg and told him that the milk on his lips had not yet dried. To show off in front of him, he would have to be a couple of thousand years older. Lisa explained that Su Xiaobai had already shown all his trump cards and proved that he was quite extraordinary. Without him, they would not have completed this task so easily. She was worried about him. 
that now he had to deal with a spiritual-level predator alone. She asked if they really couldn't help. Feng Mian said that the two of them had to find out who was spiritually stronger, and they just have to wait until he wakes up. Mafei asked what if Bass wins. What should they do then? Feng Mian explained that then it would become clear that Su Xiaobai's soul was completely enslaved, and they would have to fulfill their duty as guards and kill him. Bass said that he was still inexperienced. He explained that there is a spiritual world here, and the strength of your own spirit is important here. Bass said that it was not the power of endless darkness and Asura. He asked what he could do on his own. Shobai smiled at him and thanked him for reminding him that spiritual power was important in this place. Bass felt that his energy had changed. Xiaobai changed his appearance and asked to accept his condolences because he had run into the wrong thing. Bass didn't understand how this was possible. It was the first time he had seen spiritual power be so great. Bass thought maybe this was some kind of trick, but then he realized that it wasn't. In the spiritual world, it is impossible to use abilities. He didn't understand why he was so strong. Xiaobai explained that it was because he did not know what he had gone through. He got this body with great difficulty. Xiaobai said that he would not let a stranger take it away. Bass shouted at him not to even think about intimidating him. He's done this millions of times. In the spiritual world, he had never lost before. Bass tried to resist Xiaobai and told him that his good name would not be ruined by someone like him. Xiaobai got angry and told him not to be so sure about it. Bass's body began to crumble into pieces. He felt very depressed, and he couldn't cope with it. Xiaobai's body flew up. Ma Fei saw him floating in the air and asked why this was happening. Feng Mian explained that, Based on the situation, it means that the confrontation between souls is in full swing and they are about to find out who will wake up. Dean Liu thought that Bass killed his subordinates and Su Xiaobai was also always getting in the way. He didn't care which of the two would wake up. Zhao Ping didn't understand what was going on. Her pulse quickened. She suggested that maybe something had happened to the owner. Lisa caught Dean Liu's blade with her hand and said that after they left Protoss, she had the feeling that someone was following them. She didn't expect him to decide to show up now. Lisa asked Dean Liu why he needed this. Dean Liu thought that Lisa had risked herself to save him. He realized that not only Mu Xia was able to fight back. He was wondering, is this Su Xiaobai bewitched or something? Dean Liu told them that they call themselves S-Rank but they believe that the boy is capable of defeating Bass. He told them that instead of letting Bass have endless darkness, it would be better to finish him off now. Dean Liu told Li Si that if he killed him now, their task would be completed. Li Sa was so angry that she crushed Dean Liu's blade in her hand. Li Sa threw the blade fragments out of her hand and told Dean Liu not to try to confuse them. She believed that Su Xiaobai would not lose to Basu. Lisa threatened Dean Liu that after Xiaobai woke up, he would not even think of laying a finger on him. Xiaobai's clothes were torn, and he thanked Li Xi for her words. Lisa recognized that it was Xiaobai's voice and realized that he had won. Xiaobai looked at her and asked how her hand was. Lisa admitted that it hurts a little. She thought about what was happening to her and involuntarily said what she was thinking. Xiaobai bandaged her wound with a piece of his jacket. He told her that it would do for the first time. Lisa replied that it was not worth it. She was a paladin and could handle it herself. Xiaobai said that if she doesn't like it, then let her take it off. She replied that she would not take it off. The others silently watched what was happening between these two. Feng Mian thought that his ability didn't affect her, but he succeeded. This is the first time he has seen Lisa be so embarrassed. Mafei said it's cool that he did it, he was already preparing to bury him because he didn't believe in his victory. Dean Liu thought that he didn't have a chance. It was just luck, but he looked calm, like a boa constrictor. He believes that it could not have been otherwise. Xiaobai walked towards Dean Liu and told him that he would not understand why he was keeping up with him. The dean kept repeating how to kill Bass, but in reality, he was not worried about him. Xiaobai told him that since he came, he invited him to settle old scores. Dean Liu didn't understand what was going on. 
He suddenly wanted to back away against his will. He felt that his aura was different now. He suggested that he might have already sung to absorb the energy of Bass. Xiaobai asked why he was hesitating. Isn't this what he wanted? Dean Liu replied that provocations do not work for him. Dean Liu explained that an S-rank guard cannot fight people just like that, because this is already a duel. At least ten witnesses are needed so that Dracula cannot bring them to justice. Zhou Ping appeared out of nowhere. She told Dean Liu that he was using humans for his experiments on turning into predators, and now he wants to kill her owner and believes that he can avoid responsibility. All of Xiao Bai's friends appeared, and Zhao Ping said that they would all act as witnesses, especially in the presence of three S rank guards. Xiao Bai was surprised that they all came. Dean Lu was angry that Su Xiao Bai's assistants came. Ma Fugui was happy and told Ma Fei that he was alive. Ma Fei got angry and asked what he was talking about, who could kill him. Ma Fei threw his bag into his hands and told him that he would help him carry it. Ma Fugui was stupefied by this disgusting smell. Ma Fei answered him that he was thinking correctly. His change of underwear was in that bag. Feng Mian thought that the further it goes, the more interesting it becomes. He was surprised that Xiao Bai dared to challenge the dean. He guessed that apparently they had been feuding for a long time. He was interested in what the dean would do. The dean replied that if so, then he accepted Su Xiao Bai's challenge. Xiao Bai replied that everything will be decided after this fight. The dean called Mo Yang and said that he knew she was here. Mo Yang was scared and didn't understand how he knew that she also came with everyone. Dean Liu told her that he needed a new sword. His was broken. He suggested that she not bring up the past. He wanted her to give him hers and they would forget about the past. Xiao Bai approached Li She and said that he wanted to borrow her sword. She asked him that he was sure he wanted to fight with a sword. Lisa said that Dean Liu is a swordsman no worse than her. Xiao Bai replied that it was not his own field that he wanted to break. He had already replayed Dean Liu's techniques in his head many times. In addition, the energy of Bass's souls is still being absorbed. Xiao Bai turned to Li He and told her not to worry. Xiao Bai was confident of his victory. Dean Liu told Xiao Bai that he had known for a long time that this day would come but he didn't expect it to happen so soon. Dean Liu said that winning would not be like that. It's just that Xiao Bai is no match for him. Dean Liu said that besides, he doesn't know about his ability. Dean Liu was preparing to activate his skill. He said that he earned his position thanks to his skills, and challenging him was a bad idea. Dean Liu shouted and ordered Xiao Bai to see his strongest form. A bright green sphere covered Dean Liu, Xiao Bai just stood there and watched what would happen next. Xiao Bai said that this is worthy of an S rank guard. Anyone would feel uneasy when such a person uses his full strength. Dean Liu finished his preparations, and after that, young Dean Liu appeared before them. He calls this SR rank ability memory. He can make his body take on the appearance of his youth. Dean Liu said that out of all the guards, only Mu Xia saw him like this. Ma Fei said that he had good hair. Ma Fugi answered him that here is an example of how you can go bald in old age. Lisa thought that she had become a guard a long time ago, but this is the first time she sees Dean Liu's ability. She understood that he was taking a great risk by using her. Xiao Bai must be careful. Xiao Bai said that he could not even imagine that there was an ability that could restore youth. He asked that his vision also returned. Xiao Bai stood up and said that this is all he can do. Dean Liu also stood up and replied that he might know. At 27 years old was the peak of his strength. Dean Liu took off and ran towards Xiao Bai to attack him. Dean Liu was so fast that he seemed to dissolve and say that regarding fencing. Zhao Ping was surprised and thought that he had disappeared. Mu Yuan was shocked by Dean Liu's speed and said that it was impossible to keep up with him. Xiao Bai just stood there and watched as Dean Liu reached his maximum speed. Dean Liu was behind Xiao Bai in an instant and said that he was finished. Xiao Bai managed to react and was able to block Dean Liu's attack. Dean Liu was surprised that he could reflect. He thought about how fast he was. Xiao Bai told him that by absorbing the energy of thousands of Bass souls, 
his capabilities increased several times. He sees his every move. Lisa was delighted and realized that he had calculated his strength from the very beginning, and there was no reason to worry. She realized that she could rely on him. Xiaobai raised his free hand and addressed Dean Liu. Xiaobai activated the soul spheres and told him that he was acting rashly. It was very dangerous for him. Dean Liu responded to Xiaobai about his dirty games. Dean Liu stepped back. The spheres flew after him, and he realized that this was a trick. Dean Liu thought that if his vision was not restored, he would lose. Dean Liu hit the ground and the stones rose into the air. He said that he was too cruel for a young man. He was vicious. The dean threw all the stones toward Xiao Bai with a stream of air. Xiao Bai took a deep breath and shouted that kindness is inappropriate in fights. Zhao Ping admired Xiao Bai. She realized that he repelled the attack with sound waves. Lan Hen realized that Xiao Bai had become stronger. Xiao Bai told Dean Liu to face the truth. Even when he was young, he was not Xiao Bai's rival. Dean Liu told him that he was an S-rank Protoss guard, and he thought that an A-rank little thing could defeat him. He asked why he has such humor. The dean attacked Xiao Bai and told him that even one hand was enough for him. Xiao Bai also attacked Dean Liu and told him to give it a try. They attacked each other and froze. Mu Yuan was surprised by his speed. She said that Xiao Bai moved in an instant. Wang Xiu asked who won. She hoped that Xiao Bai won. Mo Yan grabbed her head and was in shock. She couldn't even say a word, but just remained silent and watched. Xiao Bai managed to cut off Dean Liu's hand and felt Asura's evil eye. He instantly stopped Dean Liu's sword using this technique, making it impossible to move. Dean Liu fell to his knees without one arm and asked himself that he had lost. Wang Xiu was happy about Su Xiao Bai's victory. Mu Wen was delighted and said that he was great. Ma Fei told Ma Fugi that they were all so young but very strong and asked him why he was so inept. Ma Fugi did not answer and thought that Xiao Bai's teacher was stronger than Ma Fugi. Lisa ran to Xiao Bai and asked how his wound was. Lisa became embarrassed and said that she was a paladin and could heal him. Xiao Bai shouted at her not to come because this is not the end. Xiao Bai stood up heavily from his wound and said that he saw with his own eyes how he turned his subordinates into predators, secretly trying to create an artificial predator, and did not disdain himself either. Xiao Bai had a wound all over his chest from the dean's blade. Xiao Bai said that his guess was correct. He said that agony is a reagent for becoming a predator. This makes him look like the one who tried to kill him. Xiao Bai told Dean Liu not to pretend to be dead, because he was familiar with this trick. Dean Liu laughed and said that he recognized his strength. He didn't expect to lose here, but for his goal to unite people and predators, he must kill Xiao Bai. Dean Liu screamed in pain and said that everything he does is for the sake of the Protoss. Xiao Bai froze and felt the power from Dean Liu and a strong thirst for blood. Zhao Ping felt a familiar feeling, but the Dean's energy was much stronger. Mo Yan prayed and asked everyone to come to their senses and not be so stubborn. The Dean turned into a very large predator. Li Sa was able to squeeze out that he was huge. Xiao Bai just watched silently. Li Sa said that this ability is not from the human world. He was actually experimenting secretly. Xiao Bai told her that this was the result of his experiments on people. Dean Lu transformed into Bai Hong's artificial predator form. Mu Yan shook with fear and asked, What is this creature, Dean Lu? Mafugui was afraid and said that he looked much more terrifying than that spiritual level predator. Yin Yu looked at him and said that this was an abomination, and just looking at it gave her chills. Dean Lu repeated Xiao Bai's name and told him that he wanted him dead. Mafei and Feng Mian could not stand it and decided to intervene. Feng Mian said that the fight was supposed to be between the two. Feng Mian continued to say that when he is in this form, he cannot remain indifferent. Ma Fei slammed his fists together and told Feng Mian that he said it well. Ma Fei said that Dean Liu was a Protoss guard, but he himself fell to the bottom. Ma Fei continued to tell him that if he did not stop, he assured him that he would not coddle him. The Dean only repeated Su Xiaobai's name. 
Mafei got angry and said that he was actually talking to him. He asked him to stop muttering someone else's name. Xiaobai approached the guys and said that, looking at the dean, you would think that he had lost his mind. He suggested that maybe it was a side effect of the transformation. Xiaobai continued to say that even after losing consciousness, he did not forget his name, apparently. He really, really wants to get the endless darkness. We'll stop at nothing until he kills him. Mo Yang said that everything is correct. She explained that the dean's experiment had failed and he needed endless darkness to make a breakthrough in research. She said that she herself saw this appearance of him for the first time. She had no idea what to do with him. Mo Yan told them that they should not rely on his human nature. Now they have only one way out. Ma Fei pointed at himself and said that if they needed to kill him, then in front of them was an expert in such matters. The dean shot a green beam from his eye at Ma Fei, who was on his chest and repeating Su Xiaobai's name. Ma Fei dodged the dean's attack and said that now his opponent is him. Ma Fei asked if he dared to answer him. Dean Liu extended his hand and gave Ma Fei a smack. Ma Fugui was afraid for his mentor because he had flown very far. Ma Fei stood up and said that after the transformation he became much stronger. Fortunately, his skull is hard, otherwise it would have been very bad. The eyes on Dean Liu's body searched for where Su Xiaobai was. Xiaobai shouted that he was going to attack everyone indiscriminately. Dean Liu charged beams from his eyes and said that he would kill Su Xiaobai. The dean's rays shot out in chaotic directions, and he repeated that he would kill Su Xiaobai. A piece of wood pierced Mu Yuan's leg. She fell and could not move. The dean charged his beam at Mu Yuan again. She thought that this was the end and she couldn't dodge. But nothing happened. Her father protected her and she asked why he was here. Musha turned to her and told her not to be afraid of anything as long as he was with her. Dean Liu continued to attack chaotically and repeat that he would kill everyone. Yin Yu tried to escape. Explosions were everywhere. The explosion occurred close to Zhao Ping, and the blast wave carried her several meters away. Out of fear, Mo Yan tried to crawl somewhere safe. Musha called Dean Liu and asked why he needed all this. He asked why he wanted to be sighted and with hair. Musha said that when one thing disappears, another appears. Musia said that it was very difficult for him to see through this appearance. Xiaobai noticed that Mu Xia was also here. Lisa saw that Lu looked scared, as if he was about to lose consciousness. She asked what was so scary about this Mu Zi. Xiaobai replied that it was a simple instinct of self-preservation. His reaction is unconscious. Mu Xia walked to the tree and told him that he was already a pensioner and did not expect that it would be he who would disturb his peace. Musha easily tore off the tree and said that he also injured his daughter, but this is unforgivable. He asked not to judge him, he asked for it himself. Feng Man thought about what he heard, that Musha is the strongest of all the guards. This is the first time he sees it in action. Musha jumped up to the level of the dean's face and hit him with all his might. He said that this was for his daughter. The impact slammed the dean's face into the ground. Ma Fei thought that this was nonsense. Mu Xia slammed him into the ground with one blow. Feng Mian thought that their strength was incommensurable. He understood how this was the S rank level of the second squad. Mu Yuan was surprised that they were surrounded by a shield. Xiao Bai asked Li Su to heal the girl's wounds. Li Su thought that he was a fool. He needed help more than they did. Xiao Bai said that if Mu Xia had not appeared on time, it would have been bad. Dean Liu stood up and shouted that he would kill each of them. Musia threw a tree at Liu's eye and asked that his sanity had not returned yet, and he said that then he would help him learn from his mistakes. Musia was spinning around Dean Liu very quickly. He was like a hurricane. Feng Mian did not have time to follow him because he was too fast. Lan King was surprised that Musia destroyed each of his eyes at the same time. Xiaobai thought about what he had done in an instant. Here's the strongest guard for you. Musha landed and told him that they were colleagues after all. He didn't want to kill him. He asked the dean not to do this again. Dean Liu just kept repeating that they should all die. Dean Liu charged the green sphere above him. He shot a beam at Musha and said that they should all perish. Mu Wen shouted at her father to turn around. 
Musha turned to the dean and shot out the straw he was holding in his mouth. After that, Muja simply watched as the beam stopped in one place and didn't reach its target. Mafe was shocked that with just one straw, Feng Mian froze and thought that he was able to stop the dean's dying blow. Xiao Bai noticed that he not only stopped, but also struck back. The straw made its way through the dean's beam and tore his head into pieces. When it was all over, Musia said that if he had not taken the wrong path, he would have made a good guard. Musia turned away from the dean's body and thought that, unfortunately, he had to stop him. After all, if he had not been stopped, he would have become like those five. Musha looked at the guys and asked what the three of them were doing here. Did he not understand what was going on? All Mafe could answer was that it was nothing. Musha said that since nothing was wrong, then let him take his leave. He also has something important to do. Mafe could only wish him a good journey. Li Sa treated Mu Yuan's leg. Mu Yuan was indignant that he would leave her here and asked what kind of business this was. Musha told her that Nai Shu had milk tea at half price today and asked her not to force him to make such a difficult choice. Musha flew towards Protoss and asked Su Xiaobai to take care of Yuan. Su Xiaobai was a little dumbfounded and said that he would take care of her. Mu Yuan pointed her finger at the sky and told everyone to look there. Lisa continued to treat her and was surprised by what was there. This was the energy of the dean, and there was a lot of it. Lisa said that the dean lived a long life. This energy holds his knowledge. If he absorbs it, he will probably become much stronger. Mu Yuan was surprised that he did not want to absorb this energy. Lisa asked Xiao Bai that he did not need this energy. Xiao Bai explained that he had already absorbed the power of tens of thousands of bass souls. It is still difficult for him to assimilate them. His body won't even be able to handle this energy. Xiao Bai said that this is also a trophy for Mr. Mu Shi. He has no right to take it. A little over a month passed, six o'clock in the morning in Su Xiao Bai's estate. Xiao Bai rubbed his eyes and asked, Is it time to get up? When he opened his eyes, he was shocked by the sight he saw in front of him. Yin Yu was at her and told him to wake up already. Su Xiaobai blushed and asked Yin Yu not to overstep the boundaries. Yin Yu told him that everything was fine, she just didn't have the strength to endure anymore. Yin Yu said that she had been watching him all night and finally had the opportunity to slip in unnoticed and let him appreciate it. Xiaobai thought that although she had regained her human nature, she did not stop being lustful in this regard she became even worse. Xiao Bai was afraid that if everything was left as it was, then a reaction could not be avoided. He wondered why he had such tests early in the morning. He thought about what to do. Ying Yu touched Xiao Bai's bare part and said that he has a beautiful, pumped-up body, and this scar gives him masculinity. Yin Yu said that the bodies of human men are so beautiful and her imagination is racing. Xiao Bai jumped out of bed and told her that he got carried away and asked her not to play with fire. She should be a little more restrained. Lan Qing came into their room. She said that as soon as she left for a second, she already made her way into his room. She told Yin Yu that with such behavior she was asking for her blade. Yin Yu began to make excuses and say that it was a misunderstanding. She did not come to seduce him, but simply to wake him up. Xiao Bai looked at Lan Qing and asked with his eyes for someone to help him. Lan Qing said that this should not happen again, and Xiao Bai should not let his guard down. She added that she was confident in him, and he had not forgotten what day it was. Xiao Bai perfectly remembered what day it was, because he could not forget such an event, a whole ceremony where Count Dracula should assign him an S rank. Looking out the window, Yin Yu said that she was quite surprised by this. Turning to Xiao Bai, she also added that Xiao Bai could be promoted because he was able to help stop the dean. Xiao Bai agreed with her words and said that it's not that simple. He and Qin were able to do everything to help him deal with this problem. As he began to get dressed, Xiao Bai added that it was not he himself who defeated him, but Mu Xia who did it. Having fully dressed, Xiao Bai said that if Dracula wanted to reward him, then all he needed was for him to move up his ranking a little. Giving an S rank to Xiao Bai seemed like too much of an act. Leaving his estate, he went to Dracula to find out from him what he really thought about all this. 
and so the events moved to the territory of Count Dracula's estate. For a long time, the guards of his estate could not understand who was approaching them. Coming closer to the guard, the stranger said that Count Dracula lives here, and this seems so unusual to him. One of the guards said that he should leave there because a very important event would begin there soon. All tramps were forbidden to even come close there. Approaching Dracula's manor, Xiaobai said that this stranger looked very unusual, and he did not look like some kind of tramp. The guard recognized that it was Xiaobai and shouted his name loudly. The name that the guard shouted made the stranger think. Xiaobai didn't know what to call this same stranger. He invited him to go with him, if he, of course, did not mind. The stranger responded by expressing gratitude to Xiaobai for such an offer. Taking off his headdress, he introduced himself and said that his Buddhist name was Kunai. He is a guard from the S, rank Protoss 4th Squad. In response, Xiaobai also introduced himself and said that he was glad to meet him. The guards standing nearby were surprised that the Kunai master was in the 4th Squad. They had previously heard that he was able to leave society for several years and seal his sword. They were also surprised that the master was never in a hurry to attend such events. After passing through the security, Xiaobai told Kunai that he was very inspired by the sight of Dracula's manor, to which Kunai replied that such a house is just a place to relax. He could not understand what all this luxury was for. The master also asked him how his friend Chin was doing and if everything was fine with her. Xiaobai didn't understand how he knew her and thought that she was his friend. Kunai said that he and she are old friends. They lost contact with her and have not seen each other for a very long time. To which Xiaobai replied that she was fine. Xiaobai also thought that the master seemed to have come to this event specifically to ask him about Chin. At this moment, some female voice said that he was Xiaobai. He was the one who returned the gift of light. He defeated Bass and was not inferior in fencing skills to Dean Liu, was able to become the youngest S, rank guard in history. As it turned out, this voice belonged to the virtuoso Bai Yumo. She was a swordswoman, the head of a sword school, and was a guard of the 5th division of the S rank Protoss. She was sure that this was not true about Xiaobai, that these were all rumors. Bai Yumo also said that Xiaobai is very interesting to her to which Xiaobai replied that perhaps she had not fully decided. In response, Bai Yumo told him to show her what he could do. And then, in addition, she gave the command for the swords to appear. Looking up at the sky, it became clear how several swords suddenly began to fall to the ground. Xiaobai was shocked. It became clear to him that she was not joking. Seeing what was happening, Kurai took out his magic bell and stopped the falling of the swords. He told Xiaobai that just like that friend of Qin, he would not let him be offended. And then Xiaobai was surprised by how the master was able to stop a rather strong attack. Bai Yuma did not like Kurai's interference, to which she told him not to interfere in someone else's business. She did not want to test his skills. Kurai told her that today is not a day for fighting, but a day for promoting Xiaobai, to which she replied that he turned out to be very boring for her. Watching everyone from the top of the manor, Lizier really didn't like Bai Yuma's behavior. Going down and hitting the ground with her sword, she said that she would not give Bai Yuma permission to attack Su Xiaobai. Su Xiaobai was very shocked. He could not completely believe that Lisa would also be there. At this moment, Kurai thought that Xiaobai might have many good options. Bai Yuma didn't understand what Lisa was talking about. She said that she was just playing with Xiaobai, and it shouldn't concern her. Bayumo also said that Lisa was able to react to all this quite quickly. She thought that she liked Xiaobai. Lisa began to deny all this. She said that this was all complete nonsense. Standing in front of Bai Yumo, Kunai thought that Xiaobai was still young. He had already mastered such an ability. The master was not even surprised that Dracula would be able to appreciate this. Bai Yumo said that she doesn't understand what the hell is going on here. She began to demand to be allowed in in order to teach Li Shi a lesson. Lisa said that her words did not touch her at all, and for attacking Xiaobai do not expect mercy. Bai Yumo asked her to repeat, and told Li Si that when she was already earning a living, Li Si was still doing her best. 
Li Sa responded by telling her to talk to her here again. Xiaobai stood silently and listened. Xiaobai asked why they were fighting. Kunai told him that there was so much unknown in the world and that Protoss was not their home. Kunai explained that they were from two warring countries. Xiaobai was surprised that there were other countries. Kunai told him that once there were many states on their mainland, but due to attacks by predators, many of them fell into decay and ceased to exist. Kunai further began to tell that several small states remained. Protoss supports them financially and also protects them. For this, their best warriors become Protoss guards. Paladin Li Sa is the strongest warrior in the western country of knights. Swordswoman Bai Yumo arrived from a mysterious eastern country where female fencers live. She is the head of the Shushan school of swordsmen there. Count Dracula came out to them along with Ma Fei and Feng Mian. Dracula said he didn't call them to watch them fight. He ordered them all to quickly calm down. Asura's hands split due to a few words from Dracula. Not only Xiao Bai, but also others felt the pressure. Obviously, Dracula is on a completely different level. Xiao Bai thought that he was really as strong as Muxia. Xiao Bai was surprised that a helicopter flew towards them. Xiao Bai realized that it was Long Weiyan's mother. He thought she made a spectacular appearance. Long Yan got out of the helicopter and said that they were all assembled. She said that it was even strange because they weren't going to be promoted. Long Yan saw Xiao Bai and began to stare at him. Xiao Bai didn't understand why she was looking at him so intently. He thought it was because he overpowered her son. Dracula said that since everyone is gathered, they need to start discussing. Xiao Bai whispered something to Li Ai. Xiao Bai whispered to her that he only grabbed her because the situation was heating up. He didn't want her to get out of control and asked her not to be angry with him. Lisa was embarrassed and thought that he was keeping secrets with her. Did she think their relationship was already at this stage? It seemed to her that everything was developing too quickly. Dracula announced to them that Su Xiao Bai had distinguished himself in the task of returning the gift of light and also helped stop Dean Lu. Therefore, Dracula decided to promote him to S rank and make him a guard of the 10th division. Longyan thought that she herself was in the 10th squad, so why didn't Dracula transfer him to the 9th? Dracula asked if anyone had any objections. Longyan said no. She thought that she should not be at enmity with Dracula. Lisa thought about what she knew about what Zhao Bai was capable of. S rank is his level. Moreover, he is the youngest S rank guard in history. Bai Yumo was thinking at this moment that from what she saw, he was indeed strong, but she doesn't like looking at him with Li Soi at all. She decided to seize the initiative. Bai Yumo raised her hand and said that she was against it. She explained that the Protoss guards protect not only the Protoss, but also small states. She said that the S wound is awarded for military merits, and Dracula wants to promote the newcomer. The citizens of her country would be worried about this. Dracula answered her that his abilities were confirmed by Li Sa and Ma Fei. She need not worry about this. Bai Yumo said that this is no good. The people of her country did not see what he was capable of. Dracula asked how then to convince her to recognize his rank. Bai Yumo replied that Dracula should allow him to go with her to her country. Bai Yumo said that if he defeated the students of her school, then she would definitely recognize his strength. The Xiaobai was shocked and asked about the students at her school. Lisa turned to Li Sei and said that she did this on purpose. They are the main strength of their country. Even she has nothing to oppose them with. Xiao Bai said that he was thinking about something else, that somehow all this would not be particularly decent. He asked Dracula to refuse so much unceremonious condition. Dracula replied to Xiao Bai that since Bai Yumo doubted him, he would have to go with Bai Yumo to the kingdom of women and defeat the warriors there in order to demonstrate the strength of the Protoss guard. Lisa was in a stupor. She believed that this was the end and the situation was very dangerous. Bai Yumo thought that as soon as they arrived at the place, he would understand that he had a high opinion of himself. Dracula told them that his promotion was a done deal. But there is something else they need to talk about. This is the main reason why he asked them all to come and asked them to follow him. Xiao Bai thought that his promotion was not the main reason for the meeting. He didn't understand why he invited all the S-rank guards then. 
Dracula showed everyone the corpse. They asked him who he was. Dracula replied that this was an A-rank guard from the 2nd Division, Le June. Bayumo examined the body and said that it was simply stabbed to death. He was far from a weakling. She did not understand how this happened. Bayumo straightened her hair and said that, judging by the wounds, the killer was very skilled with weapons. She asked who it could be. Dracula told her that she would understand if she touched the wound. When Bayumo touched the wound, she jumped away from the body in fear and said that it was the bloodthirsty king. Dracula said that without a doubt, it was him. Dracula thought that he had been dead for a long time and did not expect to meet him again. Xiaobai asked, who is this bloodthirsty king? Xiaobai thought that it was because of him that Dracula called them. Even Bai Yumo turned pale with fear. He understood that he was not an ordinary person. Bai Yumo recovered from her fear when she said that the bloodthirsty king is not one person, but five. She said that individually they are extremely dangerous. She told Xiao Bai to see how skillfully he killed Lei Jun. Bai Yumo said that he was once a guard, but he was wanted for killing a comrade. Xiao Bai was surprised and asked how the criminal was a guard. Kunai said that what Miss Bai said was correct. He said that this person was his disciple, one of the S rank guards in the 5th Division, one of the five bloodthirsty kings. Meanwhile, on the border of the kingdoms of female fencers. Someone was sitting on the edge of a cliff and looking into the distance. A black aura emanated from him. He was told that guard Lei Jun was dead and asked what was his doing. Bloodthirsty king, and Bumi said that yes, he was in his way and deserved to die. The hooded man told him that he had gone too far. Killing a guard will attract attention. He told them that he had not returned to follow their plan. He wants to return what was his. Kunai asked Brother Su to wait and asked if he could ask him something. Xiaobai turned to Kunai and said that he would help in any way he could. Kunai asked to tell Lan Qin that he had opened a small temple in his hometown and invited her to come there to talk. Xiaobai said that he would definitely give everything to her. Bai Yumo called Xiaobai and said that as soon as they talked he would return and not to forget what he had to do. Bayumo said that she was waiting for him here and not to even think about running away. Xiaobai told her that he would win and didn't worry, he wouldn't run away. An hour later, Xiaobai and Bayumo were heading to the kingdom of women. Bayumo said that her country owes its origin to the ability of the SSR rank virtuoso swordsman, a very unique ability that can be taught to others. Bayumo explained that, for some reason, these others included only women. So after a long time, they were the only ones left in their country. She said that, of course, she had met men in Protoss, but this was the first time she was returning home with one. She asked him to be more kind. She noticed that Xiaobai did not react at all. She didn't understand what he was thinking about because she was the first beauty of her country. He couldn't help but pay attention to her words. Xiaobai thought that Kunai Master spoke very respectfully to Olang Ching. He thought about Kunai wanting to talk to her about the past. He wanted to know if this had anything to do with Kunai's disciple, the bloodthirsty king. Bai Yumo pressed herself against Xiaobai. He didn't understand. He was surprised by this feeling. Bai Yumo hugged him and said that he was very brave for ignoring her words, thinking about his own. She asked what he really remembered about Li Se. She asked what he saw in her and said that she was much more beautiful. Bai Yumo thought that he certainly wouldn't let this fall on deaf ears. Shobai thought that the sect leader was flirting with him. He was afraid that her students were the same. Bai Yumo did not lag behind and asked who is more beautiful, she or Lisa. Xiao Bai tried to excuse himself and said that now was not the time for such questions. Xiaobai shouted at her that she had no control over where they were flying. Xiaobai fell into the water, and when he emerged from it, he said that fortunately he had been able to swim since elementary school. When he looked around, he saw what was in front of him and asked, What is this country of women? The girls didn't understand who he was. Some thought he was a predator. Someone said that he was human. They said that somehow she was not like them. They didn't understand where his chest was. 
Bayumo appeared in front of the residents. The girls bowed to her and said that Mu Wushan and Du Yuechan were greeting the head. Bayumo told them enough and they don't need so many honors. Zhao Bai looked at her and thought that she was behaving completely differently, and there was no trace of her previous coquetry. Did he think it was because of the students? She ordered the girls to bring the guy who fell into the water to her. Tonight, they will interrogate him. The girls began to think for the guy who fell into the water, and then it dawned on them that it was not a woman, but a guy. All the girls who were there shouted that it was a man. The girls discussed that they were seeing a man for the first time. One of them said that it means that guys are people without breasts. Others fell in love with him at first sight. One said that she only looked at him once, and a pleasant shiver ran through her body. Another said that watching is not enough. She said the guys were so wonderful. Du Yuechang said that men are rare. She's sorry she has to grab him. She said that we should take him to the city square for everyone to see. Bayumo ordered them to shut up and not be fooled by his beauty. She said that she might have flown here with him on the same sword, but once in a foreign country he began to pester her. Xiaobai shouted to her that it was the other way around. He asked her not to confuse others. It was she who began to be frivolous. The girls got angry and said that how dare he talk about their leader like that. Someone shouted that all men were depraved. Someone shouted that he needed to be captured and made a eunuch. Xiaobai was shocked that how easy it was to deceive these girls. Du Yuchang and Mu Wushan tied up Xiaobai and led him away. Xiaobai asked where the ladies were taking him. Mu Wushan told him to remain silent because the head forbade he talking to him. Du Yuechang said that the head said that men are dangerous. They are not strong enough yet so they should not contact him. They brought him to the right place and said that they had arrived. He needed to wait here and the head would come for him. Xiaobai easily broke the ropes and thought that Bai Yumo knew that this could not stop him. He assumed that she was probably not really up to anything bad. As he took off the blindfold, he thought that she had gone to great lengths to bring him here. Only he didn't understand why. Xiaobai heard the splashing of water. He hid behind a stone and thought that this was the territory of Bai Yumo's house, which means these splashes. Bai Yumo was swimming in the lake. She asked Xiao Bai that he hadn't seen enough of her yet. Xiao Bai wondered how she noticed him. Bai Yumo simply smirked at him. He thought about how awkward it all turned out. He was unintentionally peeping. He thought that who knew that she would wash here, he asked for forgiveness. She floated towards him and said that she might not be as innocent as Li Sa, but she was much more feminine. She told him that since he saw her body, he would be held responsible. She asked why he was silent. Bai Yumo said that he does not want to be responsible for her. She asked that he was one of those who would enjoy himself and immediately leave. He wanted to ask what the responsibility she was talking about, that it really was. Bai Yumo stood up from the water and interrupted him, telling him not to worry. She said she wouldn't force him to marry her. She's not like that. Xiaobai asked what she wanted then. She replied that she wanted them to spend the night together. She won't blame him for this in the future. Xiaobai said that it seems that he has realized this is a trick. He asked what she thought she could do. Xiaobai began to say that she tried very hard to bring him here. She didn't want him to talk to her students, but in reality, she was just thinking about herself. Xiaobai began to emerge from behind the stone and told her that she had thought everything through well, but it was unlikely that spending the night together was her true desire. He wanted to tell her something about geckos. When he came out from behind the stone, Bai Yumo grabbed his clothes and kissed him. Xiaobai was surprised that she kissed him. He thought that this was his first kiss. Bai Yumo said that he wanted to tell her something about geckos. He told her that it was all right. Bayumo asked what that expression was. Why was he so worried? She asked why he was unwell. Xiaobai held back the pain of the seal and said that he was fine. Bayumo thought that she was so nervous over a trifle. She thought that apparently she and Li Soi were making slow progress. There was a bright explosion in the sky, like a fireworks display. Xiaobai asked what it was. 
Bayumo said that this was a signal for help. She suggested that perhaps predators had attacked. She said she needed to go help. Xiaobai blocked her way and said that how could she go and fight like this? He ordered her to get dressed first and he would help them. The residents ran and shouted that the predators had attacked, the predators had broken the gate, it was very dangerous, and they needed to escape. One girl asked to wait for her because she could not run. The girl tripped over a stone and fell. She thought she was done for now. A demonic-level predator approached her, a boar. He said that what they said about their country was true, that there were only girls here. He said he wouldn't make a mistake this time. The girl was terrified and told him not to come near her and asked what he needed. The boar approached her and said that she had a beautiful figure. He liked them like that. He asked if she would become his wife. The girl was completely shocked by such a question and could not answer anything. The boar licked his lips and drooled and said that silence is a sign of consent. He invited her to go to the newlyweds' room. Something pierced the boar's tongue. He didn't even notice that it came from above. He saw that a hole had formed in his tongue. The boar screamed in pain and asked what kind of bastard dared to do this. Xiaobai punched a hole in his tongue and asked, What do boars get married these days? Xiaobai covered the girl with himself and told her not to be afraid and to deal with him. He asked that how could such a beautiful girl agree to marry someone like him? The girl was surprised that he saved her. She thought that this was the libertine whom the head had brought. The boar got angry and said that like some worm he dared to poke his nose into other people's affairs. The boar swung his club and shouted that whoever was against him must die. The boar began to hit Xiaobai and said that some tiny man thought he could interfere with him. When the boar stopped beating, he saw only pits. He said that there was no empty space left of him. The boar pointed his finger at the girl and said that he needed more than just her. The boar was drooling and said that all the girls here were girls. Xiaobai prepared to hit the boar and asked what he was dreaming in reality. Xiaobai offered to help him wake up. Xiaobai took off the boar's head with one blow. The girl thought that this predator had killed several guards, which meant that he was strong. But this guy managed to defeat him with one blow. Xiaobai asked this girl if she was okay. She told him that she was a little hurt, but it was nothing. She said he was nothing like the chief described him as. She asked him what kind of person he was. He said that his name was Su Xiaobai, and he was the new Protoss guard. She was surprised that he was the same Su Xiaobai who defeated Liu Zhanyu. The girl blurred in her dreams and thought that she would meet him, and even more so, that he would save her. Xiaobai was surprised and thought about what was going on here. He didn't understand how they knew about him here. Xiaobai said that there was more trouble for tonight. He asked the girl if she knew how many predators had invaded. She told him that there were at least a hundred, and they also had their own leader. A spiritual-level predator came to Xiaobai. He asked that it was Xiaobai who killed the head of the boars. Xiaobai told him that he was asking about that pig. Xiaobai said that he killed him. The predator ordered his skeleton to bite him to death. Xiaobai activated his abilities and said that the girl had better move a little further away. Xiaobai said that he could deal with so many small fish at once. The predator told the skeletons to go ahead, even if they die, not to be afraid of anything. With one blow, Xiaobai erased all the skeletons and the predator itself. He was surprised and said that he seemed to have overdone it. He hoped that Chief Bai would not force him to pay for the losses. The girl said that she very much doubts it. A man in a cloak watched the city from the mountain and said that the information was correct. Endless darkness is here. Poisonous Zhao Tianyu asked the cloaked man, What will they do now? She asked that maybe he wanted her to intervene and bring him. The man in the cloak replied that it was not time for that yet. Zhao Tianyu said that the endless darkness is so close and he is so calm, she asked. Is it because of Bai Yumo? He told her not to underestimate her. He said that she may only be 18 years old, but she is the head of the fencing school and the entire country of women. Not everyone can achieve such heights. The man in the cloak said that in fencing, she was not inferior to the level of those two guards from Protoss. And he had never met anyone braver and more assertive than Bai Yumo in his entire life. Meanwhile, near the entrance to the country of women, 
Predators broke into the city. They shouted that they did not let the pig and skeletons get all the best. The predators wanted to take all the beauties for themselves. They were told to be more gentle because no one wants wounded bodies. Bayumo appeared in front of the crowd of predators. She told them that if they want to enter her country, they must first defeat her. She will personally kill everyone. The entire crowd of predators began to burst out laughing loudly. The ghost-level predator told her that there were tens of thousands of them here this time. How she plans to kill everyone, he asked. Is she crazy? He told her that even if the head of the school came here, they would eat her alive. He told Bayumo that she was very beautiful and offered to become his, in which case he would give her life. He asked what she would say to this proposal. Bayumo cut it. He asked what is she the head. Bayumo replied that she was the head of the sect. The predators did not understand what to do now. The scouts told them that the head was not in the city and that there was no one to defend this country. Bai Yumo told them not to even think about running. She would finish everyone off. The predators who stood behind did not see what was happening in front and discussed what was happening there. They suspected that something had gone wrong. Another predator said that there were a lot of people and he couldn't see anything. They shouted to the predators to retreat faster and whoever doesn't have time will die. The predators shouted that the entrance to the country was guarded by Bai Yumo. Bai Yumo killed everyone who tried to escape. The predators thought she had gone crazy. Bai Yumo dealt with everyone who wanted to enter her country. A total of 18,207 monsters were killed. Xiao Bai came to her and said that she behaved with dignity. She was able to fight off so many monsters alone. He told her that it was not for nothing that she was famous as a virtuoso fencer. She looked at him and said that there was no need for flattery. Because of her negligence, the city was now in ruins. Bayumo began to walk towards the city and said that we need to hurry to the city to deal with the rest of the predators. They cannot linger here any longer. Xiaobai grabbed her hand. Bayumo was surprised by this and thought what he needed. He said that this is no longer charming. Xiaobai said that he and her subordinates dealt with them and the sanitary detachment took care of the wounded. He had also already developed a thorough plan for protecting the city. Xiaobai said that he wanted to help her with all this. Bai Yumo was shocked that he managed it so quickly and gave orders on every issue. She thought that this was his first time here, so why do this? Xiaobai told her to go with him because they had another important matter to do. Bai Yumo asked which one. Xiaobai answered her that he would avenge the dead. He wants to destroy the monster's lair and get rid of them in the bud. Bai Yumo said that she couldn't go with him now. Xiaobai asked, is it too late? She explained to him that she is the head of a country of women. She is responsible for her students and cannot just leave somewhere. She asks him to understand this. Xiao Bai replied that he understood her concern. He told her that she had only two reasons to worry. He began to explain that the first reason is that if she leaves now and the predators attack again, what should we do then? The second reason is that the area is extremely rugged so she is not sure that she will be able to find the refuge of predators. Bayumo was surprised and asked how he did it. She said that this was indeed the case. She asked that he reads minds. Xiaobai said that there was no need to guess her thoughts. Her decision to stay here just in case is correct. But Xiaobai said that wealth and honor are achieved through risk. Bayumo didn't understand what kind of saying this was. Xiaobai said that according to his calculations, she has four options. The first is that they defeated the predators, preventing them from returning here in the near future. But others will want to take advantage of the current bustle. But if they see that Bai Yumo has returned, they will not dare to interfere. Second, judging by the outcome of the battle, both sides suffered losses, so the enemy will believe that they stayed here to recuperate. And in the meantime, Xiaobai and Bai Yumo will reach their den and suddenly attack. The third option is that Xiao Bai can deliberately release one of them to follow him. This is how they find out where they live. The fourth option, predators are herd creatures. They need to feed on people or weaker relatives in order to become stronger, so it is rare to see them in large numbers together. They must have some common reason to unite. Xiao Bai said that he described all the options and said that it was up to her to decide now. 
He asked Bai Yumo if she would turn a blind eye to her responsibilities and follow her heart. Xiao Bai said that she wanted to personally kill the culprit of what happened. Bai Yumo said that he was right and underestimated him. She agreed with him and said it was time to go finish them off. The scavenger predator was all cowardly in fear and said that during his rounds he saw with his own eyes the head of the fencing sect. He said that he followed her, she went to Protoss, but no one could have known that she would return so soon. The scavenger predator on his knees asked the lady to have mercy and mercy on him. Feathers flew from the depths of the cave and pierced his body. His mistress came out to him and said that it was his fault that several tens of thousands of her subordinates were killed overnight. His mistress was a predator of a spiritual level, the Eagle Shippen. She told him that he not only escaped, but also dared to ask her for mercy. Shippeng said that if he died thousands of times in a row, it would not have become easier for her. Shippeng still killed her subordinate. She decided that she needed to remember Bai Yumo's name. Xiao Bai punched a hole in the cave wall and said that he had found it. Shippeng did not understand where a man came from in a country of women. Shippeng told Xiao Bai that he managed to find her lair in such a wilderness. She asked him who he was. Xiao Bai told her to relax. He was only showing the way. Xiao Bai said that the one who wants to talk to her is behind him. Bai Yumo's sword flew towards Shippeng with great speed. Shippeng blocked the sword with her wings to prevent it from killing her. The sword flew off the wings, but Shippen was slammed into the wall by the force of the blow. She thought that if it weren't for her wings, she would be in trouble right now. She understood that these two were not ordinary people, and she could not give in to them. Si Peng asked how dare they bother her. She ordered to show her who she is. She took her sword in her hands and said that her name was Bai Yumo, and she was from the swordsman sect. Shipeng told her that it was good that she came, because Shipeng was just planning to deal with her. Bai Yumo said that she would deal with this and struck. Shipeng reacted and hit her. Shipeng was scared and thought that with such strength she could not compete with her. Shippen took off and realized that it was time for her to get away from here. Bai Yumo told her that if she decided to run away, she didn't think it would be so easy. Bai Yumo warned her that she would not fly far with her wings. Shippeng thought that Bai Yumo was strong and that she would definitely not win on earth. She thought she had a chance in heaven. Shippeng believed that no one flies as fast as she does. And if Bai Yumo follows her, she will show her. And if not, then she will safely get to help. Shippeng knew that that talisman would very soon recreate a new army of predators for them. Then her brothers and sisters will attack the country of women again and this time successfully. Shippeng thought that when the time comes, they will give the residents of this country for the use of her friends. Shippeng hoped that their exceptional ability, which is not transmitted to men, would become hers. Xiaobai managed to jump on her as she flew away. Xiaobai asked if she could fly slower, otherwise he wouldn't be able to hold on. Shippeng didn't understand when he had time. She didn't even feel anything. Xiaobai said that he has been here from the very beginning. Xiaobai looked at her and said that when he saw her giggling stupidly to herself, he did not dare to disturb her. Shippen told him that he was a scoundrel and to let her go, otherwise she would kill him. Xiaobai told her that the earth is so far away and cannot open her hands. In addition, he compared it to a super-fast air taxi. If he lets her go, she will immediately disappear. Xiao Bai activated the endless darkness and said that whether it could kill him, they still needed to look at that. Shipeng asked what he was doing. She said that she felt so strange, as if all her strength was leaving her. She asked him to let go, otherwise she would not be able to resist anymore. After these words, they began to fall down. They fell from a great height and the explosion was very strong from their fall. Xiao Bai tied up Shipeng and said that now she will not run away. Bai Yumo became embarrassed and said that she had been living for so many years, but she had never seen anyone tied up like that. She asked where he learned this. Xiao Bai said uncertainly that she saw it on TV, but it doesn't matter. Xiao Bai thought that this bird had a spiritual level. Its strength was like yin yu, which means it would hardly be able to organize such a large army of predators. Xiao Bai realized that she was someone's puppet. He needs to find out who is behind her. Xiao Bai told Bai Yumo that torture was his thing and asked her to just watch. Bai Yumo thought that this sounded dubious. Xiao Bai began to lightly hit Shipeng's face to make her come to her senses. He told her that he hadn't absorbed all her power. He told her not to pretend to be dead. Shipeng came to her senses and saw how Xiao Bai had tied her up. 
She screamed at him what he had done to her. She didn't understand what he was thinking. Xiao Bai said that he did not do anything. He asked her to simply tell who ordered her to attack the country of women, and he promises that he will not touch her. Shipeng told him not to dream. She wouldn't say anything. It won't do her any good. Xiao Bai said that she already knows about his ability. He told her that as soon as he touched a woman, her strength left her. He will do this until she becomes obedient. Bai Yumo was surprised that endless darkness also had such an effect. She thought that he hadn't tried it on her. Xiao Bai stood over Shipeng and told her that no matter what she didn't want to say, he would be able to loosen her tongue. Shipeng began to imagine various perverted actions in her head and thought that this was how he would loosen her tongue. Shipeng told herself to stop thinking about it. After all, they are from different clans, and they should not do anything like that. Xiao Bai licked his lips and told her that then he would have to start. Shipeng shouted that this pervert should not come near her. Then she finally gave in and said that she would tell him and asked him not to touch her. Shipeng told him everything she knew. Xiao Bai asked about the funeral banner talisman. Shipeng said that this talisman was given to her by a man in dark robes. She could not see his face. She has no idea where it came from. Shipeng revealed that the talisman actually works. She explained that it requires blood to activate it, after which it will summon predators at a level lower than the creator. She persuaded them, and they agreed to fight for her sake. Xiaobai said that it turns out that the guy in black advised her to attack the country of women. Shipeng replied that not really. She naively believed Xiao Ruanfen's words and voluntarily went against the country of women. Xiao Bai recalled that Xiao Ruanfen is the demon of Shitalin Mountain Pass. He realized that the guy in black wouldn't just give her a talisman. She was simply used, and she has no idea. Xiao Bai said that he did not notice any talisman in her home. He asked her where he was. She replied that he was with her. But since she was tied up, he had to look for it himself. Xiao Bai asked where exactly he was. He told her that it was some kind of trick. Shipeng got angry and said that she was tied up. What kind of tricks were there? She told him that everything she knew had already been told, and whether to believe her was up to them. Bai Yumo said that if the talisman really is with her, then it can only be in one place. Xiao Bai didn't guess and asked Bai Yumo where it could be stored. Bai Yumo replied that she was in the safest place. Shipeng replied that she guessed right. Bai Yumo began to search. Through embarrassment, Shippen said that he was not there, but a little further away. Bai Yumo took out the talisman. Xiao Bai said that it was too small and asked if it was fake. Shipeng replied that he was real. Shippen explained that it is small now, but if a drop of blood is applied, it will immediately increase in size and release its power. Xiao Bai said that apparently the talisman was their clue. Although they took advantage of it, it was she who harmed the country. Xiao Bai continued to say that until they figure out how the talisman works, she will be in the land of women. He told her that she would be tortured in the prison there. Bai Yumo asked Su Xiao Bai to wait. Xiao Bai asked her what she had to add. Bai Yumo offered to take her to prison tomorrow. Bai Yumo doesn't want to go back today. Xiao Bai and Bai Yumo sat on the shore of the lake and listened to the croaking of the toads and looked at the excellent view that was in front of them. Xiao Bai thought that this was his first time in such a situation. He didn't understand what to do. He realized that he needed to figure out something to talk about so that it wouldn't be so awkward. Bai Yumo turned to Xiao Bai and said that she was grateful to him for today, and said that when he was around, she felt calm. Xiao Bai replied that there was nothing to thank him for. He promised that he would help her take revenge, but they only found a talisman and a bird, nothing more. Bai Yumo said that he did a good job. Bai Yumo admitted that she only brought him to the land of women to annoy Li Su. She said that he not only did not protest, but also helped them when trouble came. Bai Yumo said that the previous sect master handed over her position to her when she was 18 years old. In addition, the responsibility to defend her country fell on her shoulders. Bai Yumo continued to say that neighboring countries were dying one after another but she still tried hard to ensure that her country continued to exist. Over the past few years, this burden has become too heavy for her. Xiao Bai thought that becoming the head of an entire country at 18 years old, and even in such difficult times, she had to go through something that is difficult for other people to imagine. Bai Yumo stretched and said that today may have been a busy day, but this was the first time she felt so at ease.
She asked Xiao Bai if he knew why she was so happy. Bai Yumo became embarrassed and said that she had met a guy she could rely on. Xiao Bai asked again what she said because he seemed to have not heard. Bai Yumo repeated to him that she had met a guy she could rely on. Xiao Bai pointed at himself and said that, whom you can rely on, is she talking about him? Bai Yumo approached him and said that this is a stupid question. Who else can she say this about? She said that it was her first time spending the night outside the house and asked him to be more gentle. Xiao Bai got scared and said that she was behaving inappropriately. Events are developing too quickly for him. Bai Yumo said that her mentor once told her that men are bad people and cannot be trusted. But it was a lie. Bai Yumo said that her words had nothing to do with the truth. She asked Xiao Bai that he really didn't have any feelings for her. Xiao Bai was nervous and worried. He thought that all this was awkward. He didn't know that the leader of a country of women had such a side. Xiao Bai began to look at Bai Yumo's body and thought that if, seeing this, no feelings arise, but can he consider himself a man? Xiao Bai was afraid of Long Ming's seal. He believed that he could overcome it. Xiao Bai's eyes lit up with excitement and said that that's it. His patience is over and he can no longer hold back. The seal still worked, and he rolled on the ground, screaming that he was in great pain. Bai Yumo said that it turns out that when he thinks about something vulgar, his body is pierced by pain that makes him want to die? Bai Yumo asked that the seal, the lizard technique, really affected him? Xiao Bai asked through pain, how does she know? He said that such things are not talked about left and right. Bai Yumo said that the lizard technique was developed in her country. Her mentor created a sealing technique. Bai Yumo revealed that she was as strong as Dracula, and in her youth, she had extraordinary beauty. She said that once a certain Casanova deceived her feelings. To settle the score, she not only blinded him, but also invented the lizard sealing technique. Xiao Bai asked that the Casanova was not by chance. Xiao Bai did not have time to finish. Bai Yumo said that yes, it was Dean Liu. He relied on his natural beauty and deceived his mentor. That's why all the women in her country hate him. Xiao Bai thought that it was no wonder that that girl's eyes sparkled when she saw him. He realized that it was because of Dean Liu. Bai Yumo said that according to the tradition of their countries, every girl who has reached the age of 20 must leave home and find a groom. If she gives birth to a boy, then she will take care of him herself. If she has a girl, then she is obliged to give her to them for upbringing and training in fencing, Bai Yumo said, so that the same thing as with her mentor would not happen to the residents of the country. She developed a technique and passed it on to her. She said that he was lucky to meet her. After all, she can easily remove the seal. Xiao Bai was surprised and asked if she was telling the truth. She replied that it was true, but first he had to undress. She asked to look at him. Bai Yumo looked and said that the technique was working. She noticed that it was a little different from the one her mentor taught her, but the principle was the same. She said she could deal with it. Bai Yumo picked up her sword and said it was fast. Xiao Bai got scared and asked why she needed a sword. Bai Yumo explained that the seal had to be cut, otherwise there was no other way. She told him not to worry, her sword was fast and swift. Bai Yumo began to cut the seal with her sword and said that she would not touch anything unnecessary. Xiao Bai felt that he really didn't hurt, but it seemed to him that his blood and chi were beginning to boil. He felt that the power from all over his body was accumulating together and was about to burst out. Xiao Bai told Bai Yumo that he had a fever. He could not hold back. He said that his body seemed to be about to burst. Xiao Bai's clothes were all torn into pieces. He shouted that it was unbearable. Bai Yumo dropped her sword from her hands in surprise. She was surprised that all of his sealed power came out. Xiao Bai pushed her to the ground and said that he could not control himself. Bai Yumo was embarrassed and said that he could do as he wanted. He asked her if he really could do this. She said yes. Shi Peng wondered what these bastards were doing. She thought that they had forgotten that she was here next to them. Li Sa sat on the Protoss wall and thought about what Su Xiao Bai was doing now. She wondered if he would download it. She thought that he was the only one imprisoned in the country of women. She was afraid that they would do something bad to him. Li Sa believed that he was dragged straight to hell and she needed to save him. Li Sa decided to come to him and wanted him to wait for her because she would be there soon. Bai Yumo woke up and thought that her mood could not be better. She was very pleased. She didn't even imagine that he was so good. She assumed it was because it had been sealed for a long time. Bayumo said it was night. He was like a tiger. 
Xiaobai woke up and didn't understand what it was. He guessed from the sensations of silk, soft like the skin of a goddess. When Xiaobai woke up completely, he saw that he had stockings in his hand. He remembered these things he took off from Bai's head. Xiaobai lazily turned his head. Bai Yumo lay next to her and said that last night he completely satisfied her. Xiaobai began to cover himself with Bai Yumo's clothes and said that this was all due to the removal of the seal. His strength surged and his mind became clouded. For some time, he was not at all aware of what he was doing. Bai Yumo hugged him from behind and said that it was okay, because now she was his, and he can't deny it. And if he deceives her, she will put that seal on him again. Meanwhile, in Protoss territory on the seventh bridge, the car was leaving the city. The car was driven by Zhao Ping and asked that Qin and Master Kunai have known each other for a long time. She had never heard Qin talk about him. Qin said that he was once a servant in his family. Pin was surprised and said that he was a guard of the fourth squad. And Qin comes from a rich family, it turns out. Qin said that this is a long-standing story. Kunai was not yet a monk then. They arrived at the right place. Pin said that they need to wait for the master here, and then they will go to the head of the country of women. Ping asked how Qin was feeling. Zhao Ping thought that Qin seemed sad to her, but isn't this her native land? Zhao Ping saw an abandoned village and realized that this was the same village in which she lived as a child. Memories came flooding back to Lan Qing, remembering how her entire family died. The guy told her that he needed to kill all his relatives in order to sharpen the blade in battle, and she was the last. The guy swung his blade and said that his weapon would not hurt quickly. Master Kunai came out to them and called Lang Qin. He told her that she really came. He waited for her for a long time. Zhao Ping said that she was glad to meet him. Lan Qing asked why he was looking for a meeting with her. Kunai explained that his life was coming to an end, but he still had one business left in this world. Therefore, he wants to entrust it to her. Xiao Bai made himself feather shorts. He asked if this was normal because he felt somehow awkward. Bai Yumo told him that he would get used to it. She said it was his own fault. He was so overwhelmed with power that his clothes came apart at the seams. She won't let him walk around naked in front of her students. Bai Yumo couldn't wait for them to return home. She will be able to take measurements for clothes with her own hands and measure the neck, chest, waist, hips, and shoulder width so that the new clothes fit like a glove. Shipping thought that judging by the flowing saliva, she didn't want to paw him for the sake of measurements. Xiao Bai led Shipeng on a rope. Bai Yumo flew nearby on a sword and told her not to even think about resorting to her tricks. She could pacify her with a blow. Shipeng thought about at what point in her life she took a wrong turn. When they had already gotten up, Xiaobai heard someone asking what they had done to Su Xiaobai. Xiaobai found this voice very familiar. Li Sa warned them that if she didn't see him today, there would be conflict. The guards told her that Xiaobai had left with the main one and was not here. Xiaobai called her and asked, Who is she? Li Sa recognized his voice and thought it was his voice. Li Sa turned around and saw his naked torso. She thought about how his muscles were so strong. Xiaobai asked her why she came and why she was looking for him. Li Sa only thought that she was not dreaming about this and saw Su Xiaobai's body. Li Si began to bleed. Xiaobai didn't understand what was happening to her. He asked if she was injured. Bai Yumo thought that the pursuit of her man had brought Li Su all the way to the door of her house. She noted that Li Su was very persistent. An hour later, at Bai Yumo's house, Li Sa regained consciousness and thought about how she could faint in front of Su Xiaobai. She felt very awkward. Xiao Bai said that she woke up. He told her that she had lost a lot of blood, which is why she fainted. He prepared a soup of dates and lotus seeds for her. He said that this soup was good for anemia. Xiao Bai told her to eat quickly before it gets cold and asked her not to get burned. Li Sa thanked him and thought that he was a very caring guy. She thought that if they were together, she would be so happy. Xiao Bai didn't understand where so much blood came from. He said he examined her, but found no wounds. Li Sa was embarrassed and said that it was all because of the dry weather. Li Sa lied about being suffering from excess internal heat, which is why her nose began to bleed. She said it's normal. Xiao Bai became embarrassed and said that her blanket fell off. Li Sa didn't understand what kind of blanket it was. He said that it fell and that's okay. Li Sa saw that she was naked and started screaming and asking where her clothes were. Xiao Bai said that it was all stained with blood, but they managed to wash it off. Li Sa asked him that he wouldn't do anything after seeing her naked body. Xiao Bai told her not to make things up. He just cooked her soup. 
He had no other intentions. Lee Sa thought about something that didn't happen at all. Bai Yumo came into their room and told her not to come up with unnecessary things. Bai Yumo said that she personally asked the maid to take her clothes to be washed, and she was already so inspired. Bai Yumo threw Lee Si's clothes on her bed and told her to get dressed quickly. Lee Sa asked why she was so kind. Lee Sa asked what she was up to. Bai Yumo said that she is not as petty as she thinks. She is her guest and will not offend her. Bai Yumo said that besides, her country is already in trouble. Bai Yumo said that they had already attracted someone else's attention, so they might need her help. They left the room and walked along the courtyard of the house. Bai Yumo asked them to wait a little. She needed to give instructions to the students and said that she would be there in a minute. Bai Yumo thought that she would still have time to spend with Xiao Bai at night. Li Sa pulled Xiao Bai's clothes. He turned around and asked what happened. Li Sa asked that he had already proved to them everything they needed and asked that Bai Yumo had not caused him any trouble. Xiao Bai was embarrassed and thought that Chief Bai was right when she told him why she actually brought him here. Li Sa even came to him. He realized that she really liked him and didn't want to upset her. Xiao Bai whispered to her not to worry. He has already figured out how to settle everything here. Bai Yumo asked, what are these two whispering about? Li Sa told her that she asked Xiao Bai if she was using her powers as head to make his life more difficult as a guard. Bai Yumo said that there was no way, because she loved him dearly and would not do something like that. Li Sa got angry and asked what else was this expression on her face, what was she planning? Bai Yumo said that she thinks about whatever she wants and asked Li Su not to interfere. Xiao Bai covered his face and thought that they had not lived in harmony for even five minutes. They left Bai Yumo's house. The girls who were nearby were happy that the head was coming. The villagers were discussing that the guy behind was Xiao Bai. They said that he helped them a lot yesterday. Someone in the crowd asked why the head called him a libertine. After all, he was a hero who defeated Dean Liu. She answered that the head was afraid that he was pretending and might cause riots. The girls said that he was handsome and that he was also strong and wanted to be closer to him. Bai Yumo ordered everyone to shut up and listen to her. Bai Yumo said that not long ago they were attacked by a huge number of predators. Victory was theirs, but there were many wounded, so they couldn't relax. She said that they must unite and protect their country. Chief Bai continued to give her inspiring speech about how their country is small, but they won't let others poke them around. If they are attacked, they must destroy them. The country's women were inspired by the speech, but Bai Yumo continued to say that they should not return again. Xiao Bai listened to her and thought that she deserves to be called the head of the country. In just a moment, it boosted their morale. He thought she was an extraordinary girl. A girl approached Xiao Bai and asked if he remembered her. She said he saved her yesterday. This girl is the daughter of the elder of the swordsmanship sect, Shou Kayun. Lighting a cigarette, the girl said that she did not advise her to get close to him. She said that she needed to discuss something important with the head. Bai Yumo asked that she found a lead in the case that she assigned her. She replied that she had found it. Her name was Aniji. She was the elder of the swordsmanship sect. Aniji said that the mourning banner that was given to her is connected with the legendary Grand Master Noah, who committed suicide. Bai Yumo asked Elder Anne to tell her everything she had learned. They all sat together in the living room and Aniji said that the previous chapter fought with him, so she knows something about him. Aniji said that Master Noah mastered the most complex ancient Western techniques. His strength was the creation of magical artifacts, which are now commonly called talismans. Aniji said that he possessed an extremely vile SSR rank ability exfoliation. It allowed people to take away their abilities and then put them into an object or talisman. She said that to make the talisman special, he was looking for unusual abilities. As a result, every country put him on the wanted list. Aniji said that Noah was not only a talented master, but also a collector of talents. The more unique the ability, the more interesting it is for him. Bai Yumo said that based on what was said, they attacked them because... Xiao Bai said hesitantly that they attacked because of him, as he believed. Aniji said that it was true. It was he who brought trouble to their country. Aniji said that yesterday's attack could have been a reconnaissance attack. Xiao Bai needs to leave them today. Otherwise, they will be in even greater danger. Li Sa couldn't help herself and asked what the point was. She said that first they dragged him here, and now they are driving him away. Li Sa decided that they were simply pushing him around. 
Anichi said that she tells it like it is. Dying for one guy is a bad trade-off, says Anichi. Bai Yumo stood up and asked El Duran that she thought she was a coward who would cling to her life. Bai Yumo said that this does not take into account the fact that yesterday he protected them from predators. He's her man. Bai Yumo said that it doesn't matter who the master is, even if the Lord God himself comes. She said that no one would lay a finger on Xiao Bai. Bai Yumo repeated very loudly that Xiao Bai was her man and no one would lay a finger on him. Li Sa stated that she herself was ready to swear on her life that she would protect Su Xiao Bai. Shi Kaiyun believed that her mother was mistaken. She said that Xiao Bai is their benefactor. They can't turn away from him. Li Sa asked Bai Yumo to repeat and asked when Xiao Bai became hers. Bai Yumo asked her, didn't she know? Xiao Bai sat and thought that the massacre was about to begin. Li Sa asked what she had already gotten him into. Bai Yumo said that last night she and he did what a husband and wife should do. She asked that after this she could not consider him hers. Li Sa was shocked, turned around and went to the corner. Following Li Soi, Xu Kaiyun went to the corner. Li Sa asked for forgiveness and said that she should not have come here. Xu Kaiyun said that it would be better if that boar king had eaten her yesterday. Xiao Bai said that he seemed to have broken several girls' hearts without knowing it. Bai Yumo answered him that he was so shy. Aniji asked Chief Bai that this is her final decision. She said that their country had already suffered many troubles and asked that she was ready to be in danger for the sake of this young man. Bai Yumo answered confidently and that she agreed. Xiao Bai looked at Bai Yumo and thought that she answered instantly. Without hesitation, he realized that she was really ready to do anything for him. Aniji thought that the former head was like Bai Yumo. They were both blinded by love. Aniji said that since she decided so, they must obey. You just have to be well prepared. Elder Ann said that if they want to kill the bloodthirsty king, they will have to face combat power comparable to the state. Shipeng was tied up in prison and was thinking about where her brothers were and why they still hadn't come to her rescue. She was so uncomfortable here that it was difficult to breathe, but she could destroy them all. The green lion drank tea and said that it was very fragrant. It makes my soul feel so calm, he asked what water is used to prepare it. Spiritual level predator. God of Prosperity. Bai Xiang said that it is called Bilo Chun. He learned how to prepare this type of green tea from people. They have a special technique for planting tea. Bai Xiang said that if he liked it, he would order his subordinates to plant their entire mountain with tea. Then they could drink it as much as they wanted. The green lion said he thought their little sister would like it. She will surely love Bilochun. Baishian replied that she was young and had a strong-willed character. She said a few words to him and ran away to the mountains. The green lion said that he had raised her poorly and decided to go look for her. Someone hit the predator at the entrance to the cave with such force that it flew inside. After the blow, the predator's eyes lit up. He thought about what felt good, and he couldn't think that he would like the blows. He compared this feeling to what you get when you are with a woman. The green lion got angry and called her a vicious snake. Zhao Tianyu walked closer to them. The green lion told her that she had a lot of strength for a tiny person, and courage too, since she is rampaging in his domain. The green lion crushed his cup of tea out of anger and asked her why she was tired of living. Zhao Tianyu told him not to make things up. She didn't come to provoke them. She asked that don't they want to find their little sister. Zhao Tianyu took out Shipeng's pen and said that she knew where she was. Bai Xiang said that it was her feather and asked where she got it. Zhao Tianyu looked like a predator. He thought that he was dying. Zhao Tianyu said that their little sister is in the underground prison of the country of women. She said that there is only one way to rescue her, to combine their efforts and attack the country. The green lion told her that she was talking about it like it was easy. He said that the head there, Bai Yumo and her subordinates, were not that easy to defeat. Zhao Tianyu told him not to worry. She has two talismans that will help win their little sister back. Bai Xiang said that this radiance comes from... The green lion interrupted Bai Xian and said that there were two of them from the Stone of Overcoming. Zhao Tianyu said that these two shards would allow them to temporarily increase their level to divine. Bai Yumo said that Xiao Bai had been looking at the map all evening and asked if he was tired yet. She suggested they go to sleep. Xiao Bai replied that he was not tired yet and she could go alone. They don't have much time. Li Sa told Bai Yumo not to interfere with him, because he was planning how to organize the defense and how to conduct the battle. Bai Yumo said that she didn't know, 
and Lisa might not have reminded her. She asked why Lisa sat in her office. Lisa replied that Xiao Bai was a Protoss guard and was obliged to ensure his safety. Xiao Bai exhaled and said that he had an idea. The girls looked at him, and Xiao Bai said that then the enemy attacked to assess their strength. They already know how their defenses are positioned. Xiao Bai said that the enemy operates at night, and they operate during the day. They need a plan that the enemy would not have thought of, so that they can change their current disadvantageous situation. Li Sa thought that he had become truly wise. Bai Yumo thought that sounded reasonable. She considered it an idea worthy of her man, so daring that she wants to try. Bai Yumo's subordinate said that she had guests from Protoss. Bai Yumo walked towards the door and wondered who would come to her at such an hour. When Bai Yumo opened the doors, Lang Qin and Zhao Ping stood in front of her. Pin greeted her and said that she was a Protoss guard and she had come to her master. Xiao Bai walked to the door and told her that she had arrived after all. Bai Yumo thought that he was her master. Zhao Ping said that there were so many predator corpses on the way here. She said that apparently they had a battle here. Zhao Ping hugged Xiao Bai and said that she was so worried about him. She told him that it was good that he was not hurt. Xiao Bai hugged her back, smiled, and said that everything was fine. Nothing happened to him. Bai Yumo couldn't stand it and asked what it was and why they were hugging and asked who they even were. Bai Yumo asked that they came to the land of women to protect Su Xiao Bai. She said that she had heard this excuse somewhere before. Li Sa thought that she was laughing at her. Xiao Bai said it was true. He said that Ping and Qin had come to guard him. He said that since he found himself in Protoss, they were the ones who took care of him. He said that Pinny always silently paid for him and explained how everything worked here. And Qin guarded him from the street every night and took care of his safety. Xiao Bai said that they are not only bodyguards, but also friends and family. Bai Yumo thought that Xiao Bai is a highly moral guy and should not be jealous of him over trifles. She decided that she had jumped to conclusions. Zhao Ping said that not only she and Qin, but all the sisters like the owner. She said they followed him according to their hearts. Bai Yumo asked that there are other bodyguards. Xiao Bai thought that he had a bad feeling. Zhao Ping began to say that she was the first. Then Qin, Li Xin, and Wang Xiu joined. Afterwards, Mo Yan and Yin Yu moved into their house. She said they wanted to protect him too. Ping also remembered Mu Yuan and said that she was his daughter-in-law. Xiao Bai was frightened and felt an icy cold. Bai Yumo became angry and said that she demanded an explanation from Xiao Bai. Under the pressure of Bai Yumo's interrogation, Su Xiao Bai explained in detail everything about his life in Protoss. She did not stop being jealous, but she came to the point of realizing that not everything depended on him. Xiao Bai exhaled and thought that their battle was finally over. Xiao Bai came down the steps and said that it seemed to him or that Qin had somehow changed. Xiao Bai asked if she was hiding anything from him. A black aura emanated from the Qin sword. She said that she was fine and asked not to worry about her. She told him to think better about how to kill the bloody king. Xiao Bai thought that maybe he was imagining things, although he felt that Qin was under enormous pressure. Li Sa sat on the shore of the lake and asked the frog that she lacked determination. She said that if she had taken the initiative, she and Xiao Bai could have been together. Li Sa heard some rustling in the trees, turned around and was surprised. Zhao Tianyu came out of the trees and was no less surprised by such a meeting. Zhao Tianyu recognized Li Su. She thought about what she was doing here. She thought that there was a new addition to the country of women. She believed that she was unlucky to meet such a difficult opponent. Li Sa said that she was not a resident of this country and asked who she was to walk around here in the dead of night. Zhao Tianyu realized that she had no idea who she was. She shouldn't panic. Zhao Tianyu said that she was just passing by and asked people not to pay attention to her. She said she wouldn't bother her. Li Sa took out her sword and said that she had the scent of a high-level predator. She said that this was extremely suspicious, considering that she appeared near the country of women. Li Sa said that she was the henchwoman of the Bloody King. Zhao Tianyu said that she is not as stupid as they say, since she thought of it. Zhao Tianyu asked what they would fight. Li Sa ran towards Zhao Tianyu and shouted that she was about to get it. Li Sa struck, but Zhao Tianyu dodged, and with a few jumps back, she broke the distance with Li Su so that she could not attack again. Zhao Tianyu said that the fame of her abilities was deserved, but she shouldn't mindlessly attack strangers. Zhao Tianyu activated her ability and released her poison into the air. Li Sa closed her airways and realized that her ability was poisoning. 
Zhao Tianyu said that holding your breath will not help. She explained that her poison of obscenity does not spread through the respiratory tract. Li Sa didn't understand what poison of obscenity she was talking about. Zhao Tianyu said that poison enters the body even through the tiniest pores and spreads instantly. Zhao Tianyu said that the point is that only her lover can neutralize him. Li Sa began to think about what she and Xiaobai needed to neutralize the poison. She did not understand how it was possible to come up with such vile poison. Li Sa noticed that bizarre pictures were beginning to creep into her thoughts. She decided that she needed to get out. Zhao Tianyu said that she would not come out. The more you resist, the faster it spreads. Zhao Tianyu told her that Li Xie needed to quickly figure out where to find her lover. If he doesn't manage it overnight, he will die. Li Sa thought that there were only vulgar thoughts in her head, but she could not sit and wait for death. She needs to do something. Li Sa decided to return to Xiaobai. Zhao Tianyu said that she was an innocent girl and wondered if her beloved would neutralize the poison. Zhao Ping called the owner and said that she had prepared dinner. Zhao Ping heard the sound of water and realized that Zhao Bai was in the shower. Pin went into the bathroom and saw that the glass in the bathroom was a little see-through. She didn't know what to do. She decided to wait for him in another room until he came out. She thought that this was normal. Bai Yumo walked around the yard and said to herself that she had lost her temper a little, and jealousy was not typical of her. She reasoned that although there were many girls around Xiao Bai, they had not advanced at all. Bai Yumo decided that only she had a place in his heart. She thought that she would need to turn up the heat tonight so that he would finally become hers. Bai Yumo came into his room and invited Xiao Bai to sleep together. Zhao Ping told her that the owner was in the shower. Bai Yumo got angry and asked what she was doing in his room late at night. Zhao Ping replied that she brought him something to eat. Something heavy landed and it seemed to them that there was an earthquake. They suggested that maybe the bloody king had visited. Li Sa returned on time. She said that she just needed to be with Xiao Bai, and then the poison would stop working. Lan Qing watched as Li Sa ran into the house and thought that another one had arrived. She wondered why they were all going to play Mahjong there. She wondered if Xiao Bai could stand it. Zhao Tianyu walked halfway through the forest and thought that Li Sa had run away, and okay, she believed that her degree of poisoning was enough to become infectious. Zhao Tianyu thought that if she spread the poison throughout the country, she would be of great help to her. Xiao Bai got out of the shower and thought that a shower really helps to put his thoughts in order. He needs to improve the defenses so that no one can invade the country and they will kill them. When he entered the room, he saw infected girls. Bai Yumo told him that she was so petty and needed to be punished, but how exactly he should decide for himself. Zhao Ping said that it was cool outside and the owner was hungry and needed to be fed to his fill. Xiao Bai threw away the brush, turned red and asked what was going on here. He asked, what is this a test? Li Sa could not restrain herself and simply pounced on him to kiss him. Xiao Bai was surprised that she just kissed him. They fell onto the bed. Xiao Bai thought that this should not be the case. After all, the Li Su he knows wouldn't do this. He assumed that someone was controlling her consciousness. Li Sa asked Xiao Bai to save her, Li Sa told him that she plucked up courage and came to him and that they had little time. She said that only he could save her. Xiao Bai realized that the poison was affecting her. Bai Yumo lay next to them and told him not to give all his attention to Li Shi. She also needs his love. Zhao Ping was also nearby and said that she came to him for the first time and hoped that he would not drive her away. Xiao Bai came up with the idea that apparently the poison can be transmitted if everyone in the country catches it. The consequences are scary to imagine. Xiao Bai stood on the bed and decided that he needed to deal with him. Xiao Bai activated endless darkness and thought that in this way he would be able to draw out the poison from them, and then he would have to deal with the side effect himself. The main thing for him is to prevent it from spreading throughout the country. Although he really wants to, he cannot afford to do this to those whose minds have become clouded. Xiao Bai's nose began to bleed and he realized that this is an unusual aphrodisiac. If you resist its effect, it will only get worse. Bai Yumo was scared and tried to wake up Xiao Bai. She asked what was wrong with him. She said she had no plans to become a young widow. Zhao Ping said that the owner was coming to his senses. She did not understand what happened to him. Li Sa said it was because of the poison. She explained that he had taken it from them to save him. Bai Yumo said that she was a paladin. 
so let her save him. Lisa told her that her abilities would not help here. Lisa explained that in order to neutralize the poison, it is necessary to mix yin and yang. Lisa took off her clothes and said that it was her fault and she would fix it. She decided to help Xiao Bai get rid of the poison herself. Bai Yumo said that this was some kind of joke. She didn't understand why on earth it was her. Bai Yumo said that he helped them all out. Bai Yumo said that this is why they should help him. Zhao Ping said that they would try to properly rid the owner of the poison. Bai Yumo told him not to worry, he would be fine. Li Sa said that since she was the main culprit, she would also help. Xiao Bai found himself on the street. He saw that the snow was falling and the weather was cold. But he didn't understand why he didn't feel cold, but on the contrary, warmth and comfort. Bai Yumo told him to be calm, they will warm him up properly. Lan Qing sat on the roof and guarded them. She asked herself what they had already started and noted that they were energetic. Lan Qing remembered the sword that Master Kunai gave her. He told her that this sword had been his companion on all his travels. He was sorry that he had given it to the wrong person. As a result, his mistake became irreparable. Kunai told her that all these years, being next to the sword, he prayed every day to rid him of cruelty. Now his time is running out. Therefore, he wants to give it to Madame Qin. After all, her soul is pure, as before. Lan Qing told him that this sword was imbued with the blood of her family. She asked that she really thought a couple of lines of prayer would wash it away. Lan Qing told Kunai that, like him then, she thought he could be brought to reason. Lan Qing turned around and ordered him to get rid of the sword quickly and bid him farewell. The Kunai said that it cannot be destroyed. It contains the souls of her family members. Lan Qing turned to him and asked how to understand this. Kunai explained that the sword was nicknamed Evil Spirits, not because it is capable of leading astray. The most important reason is that the souls of those who died from him will fall into slavery to him. But nothing can grant eternal life, so gradually they will become the source of the sword's power. Kunai said that saving innocent souls can only be done by relying on the gift of light sealed within it. The Kunai said that its power helps purify evil. Kunai believes that the sword will become hers, then this is the most appropriate fate for him. Lan Qing thought about whether she could control Muramasa's sword. Meanwhile, an unexpected guest visited Master Kunai's pagoda. The guy took off his mask and said that they had not seen mentor Kunai for a long time. The masked guy was Lan Qing's older brother, Abumi, and asked if he could return what belonged to him. Kunai told him that he had come after all, and after so many years of exile, he still held the wrong judgments. The kunai told him that if he wanted to get the sword, he would have to go through it. And Bumi took out a sword and said that he would not like to fight with him because he was already old. And Bumi attacked kunai and said that he should take better care of his health. Master kunai didn't even move. He calmly blocked Abumi's blow. And Bumi said that this is a worthy answer. It is not easy to penetrate his defense with a sword strike. Kunai said that his once momentary humanity led him to lose his way. Kunai released his power and said that for him, this opportunity to correct the mistakes of the past may be the last in his life. Kunai asked rebel Abumi to die again, and Bumi said that this is the first time he has seen such power of vision. He asked that he was determined to kill him. Kunai replied that since he returned and found him, there was no other outcome for him. The Kunai prepared to attack and said that this time his hand would not waver. And Bumi was able to block the kunai master's attack with one hand, and Bumi told him that he had become weaker. The kunai told him not to be so arrogant and to strengthen his attack. And Bumi is shocked that the kunai was used by the Buddha Arhat. He thought that he still had something to surprise him with. The kunai attack broke Abumi's arm, but he could still control the blade. The kunai jumped up and said that he had deviated from the fighting style he had previously followed. Kunai told him that the strength of martial arts does not depend on the sharpness of the blade. They are contained in the very heart. Kunai continued to say that only by realizing this could he worthily bear the title of warrior. Kunai asked that he wanted to use his water technique. Then he will simply evaporate it all. And Bumi was lying at the bottom where the lake was. He was covered in blood. He said that his SSR rank technique is extraordinary and Bumi asked how much energy it took to evaporate the whole lake. He said that although he lacked the teacher's instructions to some extent, and Bumi attacked with his water technique 
and said that he managed to absorb a certain amount of water. The kunai easily repelled his attack and said that he need not try because today is the day of his death. Kunai came down to him and said that he needed to finish what he started. He told him to die and become part of the land of his homeland. This is the last good deed that he can do for his teacher. The kunai said that in its entire life, it had harmed 206 people and seven Protoss guards. He will not forgive his atrocities, and on behalf of the representative of the Protoss, he will bring him to trial. Kunai wondered what he would say to this. And Bumi answered him that he turned out to be somehow pompous, and it was Kunai as his teacher who made him like that. Also, Abumi said that Kunai should take a liking to that destroyed village. He couldn't do this on his own. If it weren't for Kunai's words, he would have long ago lived like any other person. And Bumi said that he had the opportunity to inherit his father's dojo and fulfill his duties as a brother. He added that everything went wrong for him after the moment Kunai handed him the Muramasa sword, and after that, it would be unfair to blame only him. Kunai admitted his mistake. He said that he was mistaken when he assumed that Abumi could resist him. In order to pay for his mistake, he will commit suicide after Abumi himself dies, to which Abumi replied to Kunai that this self-confidence would sooner or later destroy him. At that moment, Kunai screamed. Someone coming up from behind stabbed him in the back with a sword. Kunai himself began to think. He did not understand what had just happened and who could have done it. He couldn't quite believe that there was someone else behind him. He thought that this was the end for him, that he did not have time to correct his own mistake. And Bumi asked for forgiveness and said that everyone who saw his second personality was long dead. Kunai was no exception to this. Finally, Kunai asked him a question where he couldn't understand why he was so confident in his attack from behind. After all, Kunai had the ability of a Buddha, which could repel any attack. And Bumi replied that the teacher was only able to reflect his one technique. And by using several unusual techniques at the same time, he forced Kunai to sacrifice that very protection. Finally, Kunai had time to think that at least Abumi was able not to underestimate the abilities of his teacher. And Bumi also thought that he already felt the call that came from that weather. All the years in exile, his existence was miserable. He waited for the Maramasa sword to finally become his again. And so, his master came. And then the events moved to the same Bayumo estate. Lan Qing wondered why she caught a cold, since this had never happened before. She had a bad feeling. She thought that this was nonsense, and when it was dawn, she would take a hot bath. At this moment, Xiaobai thought that he had done something bad last night. He didn't understand what they would do when they woke up. Looking in the mirror, he also thought that this was the same red train that they had brought yesterday. It seemed to him that the poison could be activated by the ability, due to the fact that he swallowed it, he now has it. When he came to Protoss, he constantly relied on the power of consuming endless darkness. Thanks to this, he became on par with other S-rank guards. He clearly felt that after Dean Liu, the absorbed energy did not have the usual effect on him. This is similar to the mechanics of the game, where to raise the level higher, you need many times more experience. After that, Su Xiaobai said that if he wants to overcome the barrier, then he needs to start with his own abilities. If he can master everyone, then his power will become limitless. Zhao Ping, seeing that the owner had woken up, said that the poison had somehow had a bad effect on him. Bai Yumo replied that it looks like the three of them did a good job. Lisa said that yesterday, due to an emergency, they had to neutralize the effects of his poison. There was a reason for this, of course. She also added that since this happened, then she should become his. Xiaobai told her that yes, of course, they can all become. I thought to myself that he was a complete animal. Remembering, he asked Bai Yumo if there was a spacious training ground in her estate, preferably so that no one would look into it. To which she answered him with amazing eyes that, why does he need a playground? She assumed that the three of them were unable to rid him of the poison. She added that he was still poisoned and wanted to go with her to the second round. Xiaobai said that he is fine, he is thinking of finding a place to practice. 
He said that there was little time left, but even a little training would greatly increase the chances of winning. Bayumo told him that he deserved to be her man because he turned out to be so reliable. They will have to try. And so a whole week passed. Events took place around the great master of the isolated islands. Suddenly, something chilling aura wafted from one of the western islands. Countless bloodthirsty monsters were gathered on this island. The hooded man said that the time had already come and it was time to go. Moving his hand forward, he launched the portal of the whirling void that was created by the Grand Master. He said that this portal could lead directly to the country of women and ordered the soldiers to enter there. He also ordered to destroy them all because he saw their zeal and they inspired him with their attitude. Eric, who was called a fist to death, said he couldn't wait any longer. He can't wait to try out his new gear. A guy with blonde hair, enchanted by the Grand Master in a Buddhist rosary, said that it was Bai Yumo who was guarding S. Rang. And he wanted to fight with her in the vanguard as soon as possible. The fallen angel Sifa told him that he was a fool and not as famous as him. And why on earth is this, such as he considers himself strong and stuffy? Flying up, she added that a fierce battle awaits them today and they need not to die in it. Looking at Abumi, Zhao Tianyu thought that this was all amazing. She had not imagined it. At this moment, Abumi thought that he couldn't understand why Eric's body was faintly emitting an aura he knew. Zhou Tianyu called Abumi and said that his thoughts were visible on his face. She also asked him if his arm hurt. Looking at her, he told her that she shouldn't stick her nose into things that aren't her own. Zhao Tianyu stood in shock and thought about how arrogant he was, accepting her gesture of goodwill for interfering in his affairs. She thought that she was pretending, because usually men could not resist her. Noah said it was time for them to go too. Meanwhile, at the other end of the portal, Noah's puppets have already scattered throughout the land of women. But what was unusual was that there was no trace of people here. This place has turned into a ghost town. Noah's puppets of the ghost-level predator's sentinels surveyed the city from the rooftops. One of them thought it was strange. There is not a soul in such a big city. He wondered if everyone had fled. Lightning appeared in the sky. Someone started saying that the SSR ability is Pang, Lightning Bolt. Its advantage is its wide range of action. The predator raised his head and asked who was talking. Shobai told him to feel the power of thunder. Shaobai was covered in lightning and said that the first time they broke into the country of women, they entered through the front, but Chief Bai protected the entrance to the country. Shaobai added that now they decided to attack from the rear. Shobai said that the country is surrounded along its entire perimeter by a sheer cliff, and there is only one road to it. This location makes it impregnable. Noah came out of the portal and silently listened to Xiaobai as he said that the easiest way to get directly inside the country would be the easiest way to capture it. Xiaobai said that this was what they were counting on, but unfortunately, if they could find the country's weakness, so could Xiaobai. Zhao Tianyu told Noah that he had miscalculated and was being fooled by the youth. Noah replied that victories and defeats are common for warriors. Noah with a cold expression on his face, said that he had just lost his ghost-level puppets in large numbers. Shobai and Ping were attacked by Noah's puppets and demonic-level predators, Torin. Shobai asked her if she was ready. Pin replied not to worry about it. Pin stopped them with her ability to control gravity. The Torin did not understand what was happening to them. They felt like their body weighed a ton and they couldn't move. Shaobai made two swords from lightning and said that he trained every day under the pressure of this technique. Now he no longer feels it. Shaobai said that it doesn't matter how many demon-level predators come, they are not a threat to him. After these words, he seemed to evaporate. Torin said that he is very fast and it is impossible to follow his movements. Shaobai appeared from above to stab Torin in the head. The second Torin said that this was nothing. He was used to training under such pressure. He said that the Torin are invincible. Xiaobai cut him in half and said that he talks a lot. Xiaobai thought that the council's fears were not in vain. The bloodthirsty kings could well destroy the country. Skolopendra's ghost-level predators appeared in front of Xiaobai. 
he understood that they had a lot of demon-level predators under their control. Such combat power is comparable to the military power of an entire state. He thought that if they had not evacuated the civilians, the consequences would have been terrible to imagine. Xiaobai jumped higher than the predators and struck with an electric splash. Xiaobai chopped them down without a drop of regret. Thanks to the endless darkness, he can replenish energy while in battle. The longer he fights, the stronger he becomes. The number of predators doesn't matter, they're just his food. Zhao Ping watched Xiao Bai's fight. She was happy for him and said that these were the fruits of the owner's training. He became much stronger. All the predators that came out of the portal were destroyed by one person. Xiao Bai was sitting on a mountain of predator corpses. Xiao Bai thought that although he had absorbed a lot of energy, it seemed that it was not enough to make a breakthrough. Moreover, he is physically exhausted. He remembered that the ability to control the earth was a useful thing. Xiao Bai thought that that predator arbiter could feed off the life force of the flora and fauna around. Xiao Bai activated exploitation. After a short time, he felt that his strength was returning to him. Even his wounds were healing. Xiao Bai said that the consumables have been dealt with. Now it's the turn of the bloodthirsty kings. Li Sa and Lan Qin appeared behind him. Bai Yumo told her subordinates that they would restore the destroyed houses, but she only had one man. Bai Yumo addressed the five bloodthirsty kings who emerged from the portal and said that this place would become their cemetery. Noah said that they were surrounded and completely defeated. This is the first time. Eric, flexing his fists, said that this is even more interesting. Eric said that that guy has been a vessel of endless darkness for a long time. Eric is already tired of holding back. He wants to finish off Zhao Bai first and then find Bai Yumo. Noah told them not to touch Su Xiao Bai. Eric asked why. He asked, that isn't he their target? Noah took off his hood and said that their goal was endless darkness, but its energy was not enough. It needed to be recharged. Noah explained that she would not be able to awaken the ancestor level now. Long Ming's voice said that it was him. Long Ming remembers his face. Xiao Bai thought that he had not heard this voice for a long time. He knows Long Ming's voice very well. Long Ming told him that although he couldn't remember the specific situation, he didn't forget his face. He could not forget the face of the one who killed him. Xiao Bai said that it turns out his enemy is Noah. Xiao Bai remembered their agreement to help him take revenge. Long Ming told him that Noah was very different from his previous enemies. He was an extremely dangerous person. Even at the peak of his powers, he was no match for him. Long Ming said that, alas, he is not her. In his current state, his chances of winning are zero. Xiao Bai decided that they then needed to join forces to win. Xiao Bai understood that this battle was not for his sake alone, but for the sake of preserving the entire country of women. Moreover, this time he will not fight alone. Lisa thought that she already belonged to Xiao Bai and was ready to give her life to protect him. Lan Qing thought that today would be Ah Bumi's last. Bai Yumo ordered the swords to attack the enemies who attacked them. A thousand swords headed towards the bloodthirsty kings. Bai Yumo's swords did not reach their target. She said that it was a surprise move that was similar to Long Yang's ability. Saifa covered all the kings with the black wings of a fallen angel, thereby protecting them from swords. Eric said that since the bearer of endless darkness cannot be touched, then he will deal with Bai Yumo. Noah replied that as he pleased. Eric said that everyone in the sky is his prey and asked no one to interfere. Eric jumped and swung. He asked Bai Yumo if she was ready to taste the blow of his fist. Eric noticed something and didn't understand what it was. He thought that this secret weapon had flown by. But no, it was just a cigarette. The cigarette exploded and Eric found himself on the ground. He was surprised that one cigarette butt could cause such an explosion. He asked who dared to attack him. Aniji appeared in front. He asked what was her doing. She replied, so what? She said that every rabble is not worthy to fight with their leader. Aniji told Eric that she, as an opponent, was more than enough for him. Eric told her that he was here for the sake of the head. He had nothing to do with her. 
Eric said that by the standards of the Protoss guards, his level is equal to S rank. Therefore, he ordered her to call the head. He wants to fight with her. Aniji thought that he was a fool. There are a lot of muscles, but her head is empty. She already regretted that she threw a cigarette butt at him. Zhao Tianyu told Li Xie that how many years, how many winters, Li Sa recognized her. Zhao Tianyu said that she sees her alive and well. She asked who was lucky enough to neutralize the poison. Lisa was embarrassed and said that her personal information did not concern Zhao Tianyu. Zhao Tianyu said that there is only one man in the entire country, Su Xiao Bai. There is no one else but him. Zhao Tianyu told her that only the one she loves with all her heart can neutralize the poison. Zhao Tianyu said that she thinks Li Si's crush has been going on for a very long time. She is embarrassed to even mention it. She didn't expect to help match them. Zhao Tianyu asked if she enjoyed eating the forbidden fruit. Li Sa became more and more embarrassed and told her to shut up and stop saying nasty things. Li Sa told her to think before saying anything. Li Sa recalled how she thanked Xiaobei for her help. He told her that there was no need to thank him because he would give his life for her. When they kissed, she said that from now on she was his personal paladin, and no matter what happened, she would always heal his wounds. Lisa was distracted and thought that it was a shame and could not focus on the enemy while she was thinking nonsense in her head. Abumi met Lan Qing and said that they had not seen each other for a long time. He said that she had grown up. Lan Qing asked what happened to his left hand, and Bumi told her that he showed the teacher Kunai what he had learned from him. Lan Qing said that he was an animal. Kunai had placed so many hopes on him. And Bumi told her that he himself was sorry, but he didn't have to choose. And Bumi said that he was going his own way and had no turning back. Lan Qing said that because of this sword, he renounced everything. She said that only today she would use it to take his life and asked if he understood her. Bayumo looked at Sifa's chest and saw that it was flat as a board. Bayumo said that she has problems with her physical development. She asked that she hadn't eaten enough. Saifa got angry and said that big breasts are not the basis for big self-importance. Xiaobai thought that the four bloodthirsty kings had already found their opponents. Only one is inactive. He understood that he was his target, so why didn't he do anything? Xiaobai wondered what Noah was waiting for. Xiaobai heard someone's voice. This voice told him not to worry, he would only have one opponent. Shobai realized that the sounds of his voice were reaching him from such a great distance. Shobai was afraid that Noah understood his train of thought. He thought that Noah could really read them. Elder Aniji once told Shobai about Noah's abilities. Shobai recalled that Aniji said about his disgusting ability, theft of ability. After removing the ability, Noah could infuse it into the object. Shobai thought that it was no wonder that Longming was so afraid of him because Noah just needed to collect more talismans. In theory, he could have countless abilities, such as teleportation over long distances, control of a huge number of predators, voice transmission over long distances, and maybe mind reading. Xiaobai believed that the worst thing was that he did not tell what abilities he had. He thought that little was known about Noah. He is a very difficult opponent. An earthquake began. Xiaobai didn't understand what was happening. Xiaobai turned back and saw that the mountain where the ordinary women had taken refuge was being destroyed. Xiaobai realized that the enemy he was talking about was there. Bai Xiang turned into a large elephant and said that he could smell the scent of young maidens. He told the ladies to come to him. The green lion said that not only their girls are hidden here, but also the women of the country are hidden. The girls looked at them and said that this was a very huge predator. Someone said that they gave off a strong, overwhelming aura. The residents were afraid that all their warriors were on the front line. They cannot defeat the monsters themselves. They thought they were doomed. Du Yuchang appeared in front of them and told them not to be afraid. She said the chief ordered her to protect them. Du Yuchang said that no matter who their enemy is, she will not retreat. Du Yuchang said that she would protect them until her last breath. Bai Xiang said that she is a very passionate and worthy follower of the head. He told her that since she longed to face death, he would help. Bai Xiang attacked them, and the force was very powerful. The green lion said he went a little overboard. 
he needs to be careful not to hurt their ladies. Baixiang replied that he spent a lot of effort to destroy the mountain, and I'm not used to the new power. Du Yuchang stood on her feet with all her strength and said that as long as she was alive, they would not harm her people. The resident said she sacrifices herself for them. Du Yuchang deserves to be called the head's bodyguard. Bai Xiang said that he did not expect her to master his signature move and told her to die without regrets. He swung his trunk at her. Du Yuchang thought that things were bad. She needs to use all her strength to survive the blow, and she is not even able to raise her arm. She thought that she should not die without completing the task of the chapter. Bai Xian crushed her with his trunk and said that that's all. She would physically not be able to survive this blow. The green lion said that he was handsome and not for nothing that he was his brother. Yu Chang stood with her eyes closed and thought that she had already died. She had strange sensations. She did not feel pain. Xiaobai thanked Yu Chang and said that it was only thanks to her will and efforts that her people were saved. He said that now she can rely on him. Yu Chang was very surprised and thanked Xiaobai. The resident said that this was the head's boyfriend and he came to their rescue. Xiao Bai cut his trunk and said that if they want to fight, then he is not averse to it either. Bai Xiang shouted about his trunk. The green lion asked him to calm down. It was just a wound. The green lion jumped off Bai Xiang and thought that his trunk was as hard as metal, and the boy cut through it effortlessly. He thought that it was all about the sharpness of the blades. The green lion saw Shi Peng on the tree and could not see who was there. He saw that the silhouette was familiar. Xiao Bai didn't understand why Shi Peng began to twitch. The green lion saw that it was his little sister. They are brothers in spirit, not blood, so they can understand each other without words. Shi Peng conveyed her thoughts that the one who kidnapped her from the cave shared her with her relatives. He tied her up and left her here stealing her inner energy day after day. She conveyed thoughts that she had suffered from his bullying, that it was painful for her to even live. She cried and asked her brother to save her from torment. In the imagination of her relatives, they saw Xiaobai beating her with a whip, and he asked him to stop and said that it would not happen again. And Xiaobai told her to scream louder. The louder she screams, the more pleasant it is for him. The green lion got angry and told Xiao Bai that he was a lecher, and how dare he insult their beloved sister. Xiao Bai said that their goal was not to capture the country's women, but this is a reptile. The lion was filled with rage, and he roared with all his might. From this roar, Shi Peng was filled with rage and was able to break the ropes. Du Yuchang was surprised that her strength was restored, because this was impossible. Zhao Bai took away her energy every day, leaving only what was necessary for life. Shi Peng told him that he expected her to be filled with power instantly. Xiao Bai asked what he didn't understand. Did the lion's roar help her recover? Shi Peng explained that it's not just about recovery. His roar boosts the morale of his allies, increasing their combat power in a short period of time. Xiao Bai thought that it looked like a dope or a game enhancement. He thought it was a good skill. Shi Peng said that she and him surpassed the spiritual level. She said that no matter where he came from, he had no chance against them. She ordered Xiao Bai to prepare for death. Shi Peng said that she would double the pain he caused her. Shi Peng flew towards Xiao Bai and shouted at him to feel her full anger. Xiao Bai did not have time to react, and she slammed him into the wall. She told him that as long as she was mad, he had no chance of winning. Xiao Bai put up a shield and said that she is fast, but alas, the attack power is small, but he is even faster. Xiao Bai attacked her with a spiritual sphere. Shi Peng thought that his attacks were lightning fast, but with her speed, he couldn't hit her. Xiao Bai's spiritual sphere exploded behind Shi Peng. She realized that he was not inferior to Bai Yumo, and his ability to absorb energy was not so simple. She looked at the place where Xiao Bai was and wondered what kind of person he was. She didn't understand when he managed to disappear that she didn't even notice. Xiao Bai was behind Shi Peng in an instant. Xiao Bai absorbed her powers. She asked him to stop. Xiao Bai told her that if she didn't want him to absorb her energy, then she should do what he said. She agreed. 
Shipeng thought about not letting him whisper in her ear because it is very sensitive. Shipeng recalled that this had already happened. One day, he sneaked up unnoticed, but she didn't even feel it. Shi Peng has always prided herself on her speed and insight, but his movements cannot be deciphered. But she is a predator on a spiritual level. She realized that this bastard's powers were beyond her level. Bei Xiang shouted at Xiao Bai that he was a libertine and ordered his little sister to be released immediately. Shi Peng and Xiao Bai took off. Xiao Bai told her to try her best to fly away. He wanted them to admit they were wrong. Shi Peng screamed for her brothers to save her. Lev still screamed for him to let her go. They didn't understand where he was going. Du Yuecheng saw that Zhao Bai had taken them away. She lay down on the ground and thought that she could finally rest. She thought that Zhao Bai probably did this to save her and the other residents. Du Yuecheng thought that the elephant and lion looked stronger than that girl with wings. If they start fighting here, the residents will suffer but it is difficult to definitively determine who will win and who will win. Du Yuecheng realized that Xiao Bai was much more caring than she had imagined. Xiao Bai saw that they had moved a sufficient distance and he could deal with them here. Xiao Bai jumped away from Shi Peng and remembered that he had once seen a wonderful fist fighting technique in comics. Now it will be very useful to him. Xiao Bai himself cannot emit a huge stream of light, but he can use the existing one. Leo said that in this position the sun blinds the eyes. Because of the sun, the lion could not open his eyes. Xiao Bai took advantage of this and hit the lion, which flew back a couple of meters. Xiao Bai summoned lightning blades and thought that he had no idea how things were going in the country of women, and Noah was bothering him. He can't stay here for long. Xiao Bai seized the moment to kill him at once. Xiao Bai attacked the lion and it flew into the air. Shipeng thought that her brother, the best in the world, was killed by this scumbag. She didn't understand how this could happen. Xiaobai said that now it is the elephant's turn. Lion hit Xiaobai and asked, whose turn is it now? Xiaobai dealt full damage to him. He didn't understand why he not only didn't die, but also became stronger. The elephant told the lion to release all the energy of the overcome stone. Leo began to release energy and said that he had offended his sister. Even if he had to sacrifice his life, he would help her take revenge on the offender. The elephant also decided to release his energy. He said that his brother became interested in Ti Dao a long time ago and forgot about battles. But for the sake of his sister, he sacrificed his principles. Shi Peng looked at them, and all she could say was that they were her brothers. Xiao Bai thought that the power of the overcoming stone was great, and the last time even the forest shook. Xiao Bai remembered that he had a similar feeling when fighting with Dean Lu. Leo told Xiao Bai that he believed he had never encountered a predator that had surpassed the spiritual level. Today, he will teach him a lesson in good manners. The lion began to choke on blood. She didn't understand what was wrong with the stone of overcoming. The lion realized that Noah had fooled them all. The elephant also fell. Shi Peng asked the brothers what happened to them. Noah saw the red pillar of Aura and thought that it seemed like the time had come. He wanted Xiaobai to kill them, and two doses of energy that surpassed the spiritual level would become his. Shipeng flew towards them and asked if they were okay. She asked why they suddenly changed shape. The lion said that Noah deceived them all. Despite the fact that he surpassed the spiritual level, this power, when released, on the contrary, injured him. Now they are powerless. Lev told her that that libertine would easily finish them off before he realizes what happened. The green lion told her that she must run away. They cannot all die here. Bai Xiang told Xi Ping to listen to the lion and run for safety. He asked her to live for the three of them. Xi Ping burst into tears and said that because she was eager to attack the country of women, they died. Xi Ping cried bitterly and said that if her brothers were in trouble, she would not leave them. Shi Peng turned around and looked at Xiao Bai. She asked why such a stern look. She thought about whether he really understood that they were powerless. Shi Peng told Xiao Bai that her brothers only wanted to save her. They were not interested in the country of women. She asked to let them go. Shi Peng said that if he did not harm them, then she would agree to any of his demands. Leo told her not to ask him for anything. He called him a libertine 
and that he had vile thoughts. In Brother Lion's imagination, he saw that Xiaobai had forced her to dress up as a maid. She told him that, as he asked, she dressed up in these strange clothes and asked to let her brothers go. Xiaobai asked what about any demands. Shipping replied that yes, only so that he would spare them. Xiaobai said that he wants them to team up with him against Master Noah. Xiaobai said that if he understood correctly, it was because of him that they lost their form. Xiaobai realized that Noah had given them the ability to transform to help him absorb their energy. Therefore, he did not attack, waiting for Xiaobai to become stronger. No, not him, but endless darkness. Xiping said that her brothers were seriously injured and would not be able to help in the battle. Xiaobai snapped his fingers and said that it was okay. He had prepared well for this battle in advance. Xiping didn't understand what else it was. She wondered where the colorful energy came from. A healing spirit from the energy of thousands of souls, a sacred light, Lina, appeared near Xiaobai. She asked what he called her. Xiaobai said that Lina is one of the spirits he freed from Bass. While the spirit is attached to the physical shell, it is able to use abilities. Shipping thought about how many of these abilities he had. Xiaobai ordered Lina to possess him and cure them. Lina said that she was at his service, the new owner. While Su Xiaobai was treating them, the battle continued in the land of women. Zhao Tianyu said that the invincible paladin Li Sa suddenly ran away. She asked what Li Sa was afraid of and said that it made her remember shameful things. Lisa thought that every time she saw her, Lisi's mind became cloudy and her thoughts became confused. Because of this condition, there is no point in fighting for her. She needs to get rid of obsessive thoughts. Lisa saw the thought and jumped into it. She believed that the water could bring her back to her senses. Lisa felt that it worked, and the strange thoughts receded. But hiding in the water is a temporary measure. She needs to figure out a way to resist Zhao Tianyu's poison. Otherwise, she won't win. Lisa saw the bubbles, and she seemed to come up with something. Zhao Tianyu grabbed Li Su by the neck with her whip. Zhao Tianyu told her that she just thought of getting into the water and that's it. But she will get it there too. Zhao Tianyu asked Li Su that she wanted to go against the bloodthirsty king for Su Xiaobai. She asked, is this guy worth it? Zhao Tianyu told her not to let a man deceive her, a fool who fell in love for the first time. Li Sa was healing her wounds and told her not to dare speak ill of him. Zhao Tianyu told her that she couldn't save herself, but kept thinking about him. Zhao Tianyu said that there is poison everywhere here, even if she doesn't hope to gather her strength. Zhao Tianyu hit Li Su with her whip and told her to die. Zhao Tianyu hit Li Su in the head. Li Sa managed to react and caught Zhao Tianyu's whip. Li Sa asked why she thought she couldn't do it. Zhao Tianyu was surprised. She didn't understand how she managed to stop the attack. Zhao Tianyu thought that her poison would be reacted differently. Li Sa should have said that she was all wet and asked who would help her take off her clothes and dry her. Zhao Tianyu was shocked that she was able to cope with the effects of the poison. Lisa pulled Zhao Tianyu's whip and she flew into the air. Zhao Tianyu shouted at her what she was doing. Zhao Tianyu thought that she was finished. Lisa kicked her and said that she would answer for her words about her Su Xiaobai. Lisa told her that she was fighting for love, the face of which she could not resist. Zhao Tianyu flew very far away. She thought that she was in pain and felt as if she had broken all her bones but she seemed to understand how Li Xia managed to resist the poison. Zhao Tianyu remembered that Li Xi's whole body was shining. She probably covered herself completely with an energy shell, insulating herself from the poison. If she broke it, she could win. Zhao Tianyu looked at her clothes and saw that they were all wet. Lisa flew towards Zhao Tianyu and asked where the pervert was staring. Zhao Tianyu noticed that she was very fast and did not even give her a second of rest. Lisa prepared to strike her and told her to feel everything thoroughly on her own skin. With her attack, Lisa cut off the flat part of the mountain. Zhao Tianyu thought that this was already too much, and if she hit her, then not a piece of her would be left. Lisa told her to now feel what it was like to be buried alive. 
Zhao Tianyu saw a cobblestone flying towards her from behind. She realized that she could not dodge the jump. Zhao Tianyu, after she fell asleep, released her power and easily threw off the rubble and said that Li Sa was infuriating her and told Li Sa to kill her as soon as possible. Li Sa landed not far from her. Li Sa asked what she said and said that it was hard to hear up there. Zhao Tianyu was scared and said that she didn't say anything. Zhao Tianyu didn't understand what was wrong, why she was afraid. Her body trembled with fear. Zhao Tianyu realized that there was another person whom she feared, like Noah. Zhao Tianyu looked at Li Su and thought that not long ago, she had driven her to despair. Zhao Tianyu did not understand where Li Si got the strength to fight. Zhao Tianyu began to think that it was all about love. Because of her ability, she got to see the disgusting side of people. Therefore, she always neglected men and never believed in love, did not even talk about it. Zhao Tianyu has been alone for as long as she can remember. It's hard for her to even imagine that there is a cozy and kindred feeling of love. It was only thanks to Noah that she was able to continue living. She decided that she had had enough of murder, blood, greed, and constant darkness. She wants to be like Li Sa. She wants to live happily. Li Sa thought that she had lost all her fighting spirit and fell silent. Although based on the experience of fighting her, Li Sa believed that she must be up to something. Li Sa didn't want to show pity. Li Sa ran towards Zhao Tianyu to deliver a crushing blow. She thought that Xiao Bai's enemy was also her enemy. She will try her best for her happiness. Zhao Tianyu said that she was giving up and asked why she wanted to kill her. Li Sa swung her sword and said that this was probably her trick, and she didn't believe her words. Zhao Tianyu realized after a moment that she was not dead. Noah appeared in front of Zhao Tianyu, shielding her from Li Si's blow. Noah stopped Li Si's sword with one finger. Zhao Tianyu asked that she came specifically to save her. Noah replied that he did not expect the enemy to be able to break the psychological defenses of one of the five kings. He said that she disappointed him greatly. Zhao Tianyu told him that she was very sorry. Lisa jumped back from Noah and thought that this old man was different from others. She understood that his true strength was immeasurable. She shouldn't panic. Li Jia needs to be twice as careful. The sword split. Lisa thought that the force of just one blow had split her sword. Noah asked Li Si that she thought she was stronger than him. Noah invited Li Xie to become his subordinate and maybe replace Zhang Tianyu. Zhang Tianyu thought that Noah had abandoned her. Lisa told him not to dream. She is going to stop him with her own hands. Noah grabbed Li Su by the neck and said that this was not the answer he wanted to hear. Aniji ran away from Eric. He shouted after her that she could run for as long as she could. He said that in a real battle, the blood of the enemy must be shed. Aniji turned to him and told him to look around. Eric saw sparks around him that were coming from the cigarette butt. He realized that she was a very cunning old woman. It dawned on him that she was not running away, but setting a trap. Aniji activated the SSR level ability, detonation. At her request, even one spark can create an explosion with the power of a grenade. Aniji told him that since he is the king of heaven, let him taste more explosives so that he turns into ashes. Eric came out of the fire and said that her vile methods may work against small fish, but they don't work on a real man like him. I only set my clothes on fire. Eric showed his rosary on his chest and said that their ability to neutralize the magic around them is called the Golden Arhat. They block all damage dealt to him. Aniji learned that this is the ability of a kunai master. After all, Noah's ability, delamination, is released only when the object is dead. She realized that kunai had already been hit by the enemy. Eric attacked Aniji, but she managed to dodge his blow. Aniji thought that it was great that she was fast enough to dodge Eric's fist. But something went wrong. Aniji began to feel pain in the abdomen. All organs were completely torn. She definitely dodged. Aniji did not understand how she got injured. She thought that he owned more than just what Noah had given him. Eric started throwing Aniji like a sack in different directions and said that she was weak. Eric hit her in the stomach and said that he had just started having fun. And that was all. He beat her and told her to wake up. If she was still alive, 
he had not played enough with her. Aniji said through the pain that his gloves enhanced the attack. Eric said that the elder of the country of women still understands something. He said that she guessed right and his gloves were also enchanted by Noah. Eric revealed that he can make an air burst out of all the damage he takes. So the more damage he takes, the stronger his attack. This is one of his explosive fist abilities. Eric told her that since she was already on the edge, it would be boring to continue with her. He wanted to finish her off with one blow. Eric stopped. He didn't understand what was happening. Even air burst cannot be used. He wondered where all those eyes came from. The body also became numb. Shobai hit Eric and he flew back. Shobai told Aniji not to make unnecessary movements and rest. He told her to wait a little. He would deal with him and then heal her. Aniji didn't understand why Xiaobai's aura was so calm. She was tormented by the question of whether he was confident in his victory. Eric recovered from the blow and said it was outrageous. Even the golden figurine of Archon is powerless. He said that Xiaobai hit his beautiful face. Although Eric has no idea what the hell Xiaobai is doing, from the moment Xiaobai left a mark on his face, he is destined to die. The green lion, Bai Xiang, and Shipeng appeared behind Xiaobai. Eric was surprised. He asked them why they were with him. Shipeng shouted to him that they dared to plot against their elder brother. The three of them went over to the light side, and now Su Xiaobai is their elder brother. Eric said that they had three traitors. He liked it because Uncle Eric would take good care of them. Xiaobai asked Brother Lev to strengthen him with his furious roar. Lev replied that he was obeying his order. Xiaobai felt the lion's roar intensify, that the blood throughout his body was simply boiling, and the thirst for battle was incredibly intensifying. Xiaobai said that now that he is in this state, the one who will die will be Eric. Eric felt those eyes again, and just like the first time, he could not move. Xiaobai's blow sent Eric flying upward. Xiaobai flew right behind him and said that the Asura spirit was intimidating his target and weakening him spiritually. All powers are sealed for a short time, including abilities. Eric thought that this was disgusting and he couldn't move again. Shipeng told her brothers that they seemed to be with the right person. Lev said that he agreed with her. Aniji watched their fight and thought that Xiaobai instantly made Eric suppress his incredible thirst for killing. She thought that he really had a chance to become the savior of the country of women. Eric lay trampled into the ground and thought that he had never lost in his life and had never experienced such humiliation. Noah told Eric that the golden figurine of the Arhat would protect the body and the explosive glove would give strength. He was supposed to be invincible. Eric thought that these strange eyes were an exception. Xiaobai was not an opponent for him at all. Eric decided to smear it. Xiaobai sat on a tree branch and said that judging by his appearance, he was not ready to accept defeat. Did Eric think that this guy was making fun of him? Xiaobai said that he only defeated Anijang with the advantages that the artifacts gave him. And he doesn't even need to use Asura's spirit. Xiaobai told him that there is no way for Eric to defeat him. Xiaobai thought that all the energy that he spends on the Asura spirit can be saved and multiplied. He had already used this power three times, and one way or another, he would have to do without it for a while. Xiaobai decided that he would bluff. Eric told Xiaobai that he didn't think he would ever meet a person who didn't care about him. He asked Xiaobai that he thought that anyone could become the owner of Noah's artifacts. Eric explained that these magical items absorb all the enemy's hatred before death. When worn for a long time, the body absorbs the spirit of grievances and then gets out of control. Eric said that besides Noah, only he can withstand the effects of these artifacts. Shipeng was surprised by Eric's words when he explained that the cooler the body, the more artifacts can be used. Eric stated that his flesh allows him to use 12 artifacts at the same time. Eric transformed, and armor appeared on him. He said it was his most powerful piece of equipment. No one on earth or in the sky can surpass his perfect armor. Eric told Xiaobai that he was already so scared that he couldn't say a word.
Aniji thought that his whole body was shining with armor. When he fought with her, he did not use all his strength. She wondered what Su Xiaobai would do in the face of such power. Xiaobai looked at Eric silently. Shipeng supported Xiaobai and shouted that Xiaobai was the strongest and would destroy him. Xiaobai asked that all you need to do is resist the spirit of hatred and you can put on his armor. Eric asked Xiaobai what did he mean. Xiaobai said that his artifacts looked too pathetic and asked him if he thought his armor would suit Xiaobai. Eric was surprised and asked that he really wanted to take away his artifacts. Meanwhile, the first sounds of battle were already heard in the sky above the country of women. Saifa said that there were so many people in the land of women and asked if they knew why she chose them as her opponents. Bayumo replied that of course she knows. There is no other explanation other than this reason. Sifa was surprised and wondered if Bayumo had already guessed everything. Bayumo told her that she was jealous of her because her breasts were bigger than Sifa. Saifa got angry and said that there was no need to discuss breast size with her and ordered her to shut up. Saifa told her that she looked so defenseless in order to accumulate energy. She told Bayumo that she really thought she had nothing in stock. Saifa transformed and said that this was her real appearance, a six-winged fallen angel. She added that now the situation has completely changed and now they should envy her. The warriors said that this was truly amazing and that they all pale in comparison to her. They thought that she must have an exceptional rank. Bayumo told her that she had turned from a punt into a cash cow. Bayumo advised to be careful with this image, otherwise they will sag. Saifa told her not to cover herself, because her envy was written on her face. Saifa added that she had already lost in the breast issue, and now she needed to show real skills. Saifa activated her ability and ordered to entangle them in the shackles of the soul. Bayumo told her that these were just pathetic chains. She asked what she thought these chains would somehow hinder her and whether it was too naive of her. Saifa told her that she did not say that the chains were for her. Bayumo realized that she had shackled the disciples. One of the students said that her whole body was chained and she could not move and this was a very mean trick. The other students asked the leader to help them because they would soon not be able to breathe. Bayumo asked them to calm down and said that they would be fine. They are all her lovely followers. She stated that as their leader, she would protect them from everything. Bayumo swung her sword, but nothing happened. She didn't understand what was happening. Saifa told her not to waste her strength in vain, because these chains are made of metal, hardened in hell, and there is no person who could cut them. Saifa explained that people bound by soul chains would be quietly attacked by the inhabitants of hell. Their will will gradually be suppressed. In less than a few minutes, they will face death in horror. Saifa said that watching her dear followers die one by one, she would not be able to fight, and nothing plunges people into despair like this. Bayumo told this cash cow not to rejoice too early. Saifa noticed that her aura had changed. Bayumo said that from the moment she became a swordsman, there was nothing that she couldn't cut. After releasing her power, Bayumo cut the chains of souls. She was able to free her followers. Saifa was surprised, because no one had yet been able to completely free themselves from the chains of the soul. But this girl took and cut all her chains. Sif told her that it didn't matter how strong she was. In the end, her capabilities do not exceed human ones. She still didn't understand how Bai Yumo cut the hellish chains. Bai Yumo advised her to open her eyes and look. After all, the battle will be in front of her. Saifa thought that she was a fencing master, and that meant that these were not just big words. She was wondering if Bai Yumo was really that strong. It seemed to Sifa that the power shining over Bai Yumo was the height of perfection. Saifa said that this still wouldn't scare her. Because she was Lord Noah's best warrior, she can't lose to her. Saifa attacked her with hellish chains. Bai Yumo defended herself with ghost swords. Saifa was surprised that she didn't even move. She cut the chains only with the help of her strength. Bai Yumo, after repelling the attack, disappeared somewhere. She appeared on Sifa, and Sifa was able to see her. Bai Yumo told her that her large breasts were preventing her from moving, and struck her. 
Sifa said that this was terribly unacceptable. She, the fallen angel Sifa, was knocked to the ground by some person. If she doesn't kill Bayumo, she won't be able to look people in the eye. Bayumo pointed her finger at Sifu and activated her starfall ability. A large number of rays pierced Sifa's body right through. These swords were very fast. Sifa did not have time to blink her eyes, and she was already pierced. However, even with such skills, she cannot kill Sifu. Bayumo noticed that one wing had disappeared. She thought that one wing could neutralize deadly damage. Sifa activated the magic circle and began to recite a spell in another language. After preparing, Sifa shot magic at Bayumo. Bayumo prepared to defend herself and said that she was not afraid of her. She easily repulsed Sifa's attack. Sifa thought that it was just a person, but it was as if she had merged with the devil or a deity and cut through the stream of hellish flames. Bayumo asked what is her strongest move. She said it was more like showing off. Bayumo quickly moved closer to Sifa. Sifa did not understand when she managed to go down. Bayumo said that a true warrior would not show off. Bayumo was too close and Sifa couldn't dodge. Bayumo hit Sifu with her sword and said that every blow was right on target. Bayumo noticed that one wing had disappeared again. Each wing can neutralize one fatal blow. Bayumo still needs to deliver two fatal blows. Sifa tied Bayumo together with her. Bayumo didn't understand what it was. Bayumo asked why she tied them up. Sifa laughed and said that although their appearance was a little shameful, her techniques would no longer work. Sifa raised the sword with a chain, which was sticking out in the ground. Bayumo saw this and wanted to say that she was going to use her flying swords. Sif told her that she had guessed right and Sif was going to impale them both. Sif said that she had one more wing left. Therefore, she will not die even if the sword hits her heart, but she won't survive. Bayumo didn't understand how she let this happen and who would have known that she would lose to this cash cow. Bayumo didn't want to die here so easily. She wants to live happily ever after with Xiaobai and meet old age. Her cherished dream of giving birth to Xiaobai's child has not yet come true. Bayumo did not want to die with anger in her heart. Xiaobai was completely shocked by what was happening and asked what they were doing. Bayumo said that he had finally come to save her. Saifa said that saving her would not be so easy. Is it difficult for Xiaobai? He started releasing poison. Saifa said it was a depraved poison. She asked that this was Zhang Tianyu's trap and asked why suddenly he could do this too. Saifa began to lose control because this technique works flawlessly against girls. Under the influence of the poison, Sifa looked at Xiaobai. In her eyes, he looked like an archangel. She asked him if he would pull her out of this abyss of loneliness and asked how she could pay him. Saifa got down on all fours and said that it was better to serve Mr. Archangel. Xiaobai thought that this act of depraved poison was very cruel. Xiaobai said that she was delirious and to be tied tighter, her thirst to kill the king could be very dangerous. Shi Peng told her bro not to worry because she had improved her bondage technique. Xiaobai saw that even Eric obeyed. Eric thought that he was not the only one who lost. He thought that he was too hard on himself and losing to Su Xiaobai was forgivable. In the end, he is the same as Mr. Noah. They are real monsters. About ten minutes ago. Eric thought about what this thing was, and the light of this thing made him shiver. Xiaobai told him that he could only dream about victory, and he could no longer waste time on it. Now they will finish with him. The beaten Eric said that he was giving up, and his strength was running out. Xiaobai walked towards him, and Eric said that he doesn't need his artifacts. He will give him all the artifacts in exchange for Xiaobai sparing his life. Xiaobai said that almost all of his artifacts are broken. He doesn't need them. He will only take the rosary. Eric said that the earrings were also intact. Eric handed Xiaobai a rosary from a kunai master, as well as magical pink earrings. Xiaobai thought that he did not expect that after the death of the kunai master, Noah would use his things. As his friend, it is Xiaobai's responsibility to help his soul find peace. Xiaobai activated the power ability of 10,000 souls. Master Kunai's soul came out of the rosary, and he said that he didn't think their meeting would look like this. 
Xiao Bai said that his soul was already freed from Noah's shackles and he could go to heaven. Kunai answered him that he could not go there yet. His soul still harbored grievances. He asked if he could finish one thing first and then leave. Xiao Bai replied that of course it is possible because it is his right. Kunai's soul began to disappear and he thanked Brother Su Xiao Bai. Xiao Bai noticed that something was happening with the earrings. The earrings began to change color to blue, and they said that since he had already freed one, maybe you could help her too. Joanna appeared in front of him. The soul, liberated by the technique of 10,000 souls, said that she also had unfinished business and asked if she could let her go. Joanna turned to the owner of the power of 10,000 souls and said that he controls all the souls that did not enter the cycle of reincarnation. All he has to do is say the word, and she will gain freedom. Xiaobai asked that she is a sorceress. He said that although he was not the type to force women, he could not let her leave just yet. Xiaobai said that he needs her strength. He asked to help him in the war against Master Noah. Xiaobai asked if she would do him a favor. Joanna asked about the war with Noah. She looked at him and saw that he was calm. She wondered if he even understood what this meant. Lena also said that she understood everything. It was Noah, the one who imprisoned her in pink earrings. Therefore, she is ready to serve Xiaobai faithfully. She is the one who can make him more resistant to the forces of darkness. This way, he will be able to suppress most of the magic damage he receives. She also knows many forbidden spells that can help Xiaobai in battle. She really hopes that she will be useful to him. In response, Xiaobai said that she is strong enough. With such abilities, she will only make him stronger. At that moment, Eric thought that this could not happen. He was just content with reducing damage, and thanks to his control over the dead, Joanna was able to open all her techniques. Events switched to Abumi, where he stated that the previous techniques of the Zhongjie family had been lost. Even his father cannot defeat him, and she certainly cannot. He also pressed that in an age when everyone has their own talent, only the road of death shines for the mediocre. In response, Lan Qing told him to shut up. He has no right to prophesy in the name of the head of the Zhongjie clan. But Bumi didn't like this, and he said that how dare she open her mouth before her death. The sword she is holding is just a waste of resources. With a sharp swing of his sword, Abumi said goodbye to Qin and launched a massive blow at her. At this moment, Lan Qing thought that this turned out to be an all-out attack, so he wanted to destroy her quickly. And then, unexpectedly, someone told Qin not to be afraid. He could save her. This voice seemed very familiar to her. Turning around, she saw that it was the spirit of Kunai. She said that Abumi killed him. Then, why is he still... Before she could finish speaking... Kunai's spirit said that Xiaobai had given the poor monk a chance at redemption. He will help protect her from Abumi's attacks. The main thing is to attack herself. Lan Qing told him that in this way she completely relies on him. And Bumi told Kunai that he died and still wants to try to stop him. He still didn't have enough of it. He paid with his left hand anyway. In the face of a blade, he will not cower. And Bumi also added that Kunai is too cowardly, and there is no need to blame him for this. The Kunai told Lan Qing not to suppress the power of Yao's sword, to release the power, otherwise they would have no chance. Lan Qing did not fully believe in releasing the power. She was afraid that she would be absorbed in the same way as Ah Bumi was then. Kunai told her not to worry. The light is very merciful to her. It will help her cleanse herself of the magic of Yao's sword to which she replied that you can take a risk. It might take them a little while to do this while she entrusts herself to him. Kunai said not to worry, he won't let her have any problems. Hearing all this, Abumi said that they asked for it. Waving his sword, he launched water waves towards them. Seeing the attack, Kunai told him that he most likely forgot about the power of defensive techniques. Its water cannot harm the monk in any way. Answering Kunai, Abumi told him to look at himself, he shouldn't have relaxed. The golden figurine protects too, which means that the power should weaken. He also added that there was actually no way for Kunai to hold back its full power after his attack. 
and Bumi attacked the kunai with water and split it into two parts. But Bumi didn't understand what happened. He wasn't completely sure that he still wanted to seize the power of the Yar Blade. Releasing the power, Lan Ching said that she saw someone who was about to die. And Bumi was sure that this was his blade, and no one would dare take it away from him. At this moment, Chin grabbed his hand, and Bumi was stuck in his thoughts. He didn't understand what was happening with the blade, because he was the one who chose it. He had been waiting for him for more than ten years. Despite all this, Lan Ching struck him with a blow, after which he flew to the ground. In addition, she said that everything is just thirsty for blood. It is limitless to her who is the boss. Lying on the ground, Ah Bumi still continued to repeat that this was his sword. It was simply impossible without it. With the last of his strength, saying that no one could take his sword away, he tried to strike back at Chin. Turning around, she fought off his attempt to strike and said who is next. Once back on the ground, he said that the blade had chosen him and he should not abandon Abumi. Chin came closer to the lying Abumi. She leaned over and said that she hates people who constantly say the same thing. Didn't he know? After her words, he finally calmed down. She felt a strong aura behind the mountain and said that she would go and kill them. At this moment, events moved to Xiaobai, where he told Noah that he could not restrain himself and had actually come. Noah told him that he did not expect that he was able to capture two of his subordinates. He was able to exceed his expectations. Standing next to Noah, Zhang Tianyu was surprised that Xiaobai was able to extract depraved poison from Li Si. Xiaobai said that we need more action and less words. He doesn't see either Li Su or Zhao Ping. He didn't understand what Noah could do with them. Standing nearby, looking at Xiaobai, Sifa admired her, saying that when her archangel was angry, he became so handsome. After Xiaobai's words, Noah ordered the captivating cube to appear. Lisa and Zhao Ping were in this cube. When they saw Xiaobai, they said that he had come to save them. Seeing them, Xiaobai told them not to worry. He would definitely save them. Zhao Ping told him that everything was fine with them. He should calm down. She was also worried whether Xiaobai was injured. In addition, Lisa said that this Noah is very strong. He should be careful. She worries about him very much. Xiao Bai replied that he understood them. He also said that no matter how strong the enemy is, he will not allow anything to happen to them. Noah asked that Xiao Bai wants to exchange Eric and Sifu for his girlfriends. Xiao Bai replied that it was two by two. This is a fair exchange. Saifa thought that in this form she could still help the archangel. It all depends on me. This is so exciting for her. Noah said that if he wants to exchange, then of course, but not for those two. Noah offered to trade for him for all his endless darkness. Xiaobai told him that as he thought, Noah was so obsessed with the endless darkness of the ideal body. Xiaobai said that this is all because after extracting this rare ability, it can only be maintained during extraction. Xiaobai said that even if he is very strong, he still won't be able to make her even stronger, he asked. Isn't that right? Noah said he was smart. I was even able to partially guess what his strength was, but he only half understood the reason why he needed the endless darkness of an ideal body. Xiaobai took out his lightning blades and said that no matter what his motives were, he would stop him with his own hands. Xiaobai told Lev that he needed reinforcement. Shipeng told him that how dare he play on their brotherly feelings. She said he would pay them for it. Bayumo said that he offended her sister and also had a crush on her boyfriend. She said that for his actions, one death was not enough. Aniji said that Bayumo was right. Noah called on his staff and said that they overestimate themselves. This cannot be solved by negotiations. Noah activated the power of the crazy wind. Tornadoes appeared in large numbers around him. Because of the wind, Aniji flew back. She thought that the wind magic, the power of that staff, could create a tornado of incredible power. Shipeng couldn't even get close because the wind was too strong. Bayuma was able to approach him and hit him. She said that she was not afraid of him. Noah managed to dodge her attack. Noah said that this was not bad and worthy of a fencing master. Bayumo thought that they would kick Noah's ass while Shiobai would save Li Su and Ping. 
Bai Yumo shouted for him to defend himself, and she launched an attack with an astonishing 72 blades. Noah activated the Karma Firepower ability and counterattacked Bai Yumo. Bai Yumo was unable to defend herself from Noah's fire and fell unconscious. Aniji said that he dared to treat Bai Yumo like that, and it was not permissible. Jokes with fire are very bad around her. Noah activated the piercing ice. Aniji was surprised that she could use an ice elemental technique. Noah covered Aniji completely in ice. She didn't even have time to react. Noah used the lightning technique, furious lightning. Shipeng thought that it was impossible to still have electricity. Noah struck Shipeng and her brothers with lightning. Shipeng lost consciousness after this attack. Noah exhaled and said the warm-up was over. Zhao Tianyu thought that at first glance it seems that they are all idiots. Even Bai Yumo is no exception. She thought that it looked like even Mu Xia from the Protoss Palace would have problems. Zhao Tianyu turned back and saw that the captivating cube was the highest level containment technique. And Xiaobai just took it and broke it. Lisa thought about how he was squeezing her so tightly. Lisa thought that she was clinging to him like that, but there were still people here and she was now ready to burn with shame. Zhao Ping thought that the gentleman is not the same as before, although she is not sure yet, but he has definitely become more reliable. Noah said that he was not the one who broke the magic cube. Xiaobai absorbed it with his endless darkness. As a result, this little guy fell into a trap. Noah explained that he put a lot of magic into the cube. Xiaobai couldn't handle it, so he solved the problem in his own way. When I realized that I couldn't destroy the magic cube but only absorb it. Noah continued to say that his endless darkness had already accumulated at his solar plexus. That's all he has in his body. Noah said that such people are only good to be fooled. Noah was glad that the endless darkness would eventually return to him. Xiaobai looked at Li Su and Zhao Ping. Noah thought about how this asshole dares to ignore him. Xiaobai said that he was handing over the wounded to Li Shi and asked if she could heal them. She told him not to worry. Lisa said that her healing abilities are more than enough. Xiaobai looked at Noah and asked, What does he still think he can win? Noah told him to stop talking because he was the one who allowed him to get this far, and now he would crush him like a bug. Xiaobai approached Noah in an instant. Lisa thought that he was very fast, and she was still far from reaching Xiaobai's level. Xiaobai stood in front of him and looked into his eyes. Xiaobai asked if he had the strength to defeat him. Xiaobai said that he didn't think so. Noah told him not to become arrogant ahead of time. Joanna appeared next to Xiaobai and activated the list of prohibited rose techniques. Roses appeared around Xiaobai, and a magic circle appeared under him. Xiaobai charged the pink dance to attack Noah. Noah put up a protective circle and said that the rose technique is nothing, because eggs don't teach a chicken. Xiaobai told Ping to reduce his gravity. He needed maximum speed, and Li Si said that if the opportunity arises, to heal the wounded. Xiaobai approached Noah and asked that the magician is not very good in close combat, and hit him. Xiaobai told him that he had overestimated his capabilities. Besides the spirit of Asura, he still has two trump cards unknown to him. Zhao Tianyu thought about Xiaobai slamming Noah into the wall. She had never seen anything like this. Zhao Tianyu turned back and for some reason felt a chill run down her spine. Zhao Tianyu saw Li Sa and Zhao Ping looking at her. She told them that they wanted to heal the wounded and then asked to let her go. She understood everything and would not interfere with them. Noah said that the spirit of Asura will have only problems. Noah flew towards Xiaobai and hit him in the stomach with his staff. Noah said that now. About a hundred magical explosions thundered through his body, and he was doomed. The special power of the pink earrings was activated, and immunity to 50% of magical damage appeared. Xiaobai said that it's a pity, but it seems Noah can't stop Xiaobai. Xiaobai grabbed Noah's face with the help of Asura's spirit hand. Xiaobai slammed Noah into another rock. Sif looked at Xiaobai's fight and thought that he had incredible power worthy of an archangel. She thought that all that was left was to kill Noah and she would be free. Xiaobai said that Noah lost because he created a person who should not exist. His next stop is death. 
Noah shot a beam from his eyes at Xiaobai and shouted, What the hell? Zhao Ping felt like her heart was about to jump out. She was so restless. She had a bad feeling. Noah said that Xiaobai turned his own weapon against him and was still mocking him. Pink earrings can neutralize only half of the magical damage, but if it concentrates and hits twice as hard, absorbing half will no longer help. The girls shouted to Noah what he did to Xiaobai. They said they would finish him off. Noah froze them with the power of ultimate ice. Noah said that there were problems, but it was all over and now it was time to deprive Xiaobai of his abilities. Noah activated ability extraction. Noah's tentacles reached out for the endless darkness that stuck out in Xiaobai's chest. But nothing happened. Noah was thinking that the ability extraction didn't work. He was about to kill Xiaobai, but he couldn't take the power. Noah whipped Xiaobai's corpse again in an attempt to extract power, but to no avail. Noah thought that since it was useless, there was only one way out. Noah looked at Xiaobai and saw that he was dead, but not completely. Noah covered Xiaobai's body with a magic cube and said that in this case, we should save his body for now, and then he will come back and carefully examine it. The possessed Lang Chin appeared before Noah and said that he was the same strong man she sensed. She ordered him to fight her. After all, she really wants to hack him to death. Noah looked at her and said that God is merciful. The whole campaign is assembled. Today he was twice lucky. Noah activated the combat magic, destroying a ray. Lan Ching admired and said that it turns out that there is such strength. Noah said that she didn't know who she was dealing with and said that most likely all that was left of her was ashes. The possessed Lang Chin ignored Noah's attack and flew towards him. She said that he was quite strong for a human, and that made her feel good. Lan Ching swung her sword at Noah, but only managed to cut his cheek. Lan Ching thought that this old man not only dodged, but also struck back. She swung and said that their battle was becoming more and more interesting. She would not stop until she killed him. While Noah and Chin were fighting, they did not notice that Su Xiaobai was gradually regaining his strength at this time. Zhao Ping looked at Xiaobai and thought that she had no idea how he was still alive, but Lina would heal all his wounds and soon everything would be fine. Pin thought that her symbiosis ability saved the master. To save the master's life, all that is needed is her breath, because of which Noah was unable to extract power. Xiaobai opened his senses and opened his eyes. Pin thought that her master would be the one who had the last laugh. Noah said that he admired her eyes, filled with a lust for murder. In addition to the ability to extract power from the dead, he will make her his servant. Lan Ching told him not to lie to her. After she and he exchanged blows, she realized something. Lan Ching said that the real strong man she sensed earlier was not him at all. Noah said that was nonsense. He asked, if not him, then who? He asked, is there anyone else here stronger than him? Someone called his name. Noah hesitated and recognized the voice. Noah turned around and was surprised. He didn't understand how this happened. He saw Xiaobai and realized that he was completely cured. Xiaobai said that it was time for him to die. Noah said that his trump card is resurrection, but there is a limit to his powers. It won't be possible to resurrect several times so he will eventually die. Noah began to be surrounded by wandering souls. He did not understand why there were so many of them. The souls of the predators of the country of women who died in the mountains, souls on the shore of a women's lake, and the guarded graves were all heading towards Xiaobai. Lan Qing thought that there were so many souls, much more than in her blade, it was a sight for her. She watched as all these souls gathered at Xiaobai's place, it seems that he is the strong man she sensed. If she can kill him, then all these souls will become hers. Long Ming's soul appeared in front of Xiaobai. He told him that he didn't think that Xiaobai would use the power of 10,000 souls now. Long Ming admitted that he was also a wandering soul, and under the influence of the power of 10,000 souls, he could clearly hear his orders. He asked for forgiveness and said that he had underestimated him before. All this time he slept in his body and restored his strength. Therefore he asked to be allowed to help Xiaobai and asked to avenge him. 
Xiaobai thanked him and said that he would fulfill his promise. Xiaobai radiated strength. Lan Qing thought that this is incredible power and this hot breath, she can't help but tremble from it. Noah realized that Xiaobai had seized the power of the dead. He didn't understand why he wasn't aware. Noah realized that Xiaobai was just playing with him. Xiaobai told Noah that he himself gave him the power and never paid attention to obvious things. He could only scour the darkness alone. Xiaobai said that this is his last trump card, the power of 10,000 souls. Xiaobai told him that all these 10,000 souls, battle experience and skill, had already merged into his body. Noah's chances are zero. Noah asked why he was bluffing. He told Xiaobai that by summoning a few foolish souls, would he become much stronger. Xiaobai didn't answer him and just hit him with all his might. Xiaobai asked what he just said. Otherwise, he didn't hear it. Xiaobai rushed past Lan Qin to chase after Noah. The possessed Lan Qin realized that she was no match for him. Noah shouted at him not to laugh at him. Noah made a holding call to a giant ice dragon. Noah summoned an ice dragon, and Xiaobai flew straight into it and did not stop. He said that anyone who stands in his way will die. Noah asked that he did not expect this. Noah shouted to him that he also had summoning techniques. Noah said that the giant ice dragon is his strongest summon, and now he will tear it to shreds. Xiaobai simply flew right through the ice dragon, as if it was not even in Xiaobai's path. Xiaobai said that this blow is revenge not only for Long Ming, but also for all women in the country. Noah asked him to wait and stop. Xiaobai punched Noah, and a sphere made by Xiaobai appeared around them. Lan Qing wondered if this was the power of 10,000 souls. She thought about whether the old man could stand it. Sypha thought that Mr. Archangel had won, and soon the two of them would be able to fly far and long. Zhao Tianyu thought that he had such strength. She understood that at this rate, Noah would definitely lose. She wondered how Xiaobai would treat her. Xiaobai asked Noah if he had any last words. Noah replied that he was rejoicing early. He also had trump cards. Red rays shone from Noah's crown. Lan Qing didn't understand what was happening. Noah laughed and said that he had won. Noah said that the ray of reason controls people with evil thoughts. Noah said to play with Lan Qing and asked Xiaobai, how about giving up? Xiaobai was stopped by his ability with the spirit of Asura. He was surprised that she stopped. Xiaobai grabbed Noah's face. Noah asked not to kill him. Noah asked that doesn't he want to know the secrets of the endless darkness? Noah said that if Xiaobai spares his life, he will tell him everything. Xiaobai said that there is no need for this. Xiaobai crushed Noah's head and said that he could ask his soul. Zhao Ping felt the ice mountain split and realized that Noah had lost. Lisa thought that Xiaobai won. Bai Yumo thought that she was right and her boyfriend could be relied upon. Xiaobai, using the 10,000 soul technique, summoned Noah to reveal his spirit. Held by the technique of 10,000 souls, the ghost of Master Noah appeared and asked what he could serve. Eric was surprised that it was the soul of the great Noah who bowed his head in front of this boy. Xiaobai ordered everything he knows about endless darkness to be vividly laid out. The spirit of Noah said that the endless darkness is associated with the original predator. She is the key that helps to remove the seal from him. Noah said that on the deadly island where he lives, there is one sealed lair where such a predator lives. The spirit of Noah said that if he mastered this power, he could rule the whole world. Xiaobai said that he didn't need it and advised Noah to quit with such thoughts. Noah asked for a thousand apologies and said that he was too arrogant. Xiaobai thought that no matter how strong the soul is, it will still obey him unquestioningly. Xiaobai said that he would talk about the original predator later. Xiaobai said that for now we need to restore order here. Lan Qing said that the old man whom she could not finish off for half a day was so easily killed by Xiaobai. She said that he really deserves to be called a real strong man. Xiaobai said that the demonic sword, Yao Muramasa, decided to disturb Qin. The sword said that he knows who he is. Xiaobai asked that he also wants to compete. Sword said that after his recent fight, there would be no fool who would want to fight him. Xiaobai said that since he understands this, then wouldn't it be better to quickly return her body to Qin? 
The sword felt the pressure of power. For him, it was wonderful and the best feeling. The sword told him to just wait, and the next time they met, he would finish him off. Lan Ching lost consciousness and dropped the sword from her hands. That evening in the Land of Women, by Yumo's residence, Lan Ching came to her senses. She thought that her head was pounding and did not understand what was wrong with her clothes. Xiao Bai said that all her things were damaged and had to be borrowed from Madame Bai. Qin asked, What are these Madame Bai's clothes? Qin became embarrassed and asked why he wasn't the one who changed her clothes. Xiao Bai got up from the sofa and said that she had understood everything wrong. He said Pin washed her and changed her clothes. Xiao Bai said that since she was fine, he would go. Qin asked Xiao Bai to wait and said that she didn't remember much but she realized that today she drew a blade against him and said that she was guilty before him. Xiaobai smiled and said that in no case, it was not her, and she did not need to apologize. Xiaobai came out of Qin's room and said that she needed rest. Zhao Ping asked Xiaobai, Can that Muramasa from Yao Demonic Blade appear again? Xiaobai replied that he himself would like to know. Xiaobai said that if they wanted to defeat Yao's blade, they would most likely only be able to rely on Qin herself. Zhao Bai looked at the spirit who was nearby and said that Qin leaves the protection to him, and if something goes wrong, he will destroy it. Spirit Abumi told Zhao Bai not to worry, he would not let him down. Zhao Ping said that in the battle with Noah, Zhao Bai used symbiosis. She explained that she learned the secret of this technique from Mr. Mu Xia. She asked that Mu Xia really told him nothing? Xiaobai said that Mr. Mu Xia will not share secrets with everyone. Pin asked how he knew then. Xiaobai pressed Ping to the wall and said that of course he guessed it. He asked her what she thought, that he would not guess her intentions. Pin thought that he was too close and could already feel his breath. She was thinking about what should she do. Xiaobai said that he will go, because tomorrow the houses of the country of women will be repaired. Pin didn't understand why the gentleman decided to stop. Ping said that she didn't want it to end like this and kissed Xiao Bai. Zhao Ping told Xiao Bai that she seemed to be injured and suggested that she go to his room and check. Xiao Bai opened the portal and told her not to worry because she was safe next to him. They teleported to Xiao Bai's bed, and Pinny said that even the magic of teleportation is subject to the master. Xiao Bai asked, Where is her wound? Pinny replied that she didn't know and asked the gentleman to find it himself. Lan Qing lay there and thought about what Kunai had told her, that the gift of light would help her resist Yao. But he did nothing other than refine the jade of sincerity. She wanted to know how to eventually use this power. Qin felt that it started again as soon as Su Xiaobai left, her chest began to ache. She thought that thanks to Xiaobai, the gift of light was manifested and she decided that she needed to find it. Then she could understand what was happening. Bai Yuma was looking for something and wondering where the elixir given by the ancient teacher had gone. Bai Yumo found rainbow bear bile balls. This medicine not only protects blood vessels, but is also very invigorating. It is especially useful for men. Bai Yumo decided that after a hard day, Xiao Bai needed to rest. She wanted to send this medicine to him right away so that he could improve his health. Lisa walked under Xiaobai's room and thought that although he has a ghost doctor, she is not confident in her abilities. She was thinking about what to do if Xiaobai got injured and it couldn't be healed. Lisa thought that this was a little awkward, but she had to go. This is her duty as a knight. Sifa and Zhao Tianyu stood on Xiaobai's balcony and whispered about how they escaped from prison and why they came here. Sifa said that she wanted to say goodbye to him, even if she just looked out the window, and that was enough for her. Zhao Tianyu asked Sifu that she spent so much effort escaping from prison just to come here and take one look at Xiaobai. Sif replied that of course, and asked what else she could do. Zhao Tianyu thought that this guy's spell had affected Sifu so much that she could no longer be saved. Zhao Tianyu asked herself why she ran with her. The girls did not understand what it was and where the female voice came from. Sifa could not stand it, opened the balcony doors and said that the archangel broke her heart by doing such things, but why not with her 
and asked that she was not beautiful enough. Bayumo burst into his room and said that she had brought him medicine with bare bile. Lisa came in behind her and said that she would help him heal his wounds. Lan King saw everything that was happening and thought that in this situation, it was better for her not to meddle here. However, Chin noticed that the thread of the gift of light again led to Xiaobai, and the gift of light began to react more strongly. The gift of light was confirmed and Chin flew to Xiaobai's room. She did not understand what was happening and why the body did not obey. Xiaobai also flew and thought that it was the first time the endless darkness behaved like this. He understood that something was attracting it. Xiaoping thought about what kind of blinding light and wondered where it was coming from. The gift of darkness and the gift of light were drawn to each other. Because of Qin and Xiaobai, their bodies were attracted. Xiaobai said with embarrassment that she collided with her chest. Chuad told him to shut up and not talk, which was understandable. Saifa said that it was mean and so brazen to jump in line. She forbids Chin from being rude to her archangel and told her to quickly move away from him. Bayumo asked Chin that she wasn't taught etiquette. Lisa said that out of the three of them, isn't she the last one? Pinny said that she should be the first, not them. The spirit of Noah sat on the shore of the lake and thought that his master's genius was manifested not only in battles, Noah considered Xiaobai to be cool in everything. Noah thought that if light and darkness could unite in his body, then Xiaobai would become the strongest person in the world. Xiaobai woke up the next day and thought that he had spent too much energy fighting Noah. He felt that his body was overexerted, but after sleeping, this feeling disappeared. Xiaobai noticed that he had a mark of the gift of light. He tried to pull it out, but it connected with the endless darkness. There were girls standing around Xiaobai. They said that they had been waiting for him for so long and asked if he had gotten enough sleep. Xiaobai blushed and asked what was wrong with all of them. Saifa said that she woke up and felt something strange, and it seems to her that her size has become larger. Wen told him that she felt like her body was filled with vital energy and strength, and they became stronger. Xiaobai realized that after he received the gift of light, anyone who sleeps with him will become stronger. Xiaobai said that although endless darkness is an inexhaustible source of power, the human body is not able to continuously use it. And the gift of light, in addition to purification, is intended to give people abilities. Light and darkness are united on his body, which means that he can freely control the power and gift, divide them between them or someone else. Lisa said that this is cool and then they can become like Xiaobai. They will become more and more powerful. Xiaobai said that in theory, yes, but these are just his assumptions. Xiaobai said that in the end, with practice, they will know for sure. Zhao Ping asked what practice he was talking about. Zhao Tianyu asked what she didn't understand yet, and said that they should all sleep together again. Xiaobai said that ultimately, practice is the only way to know the truth. After their diligent practice, Xiaobai finally confirmed his theory, and after one evening of relaxation in the country of women, restoration work began. Lan Qin slices through trees with ease. She thought that the speed of the sword had increased significantly. This was the power that Xiaobai had given her. The spirit of the Minotaur said that the deforestation was over, and now they would all deliver the tree to the master in the city. Xiaoping carried the stones and told the spirits that no one should shirk. They brought harm to the country of women, so the master punished them. Ba Xin said that he didn't think that he could build. He said that he was born for this. Lev said that all that was left was to finish building this house, and they could forget about life in a cave. Bai Yumo said that there are so many souls working in the city now, and asked if they should expect problems. Shobai told her that there would be no problems, and explained that these are peaceful spirits, and their attacks are too weak. Lisa asked how they fight then? Xiaobai said that they have two options. Xiaobai said that the first option is to rely on him, sharing experience and strength with him, like in that battle with Noah, and the second is to give them their own bodies. Xiaobai said that, however, providing spirits with bodies is not such an easy task. Lisa asked why. Xiaobai explained that the reason is that there are no people who are willing to happily give their body to a spirit that has no connection with them. 
Bai Yumo told him not to worry. She could help him find the bodies and asked if he had heard about engineering. Xiaobai asked what she was saying about the instant doll making technique. He asked what she knew about this technique. Bai Yumo said that her teacher was proficient in engineering technology. Due to the fact that she devoted herself entirely to fencing, she ignored engineering studies. Bai Yumo took out books from her chest and said that this rare book is always with her. Lisa thought that this place is also suitable for storing books. Bai Yumo said that she was giving this book to Xiao Bai, and if she could master engineering, she would definitely build dolls for those spirits. Xiao Bai was delighted, thanked him, and said that this was a real treasure. Several months have passed. The work of rebuilding the country of women is completed. Although Eric was freed from the ropes, Xiao Bai deprived him of half his strength. For his crimes, he will guard the gates to the land of women for thirty years. As for the rest of the country's women, they have almost recovered from the battle with Noah. Of course, their lives also changed a little. They heard that today Xiao Bai and Bai Yu Mo will report on the execution of the order. In order to look at Xiao Bai longer, the girls gathered at Bai Yu Mo's gate. The girls thought that so many people had gathered here, and they all came to look at little brother Xiao Bai in Bai Yu Mo's chambers. Long Ming thought that this doll's body was simply perfect, like a living thing, and even the clothes seemed to be from his previous life. Long Ming asked that Xiao Bai really gives him this doll body. Xiao Bai said, of course. Xiao Bai explained that it was created especially for him and said that from now on, he is free. Long Ming felt that the 10,000 spirits technique had dissipated. He felt it as the beginning of a new life. Long Ming asked why he needed this. Long Ming said that he could still serve. Even as a ghost, he can enhance his techniques. Moreover, now he has a body. Long Ming asked that he really wants to give up such power. Xiao Bai told him not to call it a refusal. Xiao Bai said that if Long Ming had not brought him to this world, he would now be confined to a hospital bed. Long Ming gave him freedom. Xiao Bai said to thank him, he should also give him freedom. Long Ming thought that in fact he had freed himself from all obligations much earlier. For the fact that he saved him from death during the battle with Noah, Xiao Bai does not owe him anything. But Xiao Bai still wants to thank him. Long Ming believed that creating such a human body was not that easy. He thought that Xiao Bai had tried very hard. Long Ming felt that he was not mistaken in his choice. Long Ming thought that using the light core and darkness core and the technique of 10,000 souls, also together with Bai Yumo and Li Si, these S rank generous assistants. Long Ming believed that only he could become the king of Protoss and even the whole world. Xiao Bai asked what he plans to do. Long Ming replied that he had not thought about it yet. Xiao Bai said that he was returning to the Protoss throne room today and asked Long Ming if he was coming with him. Long Ming replied that no, he had already died. He didn't want to go back there anymore. Long Ming thanked Xiao Bai for giving him freedom. Long Ming said that since he is starting to live again, he wants to become a monk. He wants to go and really enjoy this world. Mu Yuan stood on the balcony and said that so much time had passed and Xiao Bai still had not returned. She said that his mission should have ended by now. Mu Yuan thought that Xiao Bai really liked the country of women more and didn't want to return. She said she was giving him one more day and if he didn't come back, she would be furious. Mu Xia thought that if Xiao Bai did not return today, then his father himself would get him out of the country of women. Protoss Court, Center for Scientific Research. Li Xin thought that her work had been getting worse lately, and she didn't understand what was wrong with her in the end. She thought about worrying about Xiao Bai and Pinny too much. Meanwhile, in Su Xiao Bai's chambers, Wang Xiu said that you can die from cookies. Wang Xiu said that without Xiao Bai, she didn't even have anyone to play with, and said that when he returns, she will definitely teach him a lesson. Mo Yang said that indeed, without Xiao Bai, life seems to have lost all its colors. The girls heard someone's voice. Wang Xiu said, What a depraved voice. Mo Yan said that it was coming from the second floor, and there was only Xiao Bai's room there. Yin Yu lay on Xiao Bai's bed and said that Xiao Bai's scent is everywhere. So much time has passed, but she still smells this scent. She said that just inhale the scent of Xiao Bai and she will already shine.
A portal opened in Xiaobai's room. Xiaobai walked through him and asked Yin Yu what she was doing in his bed. She saw him with the girls and asked that it was really him and she who was not sleeping. She ran to him and said that he knew how she suffered while he was away. She told him that she couldn't wait anymore and suggested that they pick up where they left off. Sifa came out of the portal and crashed into Yin Yu. Sifa said that she was a harlot and would not allow her to take away her god. Yin Yu asked where else did she come from and asked that since she grew breasts and thinks that everything is allowed. Zhao Tianyu said that she had just arrived in Protoss and had already quarreled with a family member. She wanted to figure out a way to calm everyone down. Zhao Tianyu activated the depraved poison. Yin Yu didn't understand what happened to her, as if she had been hit with an electric current, a weak charge. Mo Yan entered the room filled with poison and said that Yin Yu was really doing something strange in Xiaobai's room again. Mo Yan inhaled the poison and said that her body was paralyzed. This was the first time she had such a feeling. She said that it was hard for her and asked Xiao Bai for help. Yin Yu said that she also needs to be saved. Xiao Bai covered himself with his hand and asked what they want to be played to death. To neutralize the effect of the poison, Xiao Bai worked all night. After diligent efforts, the girls finally united. Xiao Bai sent Dracula a detailed report on what was happening in the land of women. The three vouched for Sifu and Zhang Tianyu, and their lives were spared. That day, two major pieces of news were announced in Protoss land. Unfortunately, the Kunai master died in battle with Noah. Chin brought flowers to Kunai's grave and said that Kunai's teacher's will had not been forgotten and said that he could sleep peacefully. All the subordinates of Master Noah, the bloodthirsty kings, were defeated in the country of women. Thanks to the endless darkness, Xiao Bai became a celebrity overnight in Protoss. This concludes the news release. Long Yan thought that from rags to riches. Long Yan said that even this monster Noah died at the hands of Xiao Bai. She said that he had a worse time than her little brother Long Ming. Ma Fei read the newspaper and said that they killed five people, bloodthirsty kings. Ma Fugi said that these are the guys that even S rank bodyguards were afraid to touch. Mafugi said that the one who could defeat them is truly great. He believed that this was 100% Musia's disciple. It's best to hand it over to Count Dracula. Mafei said that unfortunately no. He said that it was Su Xiaobai who graduated with him. People on the streets of Protoss began to recognize Xiaobai and said that they only talked about him on TV. People looked at Xiaobai and said that it was he who defeated five people, bloodthirsty kings, they said that he had become prettier and was not at all like the one who was at the selection meeting. Someone wanted to take a photo with him. People were discussing that Mu Yuan was next to him. People didn't understand why they were together. People thought they were on a date. Mu Yuan thought that everyone was looking at them and she felt embarrassed. Mu Yuan was thinking that all she did was ask Xiao Bai to go get milk tea with her, even though it was just the two of them. She thought it was a date. Xiao Bai said that she was blushing and asked that she had a fever. Mu Yuan was embarrassed and said that she was not blushing, but just hot. A car stopped in front of them, and Wu Yue got out. She said that they had not seen each other for a long time and asked if he remembered her. Xiao Bai said that she was an examiner from Wu Yue's Kitrent meeting. He asked if she had anything to do with him. Wu Yue asked for forgiveness for interrupting their date. Wu Yu said that there was someone who wanted to see him and asked if he could spare a minute. Dracula said he tore it out again and asked for forgiveness. Did Mu Yuan think that this is how her date would end? Xiao Bai replied to Dracula that it's terrible. If he has something to say, then let him say it. Dracula said that then he would not delay. Dracula said that the position of the Kunai master is free. He thought about it for a long time and in his opinion, Xiao Bai is the best candidate. Dracula announced that he wanted to give the title of S-rank Protoss S bodyguard number four to him. Mu Yan was surprised that from number 10 to number four, she thought that this had never happened in Protoss history. Shobai said that he has little experience. He is afraid that he will not be able to take this place. Shobai said that Lisa and Bayumo would be better suited. Dracula said that what is important for a bodyguard is not experience but real strength. 
the potential of endless darkness is clear to him. During the last meeting, Dracula noticed that he was stronger than those two. Dracula said that he only needed to pass one test and he could rightfully take the place of number four. Xiaobai asked what kind of test. Dracula told him that although he knows that he is strong, he does not know how far Xiaobai could go. Therefore, he wants to see Xiaobai's full strength with his own eyes. Xiaobai asked that if he wants to see his strength, then he needs to fight him. Dracula coughed and said that, of course not, he has more delicate methods. Dracula called Yang Fan to come out to them. A girl dressed in a nurse's uniform came out to them and said that she didn't think she would see Xiao Bai and asked that he really was her task. Yang Fan said that if he is the target of the examination, then she cannot vouch for the accuracy, because the others will not understand. Dracula told her not to be embarrassed and asked, that isn't expertise her greatest strength? Yang Fan replied that she would try. Mu Yan asked, what the power of examination means. Xiao Bai told her that with the help of the gift, she would determine specific indicators of strength. Almost like a probe probe, turns combat power into numbers. Yang Fan said that Xiao Bai is right, she really has this ability. But the result is not numbers, but colors. Her hair changes color as soon as she feels someone else's power. The powers are divided into red, brown, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Yang Fan added that taking samples is a rather specific process. She needs to lick the skin of the subject with the tip of her tongue. Xiaobai said that if that was the case, then it was clear why she was embarrassed. Mu Yuan thought she blushed because Yang Fan had to lick with her tongue. In Mu Yuan's imagination, there was a picture of Yang Fan licking Xiaobai's naked body. Mu Yuan thought that she had never had such intimacy before. Did she think that she was too uninitiative? Yang Fan said if he is ready, she will lick him. Xiaobai replied that this is work and nothing more. He doesn't mind and let him boldly lick it. Yang Fan licked his ear and a bright glow appeared. Mu Yuan blushed and was shocked that she was licking her ear. Wu Yue looked at them and thought it was so exciting. Yang Fan blushed and said that this is amazing power, and it is simply incredible. She had not come across such abilities for a long time. Yang Fan's hair turned black, and this already exceeded the limits of her test. Yang Fan said she couldn't do it anymore. Xiaobai is too strong and she needs to come to her senses. Dracula did not understand what it means to exceed the sample limit. Dracula thought that he was the strongest. His color was red. Dracula thought that Yang Fan's examination was never wrong. He began to suspect that Xiao Bai's true strength was already superior to him. Xiao Bai asked Dracula that since black is not included in the sample, then this attempt failed? Yang Fan replied that, of course not, this has already happened. Yang Fan said that the sample of Mu Xia, who retired, is the same as his. They're both black. Dracula thought that he was acting as the king of Protoss but he was afraid that he would soon retire. From that day on, Dracula began to feel more tension. People were coming to the screen to see the updated Protoss Guardian ratings. There they showed Xiao Bai that he is now S rank number 4, and showed Wu Yue she is now also S rank, and her number is 10. One girl said that it was very cool that Xiao Bai was able to get up so quickly. She wondered if he would dare to take fourth place. Another girl said that Wu Yue also reached S rank. She was happy for her, because the girl is a fan of Wu Yue. Lisa was getting ready to take a bath and said that after so many years she could finally relax. She needs to enjoy these minutes and spend them on herself. Lisa sat in the bath and said that the water was very pleasant. She wanted Xiao Bai to be next to her. Lisa saw her homeland in the reflection of the moon. She rubbed her eyes and said that she had not been home for so long and was terribly homesick. Lisa thought that it would be good if Xiao Bai returned with her. Queen Lisa will be very surprised to see them. Xiao Bai came into the room and told Li Qi that he took her strawberry bubble tea. He looked around, but there was no one there. It seemed strange to him that there was no one, because Lisa is usually here. Lisa came out of the bath and asked why he came. Lisa realized that she seemed to have missed something. She realized that she was not dressed yet. 
Lisa was drinking strawberry tea and Xiaobai said that in short, she was homesick. Lisa said that since she became the guardian of Protoss, she has been at court all the time and has not been at home for many years. She admitted that most of all she wants to go back and see what her homeland looks like now. Xiaobai looked at Lisu and knows that feeling of missing home. Xiaobai got up from the sofa and said that he would bring her home. Lisa was surprised that right now, she said that she should then ask Dracula for permission to leave the city. Xiaobai told her to give up this trouble. Xiaobai hugged her and said that she only needed to hug him. They moved, and Lisa said that she had not changed her clothes yet. Xiaobai asked for forgiveness. Lisa looked at Shengguang City. It was on fire. Lisa said it was a nightmare. The girl with the sword pressed herself against the wall and ordered not to approach her. She warned that a detachment of heavy swordsmen would not spare them. A troll swordsman, whose level is not inferior to predators, asked why heavy swordsmen are so cool. The troll told them to come running quickly, because in this world there are no equals to them. Demons. Lisa cut the troll into two parts and said that knightly greatness would not defile him. Lisa stated that for her, killing people like him is just like crushing an ant. The swordsman said that she was strong, she just appeared and immediately dealt with evil. He saw a large sword in her hand. He asked that she was really from that detachment. The second said that she was not just from the heavy swordsman squad. He continued to say that now their leader is in front of them. She was one before becoming the guardian of Protoss. Other trolls were discussing what to do next, because their leader was killed. Lisa told them that if they took another step, she would kill them without hesitation. The guy asked Li Si why she came back. This guy was the current leader of the heavy swordsman, Rosier. He said that Shengguang's affairs did not yet require the intervention of the Protoss guardians. Lisa asked that Rosier is in charge now. Lisa said that she is a member of the knightly order and protects Shengguang, she asked. What are the problems? Rosier said that she was no longer in the order and he did not ask for help from the Protoss. He told her not to pry into other people's affairs anymore. Xiaobai appeared behind Rosier and said that this was so unhospitable and said that Lisa helped them deal with the predator's henchmen. And he talks to her like this. Rosier jumped away from Xiaobai and was thinking about when this person appeared behind him. He didn't notice anything at all. He thought his gift was secrecy. Rosier asked who he even was. Xiaobai asked in response that Sheng Guang is in an information vacuum. Lisa said that Xiaobai is the guardian of Protoss No. 4. Rank S.O. She added that Xiaobai is her very, very favorite person. The soldiers were petrified with shock that at such a young age and S rank and two positions higher than Li Si, he also won the sympathy of Li Si. Rosier said that another Protoss guardian, Rosier repeated that Shen Guang's affairs do not concern outsiders. Xiaobai said that he seems to be biased towards the Protoss guardians, and apparently Xiaobai will have to correct his point of view. The soldier said that Rosier is the strongest knight in the city after Li Si, and in a battle with an S rank guardian, you can't tell right away who will win. Someone ordered them to stop. The soldiers said that it was not their imagination. They learned that this was a woman, Queen Lisa, shining with her beauty. The queen said that he could not deal with the predator's henchmen and was still going to raise his hand against her guest. She said that the leader of the heavy swordsmen disappointed her. The soldiers knelt before her and asked for forgiveness. The soldier asked the queen to bring the perpetrators to justice. The soldier thought that although only Rosier was rude to the guardians, most of them would feel anger. Queen Lisa told Li Si that they had not seen each other for a long time and asked to quickly come with her so that she could tell her what was new in the Protoss court. The queen was a little embarrassed and told Xiao Bai to follow them too. Xiao Bai told Rosier that he was sorry, and they would not fight today. Xiao Bai told him that if he wants to fight, he will come at any time. Xiao Bai was following the queen with Li Soi, and he asked how she knew his name, and asked that aren't they closed off from information. The queen said that she had guessed it. Xiao Bai was thinking about how to guess it. The soldier said that Queen Lisa spent many years in the palace, and today she unexpectedly appeared for the sake of the guardians of Protoss.
The soldier turned to look at Rosier and asked if he was listening. Rosier was paralyzed by fear and thought that he could not compare with Xiaobai because this guy destroyed his fighting spirit. He wondered if there really was such a gap between the head of the knights and the guardian of the Protoss. In Queen Lisa's chambers, Xiaobai stood near the window and asked the queen that the henchmen of predators have been bothering them a lot lately. Queen Lisa asked how he found out and told him that it was true that recently there had been more and more of them outside the city walls. However, they do not pose much of a threat, and the knights cope. Xiaobai replied that he thought so. The queen asked what he had already guessed. Xiaobai told her that her majesty understood a lot and asked if she wanted him to share his thoughts with her. The queen said that upon entering the city, he paid attention to the situation around him and noticed that these predators were outside the city. Even the fire only slightly affected the area near the city gates. Xiaobai sat on the sofa and listened to the queen, who said that the fire did not affect the main area of the city. This is different from the usual behavior of predators who kill people for meat. They would hurt people more. The queen said that in her opinion, the likelihood of this is very low because there are traitors among the knights. Xiaobai said that this is incredible and worthy of Queen Shengguang. He said they think alike. The queen said she never found out what they needed. Xiaobai replied that he didn't know either. Xiaobai exhaled and said that since he had to figure out this conspiracy, he was afraid that he would have to spend more time in Shengguang. Queen Lisa replied that all of Lisi's friends were also her friends. He can always find her here. They can stay here as long as they want. At that moment, Lisa came in and said that she had changed her clothes. She asked Xiao Bai to evaluate how she looked. Xiao Bai was very surprised that it was a maid costume. He thought it was very cute. Lisa replied that she was Lisa's servant before she joined the order. Although these were her usual clothes, she felt a little awkward in front of Xiaobai. To which Lisa told her that she had never dressed like that in front of her before. It seems that she was guided by the tastes of Xiaobai himself. Does she really love him? Lisa asked that there was no need to discuss this in front of Xiaobai. She is simply burning with such shame. Resting her head on her hand, Lisa said how envious she was of such sweet love. Hearing Lisa's words like this, closing his eyes, Xiaobai shyly laughed at her words, and then suddenly Lisa began to cough heavily. Walking towards her, Lisa didn't understand what was happening. Xiaobai, standing nearby, asked her if everything was okay. To which Lisa replied that after he left, she fell ill with a strange disease. All these years, she invited the most famous doctors, and all this was to no avail. Her body was very exhausted. She also added that she doesn't know how much longer she can last. Lisa told her to never say that she could get better. Lisa began to cough again, to which Lisa said that she was a knight and could save her. Coming out of her room, Shobai asked Li Si about Lisa's well-being. Lisa told him that it was all pointless. She just fell asleep for a while. Lisa also said that she could not find the cause of the disease. All this is due to the fact that she only trained with the sword, and forgot about her original duties. But she will definitely help her. She added that Lisa suffers alone. Even though the subjects were able to see her illness, she still wants to go with them to the city gates to investigate. She does not want to calmly watch Lisa die. Besides Xiao Bai, she is her only relative. Hugging Li Su, Xiao Bai told her not to cry, everything would be fine, and Lisa would not die. Entering Lisa's room, Zhao Bai saw that she still continued to cough constantly. Zhao Bai decided to call Lina, telling her that she was her patient. It doesn't matter how, but she should be cured. Lina told him that he could not doubt her medical skill. She understands that they are all here with the goal of curing Lisa. But breaking into a girl's room in the middle of the night is not very good. Lina also told Zhao Bai that if Lisa suddenly woke up, she might think that he was a pervert. Xiaobai responded to Lina, telling her not to worry. He was prepared beforehand. Xiaobai told her that since she would not be able to wake up, Lina could go into his body and treat her. Lina said that it was all simple and effective. Now that everything is ready, we can begin. 
she began to inhabit his body. Having entered Xiao Bai's body, Lina said that she entered successfully. The first step is to remove her clothes. She needs to examine the body carefully. Xiao Bai was surprised by this. He did not believe that in order to heal, one must be undressed. To which Lina answered him that in order to find the cause of the disease, you must first eliminate all interference. He told Lina that in order to cure her, he would have to commit a small crime. Having possessed Xiaobai's body, Lina said that everything needs to be carefully examined so that she can find irregularities. You can't win this war with drugs. You need to use supervision. After examining everything, she was able to discover the reason. The cause of the disease turned out to be her heart. Seeing all this, Xiaobai didn't understand what it was. He said that it could continuously suck a lot of nutrients from her body. Lina told him that it was a centipede which was the fruit of ancient poison arts. She saw this in ancient books. She never thought that someone in Shengguang could use it. She added that there is a lot of harm from this nasty thing, but it is curable. All you need to do is suck out the poison with your mouth, and the cause of the disease will be eliminated. Xiao Bai, standing next to him, was surprised that this had to be done mouth to mouth. Lina confirmed this, and said that after eliminating the cause, Lisa will need to eat well. Gradually, she will be able to return to normal. Xiaobai assumed that Lisa was unconscious now, and there was no way she could find out about the kiss. He still saves her life. After that, he lifted her a little from the bed and began to suck out the centipede. After a little time, he succeeded. He thought that this was the same centipede. He sucked it and now everything would be fine. Xiao Bai also thought that being a ruler is not so easy. No need to worry, this is all just for Li Si. He will definitely be able to find the person who betrayed her. Going outside, Xiao Bai heard some rustling from above. He immediately realized that something was wrong there. Turning back, he saw a raven, into which he released his destructive power without thinking. The raven spirit told Xiao Bai to mind his own business. Those who serve the gods watch everything closely. If he interferes with the coming of God, then punishment will overtake him. Xiaobai said that he doesn't believe in such things. If God really exists, then let him not hesitate. To which the raven spirit replied that Xiaobai should be careful, he will pay for insulting God. After these words, he summoned the spirit of Noah, to which he replied that it was better not to mess with them. Xiaobai became convinced that Noah knew something about them. Noah said it was a bunch of people who were obsessed with God. They break into the crowd and wait for the opportunity to resurrect their God. Xiaobai replied that those who serve God have wormed their way into human society. It was they who made the predators attack Shengguang. But it won't be that easy to uncover. Looking at Noah, Xiaobai also said that they were still talking about their gods back then, but Noah didn't know this. To which Noah replied that he did not know the details, he only knew that their goal was to disperse the inhabitants of the murderous island. Xiaobai said thoughtfully that they want him to be resurrected. Xiaobai is sure that Noah himself wanted to do the same. He turned to Noah and told him that he too served God, to which Noah told him not to joke like that. The spirit Xiaobai said that he became a ghost, but he still remained impudent. Noah apologized and said that he didn't dare to be impudent anymore. Noah said that in fact, before meeting the master, he had never lost, so he became a little arrogant. Xiaobai turned around and said that he knows how to flatter. Noah thanked him for the praise. Xiaobai thought that if it is not easy to expose them, then he will wait until they do it themselves. After all, he holds the key to the resurrection of God. When Queen Lisa woke up in the morning, she said that her neck hurt. The queen went out onto the balcony and thought that at such an early hour, he must be training. Xiao Bai, after finishing his training, asked Queen Lisa why he woke her up. She replied no. Xiao Bai asked, after Li Si's healing, does she feel better? The queen said she felt much better. Xiao Bai looked at the queen and thought that she was blushing again like when they first met, and last night he had to take off her clothes. He hoped she didn't know that. They were simply silent. Xiao Bai thought that it was somehow awkward, 
and he needed to diffuse the atmosphere. The queen asked if it was Xiaobai's first time in Shengguang and said that if so, they should take a walk with him. Xiaobai thought that this was exactly what he wanted to say. She began to wonder if Lisa had predicted his words or if it was just a coincidence. He decided to think carefully and thought about how he and Li Soi visited Shengguang out of the blue. Her reaction is very different from the others. He thought that this was not accidental. He recalled that she called his name, even though they had met for the first time. Xiaobai thought that Shen Guang was closed to information. Other people don't know about him, but Lisa casually mentioned his name. Xiaobai stood silently and thought that the disease disappeared overnight and again there was no special reaction. Queen Lisa wondered why he froze looking at her. Xiaobai realized that no matter what happens, she will not be surprised. It was as if everything had already happened for her. At least Zhao Bai knows that she has no evil intentions. However, he cannot solve it. The knight shouted at the towers that someone was coming. The soldiers saw leader Rosier coming. He pursued the predators who escaped yesterday and returns victorious. The knight said that this was worthy of a leader and that one could rely on him. The head of Shengguang will fight to the end. Rosier's subordinate came to him. Rosier asked why these people were making so much noise. He said that they saw him and rejoiced. The subordinate said that Her Majesty was walking with the guardians of Protoss, and that's why everyone was making noise. Rosier said that although Lisa's ideas differ from his, she is highly respected in the city. He didn't understand how she could walk with the guardians of Protoss. Residents of the country were amazed by Lisa's beauty and said that she was beautiful and a true queen. People were discussing that yesterday's defeat of the Predator was the merit of the past leader of the Knights, Li Si, and the guardian of the Protos, Su Xiaobai. Lisa said that Lisa felt much better overnight, and it was all thanks to Xiaobai. Xiaobai told her to speak in a whisper, because they might hear her. He said that this is a medical secret and cannot be disclosed. Rosier's subordinate looked at him and thought that Rosier was shaking with anger. Rosier thought that the most respected ruler of Shengguang was actually walking down the street with a couple of guardians, also laughing. For this, it was a shame. He didn't understand where the greatness of Shengguang was. Xiaobai noticed Rosier and simply greeted him. Crows with red eyes watched them. Li noticed the crows but didn't say anything. Xiaobai put his hand on Li Si's shoulder and asked that she would protect Lisa, wouldn't she? Xiaobai said that he walked for so long only for these crows to appear again and asked to give them to him. Xiaobai stood at the top of the tower and said that he entrusts all the souls present here to the trolls with the strongest instincts. He ordered them to go and find him the master of these birds. The troll spirit thought that he could prove himself to the master and he needed to give his all. He believed that he would definitely find the target first. This troll has the most powerful charm and no one can beat him. Xiaobai thought that if predators were considered deities, then he would be interested in seeing how strong they were. In the evening of the same day in some remote suburb of Shengguang, Selina, the twelfth employee, swam in the lake. The troll spirit watched her and thought that she was the one the master needed. Selina noticed him and with one glance tore the spirit apart. She didn't understand what it was and asked herself, Do predator trolls come in that color? Xiaobai said that these are the souls of predators, his collection. Selina didn't expect that there was someone else. A portal opened in front of her and Xiaobai said that she had broken one part of it and would have to replace it. This voice seemed very familiar to Selina. Xiaobai came out of the portal and said that it was better for her to give her soul to him. Selina said that he's the guy who's always rubbing up against Lisa. Selina told him that they were even, he killed her ravens and still dared to come here. Xiaobai asked her if she forgot to get dressed. Selina was surprised by this question, and it finally dawned on her. Selina realized that she had just taken a shower and remembered that she really hadn't put on anything. Selina covered herself with a towel and asked if he would give her five minutes, said that she would get dressed and they would fight. Xiaobai said, of course not. Xiaobai said that the viewer would not appreciate it. Xiaobai approached Selina and told her that she didn't seem to understand who he was yet and decided to introduce herself. Selina asked why he came after all. 
Xiaobai told her that he wanted her to convey his message to all employees. Selena was surprised that he flew up and the water was splashing around his feet. In addition, even the water in the lake changed color. She wondered what kind of human strength this is. He said that he was the guardian of Protos number four and his name was Su Xiaobai. He said that he is the lord of endless darkness and the gift of light. Xiaobai said that if they want to resurrect the god, then the key is the seal on his body and said that they can take it if they can. Selina thought he was just Lisa's assistant, but she didn't expect that he had the power to resurrect a god. Selina understood that, however, he was too strong, and this was not the limit. He became stronger. Selene's crows were afraid of his strength and simply flew away. She thought that her crows had abandoned her, and they were with them, close comrades, and at such a moment she is alone. She realized that there was no point in complaining about them, because survival is the main animal instinct. In their place, she would have run away even faster. Selena looked at Xiaobai and thought that they had found the resurrection key. What now? Even her strength is not enough to fight him. Xiaobai asked that didn't she say that he would receive God's punishment. Xiaobai said that there is nothing, and it seems that God has already given up on her. Xiaobai said that even though he was new to Shengguang, he was already fed up with their mess. Xiaobai said that Lisa, the knights, the Protoss court. It seems that these three are having a serious confrontation, and this is clearly the work of those serving God. Xiaobai asked, that isn't their goal to resurrect the original predator on the murderous island? He asked why, then the riots in Shengguang. Selina was thinking about how and how does she know that God is sealed on the murderous island. The servants of God would never reveal this secret. Xiaobai asked what she was thinking about. He asked her a question. Selina told him not to waste his energy in vain. He is not one of the spineless ones. She said that even if God is not with her now, she will not betray what she believes in, and he will not scare her. Xiaobai said that she was taking him out, unyielding in the face of absolute power. However, she may not have understood Xiaobai's methods yet. Selina felt as if an electric charge had passed through her body. Selina thought that she was definitely dressed, but she didn't understand why she was so hot. She had never felt this way. It was strange for her. The guy pulled the bowstring with an electric arrow and thought that she had let herself be deceived so easily, and her faith in God was too weak. He believed that Selina was unworthy of a place in the servants of God. He decided he was ruling her out. His arrow flew at very high speed. Xiaobai caught the arrow and said that her comrades were not happy about their heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Selina thought that this arrow was aimed at her, and if Xiaobai had not caught the arrow, she would have already been in the next world. Xiaobai broke the arrow and ordered Noah to find this shooter and bring him his soul. Noah emerged from the portal in a doll's body. Noah bowed to Xiaobai and said that he obeyed. Noah pursued the archer and thought that the master not only gave him this body, but also returned the crown and staff, and he could not repay him in any way. Noah fought alongside Xiaobai for the first time. Noah decided that he would definitely achieve the master's mercy, because every step affects the impression of him. Noah found how the heels of those who serve God sparkle. Noah blocked the archer's path and said that it was he who angered Xiaobai so much. Noah told him that he could only do mischief on the sly, and this time he would not let him escape. Noah will not let him escape because Noah's master needs the soul of this archer, the eighth servant of God. Alstom said that the head of the king's killers, Master Noah, began to serve this boy. Alstom asked what kind of strength Xiaobai has that even Noah bows his head so jealously. Noah hit the ground with his staff, said that he would receive the answer to this question after death, and activated the spell of piercing ice, icy hell. Everything around them froze. Noah asked that they had already entered here. Alstom replied that this was a safe hiding place for God. Taking it back is their mission. Noah told him not to confuse the main and the secondary. The murderous island is no shelter for its owner. This is Noah's house. Alstom did not understand what was wrong with him. 
Noah's aura has become stronger since the last battle. He realized that he could not escape. He didn't think he would meet such a monster. Xiaobai looked at the buildings that were covered with ice and thought that after receiving the body, Nob was blown away with joy. Selina sneezed from the cold and shivered. Xiaobai thought that Noah was such a hack. Xiaobai ordered her Selina to get dressed. He will not watch. She asked that he was not afraid that she would run away. Xiaobai said that it was her business and she could just run away. After some time, Selina got dressed and said that she was done and he could turn around. Xiaobai looked at her and thought that it was not like she was warmer in these clothes than in a towel. Selina said that even though she ranks only twelfth in the hierarchy of those who serve God, she did not plan to betray them. She said that who would have thought that Alstom would not give her a helping hand, but would try to kill her. Selina thanked him for saving her and said that she would tell him everything she knew about the plans of those who serve God. Selina said that the employees are targeting Lisa because she is closely connected with the Protoss. She always tries her best to unite the surviving countries. Her orders worried the employees. That's why they want Lisa to fail. Besides Lisa, power belongs to the head of the knights, Rosier. He is a very hot-tempered guy. They secretly provoked him a little, and he hated the Protoss to the core. Selina said that if only Shen Guang was gradually isolated, the employees would have a great chance. Xiaobai asked why the employees were doing all this, and asked what they want to do with Shen Guang. Selina replied that she would sacrifice. Sacrifice all the inhabitants of Shen Guang. Xiaobai asked if she was exaggerating too much. He asked that they really have someone with such an ability. Selina replied that maybe it would have worked before, but now that Xiao Bai has appeared, it's unlikely to work. Xiao Bai said that the employees want to do such a big thing, but why? Xiao Bai suggested that it could not be that this was all due to the love of God. He asked that it's not that simple. Selina said Noah must have informed him. Although he lives on a murderous island, he has already defeated the employees. His faith in God is not so strong. Selina didn't want to tell Xiao Bai, but she still made up her mind and said that endless darkness is not needed to resurrect a god. Selina said that a long time ago, the goddess came to this continent after a comet. The merciful divine light distributed its miles to people. But due to the fact that the power had dried up, the goddess fell into hibernation. But she did not disappear. Every human gift comes from her. Selina said that for this reason, the other employees believe that many gifted ones must be sacrificed. Then their powers will be transferred to the deity and bring her back to life. Selina believed that even if this method was cruel, it was only necessary to bring the goddess back to life, and this world, mired in pain, would be saved. Xiaobai thought that everything she said was very different from Noah's story. If you listen to her, the original predator is the Messiah. Xiao Bai believes that she was so brainwashed. Xiao Bai said that he was a little doubtful and asked if the rest of the employees perceived God the same way. Selina said that in fact, their views differ. Some of them are quite radical. Taking the path of sacrifice is their idea. Selina said that everyone has the same goal bring the goddess back to life. Xiao Bai said that he understood and decided to ask one last question. He asked that the centipede was in Lisa's body. Was it her doing? Selina said no. Her only duty is to keep an eye on her. She is not a combat servant. Moreover, she cannot handle such ancient magic. Xiaobai said that she was not lying to the campaign, and he said that he found out everything he wanted. He told Selina that she was free. Selina was surprised that he let her go like that. Selina thought that he would kidnap her and torture her or do something depraved to her. She asked that he was really letting her go and this wasn't a game of cat and mouse. She wanted to know if he would regret it if she left. Xiaobai said that she is not a bad person. He doesn't need to kill her. After all, she had already given away all the important information. Xiaobai took off and said that that shooter would never escape. He flew away and finally said, that they would see each other again and called her crow.
Selena was embarrassed and asked herself how it was possible to come up with such a stupid nickname as Crow. Alstom was covered in wounds and covered in ice. He thought that he was not Noah's opponent. Alstom understood that the difference was actually huge. He would never be able to win. Alstom is not able to resist him, and this is not even because he has run out of strength. Alstom realized that Noah was just playing with him, like a hunter with a hunted animal. Xiaobai asked that he hasn't played enough yet. Xiaobai told Noah to hurry up. Lisa and Lisa are still waiting for him. Noah said that the body given by Xiaobai is beautiful. Noah said that he could not resist and asked for forgiveness. Alstom trembled with fear and thought that when Xiaobai came, he didn't understand how he didn't notice Xiaobai. Alstom could always rely on his instincts as a killer. It didn't matter Noah or Xiaobai, he still didn't feel anything. Alstom realized that apparently everything would end here. He hoped that once the goddess was resurrected, she would provide them with a painful death. Noah asked to be given another chance. Noah said that if he concentrated, he could finish him in ten seconds. Xiaobai said that he would watch his performance then and told him not to disappoint him. Alstom said that killing him in ten seconds was very humiliating. Alstom, with the last of his strength, loaded his bow with three arrows and shouted that he was the eighth of the servants of God. Alstom, and not a small fish for whom one could decide. Noah dodged the arrows and said it was too slow. Noah said that now he will show him what speed is. Alstom couldn't even keep track of Noah. Alstom realized that he was too fast and still could not compare with Noah. Gnome stood behind him and said that he was still a small fish for whom others decided. Noah prepared for the piercing ice spell. Noah hit him with his staff and used the snow burial spell. Noah asked Xiaobai, how long did it take? Xiaobai replied, eight seconds. Noah said that if he got used to that body, he would definitely become even faster. Xiaobai told him that this was not bad. That employee will be able to kill from a distance. His ghost will be very useful. Stretching his hand forward, Xiaobai turned on his magic and summoned him with the Thousand Soul technique. He ordered him to show his spirit. A spirit appeared before him and said that he had appeared before the Lord of Ten Thousand Souls. Xiaobai addressed the spirit of Alstom, saying that he was going to eradicate those serving God on the murderous island. He asked him to help him in this matter. To Xiaobai's request, the spirit replied that he was ready to serve him like a faithful dog. At that moment, somewhere in the sea, far from Shenguang, a small sailboat was sailing towards nowhere. Selina was sitting on this sailboat. She was thinking about how she could return with a report in that situation. On the one hand, those serving God, and on the other hand, the guy who, although he saw her in the bathroom, was able to stop Alstom's arrow and save her. She thought that the guy seemed a little cruel to her, but he didn't harm her. For her, this situation turned out to be confusing. She would not be able to give him away to other employees. Looking at the water, she imagined that, since he had seen her body, it would be fair to show him hers. After such imaginations, she realized and thought that it was all just a mess in her head. She was just caught in this form. Her mysterious image was destroyed. After being lost in her thoughts, she raised her head and heard a voice that said that she was very excited. As it turned out, this voice belonged to the mermaid Ariel. She told her that Selina had started some kind of affair in Shenguang and asked her to tell her about it in more detail. Selina finally told the mermaid about what was really happening in Shenguang, but she told about everything with minor corrections. Ariel was surprised by her story. She could not fully believe that Master Noah showed up in Shenguang and was able to kill the eighth Alstom. She also did not believe that he was going to declare war on those who served God. She replied to Selina that Noah had not appeared for a long time. Since he declared war on them, he is a serious threat to their deity. She also added that she does not really like this hot-tempered Alstom, but for the sake of resurrecting their goddess, they shouldn't refuse to cooperate with him. They had no other choice, for this Ariel is ready to ask the head to get involved in this matter. Selina was surprised by Ariel's words. She did not believe that the head was on a murderous island. Ariel confirmed this and told her that her time to complete the task was already running out.
The head of God's servants will definitely appear there in order to make sure that the plan to resurrect the goddess was successful. Ariel also told Selena that there is no need to worry. She is ready to go with her to the head. She is sure that with her the head will not blame her. Selena agreed with Ariel's words and said that she, too, would like to have such enthusiasm as her. Arriving at the head, Ariel told her maids that they had arrived there with important information. She asked to inform the head of their arrival. One of the maids said that she should return there later. Now the head is on vacation. It's better for them to come tomorrow. To which Ariel replied that she was just a servant and had no right to talk to her like that. It is she who accepts responsibility for the delay in the resurrection of God. The servant answered Ariel that her duties included only taking care of the head and nothing more. She has nothing to do with other matters. And then, from behind the main door, an order was given that there was no need to drizzle, let them come in. Selene told Ariel that the head was behind that door. Selena had a very strange feeling. Her heart was beating wildly. She was very nervous. Once inside, they saw the head. She told them that they invaded her chambers in the middle of the night. Chief Asmodeus added that she had not had enough fun yet and invited them to have fun with her. Selena and Ariel told her that wasn't what they were there for. They went to say that Noah wants to take revenge on God's servants. The head answered them that, for her, the way they hurried towards her was quite unsurprising. She said Noah showed up again, and she was prepared ahead of time. She took out the blood of the goddess and said that this blood could give them unparalleled strength. For Selena, it was a surprise. She did not believe that it was from the tomb of the goddess. The head said out loud that since she got it, she'd better give it to them. Looking at the head, the servants said that they hoped that they too would get a part of this treasure. The head told them that they had looked after her well all this time. It would be logical for her to reward them. She also addressed Ariel and Serena, saying that they should work more. She began pouring blood onto her body and ordered them to lick it clean, leaving not a single drop behind. Ariel did not understand such jokes. She was the sixth employee, and then she was ordered to lick some stockings, and Serena, standing next to her, was convinced that the head turned out to be such a pervert. She did not believe that she actually liked such an outfit. Looking at them, the head said that she did not understand what they were thinking about. Haven't they started yet? Perhaps the goddess's blood didn't tell them, or her legs. Ariel indignantly replied to the head that it might seem rude to her, but they were not some kind of military maids. She also said that the blood of the goddess is a priceless treasure, and it would be advisable to give it to those who really need it. The maids standing nearby were surprised that Ariel refused Mrs. Asmodeus. She could soon become a corpse since she did not know the consequences of refusal. The maids were sure that such talk could anger Mrs. Asmodeus. The head told Ariel and Selena that she hates being rejected. Anyone who refuses her is no longer a tenant. She added that she would give them one last chance. Kneeling down, they said that they were ready to obey the mistress and were ready to lick the blood to the last drop. After listening to them, Lady Asmodeus told them that it would be better this way. Asmodeus said that if they don't obey, her little sister will hurt them. She still has a lot of the goddess's blood. Asmodeus said that as far as Noah was concerned, they had nothing to worry about. She said that there is no person in this world who can defeat a succubus. Lisa sat until late at night and thought that the time had come and Xiaobai should return, and she needs to be more natural. Xiaobai entered the room. Lisa said he's finally back. Xiaobai was surprised and asked why he doesn't sleep so late. Lisa told him that she was a little hungry, so she had prepared a late-night snack and was just about to eat. Xiaobai looked at the table and said that a late-night snack is unhealthy. He asked what a girl with a body like hers could eat at night. Lisa said that she has an ordinary body. Xiaobai looked at the table and began to salivate. He asked what all this was, her snack. Lisa said that her illness had subsided and her appetite suddenly woke up, but it seems that she slightly overdid it with the quantity. Lisa smiled and asked that if he didn't mind. Would he keep her company? Shobai blushed a little, agreed, and said that he was also a little hungry. 
Xiao Bai exhaled and said that he was full and praised Lisa that she cooks very well, just the way he likes it. Lisa said that she was just cooking at home and didn't think he would like it so much. Lisa thought that she was a fool because she had prepared a whole table of what Xiao Bai liked. Lisa believed that it was normal to be a little nervous on your first romantic dinner with a man. Xiao Bai asked that she was also gifted and suggested that she was a telepath. Lisa was shocked by such a question and asked why he was asking this. Xiao Bai said that if he guessed correctly, this table is set for him. He said that Lisa found out when he would return and that he loved him. Before that, she said his name. This cannot be guessed using intuition. Lisa became embarrassed and said that you couldn't hide anything from him. She said that she didn't hide it on purpose. Lisa revealed that her true gift is not telepathy. She can see the future. Xiao Bai asked, what is even possible? Lisa replied that in theory, any ability is real. Xiao Bai said that based on her words, she knows everything that will happen in the future. Lisa replied that not really, she can only see what is connected with her. As for other people, it is not in her power. She said that although it is hard to believe, as soon as she falls asleep, her consciousness is transported to any day in the future, no matter tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, three days from now, three years from now, or five years from now. In her dreams, she had already lived this countless times. Lisa said that since the ability to see her future appeared, any surprises disappeared from her life. Xiaobai said that it really sounds cool, but if you know the whole scenario in advance, you can lose all meaning in life. Xiaobai understood and blushed. He said that since she can see the future, then she definitely knows about his secret treatment. Lisa admitted that she found out in advance, and her neck still hurts a little. Xiaobai was shocked. He thought that everything had remained a secret. Xiaobai understood why Lisa was embarrassed when she first saw him. She already knew what Xiaobai would do to her that evening. Lisa said he didn't need to be embarrassed. After all, he did it to save her. She said she just had to thank him. Xiaobai thought that he had really just fallen into a trap. Xiaobai told her that since she could see the future, she knew for sure that the those serving God were secretly targeting her. He asked why she didn't do anything. Lisa asked Xiaobai if he knew about the butterfly effect. She explained that any action she took other than the future would lead to huge changes in her life. She needs to be careful. Lisa thought that also, if she took action against the conspiracy of the employees, then how would Zhou Bai cure her? Xiao Bai said that giving up for an illusory future and enduring pain for years, he asked, was it worth it? Lisa blushed with embarrassment and said that in a dream she saw the most wonderful future. Lisa said that she would endure everything. Xiao Bai remained silent, but thought that what kind of future should the future be like for her to be so obsessed with him? Xiao Bai asked Lisa that she always supported the unification of Protoss and Shengguang. Lisa asked him that he knew that too. Xiao Bai told her that the crow spying on her told her. Xiao Bai said that he thought the same. He wanted to stop the tyranny of predators in this world so that no person would have to rely on force. Xiao Bai wants to help Lisa fulfill her dream so that Shengguang, the country of women, the Protoss, as well as the still unknown tribes of survivors, unite into one, completely changing this fragmented world. Lisa said it was impossible. Dreams are just dreams, nothing more. She said that she worked for this for many years, and nothing. She knows what it's like. Lisa said that most importantly, in the future, her dream never came true. Xiaobai stood up from the table and said that the dream future has not yet become reality. He asked, that doesn't that mean they have a chance? You can't live in the future all the time. Lisa was very surprised because this did not happen in her dreams. She didn't understand what was happening. Xiao Bai told her that any action she took that was different from the future would possibly change it. Xiao Bai said that they are using the threat posed by the original predator as an opportunity to unite all countries. Asmodeus was delighted and said that the goddess's blood had begun to act. She said that divine power was spreading. She said that this feeling was wonderful. Asmodeus called them the most loyal warriors of the goddess. On Mount Shu, near the entrance to the country of women, Eric sat on guard. A portal opened in front of Eric. 
He thought that a job had appeared. Xiaobai and Lisa came out of the portal. Xiaobai asked Eric, what is he working hard, and thanked you for your efforts. Eric stood to attention and said loudly that it was his brother and his fiance. Eric reported that working for his peace of mind was an honor for him, and not at all difficult. Xiaobai thought that the other bros must have taught him this. Lisa was embarrassed, and thought that calling her a bride in front of Xiaobai was so awkward. They were approaching the city, Lisa pointed her finger and told Xiaobai to look there. A monument was erected in the city of Xiaobai. The inscription on the monument said that this was the hero of Mount Shu. Xiaobai was shocked and said that a monument was erected in his honor, but he did not understand what kind of hero of Mount Shu was. The residents surrounded them and said that this was the hero of Mount Shu, Su Xiaobai, and they were glad to see him in person. One resident said it was more beautiful than the monument. The resident wanted him to stay forever in the country of women. She said that if it weren't for him, they would have already come to an end. Bai Yumo took Xiao Bai's hand and said that it was really him. Xiao Bai was scared. She told him that he had finally visited her. Bai Yumo said that she missed him and couldn't sleep without him at all. Bai Yumo grabbed his face and said that he had lost so much weight and asked what he suffered in Shengguang. She said that Lisa had treated him poorly and offered to go help him relax. Lisa got angry and shouted that Lisa treated Xiaobai well and how she would let someone hurt Xiaobai. Bai Yumo asked why she was so excited and asked if it was because Xiaobai came to her and was jealous because of it. Lisa was embarrassed and said that she didn't need to be jealous because Xiaobai came home with her and asked Bai Yumo that she didn't understand what this meant. Xiaobai asked them not to quarrel and said that he was here on business, actually. Bai Yumo asked that Xiaobai wants to unite the Protos and Shengguang against the murderous island. Xiaobai replied exactly. He explained that, after all, the original predator is a huge threat. If he comes to life, it's hard to even imagine the consequences. Bai Yumo said that there is no problem. If this is Xiaobai's demand, she will agree to everything. Aniji said that if they think about it logically, they are not in a position to accept his proposal. She asked the head to turn on his head because they had just finished the war with Noah. They could not fight again. Aniji said that it is not a long way from here to the murderous island. If now the country of women is suddenly attacked, they will find themselves in a stalemate. Xiaobai said that Aniji's concerns were justified. Therefore, before coming here, he came up with a solution to this issue. Xiaobai said that he would set up a portal between the three states, at the same time far to the east in Shenguang. A large portal appeared in the middle of the square. People were discussing what this thing was and why it appeared in the square at night. Someone said that without a doubt, this is the entrance to another world. Someone said that from here you can get into a harem. Rosier stood silently and looked at the portal. People continued to discuss where this portal led. Rosier was shocked and thought that this portal was very large. He wondered what his owner was up to. Rosier decided it didn't matter who did it. It still threatens Shengguang, and he will not allow it to exist. Rosier unleashed his ability and decided that he would destroy this thing. Lisa ordered Rosier to stop and said that Xiaobai had deliberately set this up in the country of women. Shengguang, and Protos. She said that a permanent portal connects the three states. Lisa explained that Xiaobai installed it using the gift of light and his own powers. They have no doubt that the portal will work properly. The knights listened carefully to their queen. She said that the portal could also strengthen the connection between the three states by constantly providing them with economic benefits and resources. Lisa said that these doors would take Shengguang out of her hopeless situation. This is their hope for a better life. She told Rosier that it was not his place to destroy it. Rosier said it was like she was wearing rose-colored glasses. He asked that she didn't think that through the portal you could not only deliver resources, but also try to capture them. Rosier said that there is a high wall and well-trained knights around Shengguang. They do not need to bow their heads to strangers. He can also ensure a peaceful and happy life for everyone. He said as far as Shengguang is concerned, this gate is a ticking time bomb. 
He is the head of a squad of knights. Protecting Sheng Guang is his duty. Rosier attacked the portal with fire magic and said that he could not allow something like that to exist. The knights thought that the head had gone too far and began to openly disobey Queen Lisa. Lisa said Rosier was unworthy of his position. She said that she is the ruler of Sheng Guang, not him. Rosier's fire magic, which set the portal on fire, dissipated. Rosier didn't understand why his flame was reflected. He thought it was Lisa's doing. Bulu, the leader of the Society of Magicians, told him that Her Majesty knew in advance that he would cause trouble. Therefore, she secretly instructed them to guard the gate. Bulu said that it was a blatant violation of the Royal Majesty's sacred order, and it was also a futile attempt to destroy the Shengguang Gate. Bulu said that he had already earned the death penalty. Rosier asked what the magicians were doing here and asked that they weren't expelled from Shengguang. An elite group of night witches from the Mages Guild said it was just for show. One of them asked that he really thought that Her Majesty would oppress others. The witches said that they were the Queen's most faithful servants. Rosier thought that all these years Lisa had locked herself in the room. She had almost no interest in politics. He didn't think that she had secretly built up such power. Rosier looked at Lisa and thought that before this, everything was a cover. He underestimated her and her management of the city. Lisa told him that since he had protected Sheng Guang for a long time, she would not execute him. Lisa said that, however, his time as the head of the knights is up, and now he is free. Lisa said, as for the new leader of the knights, it will be Lisa. Rosier stood over the squid he killed. The squid and Rosier were both on fire. Rosier thought that he had devoted himself entirely to serving Sheng Guang, and Lisa dared to deprive him of his position. It was a nightmare for him, and he couldn't believe it. He believed that Lisa was just a woman. Sooner or later, Sheng Guang City would be destroyed by her hands. Asmodeus looked at Rosier from the mountain and said that it was her favorite pet. She said that he killed him and asked what should she do now. Asmodeus said that he looks like the knight from Sheng Guang. She asked that he was kicked out. She told him that in any case he must be responsible for his actions and it was better for him to become her dog. Rosier got angry and said that she was boorish and asked that she was looking for death. Asmodeus flew to him and told him not to dare speak to her in such a tone. Asmodeus pinned him to the ground and said that she didn't even think about resisting because no one dares refuse her. And because he was rude to Asmodeus, she will have to punish him thoroughly. She raised her hand to give him a loving slap. Rosier thought that he was getting slapped in the face by some woman. Asmodeus beat him. He thought that it is obvious that he is the strongest of Sheng Guang and is so humiliated by a woman. But he does not feel shame. On the contrary, he had never felt so happy. He realized that Asmodeus had overcome him. He wonders what kind of magic she wields. Asmodeus smiled and said that the training was going well. She asked to be called Madam. Rosier stood on all fours and called her mistress. She replied that it was not bad. Asmodeus said that her eighth employee, Alstom, was already dead, and he would take his place. Dracula said that uniting three states against the murderous island was really a great idea. Once the original predator exists, it must be destroyed. Lisa thought that Dracula had no objections, and the job was done. Dracula said that such a big event would greatly affect all three countries. Their plan is flawed, and he needs to figure out one more detail. Dracula said that in this war, he would become commander-in-chief. The portal has security, and this time he wants to be personally present on the front line. He also said that, in addition, it is necessary to invite reporters to broadcast the battle live. This is a good chance to bring glory to the Guardians of Protoss. He wants to send all the S-rank and A-rank guardians to demonstrate the power of the Protoss to the whole world. Lisa was thinking about the three countries uniting for the first time, and Dracula was seriously thinking about authority. Xiaobai thought that it looked like Dracula wanted to strengthen his position through this operation. Xiaobai thinks that Dracula considers Xiaobai a threat to his position. Xiaobai thought that everyone close to him accepted this. He realized that uniting the three countries into a single organism would not be easy. Ten days later, 
the combined forces of Protos, Shengguang, and the country of women launched a general attack on the murderous island from the portal in Shengguang. Dracula ordered the fleet to move forward to the murderous island. Bulu ordered the sorceresses from the elite troops of sorceresses to show their fighting spirit and not disgrace themselves in front of the inhabitants of the country of women. Du Yue looked back and said that it looked like someone had approached them. Du Yue said that they were the heroes of Shushan, invited by Su Xiaobai, and they would never disgrace him. Deputy commander of the night squad, Simon said that this war is a matter of the queen's majesty and the authority of Shengguang. He ordered them to show their chivalrous spirit and fight for Shengguang. The sailor on the ship shouted to everyone to be careful. There was something under the water. A large octopus crawled out of the water and told them that they were pathetic people trying in vain to stop the coming of God. He said that anyone who swam here had one end, death. The Shengguang sorceresses summoned pumpkin heads and they fell on the octopus. These pumpkins exploded. Bulu said that he was too arrogant for a pitiful demon level. Losing to him would be a shame. Longyan asked that these are the magical warriors of Shengguang. She didn't think that Queen Lisa was hiding such trump cards. Something flew under Bu Lu, she thought to herself, that there was another predator in the water. She was surprised and couldn't believe it. She saw that these were the legendary tentacles. The sorceress covered herself and said that these tentacles were disgusting. She said that it was a shame. She asked the leader to help her. The demonic predator, the king of mermaids from the depths, told her to stop struggling and said that the bodies of young girls are extraordinary and taste so tender. The king of mermaids was surprised and asked where the snow came from. Long Weiyang froze the mermaid king and said that he should be ashamed of such a disgusting reception, and even death would not atone for his sins. Long Yan said that her Weiyang came and said that mommy loves him. Ma Fugui told Wei Yang not to take all the laurels for himself, and now it's his turn. The last blow is his. Ma Fugui hit the Mermaid King with his fire ability, and the Mermaid King crumbled into pieces. Ma Fei said that this sucker always talks a lot, and if he had not met such a cool mentor like him, he would definitely have died. Dracula announced to his army that they had arrived and there was a murderous island ahead. Dracula ordered his decree to be conveyed so that everyone would land and destroy the those who serve God on the island. Dracula told the guardians of Protoss to do this for him, to raise the murderous island to the ground. Mafugui and the other knights stopped, and he asked, What is this? This is the first time he has seen such big ones. They met a troop of giant bunny girls. They said that they have a lot of little ants here, and they don't care how many there are, they're just ants to them. The knight held his sword and said that they should not be fooled by their big chest, because on this island everyone is dangerous, and he, as a knight, is obliged to find out what the catch is. The knight flew up and used the knightly honor attack skill. Ma Fugui thought that this was worthy of the Shengguang knight and sacrificed himself without hesitation. When the knight flew closer, he thought that he was too close, and if he looked from this angle, he would not be able to stand it. The knight flew between the bunny girl's breasts. When the knight found himself between the breasts, he told his brothers to quickly save him, otherwise he would die from blood loss. Out of shame, everyone covered their faces with their hands. Mafugi thought that he wanted to forget everything he said about him and why he believed in this guy. The bunny girl said that it seems that their frontline people really like it here and asked what they also want to try. The bunny girl said that they were their guests after all, and the head of the employees, Asmodeus, ordered them to take good care of them. She invited them to take advantage of their generosity and experience it. The bunny girl leaned towards them and told them to greet the wave of sweetness. Ma Fugui looked at her and thought, what kind of sex manipulation is this? He realized that she would beat them with her breasts. The bunny girl crushed them with her breasts, giggled, and asked how they felt about the wave. The brunette bunny girl said that it's really not bad and it's all in the blood. A bunny girl with pink hair said that these guys turned into cutlets. The blonde bunny girl said that these guys are just trash, nothing special. She said that the ones to really be afraid of were the S-rank Protoasis guardians. Among the bodies of the guys, someone asked, who did she call trash? 
He told her not to dare underestimate an A-rank guardian. The blonde was surprised and asked, what was the fish that managed to escape and how was this possible? Mafugui used the power of the raging flame of the true dragon. Mafugui killed two bunny girls at once with one attack. The latter with pink hair did not understand how it was possible to kill instantly. She didn't think that among these ants there were so strong. Mafugui flew into her and said that she was scared too soon. He is only number 10A, rank, and there are many guardians stronger than him. The bunny girl tried to seduce him and told him not to be so angry. She offered to help him put out the flames. He just needs to sit on her and she will be ready to do anything for him. Mafugui hit her with all his might and said that this would not work with him. He asked her what she thought, that he wouldn't hit her if she was in that position. Mafugui said that before arriving here, he made a promise to himself that after completing the task, he would immediately confess to Tsunhua Kuikui. Mafugi said that they could not seduce him because he was in love. Someone came to Mafugi and said that he was not strong enough, but he possessed the same power of fire as this man. It was Rosier. He held a sword made of flames and said that most of all he hates the guardians of Protos and their belief in their own uniqueness and love of poking their nose into other people's affairs. He told Mafugi that since he had encountered him, he would have to die. Mafugi said that his speech was too pretentious. He asked Rosier not to ask for mercy later, like these bunny girls. Meanwhile, other knights parachuted from airships directly into the rear of the murderous island. Simon ordered the knights to fight for the glory of Shenguang. Simon saw something killing the knights in the air. He didn't expect that enemies could fight in the sky. Selina stood below and said that the idea of reaching the rear of the murderous island from the air was completely crazy. Knights dangling in the air cannot offer resistance. They became living targets for her. Selina said that the knights are finished, and this is their grave. Selina used Raven Hurricane. Simon thought that there were too many crows, and if they sat surrounded by this flock, the knights would be completely destroyed. Simon saw a barrier around him. He was surprised that it was Bulu with the girls. Simon shouted to the knights that the Mages Guild had arrived to help, and for everyone to descend at full speed, he ordered the one who called the crows to be killed. Selina said that they were lucky and still survived. She asked what they would do after landing. Selene told them that the head of the servants, Asmodeus, had given them special powers and they would all die. Bulu thought that this battle would atone for the sins of the knights, and they should win. A dragon flew to the sorceresses. He said that they were very arrogant. They made such a mess on his property and didn't even say hello. The tenth employee, the dragon knight Evan, said that in the sky above the murderous island, the last word always belongs to him. He said he wanted to play with the little flying witches. Bulu thought about how huge the dragon is. She feels its strength. It cannot be compared with the monsters from the sea. She didn't understand what was wrong with that guy, and she noticed that his body was growing out of a dragon. But she was tormented by the main question, why he did not open his eyes. She thought that he was looking down on her. Dracula came to the ship where Xiaobai was. Xiaobai thought that he had finally come for him. Dracula told Xiaobai not to rush to go ashore. He said that he had a more important task for Xiaobai. Dracula said that he would guard the rear of the Allied armies. Dracula explained that they had made a long journey here for the sake of battle. The port is their rear, the last hope of the Allied forces. He is forced to give this task to the most reliable person. Xiaobai said that the reason was compelling so that he could not refuse. He said that this was not his real intention. Xiaobai explained that Dracula just wants Xiaobai to sit here modestly and not take the palm from him. Dracula answered him that he was thinking too much. He had never even had such a thing in his mind. Dracula thought it was great that he agreed so quickly. Dracula asked where the reporters were. He told them to continue to follow him and not miss the exciting battle. Dracula thought that this war was extremely important and he needed to restore his reputation in front of the whole world. Lisa asked Xiaobai why he agreed to Dracula's plan. Xiaobai said that there was nothing else to do. Xiaobai explained that Dracula is the head of the United Forces. 
he must think about their general position and maintain the authority of the head of the troops. Xiao Bai said the most important thing is that Dracula's words make sense. If their rear is unexpectedly attacked, their troops will be unable to attack or retreat. Lisa said that he even invited reporters. She believes that Dracula is not particularly concerned about the war. Lisa believes that Dracula wants to strengthen his authority, that's all. Lisa knows his mentality and is afraid that something bad might happen. Xiaobai said that he also thinks about it, but what he cares about now is not Dracula's strength. Xiaobai said that Dracula wants immediate results. Xiaobai said that except for the crow and Alstom, they know nothing about the employees. If Dracula underestimates the enemy, he will pay for it. Lisa told him that Dracula was leading the United Forces and the whole process was being broadcast. People all over the world look at him. Lisa said that under no circumstances should he allow problems to arise. As soon as Dracula loses, the combined forces will be immediately defeated. Xiaobai opened the portal and told Lisa not to worry because he understood its significance. For the sake of the United Forces, he would never let Dracula lose. Noah and Alstom came out of the portal with the doll's body. Xiaobai ordered Noah to accompany Dracula and help when necessary. And Alstom ordered, as a long-range killer with excellent eyesight, to go to the top of the mast and observe what was happening on the island. He must keep Xiaobai informed about everything. Xiaobai said that since Dracula didn't want him to interfere, he would go with someone else. He asked that he also would not violate the order. Lisa thought that this was more and more different from her predictions. She asked herself, what else awaits them during the war? The operator said that he already regretted taking on this job. He said that it was too dangerous here. Predators could jump out at any time. The reporter told him not to be such a coward. She doesn't know what to be afraid of. The reporter became embarrassed and said, that is there a safer place than next to Count Dracula? The reporter told the cameraman to look at the Count's aura and asked what kind of predator would dare to approach him. Wu Yue called Dracula. The Count answered coldly and without emotion that he knew that he had long ago smelled a strong smell of blood somewhere here. Dracula was met by four inhabitants of the murderous island. The fox told him that it seemed like he was the one who had come to the lair of those serving God and was behaving so arrogantly she asked why he was tired of living. The fifth employee, the charmer, said that they had just made a bet to find out who could bring his head. She said that he shouldn't worry, everything would be quick, and he wouldn't even feel pain. Lisa began to talk about her friends. She said that Wang Xiaoming, although young, turned out to be so strong that the world of magic rejected him, and such a genius could not be found again. Jin Guifeng draws his sword faster than lightning and can cut a dragon flying in the heights in one fell swoop. The thunder dragon is endowed with superhuman strength. Its blows defeat even the gods, and its power shakes the earth and destroys mountains. The charmer said that Dracula can choose the one he likes best and asked, so at whose hands does he want to die? They serve God and do not want to offend him. Dracula asked that they are trying in vain to resurrect the original predator. Jian Guifeng said that he has good awareness, even aware of the resurrection of the deity. The Count moved behind Jian Guifeng in an instant and said that he would then finish off them serving the god. Jian Guifeng didn't realize when he was behind him and didn't notice him at all. Dracula sent Jian Guifeng flying with one blow. Jian Guifeng lost his arm, coughed up blood, and soon died from blood loss. The charmer looked at Jian Guifeng and thought that she killed Jian Guifeng instantly without hesitation. She didn't understand how it was that the great servant didn't give strength to Jian. The charmer thought that most likely this bat was much stronger than she imagined. Dracula said there was no need for a one-on-one -on -one fight. He told them to attack with everyone they have. He came here to completely exterminate those who serve God. Dracula said that it's good that they are together. He won't have to look for one at a time. The Thunder Dragon told Dracula that he rejoices early. Jian Guifeng was killed by carelessness. He asked what would happen to them as well. The Thunder Dragon said that he would crush him with one blow and that he should not dare to look down on him. Dracula stopped his fist with one hand and said that if he fights, then let him fight, and asked why so much empty chatter. 
Dracula easily tore off the Thunder Dragon's right arm. The charmer thought that he was crazy, fierce in battle, unlike the usual Protoss guardians. Wang Xiaoming thought that he would never fight Dracula. He realized that there was an abyss between their levels. Wang Xiaoming decided that he needed to escape, otherwise certain death. He wanted the head of the employees to deal with this guy. Wang Xiaoming summoned a pillar along which he could fly away. Wang Xiaoming thought that the successful retreat was successful. There was a very powerful defense on the border of this pillar of light. He believed that he was already safe. Dracula said that no one leaves without his permission. Dracula bit his finger until it bled and used a bloody blade, which he pointed at Wang Xiaoming. Wang Xiaoming believed that this was useless because he had created an elevation pillar just against such situations, and the thickness of the barrier was comparable to the golden body of a kunai master. Wang Xiaoming thought that Dracula would not do anything to him. The bloody blade separated Wang Xiaoming's head from his body. His last thoughts were that this was absolutely impossible. Did he wonder if his barrier didn't protect him from Dracula's attack at all? The charmer looked at Wang Xiaoming's body and thought that those two were killed instantly, and even Wang Xiaoming could not hold back his attack. According to the standards of Protoss Guardians, Wang Xiaoming is S rank. Dracula approached her and said that she was left alone. The Enchantress said that the person in the Protoss court who could deal with S rank in seconds should only be Musia, who had retired. She asked, then who is he? He replied that the acting emperor of Protoss was Count Dracula. The fox was scared and thought that even he was here. She wondered what the empire decided to destroy the murderous island. The fox said that she was the fifth employee and would not beg for mercy. She pushed off the ground to rise as high as possible. The enchantress attacked Dracula with a sphere of spirits. Count Dracula knocked the spirit sphere away in the other direction with one hand. The charmer thought that she didn't even touch a hair on her head, and this was her strongest technique, in which case she had one trump card left. The charmer used the disappearing technique. It completely hides her presence since the smells and sound are completely hidden. It seems that she is not in this world at all. He will never find her. Dracula said that he had disappeared. He couldn't even feel her breath. For him, it was an extraordinary camouflage technique. Dracula telekinetically raised all the corpses and said that it was useless, just a pathetic attempt to avoid death. Wu Yu was afraid that Dracula was planning. Dracula told them to just let him turn their lives into beautiful fireworks. Dracula blew up the corpses, and blood splashed in all directions and covered the enchantress with blood. She thought it was disgusting. The fox shouted to Dracula that this was too much. She was a neat girl, and why do such terrible things? Dracula grabbed her by the throat and said that she had already given herself away and called her a little fox. Dracula asked that her heart is as big as her breasts. Dracula suggested taking it out and looking at it. Wu Yu screamed for Dracula to calm down. She told him that the reporters were still filming and asked him to be more restrained and not to get excited. The cameraman and reporter were completely covered in blood and in shock. The reporter thought he was so creepy and imagined Dracula differently. People in Protoss discussed that Dracula was very strong and worthy of a person ruling Protoss. However, they thought that this was too cruel. A resident of Protoss said that these virgins do not understand anything and said that kindness and affection in war is the greatest cruelty towards oneself. She asked that don't they see the sacrifices their army made? Dracula asked for forgiveness and said that from the sight of fresh blood, he had lost his head a little and would be more restrained in the future. He said that this girl was also from the Fox Clan and he would leave her with Wu Yue. Wu Ye was thinking about what to do with her. This is a delicate situation and she is not good at dealing with prisoners of war. Wu Yu decided that it would be better to hand this matter over to him after all. He has a wealth of experience. The charmer fell out of a portal that opened above the ship where Xiao Bai and Lisa were. Lisa was surprised by what she saw and thought that this beautiful girl fell from heaven. The fox fell exactly where Xiao Bai was. Xiao Bai managed to catch her so that she would not fall from such a height. Xiao Bai said, Why does this always happen to him? He asked Lisa if she has already seen this in the future.
Lisa became embarrassed and said that it seemed not. Alstom said from the mast that she was the fifth servant, a seductress defeated by Dracula. Lisa was surprised that he had such good eyesight. Alstom said that Wu Yue sent her here, and if Xiaobai tortures her a little, he can get something useful out of her. Xiaobai said that he has experience in matters such as interrogation. The seductress came to her senses and asked that she had already died? When she fully came to her senses, she was indignant. Why was she tied up like that? She said the body went limp and asked someone to let her go. Lisa looked at her and thought that it was tied very skillfully, but she didn't think that Xiaobai had such skills. Xiaobai said that there is no need to resist. She is already in his power, and she is finished. He said that as the fifth employee, she probably knew more than the rest. Xiaobai said that he had countless ways to loosen her tongue and suggested that if he didn't want to suffer, then let him tell her as quickly as possible. The seductress told him not to bluff. The truly strong guardians of Protoss were already fighting on the front lines. Even their ruler Dracula was no exception. She said that the guy who stayed on the ship in such a critical situation was just some kind of home front warrior. The seductress said that it would take him 10,000 years to frighten her. The seductress said that he still didn't have long left and would tell the truth. They initially lost the war, and even Dracula's personal participation would not help. The fox said that she saw his techniques, he is indeed strong, but compared to their leader, it is still not enough. She kept saying that not only the head, every priest from the great four, they were all unsurpassed masters. The fox said that there was a familiar sound. Xiaobai said that the sound of waves. Something is approaching, and there is a lot of it. The seductress said that this was Ariel, the purest and kindest of the servants. She had come to save her. Alstom said they were in trouble and someone was watching them. Ariel said that the leader gave the order to destroy the entire fleet so that everyone who landed on this island would leave and never return. The employee began to shout at Ariel to come to her senses. She was also on the ship. Did she really want her to die? Xiaobai responded to the employee that apparently her friend was a little out of her mind, to which the employee said that she did not understand what he was doing. Did he really want to die? If he wants to live, then he should leave this ship and escape with her. Xiaobai told her that he was a rear soldier and he must perform his duties conscientiously. The employee emotionally told him that how could he show off like that in such a situation? Ariel is the daughter of the sea, the ocean is completely in her power. In the water, even she is not her opponent, maybe he will pull himself together and do something about it. A minute later, she began to think that even though he was a rear soldier, his strength was quite terrible. Is this really the very power of the Protoss? Looking up, the employee noticed that Ariel's behavior seemed very strange. She usually didn't act as rudely as she did at that moment. She clearly heard her cries for help. Coming closer to them, Xiaobai asked the maid if she really couldn't understand anything yet. She responded by saying that she had no idea. Xiaobai began to explain to her that Ariel is not who they think she is. She is under someone's control. He said that this technique could quickly suck all the juices out of her. Perhaps he could help with this. The employee was surprised by his words. She said that she did not understand how he knew all this. She was sure that he was not a rear soldier, but someone else. Lisa, standing next to her, said that Xiao Bai is not on the front line, not because he is weak, but on the contrary, because he is very strong. Even Dracula himself is afraid of him. She also added that most likely it will be Xiaobai who will replace Dracula. He is the guardian of the S-rank Protoss No. 4. He is the Lord of Endless Darkness. After these words, the maid was convinced that Xiaobai was really cool because he looked completely unremarkable. Approaching Ariel, Xiaobai touched her chest near the heart. She didn't like it and started screaming at him to take his hands off. Let him not think that he can take advantage of such a moment. After touching him, she began to think about strange feelings. Energy began to fill her body, something she had never experienced before. At this moment, the head mentally contacted her. She didn't understand why Ariel's heart began to beat differently. Her faith in God became more fragile. Most likely, she began to forget about God's mercy towards her. 
Xiaobai said that he did not understand what kind of god this was. He had never met him before. Touching the chain, he said that how could God bind his followers with chains? Ariel tried to stop him. She couldn't understand until the end what Xiaobai was up to. Breaking this chain, Xiaobai said that let her God cleanse her neck and wait. He goes to meet him. At this moment, the head of Asmodeus was thinking about what was happening to her. Why was her heart beating so hard? She felt afraid. Someone entered the divine world and broke her chain. She thought about this man who could interest and frighten her. She was very interested in who it was. At that moment, her employee witch came in and said that she was very excited and looked a little sweaty. An employee named Medusa also told the head that it was probably all because of the Protoss ruler Dracula. She offered her concern and asked how she could cope with him. At this moment, the messenger of death named Caesar said that she was getting too ahead of herself. It is better to give Dracula to him, since he is the one responsible for the heads of all strangers on the island. Asmodeus, turning her head in his direction, answered him that it didn't matter to her what he wanted. She said she was still uneasy. We urgently need to speed up the implementation of the plan. She looked at her employee Lin Long and ordered her to wake up, because she was very important to her. Waking up, Lin Long asked the head if she really needed her help. Meanwhile, on the ship, Xiaobai told Ariel that everything is fine now. She poses no threat. The maid at that moment was surprised at what he had done. Ariel exhaled calmly and expressed her gratitude to Xiaobai for helping to put her out of her misery. She also asked him if he could help her friend Selina since she was under the same technique. Xiaobai answered her in surprise that he did not think that this was the same crow girl who always bathed near the river. Ariel told him that she realized that her request seemed a little rude. She begged him to save her friend. If she had not taken her to the meeting with the head, her friend would not have been able to find herself in this position. The head saw that their faith had been shaken, so she applied this technique to them, despising them as obedient puppets. Zhao Bai listened and told her that he owed the crow, so he was willing to help save her friend. At this moment, Lisa saw something. She decided to call Xiao Bai and told him to take a look at it. She didn't understand what kind of thing it could be. She had never seen anything like this before. At this moment, Lin Long summoned her secret moon and sun barrier. She said that at sunrise, all the fighters would go into battle. Bai Yumo also couldn't fully understand what the hell this was. It was very blinding to her eyes. She suggested that it could be Guan's technique. Wu Yek told Dracula, that this thing could be like a magical barrier, which has a very powerful effect. Dracula agreed with her and said that it was the first time he had seen such a strong barrier. He is sure that he was created in order to stop him. He also added that they were scared quite late. Turning his head towards Wu Wei, he told her that the main building of God's servants was right in front of them, so they needed to destroy them. Having created this very barrier, Lin Long told the head that he was as handsome as she was, to which Asmodeus answered her that it was so good that she was nearby. Lin Long told the head that she was very embarrassed and she shouldn't be praised so much for it. She added that even she herself could not remove this barrier. You need to wait about 100,500 days for this barrier to deactivate. Thus, the Allied army is trapped on the island and no one can escape from there to which Asmodeus said that this was a necessary step for the resurrection of God. However, she is only half right. The most important thing is that this barrier of the moon and the sun will be able to stop the guy who was able to make her nervous. Xiaobai tried to open the portal, but nothing worked. He said that the portal also cannot be entered and this barrier technique is excellent. Xiaobai said that it seems that Dracula is not the only one who wants him to remain an indifferent spectator. The seductress said that this was the barrier of the second of the servants, Lin Long. She said that it doesn't matter whether you use magic or physical force, it's all to no avail, a person can't break it. The fox said that the head had already awakened Lin Long from hibernation, and it seemed that Xiaobai had made her very angry. Ariel said that this all seems a little strange. Now all the allied troops and employees are locked on the island, and what is the likelihood that the leader wants to sacrifice all the people on the murderous island in order to resurrect the god?
Lisa said that it is madness to exterminate all the people on the island. The Allied forces include Protoss, Shengguang, and the Country of Women. All the best from the three states. Lisa asked that they are sure that their leader will be able to kill them all. Ariel said that in the past, during the war with Noah, four of their employees carried out another important task. That's why they were defeated, and she thinks the strength of those three is incomparable to Noah, and the head Asmodeus surpasses them all. She said that if Su Xiaobai couldn't enter the battlefield because of this barrier, then her hypothesis was very similar to the truth. Xiaobai knocked on the barrier and said that a person cannot pass through this barrier. He wondered if a god or demon could break this barrier. The girls were very surprised that Xiaobai started talking about gods and demons. Caesar said that there are a lot of people here. They came from such a distance to attend their own funeral, he said that they were great. Liu Junchen said that where this strange skeleton came out from also stood against the wind, Liu said that they had already killed all of his buddies. Kolak said that most of all he hates those who only pretend to be strong, and he is only one, but dare to stand in their way. Caesar was told to turn around because all the Protoss lads were gathered here. They asked him why he alone would trample against them. Caesar told them that it seemed they had misunderstood. Caesar asked, when did he say that he was alone? Caesar began to cast a spell, and a magic circle appeared behind him. Caesar summoned an army of the dead. Liu Gunchen said that he was a summoner. Kolak said that there were too many of these summoned dead. They were so drastically outnumbered. Zhao Ping said that these creatures smell rotten and do not look like they are alive. Tian Yu said that the smell was more like undead. She said that apparently they had met a really strong opponent. Caesar pointed his staff at the people and ordered the undead to listen to his command that they destroy everyone. Mu Yan dodged at the last moment and thought that these undead were well-trained, their fighting skills were excellent. Zhao Ping thought that not only good physical strength, but also the use of magic. Mo Yang was thinking about how this summoner could continuously create undead and how they could win. Caesar laughed and said that in a battle with people he would not lose to anyone, because he alone replaced an entire army. The undead approached and smelled the stench of Ma Fei's change of underwear. Ma Fei grabbed the undead and slammed him into the ground. Ma Fei asked how dare he despise him. Lisa noticed that these corpses can regenerate and this begins to infuriate her. Black feathers began to fall on them. The undead did not understand where they came from. Bifa said that in the presence of an angel, there is no place for the undead. She said that since they can regenerate, it means they need to be trimmed so that there is nothing to be restored. Sypha struck with her magic, and the undead began to disintegrate into pieces until there was nothing left of them. Sypha told them to feel the pain. After her blow, there would not be a piece left of them. She wanted to see how they would be reborn. Bai Yumo said that she controls her powers so well, multiplying them even more than her breasts. Tian Yu said that this is what Sifa is all about. They must win for the sake of Protoss. They can't let the Emperor's assassins look down on others. Caesar found himself behind Sypha and asked if they were too early to rejoice. Sypha turned to Caesar and wondered how this was possible. Caesar said that they thought he had seen his entire army. He said they were related to him. As long as it lasts, they can be reborn indefinitely. Caesar shot magic at Sypha, causing her to fly straight into the ground. Sypha coughed up blood and thought that he was a difficult opponent. She underestimated him. She thought she would lose on the threshold of her own home. Sypha said that the Legion of Undead evolves with each rebirth. Strength, magical abilities, speed, endurance. Everything makes a leap in development. The longer the battle, the stronger they become. Caesar said that it does not matter how many there are. It doesn't matter how strong they are. If they get involved in his legion, he said that they had only one way left to become part of it, through mortal torment. While the undead legion was resurrected again and again, the situation on the battlefield gradually changed. The allied forces are locked in a difficult battle with endless opponents. Yin Yu received a blow from the undead and thought that her blade of love was useless against them. Shi Peng attacked with her feathers and said that this bastard should not be arrogant. She said that she would make a lot of holes in him. 
Her feathers passed right through the undead. Shipeng thought that their regeneration was endless, and at this rate they would sooner or later be killed. Bayumo said that everyone except the s rank guardians could no longer hold them back. Lisa said that she did not expect that one member of the staff could cause so much trouble for the Allied forces. Bayumo said that she didn't think that one day she and she would fight side by side. She asked Li Su if he would do her a favor. Bayumo asked Li Su to distract the undead, and she would kill that skeleton employee. Bayumo said that he is a lich. Once he dies, the undead army will immediately fall. Lisa told her not to worry and move forward. Bayumo thought that when this was over, she would definitely invite Li Su to the land of women to bathe in the hot springs. Bayumo walked ahead to get closer to Caesar and thought that now the allied troops were mired in a quagmire. She, as the strongest guardian here, must lead the others out of the deadlock. Bayumo used her ability and shouted that it was all or nothing. One hit would decide everything. She hit Caesar's shield and a very bright light appeared. Ma Fei was surprised and thought that this light was bright. Lisa was already tired of fighting and was wondering if she had succeeded. Caesar said that this was unexpected, and it turns out that there are people other than the head who can destroy his protection. Caesar told her that unfortunately it didn't work out. Bayumo thought that the thickness of the shield caused the deviation. From behind, Bayumo hit the undead with a spiked club. Caesar stood next to her and told her that he could control such a large legion of undead because of the incredible amounts of energy. The king told them to add as many more people here, no one would surpass him anyway, so they would never defeat the legion of undead. Bayumo tried to move, but it was impossible. She told herself that she couldn't lose now and had to fight. Caesar said that she was their leader and her death would symbolize the defeat of the coalition. Xiaobai came to them and said that he had not yet joined the battle, but Caesar was already declaring the defeat of the Allied army. The girls looked at the hole in the barrier. The seductress said that Lin Long's most powerful barrier had been pierced. Ariel had never met such people. She asked if he was a demon or a human. Lisa smiled and said that Xiaobai is the savior of this world. Caesar asked, where did this asshole come from? Caesar didn't sense his presence. He thought that Xiaobai mixed with the undead legion. Xiaobai moved to Bai Yumo and asked for forgiveness for not being able to save her. Caesar thought that he could not keep up with his speed. He did not understand whether this was true or whether he had glitches. Bai Yumo asked Xiaobai that he came to save her. Bai Yumo was bleeding and said that when she saw him, she stopped feeling pain. Xiaobai told Bai Yumo not to worry, and her offender would be ten times more painful. Caesar realized that he had to be careful with this kid and decided to watch him first. Xiaobai asked why he is so confident in himself. Xiaobai invited him to compare who is stronger. Xiaobai raised two fingers. Caesar expected a surprise attack. He said that nothing happened and it was a cheap bluff. Caesar asked why he was joking with him. Xiaobai asked, Is he in a hurry? Xiaobai told him that he scared him, that's all. Before a strong attack, you always need to warm up. Xiaobai invited him to look at the result of combining the cores of light and darkness. Xiaobai activated the true power of the gift of light. The girls began to heal. Saifa did not understand what was happening to her. The pain was going away and even the wounds were gone. Xiaoping said that her body was filled with energy as if her whole body was on fire. She had a feeling that she was about to explode. Lisa said that the same feeling as that evening with Xiaobai. She asked him to share his power with them. Mafei said that this is great. He feels that his fighting spirit has reached its limit. Caesar is shocked and asks, how is this possible? She said that these half-dead people fill with blood and come back to life. He asked what happens. Xiaobai asked that he was surprised and said that isn't it like how he controls an undead army. Xiaobai said that sharing his strength with others so that they would fight for him is a mere trifle for him. Caesar thought that the legion of undead was an invincible technique. He had been improving it all his life. He didn't understand how this guy could do exactly the same thing without effort. Caesar considered him a sucker 
and thought that perhaps he really had the strength to compete with him. Xiaobai told Bai Yumo that her way out, and so as not to worry, released the inner beast and returned all the pain she had experienced, he asked her to cut it with her own hands. Bai Yumo activated the Shushan secret style, flying blades. She lifted herself off the ground and said that thanks to Xiaobai's strength, she was able to rise again and Xiaobai's enemy would only face a sad end. She would destroy him into small pieces. Caesar asked, how is this possible? He said that he had already defeated her, and she thinks that she became a superman after receiving a little of this light. Caesar ordered a legion of undead to finish them off. Xiaobai said not to let them riot and deal with them. The girls said that they were going to help Bai Yumo. The undead legion was advancing on Bai Yumo. She asked that they also want to get in her way. With one movement, Bai Yumo found herself next to Caesar. Bai Yumo attacked Caesar. He thought that this was a show-off technique and it would not work on him. He started to dodge, but saw that these flying swords could pursue the target. It becomes more and more difficult for him with her. Bayumo said that it was useless to run away, and at this rate she would reach the ends of the earth. Her blades will follow him even there and pierce his throat. She asked what he still didn't understand. Bayumo told him that he was gradually slowing down. Caesar asked that he was slowing down. For him, this was nonsense. Caesar said that he was full of strength and not one iota tired. Bayumo's swords reached Caesar and pierced him, causing him to fly away from the blow of the swords. Caesar did not understand why he was weakening. He believed that he should still have plenty of strength. He thought that the whole point was that the Legion of Undead regenerated too quickly, and therefore he was wasting a lot of energy. But even so, he thought that he should have enough for his own battle. Bayumo told him to take a closer look and realize that his legion of undead had become a charge for Zhao Bai. Bayumo explained that with the help of endless darkness, he drained the energy from his army, and with the gift of light, he transferred this energy to the allied forces. She said that this was his strategy. Bayumo told Caesar that he dared to face Zhao Bai alone. This is quite self confident. She said that his own strength would kill him. Caesar told her to wait, because he had not yet released. Caesar did not have time to finish, and Bayumo cut off his head. Caesar's severed head said that he would not give up, because he had not yet shown all his strength. Bayumo took off her shoe and said, What a pity he didn't have a chance. Caesar asked what she was going to do. Bayumo crushed Caesar's skull. The legion of undead began to disappear. She said that it seems that now everything is definitely over. The skeleton is dead and the legion of undead should disappear after him. Xiaobai said that she did a good job. Bai Yumo blushed and thought about Xiaobai's voice. Xiaobai said that this is the first time he has combined power with her, and the result is already very good. He said that now she is his most capable girl. Bai Yumo said that Xiaobai's strength was truly incredible, not only making it easy for her to use the eternally floating blade style, but also allowing others to reach a whole new level with her help. She said that Xiaobai's strong and passionate energy always attracts her so much. Bai Yumo said that it was a pleasant feeling, as if he had broken all the taboos again, like that night. For her, it was wonderful. She still remembers every little thing. Bai Yumo said that every time she remembers this, her heart beats nonstop. Xiaobai asked her to wait and said that she didn't want to. Bai Yumo interrupted him and said that she couldn't stand it anymore. She wanted to be with him more than anything right now. Xiao Bai became embarrassed and asked, What is here now? He asked her to be patient for now and wait until she returns. Zhao Ping and Li Sa hugged him from both sides. Ping said that it was awkward to do this in public, but it was even more difficult to wait patiently for her to return home. Li Sa said that Xiao Bai did something strange to them and he should take responsibility. Xiaobai looked at them and asked why even they had such a reaction. Yinju told Xiaobai to look carefully. They are not the only ones who have this reaction. Ma Fei said that is true and Xiaobai will have to deal with them. Feng Mian said that he did not need to participate in this. Zhang Tianyu said that there is no need to be nervous. She has seen this many times and she has a solution. Ma Fei blushed and said that was cool. 
Feng Mian also blushed and said, That's what she meant. Zhang Tianyu asked how they were feeling and said that they should be feeling better. Ba Yumo said that she actually felt better. She said that one kiss from Xiao Bai can solve everyone's immediate needs, but the effect is temporary. Ba Yumo said that after this battle ends, she will definitely fight with Xiao Bai day and night. Xiao Bai sat covered in kisses and thought that the strength is gradually increasing. But the side effects are not bad. He managed to avoid a disaster, but he needs to be careful with this technique. Meanwhile, on the other side of the murderous island, Wu Ye asked that Dracula senses something is coming. Dracula replied that it doesn't matter. It's not the head of the employees anyway. He'll figure it out in no time. A very large snake crawled out of the wall of the building. The snake devoured Dracula. Wu Ye was thinking about what Dracula was doing. The reporter was in great shock. The operator said that Count Dracula was eaten by that huge snake. He hoped that it was not for real. This snake was a demonic-level predator, a titan boa constrictor. Something appeared on the titan boa constrictor's head. Wu Yue thought that someone else had come. The witch Medusa Gorgon appeared on the head of the titan boa constrictor. She said that staying calm after seeing a titan boa constrictor and one of the pillars of employees like her is rare to see. She asked Wu Yue that she was the same Dracula who defeated the seductress squad. Wu Yu replied that she did not think that there would be such a beauty among the employees. She said that the Gorgon was mistaken. It was not she who defeated them. Wu Yu said that the one who is now heading into the stomach of her little animal. Acting Emperor of Protosea, Guardian Number 3 is Count Dracula. The Titan Boa Constrictor spat out Dracula's flock of bats. The Gorgon thought that there were so many bats. She thought that Dracula was Batman? Dracula appeared before the Gorgon and said that she would take her life. Medusa dodged Dracula's attack and said that it is no wonder he can control so many bats. He is a vampire. The Gorgon said that this was her first time fighting a creature that uses mythical abilities. Dracula replied that he had more experience. Dracula thought that his attack was unexpected, but she was able to dodge it. He realized that she was not like other employees. Wu Yu thought that he should have already realized that she is not so simple. He needs to be more careful. The reporter began to comment on what was happening and said that Count Dracula crawled out of the snake's belly unharmed and her busty opponent was trembling with fear. The Gorgon looked at the reporter and said that she hated noisy insects. She asked Dracula for forgiveness and said that she would be there for a moment. Wu Yu began to think that they were idiots and hid and filmed quietly. And at that moment, they began to comment. Gorgon said that she wanted to deal with the noisy people and headed towards the reporters. The reporter got scared and saw that she was approaching them, but it just wanted to cheer up Dracula. She regretted that she never confessed to him. The reporter opened her eyes and thought about what was happening. She was alive. Dracula protected her with his magical barrier and said that she was his and no one would touch her except him. The reporter thought about how impudent it was to say on camera that she belonged to him. The whole world saw this confession. She thought that Dracula usually looks very serious, but at a critical moment he rushed forward and protected her. What is not said in words will be said in deeds. She came up with the idea that when he deals with the busty girl, they will get married and she will devote herself entirely to him. She can't wait. The Gorgon said that she smelled the disgustingly sour smell of love and said that she would give them a couple of minutes. The Gorgon said that he could sort out his feelings, but then it would be too late. Dracula told her to talk less, and she was sticking her nose into something that wasn't her own business. Dracula's bats ate the titan boa constrictor to the bone. Dracula said that he, as the leader of the Protoss, bears the burden of responsibility for the well-being of the human race on his shoulders and is not interested in feelings. The reporter thought that she had just been kicked out and was in a stupor about it. The cameraman thought that such a healthy snake was gnawed to the bone, and Dracula's bats turned out to be so scary. Wu Yu thought that it couldn't be so easy. The employee was not easy. Dracula dodged Medusa. She said he had a quick reaction. Medusa tried to attack Dracula again and said that it was too late. 
Dracula jumped back from her. Count Dracula blushed for some unknown reason. The reporter thought why Count Dracula turned red. This was the first time she saw him like this. She thought that that attack had hurt him. The reporter put forward another theory, that the busty woman was using a seductive technique. Medusa said that the sensations were approximately similar to hers. She said Dracula was a woman. People began to discuss that it was not for nothing that he wore such wide clothes, and it turned out to be in order to hide his body. The Protosian said that he had said before that Dracula lacked masculinity. People did not understand why Dracula hid his identity. They couldn't trust her now, because they had to have a trusting relationship with the people. The reporter couldn't believe that Dracula was a woman. She had been in love with her for so long, but she didn't notice. She tried to believe that Dracula was just a feminine guy, not a girl. Wu Yu thought that secrets always become apparent, but she didn't think that the truth would be revealed live to the whole world. She understood that the Protoss court would certainly be overwhelmed by scandal, and she already felt a little sorry for her. Wu Yue considered Dracula a good person and wondered if he could withstand such pressure. Medusa asked, Why hide the fact that she is a girl and she has mental wounds that are hard to talk about? Dracula told her that this did not concern her. Medusa said that it was a pity to hide such a pretty body under baggy clothes and said that it would be better for her to help her take them off. Dracula became embarrassed and asked that taking off her clothes wouldn't hurt her. Medusa said that she felt that there was no confidence within her. She said that Dracula had no confidence in himself. Medusa decided to attack Dracula and said that in this state, she would never stop her. Medusa struck with her snakes. Dracula managed to jump away from her attack. Medusa stood behind Dracula and said that such a broken state was not suitable for battle and she would undoubtedly lose. Medusa grabbed Dracula's clothes. Dracula ordered her to remove her hands. Medusa finally pulled off her clothes and was very surprised. Dracula tried to cover herself and thought that it was all over. The image of the ruler, built for many years, was destroyed. Dracula thought that now the whole world saw her in this form. She did not understand where the greatness of the ruler of Protoss had gone, and she wanted to strengthen her position with the help of this war. Dracula would never have thought that there would be such a failure. She was thinking that by now she had probably become a laughing stock for everyone. How would you order her to return to the duties of a ruler? People said that this was proof that Dracula was really a woman and said that she was also so beautiful and had a killer body. The reporter was surprised that she was such a beauty and that she was no match for Dracula in appearance. The cameraman said she was cute and asked why she was pretending to be serious. Wu Yu said it was for the sake of reputation and explained that Dracula cared too much about other people's opinions of her. Wu Yu said that she always tried to live up to other people's expectations and never for herself. Wu Yu explained that if she embraced her long-lost self in this battle, the trip would not be in vain. The reporter asked Miss Wu Yue if she knew why Dracula dressed up as a man. Wu Yue began to tell that Dracula has an extremely rare mythical power. Initially, she was supposed to become a brilliant defender, attracting thousands of glances. However, in the first battle, she was seriously wounded. The enemy was just a demonic-level predator, but because Dracula looked too innocent and gentle, the predator not only was not afraid of her, but on the contrary, began to laugh and say that she did not look like the guardian of the Protoss. Since then, Dracula has given up the skirt and replaced it with that baggy red outfit to fit the image of the strong. She has given up her feelings, suppressing her own nature. From a sweet girl, she turned into Count Dracula, who made everyone afraid of herself. She wanted people to stand in awe of her power. But Mr. Mu Xia accidentally dropped one phrase. He said that he would not be able to be the interim emperor of Protoss. He said that he was already planning to retire. And for such a task, he decided that Dracula would be better suited than him. This responsibility was not for her. Despite this, she put everything on her shoulders, gave everything she had, just to meet the expectations of other people. Every hope they have for Dracula strangles her like a yoke. 
However, she never complains to live up to the title of ruler of Protoss. In truth, she cannot stand more judgment. Dracula was called, she was surprised. Wu Yu told her to forget about other people's opinions and boldly be herself. Everything will be fine. They shouted at her to fight for herself this time. The people of Protoss began to support Dracula and shouted for her to fight for herself. The entire Protoss supported her, and words of support were heard throughout the country. Dracula said that she seemed to hear the voices of people urging her to fight. Medusa thought that her breathing had evened out, and she realized that those subordinates were her friends, and they helped Dracula pull himself together. Dracula said that she already understood that being a man is good, being a woman is also good. It's good to be a Protoss lord, and it's good to be a guardian. But now it's all to hell. The only thing she wants to do now is defeat Medusa. Medusa said that this attitude makes the battle interesting. She gives Dracula time to prepare, and then they will begin. A large amount of blood flowed from Dracula's chest. The reporter was surprised and asked why blood suddenly sprayed out and asked that she had an internal wound. She told her that this was the technique Dracula was most proud of. This was all done in order to hide their gender. She had not used this technique for many years. The fact that she was able to use this technique confirmed that she was able to find herself. The correspondent thought and could not understand how the sword could end up in Dracula's body how the blood from the chest could turn into this most magical sword. Dracula told Medusa that she wanted to save this trump card for the battle with Su Xiaobai. But in expressing gratitude for help in finding himself, he will make an exception and show it to her. The current one is much stronger than the last one. It has no chance. Medusa answered her, saying that she had indeed become much stronger. But still, these words sounded too loud for her. Starting to release magic from her hair, she added that she really had to fight it with all her might. The correspondent loudly began to comment that the hair of this employee released a gigantic amount of magic. It looked like she was about to summon some kind of terrible monster. At this point, Medusa said that she promised Chief Asmodeus to stop her. Therefore, no matter how strong Dracula is, she will be able to defeat her. Summoning her battle snake, she added that it was the strongest technique. Having seen them, the correspondent said that it was complete horror. Those things blocked out the entire sun. That very trump card from those serving God turned out to be quite good for her. Was Dracula really going to defeat all this with one sword? Medusa told Dracula that she probably never thought that there would be such a strong sealed snake in her hair. She can only use this technique on special occasions. She also added that there is no need to feel shame if she is scared. After all, the power of this technique is truly enormous. Everyone who was able to see this technique has long since died. And then Dracula counted nine heads and said that she had never seen such snakes. She must capture the snake while it is alive and then take it to the Protoss Zoo for research. Medusa told Dracula that it was disrespectful. Was she really brave enough to count at such a moment? She was simply furious about it. Medusa began to shout to her that she was not going to do such indulgences anymore. She should wake up. At this moment, Wu Yue said that her breathing was very eerie. Even she could not control this trembling. To which the correspondent replied that it was not only she who felt this way, but the whole island. Suddenly appearing, Noah thought that the snake-haired girl was the leader of the servants. As it turned out, she was able to take control of such an amazing snake. The master ordered him to protect Dracula. The time has come to act. Medusa confidently stated that Dracula would pay for his arrogance. She would definitely die. After her words, she launched this huge snake to attack. Looking at all this, Wu Ye thought, she could not understand why Dracula closed his eyes at the moment of the attack. Was she really planning to run away from there because the bite of such a snake is quite fatal? And then, opening her eyes, Dracula sharply swung her magic sword and was able to cut off these terribly attacking heads. After fighting off the attack, she said that such things just look so scary. Medusa thought at that moment. She could not understand how, with just one stroke, Dracula could 
Wu Yui was surprised by such strength. She said that this Dracula turned out to be much stronger than the one she knew before. That equanimity turned out to be exactly like Mu Shi's. Was Dracula able to overcome her own boundaries and move to a completely new level? In a spectacular jump, swinging her sword, Dracula told her that she was about to lose. Turning around, Medusa told Dracula that her death could not help her in any way. They will not be able to stop Lady Asmodeus. To which Dracula answered her that this was all just empty chatter and dealt Medusa the final blow. Exhausted, Medusa began to think that she was so sorry that she could not stop Dracula. She failed to defend the honor of the employees. She admitted defeat. At this moment, the correspondent was very happy. She said that Dracula was able to win. Victory is hers. Medusa couldn't figure out where she was. She thought that she was able to go to heaven and did not fully believe in her death. But then Mrs. Asmodeus told her that she was too pessimistic. Losing does not mean death at all, and even death can only herald the beginning of a new life. You need to look around and look at those bodies bursting with energy. They will all be waiting for her, waiting to become part of God together with her. The bodies told her to quickly go with them. God called them all, rather, he needed her. Asmodea said that she did not need to be in her own doubts. Her faith could not be shaken. Will she really be inclined to intend to betray her friend? Medusa replied that Lady Asmodeus was her only friend. She was perfectly able to understand everything that will forever be God's friend, namely Mrs. Asmodeus. She is ready to give her all. After silence fell, Dracula thought that finally this could all end. When Dracula began to pass by the correspondent, she said that how beautiful she was, she was even scared to look at her. Wu Yi wanted to tell her not to think that, but Dracula decided to interrupt her. She approached the operator and told him that she wanted to apologize to the protos subjects. This should help her. The operator asked her what exactly she would like to do. She began to make an appeal to the most humble. She told them that she wanted to apologize to them for lying to them all this time. While serving as ruler, she was unable to build trusting relationships with citizens. This was her main mistake. Hearing this, the citizens became very thoughtful. They could not believe that the ruler dared to ask for their forgiveness. Dracula said that she should wait until she could deal with all the employees on this island. And then, she is ready to leave the post of ruler of Protoss. The correspondent, shouting, asked questions to Dracula. She did not understand why Dracula wanted to leave this position. Is it really because she is a girl? Under her leadership, Protoss always flourished. Only she was suitable for that place. There was simply no one else besides her. Dracula didn't believe her. She wasn't 100% sure that she really thought so. At this moment, Wu Yue said that Dracula was not the only one like this. The operator supported her words and said that all viewers of the broadcast would also support her. And then, just a huge number of spectators began to chant the name Dracula very loudly. Hearing this, Dracula said that she was not good enough. She didn't even consider herself the strongest in Protos. Xiaobai, who appeared there, agreed with her words, saying that the control of Protos was tied not only to brute force. A sense of responsibility to the city played a big role. In his opinion, she is the one suitable for such a position. Dracula asked why he came here and asked that he seriously thought so. Shobai replied that since his arrival she has ruled Protoss. She admitted that not all of her deeds were good, but in any case he was for her. Dracula thought that she had always perceived him as her worst enemy, and he so calmly spoke words of support. She thought it was because of the camera, and he wanted to save her reputation. Dracula continued to wonder that with his power it was possible to subjugate the entire world, but he did not even want to master the Protoss. She realized that he was not interested in this. Eventually, Dracula realized that she was missing something very important. Dracula told Xiaobai that no one except Wu Yue had seen her in this form, but he was almost not surprised to see it. She asked if he had really seen her without clothes before. Zhao Bai became embarrassed and said that of course not. It's also the first time he's been shown on TV, so he's a little nervous. In fact, 
Lisa had already revealed to him the secret that Dracula was a girl, but he could not believe it. And now, when communicating face to face, he was speechless. Xiaobai looked at Dracula and thought that she was very cute. Dracula asked that he really wasn't trying to deceive her. Xiaobai looked at her chest and thought that she was really the same age as Musia because she looked so innocent and energetic. He assumed that her profile contained false information. Dracula felt something and said that this gust of wind carries a lot of power and all of it is concentrated in that direction. It seems that this is the last trump card of the servants. Gusts of wind went towards where the shelter of the servants of God was located. Mafugi walked away from the defeated Rosier. Mafugi saw this aura and was surprised that he had not died yet. Selina began to think that everything had already begun and had the situation really become tense enough for this step. Lisa asked what it was and said that it was collected in the center of the island. The charmer said that the head of the servants extracts power from the island, from every leaf and blade of grass, from every corpse, from the traces of every battle. All this will become the source of her strength. Ariel said that she used mind control on her. Ariel asked that she really had two abilities. The charmer said that she and she are in different groups. She does not understand the techniques of the chapter. Extracting energy is not her power at all. It is the ability of a god. The charmer said that Mrs. Asmodeus can somehow communicate with God and even borrow his power. Asmodeus said that who would have thought that even the sun and moon could not stop them. She had never subjugated someone like him before. She told Xiaobai that he was the first one who made her heart beat faster. Xiaobai asked that she was the head he saw in the spirit world and asked why she appeared so quickly. Asmodeus said she was just looking forward to meeting him. She asked if he would like some time in his sister's arms. She pointed to her chest and said that it was very soft here. Xiaobai told her to take it in moderation. Dracula thought that she was very depraved. Xiaobai told her that after killing that skeleton, he immediately suspected something was wrong. Endless darkness automatically absorbs power from everything around, but after that guy died, nothing happened. Xiaobai said that it was all because of her. He explained that, realizing that she could not defeat them, she absorbed his power and Asmodeus was just trying to stall for time. Xiao Bai said that this power is needed to resurrect her god. Dracula was surprised that he managed to find out so much information. Asmodeus said that his gaze scared her, as if he wanted to devour her alive. Moreover, at first glance, he unravels human thoughts. He excites her more and more. Asmodeus said she wanted to ride him and then abuse him mercilessly. Bayuma was angry and told her to be careful with her fantasies, only she could squeeze Shobai. Lisa said that she would never allow her to do this to him, and even if she didn't try, she still wouldn't allow her. Dracula asked, what happened to those two? Zhao Bai thought that this went against the tactics discussed earlier. Bai Yumo shouted that she was Xiao Bai's first girlfriend and would never forgive anyone who dared to seduce him. Lisa said that for Xiao Bai, she is ready to do anything because this is a love duel. Asmodeus asked that his name is Zhao Bai. She said that he seemed to have a lot of girls, and then she decided to start with them. Asmodeus used her ability to hypnotize Bai Yumo and Li Si. Xiao Bai got angry and asked what she had done to them and warned that if anything happened, she would be finished. Asmodeus said that he was so concerned about the safety of other girls and asked if he was afraid that she would be jealous. Dracula told her to stop talking such sweet nonsense. She is actually their enemy. Xiao Bai said that she has not yet decided whose side she is on. Asmodeus called Xiaobai an insensitive lout. She said she was a succubus and had never killed. It just satisfies human desires. Asmodeus can satisfy desires that cannot be described. Dracula became embarrassed and thought about those desires that cannot be described. Bayumo thought that there was some familiar feeling here, and the air was filled with pure energy. She remembered that wasn't this the moment when she broke Xiaobai's seal. Xiao Bai stood in front of her and said that he was burning all over. His body was full of energy, but he couldn't throw it out. He felt like he was about to explode. He said that he was having a hard time holding back and asked if she would help him. Yumo told him not to worry. She would not refuse him in such a matter. There was a dragon flying around by Yumo. 
She thought about how fierce the dragon was. She felt amazing. Steam rises from his body and she likes it so much. She expected the dragon to explode soon. When this happened, she thought it was amazing and was surprised that Xiaobai's strength had reached such a level. For her, it was simply heaven. Li Sa looked around and thought that it was very beautiful. She had dreamed of such a wedding. She realized that since it was her wedding, then her husband should be... Xiaobai came out to her and said that he had been waiting for this day for a long time. He said that from this day their married life begins. Lisa was embarrassed and asked why newlyweds should do this at night. Xiaobai told her that of course he explained that it was called the first wedding night, an established and very romantic ceremony. She asked him to teach her everything she needed. Dracula said that Bai Yumo and Li Sa looked happy and asked that it was because of the strength of the head of the employees. Dracula said that he first satisfies the enemy's hidden desires, and then, when he becomes addicted, he imposes a mind control technique. Dracula said that her ability is not easy to control, they must be careful. Xiao Bai did not listen to Dracula and flew to save the girls. The reporter asked what Xiao Bai was doing. He also rushed alone. Wu Yue said that he shouldn't be so impulsive. It would be bad if he was caught, too. Dracula wondered if he had already found a way to wake them up. Asmodeus asked what he thought of again, how to break her spell. She said that, however, this time everything is not so simple. She asked to take a closer look at his girlfriends. Asmodeus said they looked very happy. Xiaobai said that no matter how pleased they are, it is still a deception, just a world of illusions created by her. Xiaobai waved his palm and told them to be patient for a moment. He would wake them up. Xiaobai slapped the girls on their butts. Dracula was in complete shock. The girls did not come to their senses. Xiaobai said that it is still not enough. The head's mind control technique is no joke. Bai Yumo came to her senses and said that her butt hurt very much. She wants to play like this again. She realized that being spanked is very pleasant. Lisa said that this feeling and technique were familiar to her. She realized that this was definitely Xiao Bai's blow. Bai Yumo asked how she understood this and when did she and Xiao Bai play such a game. Lisa said that she won't tell her, it's their secret. Dracula thought it worked, injecting her energy into their bodies with the gift of light and thus dispelling their illusion. Dracula thought that if she fell into the trap, she would also be forced to receive a slap from Xiao Bai. In Dracula's imagination, she stood on her haunches and asked to be spanked with the strongest blow. Xiao Bai told them to stop arguing because they were facing an enemy. He asked them to wait while he dealt with the head of the employees, and then they played as they wanted. He is with them day and night. Xiao Bai guaranteed their pleasure. Bai Yumo said that how can she be satisfied with one day? She needs twenty days. Xiao Bai was shocked and simply agreed. Asmodeus was trembling with anger and said that he had ruined her mind control technique twice, no matter what. But she couldn't stand flirting in front of her. She shouted to him that there was a beautiful girl in front of him and he decided to flirt with others. She would not forgive this. Asmodeus decided to use the succubus's ultimatum, a love temptation. Asmodeus managed to take control of Xiao Bai and he was hypnotized. The girls shouted at him to brace himself and not let Asmodeus take over him. Asmodeus explained that it was useless and they would not be able to reach him. This technique was much stronger than the one she cast on them. She said that according to her plan, Xiaobai is already in seventh heaven now. In Xiaobai's head, Asmodeus was on all fours and asked Xiaobai to punish her harshly. Xiaobai looked at it all and said that she loves collars and chains, she loves such toys. Asmodeus answered him that she only gets excited with them and said that if the master does not like such games, she can please him in a different way. In the end, the image of a slave is too much for him. She turned into a flock of rabbits and asked if this would satisfy him. They will fulfill everything he wishes, and he will not be able to forget it. Xiaobai coldly replied that he was not catching and let him try again. Asmodeus was shocked and thought that this was the first time someone had said such rudeness to her. She realized that he had an enormous appetite. She cannot show her anxiety, and she needs to calm down. She is still a succubus. Not a single man on earth can resist her.
Asmodeus said that the gentleman, it turns out, is a lover of exotic things. Ordinary techniques do not make his heart flutter. She said that if she wanted to satisfy him, she would have to do her best. Xiaobai ordered this to be done as soon as possible. Asmodeus dressed up as her first love with an innocent classmate. She believed that the gentleman would definitely like this uniform. Xiaobai looked at her with a straight face and said that he didn't like it. She tried to dress up as a slutty widow. Xiaobai said she didn't like it. Asmodeus dressed up as a colleague from the elite, and he also didn't like it. Xiaobai didn't like everything, so that she didn't change clothes. Asmodeus didn't understand why it still wasn't coming out. For some reason, her power doesn't work on him. Xiaobai told her not to blame herself. The problem is not her, because he is already fed up with all her images. Asmodeus thought that he looked so ordinary, and when did he manage to try all her images? Although she didn't practice, she watched a lot of films. They inspired the creation of those techniques. She didn't understand why his heart wasn't beating faster. In her eyes, this guy is simply behaving indecently. Xiaobai was able to dispel the Asmodeus technique. He opened his eyes and saw his girls in front of him. Lisa was happy that he finally woke up and said that they were all so worried about him. Bai Yumo said what else should have been expected from her boyfriend. She knew that everything would be fine with him. Lisa asked what he did to the head of the employees. Bai Yumo said that they were very interested. Bayumo looked at Asmodeus and said that she suddenly lost heart and was about to freak out. Asmodeus cried and thought that she was a disgrace. In her own illusion, she could not cope with the man, and it would be better if he killed her. She considers herself a disgrace for the succubus. Xiao Bai flew closer to her and told her to give up, and she couldn't defeat him. Asmodeus wiped away her tears and said that he was simply immune to her charms and told him not to rejoice too soon because the outcome of the battle was still unclear. Shobai said that she would not stop, then he decided that he would not talk in vain and would use everything. Wu Yu thought that he had hidden this technique, and it was beyond her understanding. Dracula thought about what a pleasant golden glow was. She realized that it was the power of the gift of light. Dracula was surprised that Xiaobai had already achieved such mastery. All his friends and acquaintances flew to him. Ma Fei looked at Noah and asked who he was and that he had not seen this old man before. Noah replied that he was Xiao Bai's direct subordinate, and a rude person like Ma Fei certainly didn't know him. Xiao Bai looked at them sternly and ordered them not to swear. Ma Fei hugged Noah and said that Xiao Bai's subordinate was his little brother. He said they would get along great. Noah thought about getting this brute to take his hands off. Asmodeus thought that it was useless no matter how hard she tried, everything would be pointless. She could not defeat him. The only thing she can hope for is the god she has always believed in. All the collected energy had already been sacrificed to him, but he still did not respond. She believed that she was chosen by god and she had to control everything. She did not understand why, when she met such an opponent, god stopped protecting her. Xiaobai saw that she no longer had the desire to fight, and it was time to end everything. All of Xiaobai's friends decided to attack her together. Asmodeus cried and thought that no one had ever humiliated her like that. She decided that her life was over. She saw a purple glow. She thought it was God. A girl stood in front of her and defended her. Asmodeus thought that she had already seen this ass and these snow-white legs. Linglong covered them with her barrier. Asmodeus asked why she hadn't run away yet and asked that she came here so that they could be buried together. Linglong said that she once said a long time ago that she would help her and would definitely keep her promise because she always keeps her word. Asmodeus cried again and said, How can you be so cute? Linglong said that she shouldn't praise her so much because she was embarrassed. Xiaobai's friends attacked Linglong's barrier but were unable to break through it. Ma Fei didn't understand what kind of joke this was. He couldn't even punch his fist. Qin said that this is an amazing technique, and even Yao's blade is powerless. Xiaobai said that although it is smaller, it is still the same barrier as last time. Bai Yumo asked what would happen then to open it. Xiaobai said yes, but he would have to summon a demon. 
Xiaobai said that he has a difficult character, but they have nothing to fear. As Modius said that the barrier will not last long, Xiaobai will open it soon. As Modius asked that since she was not afraid to come here, does that mean she has a way to get out? Li Lu asked Asmodeus what she still remembered about who she was before becoming an employee. Asmodeus said why she was asking, because now is not the right time. Li Lu remembered how she was tied to a pole and people shouted to burn her. They said that she was at one with the predators and that she was not a person, but a zombie. They believed that if they let her go, she would harm even more people. Lilu said with all her might that she just wanted to help. People shouted that if she had not brought the predators, so many people would not have died in their village. The elder said that everyone seemed to agree with this, and if there were no objections, he would begin the ritual. He threw the torch. Asmodeus caught the torch and prevented the tree from being set on fire. The elder asked who she was and how dare she violate the ritual. Asmodeus replied that it was strange, and wasn't he just asking? She said she was against it. Asmodeus burned the village and completely killed all the inhabitants. Lilu said that this was the first time she had seen her and asked why she decided to save her. Asmodeus said that she would never leave such a cutie. She explained that no one would want to watch her burn. Lilu felt embarrassed. This was the first time someone had complimented her. Did she think that zombies could be cute too? Asmodeus said that she helped them get rid of predators, and these ignoramuses, without understanding, decided to burn her. She asked why she wanted to help such animals. Lilu said that she was a zombie, everyone was afraid of her, and she dreamed that people would accept her like that. She dreamed of making her first living friend. Therefore, as soon as people need something, she makes every effort to make them happy. Asmodeus was surprised and said that she was her first friend then. Lilu was surprised and asked what to make friends here. Asmodeus asked that she wouldn't go and asked what else she needed a certificate. Asmodeus said that from now on, they are one with her and no one will harm her again. Lilu said that since they met, she has always protected her, but now she is helpless. Asmodeus told her that this was a dead end and asked what else could be done. Lilu said that there was no dead end yet and asked to be allowed to stand up for her this time. Lilu fell apart as Modius shouted what she was doing and asked to give her a hand as soon as possible. Lilu finally said that she was sacrificing herself to God. Her power might help awaken God. Asmodeus thought that she was a fool and had done such a stupid thing to herself. She did not understand how to awaken a God with such a small amount of energy. Asmodeus believed that such matters should be left to the elders. Asmodeus didn't know if she had enough energy, but this was the only way, and she decided to try. This is her last move. If it doesn't work out, everything will be over for her. She asked God to have mercy and help her. Xiaobai destroyed the barrier. Asmodeus was surprised that last time he only punched a hole. This time he destroyed the barrier completely. She saw Xiaobai and thought that this breath threw into chilling horror. She did not understand that he was still the same Xiaobai. Xiaobai appeared in front of Asmodeus in Asura mode. Xiaobai told her that he had to be a little late and apologized for the wait. Dracula was surprised that he could control the demon's full power. She did not understand where the limit of his capabilities was. Lisa thought that Xiaobai with long hair was no less attractive. Bai Yumo was drooling and thinking about how she looked like she had a hormonal explosion. She was so excited. Xiaobai turned to the head of the employees and told her to admire the result of her work. So many people died because of her deity. Xiaobai summoned Asura's hand and said that since she was not ready to stop, he would do it. Xiaobai pressed her against the tower with his hand. Asmodeus did not understand what kind of technique this was. He held her so tightly that she would soon suffocate. Xiaobai flew closer to her and said that he doesn't know why, but when he sees another person struggling with all his strength, it excites him like hell. The especially frightened sight of such a spoiled girl like her excites him even more. Asmodeus was frightened of him and asked what he was going to do. She said that despite her appearance, she was a decent girl and told him not to approach. 
Asmodeus was already imagining how he would violate her in front of hundreds of people. Wu Yu thought that he was crazy. The report was still underway. The whole world was looking at him. She tried to understand what he wanted to do. Dracula thought that although Xiao Bai was far from ideal for her, he could not do such a thing in front of everyone. She thought that this was all due to the influence of the demon. She thought that his character had definitely changed because of this and the shame had disappeared. Xiao Bai was surprised and thought that she was not lying because he had already been in such a situation. He realized that this was true and she was definitely innocent. A purple light appeared. Asmodeus said that it was God and he really answered her. Xiao Bai said that it took him a long time to get ready. Asmodeus said that it looked like they would have to end it there, although it wasn't exactly the outcome she wanted, but he was the one who forced her. She said that God was already absorbing her power. Asmodeus said that if she didn't have time to say something now, then she wouldn't have another chance. Asmodeus fell into pieces and said that what she shared when they first met was a reflection of her true feelings, and she did not lie to him. Xiao Bai tried to remember what she told him back then. He remembered what she told him about how he was the first person to make her heart beat faster. Xiao Bai decided that apparently only by destroying her god could he get answers from her. The reporter pointed her finger and told everyone to look at the tower. The energy was gathering there. She said that didn't they want to resurrect the original predator. She didn't understand what the hell was going on then. Lisa said that the sphere had split. Bai Yumo asked what it was. Mafei said that the aura is very strong. Noah did not understand how this was possible. He asked that there is someone else at the level of the original predator. Xiao Bai said that this is interesting and the situation is getting more complicated. A purple beam flew over Long Yan. She had one question, in which direction the beam flew. The beam flew towards Muxia. He thought that again some villain was on the loose, and he just wanted to relax in retirement. The further you go, the more trouble you get. Another beam flew towards the forest on the abandoned continent. Long Ming saw this and said that a new era begins here, and he is glad that Xiao Bai was able to surpass him. But the worst is yet to come. He must stop this, otherwise everything will end. The city began to rise above sea level, and as a result, the ground disappeared from under our feet. The reporter shouted that the original predator was under this island. The original predator turned the island over, and everyone began to fall into the water. Noah froze the water so that no one would drown. Everyone was saved, and no one was seriously injured. Noah said that civilians need to be evacuated as quickly as possible in the face of such a creature. No one can guarantee their safety. The reporter was shocked and could not believe that it was against them. The original predator came out of the water. Lin Kun, he asked that a mortal going against the god of cats to God's punishment? Xiao Bai told him that he seemed to be confused. Xiao Bai explained that he came here only to overthrow God. Xiao Bai asked if he was ready to die again. Xiao Bai's allies were floating in the air around the original predator Ling Kun. Ling Kun said that this was the power of the gift of light, and he understood why Xiao Bai had the courage to confront him. Ling Kun said that he was still like an ant to an elephant. The primordial predator began to suck out the energy of the light core. Lisa regretted that she had lost her precious gift from Xiao Bai. Bai Yumo said that the problem was not only energy, she said that her clothes were too thin. He was even going to suck her in. Dracula asked that it was low to resort to such dirty tricks. She asked that they should fight him naked. Mafugui and Mafei flew to hit Ling Kun. Mafei said to forget about clothes and explained that real men have no secrets from each other. Mafei charged the arrogant martial arts soul and struck with an ignorant blow. Mafugui charged a powerful blazing flame. They hit Ling Kun at the same time, but it did nothing. Lin Kun called them fools and asked why they were scratching his back. Lin Kun decided to show them his strength and asked if they would have the courage to withstand his attack. Long Kun's attack had almost reached them. From the bright light, Ma Fei covered his eyes with his hand and thought that he had great strength. Ma Fei was glad that Xiao Bai managed to absorb. Ma Fugi thought that Lin Kun was stronger than that octopus. Lin Kun guessed what abilities Xiao Bai had, Xiao Bai asked. 
Doesn't he need energy? Xiaobai said that he would give him enough. Xiaobai hit him with his miraculous power, Xiaobai said in an angry tone to go to the bottom. Lin Kun was surprised that he could not resist the mortal and went under the water. Mafugi said that for some reason he was being too dramatic. Mafei can't wait to mess with him. Xiaobai said that the reporters were actually still filming. He asked that these two were going to air the birds live. Ma Fugi was scared that he was on the air and was thinking about how he could appear in public now. Ma Fei asked what it meant to ventilate the birds and asked if there was something wrong with him. Lin Kun swam underwater and thought that he could not be mistaken, that that kid was using endless darkness. He didn't understand why he decided to grapple with him. Lin Kun suggested that he might have forgotten his purpose and rushed towards the pitiful people. Lin Kun decided to test the waters. If he really betrayed them, he would finish them off without hesitation. After all, water is his element. Zhao Ping said that he did not move. She assumed that he had died. Lan Qing said that she didn't and most likely wanted to pull some kind of trick. Tentacles crawled out through the ice. Lan Qing dodged them. She thought that she had already seen this technique with tentacles, but this time she was not their target. The tentacles grabbed Zhao Ping. Ling Kun told Xiao Bai that he felt that this girl was dear to him and said that they had a symbiosis. Xiao Bai realized that this predator was shrewd, but he did not understand, like Ling Kun, that they were connected. He did not choose her by chance. Lin Kun said that he and the Dark Core originated from a common beginning. He is under its influence and can also absorb energy. Lin Kun decided to eat her because he could not understand what would happen. He speculated and told Xiao Bai that maybe it was his destiny to team up with him. Xiao Bai managed to save Zhao Ping. Lin Kun said that for the sake of one human girl he betrayed him. Lin Kun said that he still forgot the calling of the Dark Core. Saifa said that when she saw this monster, she could not stop trembling. She asked Qin, can Xiao Bai really defeat him? Lan Qing said that since Xiao Bai appeared in Protoss, Zhao Ping has always been with him. Xiao Bai worries about her the most. Saifa said that she did not think that Pin was so important to him and said that she was not mistaken about him. Lan Qing said that this whale touched the king to the quick and he is now a dead man. Xiao Bai told Zhao Ping to go to Qin for now because it is too dangerous here. He will fry this fish and come right away. Pinny told him that she would do whatever her master said, and she asked him to definitely return to her. Xiaobai smiled at her and told her not to worry. He had never deceived her. Xiaobai asked Wu Yue to do him a favor. He wanted her to use the teleportation technique and get everyone out of here. The farther, the better. Wu Yue asked, what does this mean? Wu Yu asked that he wanted to fight the original predator alone. She told him that they all knew how strong he was, but it was better to fight together. Xiaobai explained that Ling Kun had the same power absorption ability as him. Fighting with a whole crowd wasn't the smartest idea, but what was more important to Xiaobai was that he didn't want to hurt anyone when he attacked. Wu Yue understood him and said that she would do as he said. She didn't understand why she obeyed him. She was thinking that Xiaobai had already been reborn and was now a real ruler. Lin Kun said that he was taking such a step for the sake of worthless people. He dishonors the gods with his actions, and he is not worthy to become the ruler of the universe. Lin Kun said that on behalf of the ten primordial predators, he would deprive him of the right to use endless darkness. Xiaobai laughed and said that he did not care how he was related to the endless darkness. Xiaobai did not want to become the master of the universe. All he wants now is to kill Lin Kun. Xiaobai attacked Lin Kun. He thought that he would not have time to hide. A purple ray came out of Xiaobai's third eye. Xiaobai's beam passed through the skin of the original predator. Lin Kun thought that it was only because of his thick skin that he missed. He guessed that his strength had not yet reached its highest point. This would guarantee his victory. Xiaobai told him that he was lucky to be able to dodge his attack. Xiaobai asked that his mouth is as strong as his head. Lin Kun got scared and asked him to stop. Xiaobai attacked Ling Kun's mouth with his beam. Xiaobai saw that there were no energy fragments. He realized that Ling Kun had pretended to be dead. Xiaobai said that he plays dead first to make him lose his guard. Then it quietly attacks from under the water. Xiaobai said that his actions had already been predicted. 
Lin Kun used his water clone. Xiao Bai destroyed the clone with one wave of his hand and realized that it was a false attack. He thought about where he would really attack from then. Xiao Bai looked around from where he could attack and saw that Lin Kun was on top. Lin Kun opened his mouth to eat him and said that he had miscalculated and it was he who had foreseen his prediction. Lin Kun said that he was a fool and explained that since he could not eat him, Zhao Ping would eat him, and this was his retribution for betrayal. Lin Kun thought that usually the things he eats are gradually absorbed, and it doesn't take much time for his power to pass to him. The endless darkness will also become Lin Kun's. Xiao Bai found himself in its entrails and said that there was a strong stench. Lina said that she felt that his body had just been injured. Shobai asked, what is damaged by gastric juice? Lina said that she was here to cure him. Lina explained that although she could continue to heal the master's wounds and resist the caustic acid, she could not restore his clothes. Xiaobai said that it doesn't matter about clothes. Everyone has already been evacuated and no one will see. Ten minutes later, Xiaobai was almost naked. Xiaobai said that he was right after all, although Ling Kun can, like him, absorb energy from bodies, but nothing can be done with the remaining souls. Xiaobai looked at Asmodeus and Li Lu. He told them that they gave their lives for these gods, and as a result, they ended up here. Even though they have turned into ghosts, they are still forced to suffer. Xiaobai said that this god does not deserve to be believed in. Xiaobai released Asmodeus and said that she had finally woken up. He asked if she was okay. Asmodeus saw Xiaobai naked, fell into shock, and thought that exhibitionists actually exist. Li Lu covered Asmodeus with herself and told him not to come. She said that even if only her soul was here, she would never allow him to treat Asmodeus rudely. Li Lu warned that if Xiaobai took even one step forward, she would incinerate him. Xiao Bai asked her that she was so scared that she couldn't open her eyes, but you still try to protect your friends? He told her that he was not mistaken about her. Li Lu told him to get closer or she would fight him. Xiao Bai told Li Lu to open her eyes and look carefully. They have already turned into withered souls, and their god does not care about them. Xiao Bai explained to her that if he let them go, they would be forced to linger in his stomach forever and would never be reborn. Xiaobai said that if they are willing to change, he can give them a chance to start over and become human. Xiaobai said that in the research center, he found a substance called silica gel. Silica gel can be molded into their bodies and used as vessels for souls. He explained that the appearance, voice, and even the figure of these dolls can all be copied with 100% accuracy. The appearance will be no different from what it was during life. Asmodeus said that because of her alone, they found themselves in this situation. She got them all involved in this, and someone like her must be punished. She asked why he wanted to save her. Xiaobai briefly answered that because he could save them. Wu Yu followed Xiaobai's order to evacuate people to any safe island. Although everything had calmed down for now, Wu Yui was still very worried. Wu Yu told Dracula that the others had already left and they should go too. Dracula told her that she couldn't. Dracula said that she brought everyone to the murderous island. She wanted to take responsibility for this, and she also wants to be with him and fight side by side. Wu Yu thought that she and Dracula had been friends for decades, but she had never seen her like this before. Wu Yue assumed that Dracula had fallen in love. Dracula moved into Ling Kun's stomach. She saw that all the souls here were moving in the same direction. She assumed that Xiao Bai was using the 10,000 souls technique. She decided to follow them and find him that way. Dracula thought that it might be that Xiao Bai deliberately allowed himself to be swallowed, and his goal was these souls. She thought that if this was true, she would be very embarrassed. He would think that she had imagined things for herself, then she would not be able to look him in the eyes. Xiao Bai said that he is the lord of ten thousand souls, orders them to give him their souls, and become comrades on whom he can rely. Asmodeus and Li Lu knelt in front of him and said that they were ready to serve their master like faithful dogs. Xiao Bai saw Dracula arrive and asked why she was here and didn't she evacuate with the others? Dracula did not expect to see Xiao Bai with the perfume in this form and said that she was just passing by and let them continue. 
Xiao Bai asked her to wait and said that she seemed to have misunderstood. Dracula turned around and said that there was nothing between them. She would not be jealous. The last piece of fabric tore on Xiao Bai. She saw him completely naked. Dracula thought that this was cool. She saw this young body for the first time. It was wonderful for her. Dracula's clothes were also torn and she was almost naked. They stared at each other. Dracula screamed that she hated him and ordered him to close his eyes. Xiao Bai said that he did this with the help of the gift of light. Special clothes for emergencies not only cover his private parts, but also protect him well from the cold. Dracula thought that this was debauchery, and if others saw her in this, she would never appear in public again. Xiao Bai said that he could only be in his stomach with treatment and asked why she was as if nothing had happened. Dracula was surprised that he cared about her. She answered him that all vampires have different abilities for self-healing. Hers is one of the best. If she is not killed with one blow, nothing will happen to her. Xiao Bai said that such abilities are cool. Dracula was embarrassed and said that there was nothing wrong with this. She is the ruler of Protoss, so there is no need to talk about such things. Xiao Bai thanked her for coming to help him. Dracula was embarrassed and said, what did he come up with? She said that he was still her servant. It was her duty as the ruler of Protoss to protect him. Lin Kun thought that a lot of time had passed. He couldn't understand why his body didn't react. Thanks to his digestion, there should be nothing left of him. He felt pain in his stomach and also did not understand how he had not died yet. At this moment, Xiao Bai said that the stomach could absorb his power. He was afraid that inside the stomach, his technique would not give him results. To which Dracula answered him that it would not be so easy for them to get out of there. Xiao Bai told her that this is not a fact. Everything can be decided by her sacred weapon. Perhaps thanks to it, he will be able to cut that fish. Dracula decided to ask him again. She did not understand whether he was talking about her sacred weapon. Xiao Bai confirmed that it was her sword that was being discussed. He saw her sword. This sword is definitely one of the best in the world. With its help, they can both get out of trouble. To which she immediately told him that she would never give him that sword. This sword contained blood from her chest. If he wants to take it, it will be the same as simply taking her by the breast. She is very embarrassed by this. She cannot give him that sword. After Xiao Bai's gaze, she finally changed her mind. She said that since they were in an emergency situation at the moment, she would make a one-time exception for him. Dracula asked him not to tell anyone about this. After she gave permission to do so, Xiao Bai reached out to her chest and began to pull out her sword. At this moment, as Xiao Bai slowly pulled out her sword, she began to think about how ashamed she was. Drawing out his sword, Xiao Bai told her to calm down. He is ready to take this sword with him to the grave. To which she answered him, Okay. He said that it was actually a legendary weapon. It has a smooth, soft texture and conveys an unforgettable sensation. When he squeezes it, his blood inside just boils. At that moment, she was surprised to think that this might not be the first time he had used a sword. He thus released the power of a tremendous degree. She had never seen such people. She thought he was some kind of incredible genius. With a huge jump, Xiao Bai said that this attack was combined with his strength and Dracula's strength, Ling Kun would not be able to resist. He struck him with a sword with a milky film, after which everything around him began to tremble and his blood began to flow into the sea. At that moment, Bai Yumo said that she understood why the island shook so much. It was like an earthquake. And Li Sa, standing next to her, added that there was still a strange smell. It was similar to the smell of Xiao Bai, but not 100%. Also, Zhao Ping, who was with them, called them, she told them to look up because she could not understand what it was. Looking up, no one could fully believe that the sky was cut into pieces. Dracula was in complete shock. She would never have been able to master the sword at the level at which Xiao Bai was able to master it. It seemed to her that Xiao Bai and the blade fit together perfectly. All this despite the fact that the blade was made from her blood. Did he really turn out to be more suitable for the role of the owner of the blade? Coming closer to Dracula, he put his arm around her waist and said that she was frozen and they needed to go. At that moment, she thought about how it was that his hand was on her waist and her chest was pressed against him. Xiao Bai told her that she blushed a little and her body became very hot. 
could it be an internal injury? In an indignant voice, she told him that it was all because of what he did to her. That's why she looked like that. He was also able to have the conscience to pretend that he didn't understand anything. Her profile says that she is married, but this is all just a cover. Dracula also said that despite her age, she had never been so close to anyone. After her words, the half-alive Lin Kun began to shout at them that they were two idiots. How dare they flirt openly under his nose? He considered himself great and was sure that he could kick their ass so that their own mother would not be able to find out. They will definitely pay for everything. He declared that he was the ruler of the sea and ocean. No one can defeat Lin Kun in his own water element. After that, he launched the power of the fury of the sea towards them. Su Xiaobai saw this and said that he was just in his death throes. He doesn't understand the difference between their powers. After this, Xiaobai began to epically fill himself with all his power, which he would eventually use to stop that very fury of the sea. He certainly succeeded. At that moment, Lin Kun was completely disappointed. He thought about how this was possible. How was Xiao Bai able to stop such a powerful force of the fury of the sea? Xiao Bai repeated to him that he really hadn't realized that initially their strengths were completely different. He also added that he should look around because his end is about to come. Lin Kun wondered what was around him. Just some chatter by Xiao Bai and his bluff. He also thought that he could not understand where many of these eyes came from. Why did his body suddenly stop moving? Xiaobai said that these Asura eyes can block the opponent from his own movements, but it was on it that he used more advanced technology. At that moment, Dracula thought that these eyes could collect such a huge amount of energy. They could also attack everything around them. This was actually very unthinkable. Xiaobai ordered the demon's power to disappear and directed his enormous power towards Ling Kun. Ling Kun's cries about Xiao Bai having to leave him and that he was a complete bastard became the last ones before Ling Kun's final death. Seeing all this, Dracula thought that the wave was very strong. The demon's power technique was amazing to her. No one could resist such an attack. Su Xiao Bai was able to solve everything with one blow. Ling Kun could only think that he was sorry to his master. He was unable to complete this assignment. The gift of light was able to influence the endless darkness. They did not quite remember its purpose. Xiao Bai told Dracula that this came as a surprise to him. Lin Kun had so much power, probably all this was due to the fact that he was able to absorb many other lives. He also wondered whether his body could withstand such power. He doubted. His body began to become cloudy. Lin Kun had too much energy. Xiao Bai's body is unable to absorb her. He thought that everything was already over. Victory was his. He was infuriated by the fact that Ling Kun's attempt to absorb his energy into his body only caused harm. Dracula began to say his name and told him to rest. He defeated Lin Kun. He needs to look back. Xiao Bai did not react at all to her words. She said she didn't know how to help him. It was a wild nightmare for her. She didn't want Xiao Bai to die. She was ready to support him in battle. This is not far from the result that she would like to see. She wanted to tell him a lot. He still had to give her this chance. At that moment, someone said that Dracula sincerely wanted to save their master. Dracula was perplexed. She said she didn't understand who was saying this. It turned out to be the spirit of the lady. She said that she had a way to help Su Xiaobai. But she doesn't know if Dracula will want to try it. To which Dracula wondered what kind of method this was. If he really awakened Xiaobai, then she was ready to do whatever was necessary. The spirit Asmodeus told her that the master had absorbed a lot of energy, and his body could not withstand it. If they were too late, he could explode. Someone needs to be able to suck out this energy. To which Dracula asked her about exactly how this could be done. The mistress answered her that it was Dracula who should engage in paired practice with the master, which could save his life. Dracula was embarrassed when she learned about the pair practice. Asmodeus asked that if this was the case, would the ruler of Protoss, Count Dracula, make such sacrifices? Dracula watched as Xiao Bai suffered from an overflow of energy. Dracula said that since this will save Xiao Bai, she agrees to practice in pairs. She said that, however, 
She had no experience at all in such matters. She asked what should she do. She asked that she should take off her clothes first. Asmodeus told her not to worry. She said that although she has no real experience, she has watched a lot of films and knows the theory. Asmodeus said that he could inhabit her body and engage in pair practice with the master. Li Lu told them that it seemed like someone here needed help. She said that although she did not yet understand what pair practice meant, she also decided to help. Li Lu asked to be allowed to also inhabit Dracula's body and engage in paired practice with the master. Dracula was embarrassed and thought that this was no longer a pair practice. There were already four people. Spirits entered her body and said that the three of them had joined forces to save Xiaobai. Dracula sat on top of Xiaobai and told him not to worry. She would do her best, even if the status of the ruler of Protoss was at stake. She would definitely save him. Asmodeus told Dracula that, based on her experience, the first step was a kiss. Dracula thought that climbing on him and kissing him was so exciting, she doubted whether she would succeed. Lilu told her that it doesn't matter who doesn't take risks, doesn't drink champagne. Dracula kissed Xiaobai. Asmodeus said the next step is to pet him continuously. Dracula thought that simply ironing was no longer so difficult for her. Asmodeus said that then the most important step was hit or miss. Dracula asked what is the most important step. Asmodeus said that he already knows the most important step and said that she relies on Dracula. Asmodeus said that we need to merge with Xiaobai, like yin and yang, and suck out the excess power to save him. Li Lu said that all hopes are in Dracula. Dracula gathered her courage and said that she could and would not back down. The next morning after couples practice, Dracula thought that she was really doing couples practice with Xiaobai. She feels her body filled with his energy. She was glad that she was able to save Xiaobai. He was so close to her and she could feel his breath. She didn't know what to do. Dracula couldn't control herself. Dracula kissed him and immediately turned away, hoping he didn't notice. Xiaobai said that he had already woken up. Dracula said that in that case she had just secretly kissed him and asked him what he knew. Xiaobai hugged her and said that, not only about this, but about last night too. Xiaobai thanked Dracula for saving him. Li Lu and Asmodeus watched them. Li Lu said that the heartbeat was very loud. Knock, knock, non-stop. She asked that their help was needed now. Asmodeus told her that now she doesn't and said that they should be left alone. Li Lu asked that she was jealous of Dracula. Asmodeus said why would that be? Li Lu said that she knew her too well and would not be deceived so easily. Li Lu said that the master would make them silicone bodies and then they could be like her. Therefore, there is no need to be jealous. Asmodeus asked that if he said that he was also jealous of her. She asked that Li Lu had been in this situation before. Li Lu replied that there was no such thing. She is not like that. A week later in the research laboratory, Asmodeus said that it was very skillfully done. She felt great in the new body, exactly as before. She said that even the breast size is the same and is still very firm. Li Lu said that not only the appearance is perfect, the other details are also perfect. Li Lu said that her exclusive clothes and tag are very carefully made. She is glad to have such a body. She thanked the gentleman for his concern. Li Lu said that if she is needed for anything, she is at his disposal. Asmodia said to ask her too, they want to thank Zhao Bai. She said that she has a lot of images, whatever he wants, she will fulfill any whim. The girls said that that evening they could only support Dracula and then applaud on the sidelines. They can't wait to experience it for themselves. The girls said that they really wanted to thank the gentleman for saving them. Xiao Bai was shocked by their desires and asked them to cool down a bit. He told them they had someone else to thank. Lixen came to them and said that the two of them were full of energy. She said that her doll-making technique must have worked. The girls said that she gave them these bodies. Zhao Bai sighed and thought that she had finally arrived. Lixen said that she, however, due to some of the characteristics of silica gel, there are a couple of points that they should pay attention to. Lixen handed over a booklet with a guide to caring for silicone dolls and said that since they met for the first time, she decided to prepare a gift for them, which she compiled herself. Asmodeus looked at it and said that her photo was on the cover and that was cool. 
Li Lu noticed that there was a photo of her on the back. The girls read the book and were embarrassed by what they saw. Li Lu said she was very sexy. Xiao Bai told Lixin that he wanted to ask her for something else. She asked what and said that just let him say it. She will do everything. Xiao Bai said that he wanted to ask her to make another model. Fish. Super big fish. Lixin was surprised about the super big fish and asked how big? Xiao Bai said that it should not be too big, the size of an airliner. Lixin said that he was laughing and asked him if he knew how much money it would cost. She said that Director Liu had already spent the research center's budget. Xiao Bai said that money is indeed a big problem, but he will think of something. He said that he really needed this fish. Lixin said that with money, she can do anything. Lixin said that she also wanted to ask him for a favor. She thought it would be fair. Xiao Bai agreed with her. Lixin said that her dolls have already been studied far and wide, but there is another important aspect that cannot be studied. She said that he didn't want them to turn out to be defective. Lixin said that she trusted him the most. She asked him to help her check it. Lixin remembered that she had to run to a meeting. Xiao Bai tried to stop her and said that the aspect she was talking about is not. Xiao Bai turned his head and smelled a strange smell. The girls blushed with excitement. Li Lu said that they had heard everything and asked what Lixin wanted to experience. Asmodeus said that of course it was the same. She told Xiao Bai not to stand still and not waste time. She asked him to help them test their bodies because now there is no one else to ask. Xiao Bai asked that they wouldn't let him rest at least a little. Zhao Ping sat near the aquarium and said that the gentleman ordered her to watch him 24 by 7. She told him not to even think about being cunning. Xiao Bai transferred the spirit of the original predator Lin Kun into the toy fish. Ping watched Lin Kun and thought that his soul is connected with Xiao Bai's soul, but he still retains his own consciousness, even ignoring his master's orders. This is the first time she has seen such a spirit. She thought it was because of its incredible power. Ping thought that Lin Kun was inextricably linked with the Dark Infinity, but was still trying to recreate his body in exchange for having his mouth opened. She decided that she would definitely monitor him as much as necessary. Lin Kun thought that he was a great primordial predator. Countless people worshipped him as a god. He thought that, okay, what else did they put in this toy? So they also put him in the same aquarium with fish. Lin Kun was angry and wondered if he really looked like a fish. He thought it was some kind of mockery. Chin took out her sword and said that this evil look is incorrigible and suggested that she cut it. Zhao Ping asked Mrs. Chin not to do this because Mr. Xiao Bai ordered her to keep an eye on him. Chin said that only for the sake of Ping, she decided to leave him alive for now and warned that if this happens again, she will dismember him. Lin Kun wondered what was wrong with this girl and why she was so impudent. He thought that she had not seen his former appearance, and was that really why she was not afraid of him? Dracula recalled how she and Zhao Bai did pairs practice. She didn't understand why she remembered this picture. Dracula wondered what was wrong with her. She understood that she did this only to save Zhao Bai. Someone knocked on the door and called Dracula. Dracula was a little scared and asked himself, What is he doing here? She thought it was Xiao Bai but she wondered why he would look for her in the middle of the night. She thought he was very brave. Wu Yue opened the door and said that it was already so late and she was still awake. Dracula was surprised that Wu Yue came to her. Wu Yue asked that she was not happy with her. Wu Yue told her that since returning from the murderous island, she has not been herself for days on end. Wu Yue asked that nothing happened that evening when Dracula returned to help Xiao Bai. Dracula was frightened by her question and said that she was definitely not and even swore to God that nothing had happened. Wu Yue, seeing Dracula's reaction, became suspicious and thought that something really happened. Wu Yue said that she did not want to pry into Dracula's personal affairs. Yue had a serious conversation with Dracula about how nine rays of light appeared at the moment of the resurrection of the original predator. She has already sent scouts to track their location. Wu Yue said that some time would pass before they received the information and could analyze it. While the Protoss did not have any problems, Wu Yue offered to replace Dracula for a few days. Wu Yue noticed that Dracula had been feeling uneasy lately and told her to take this chance and take a vacation. 
Wu Yue told her to take a good rest and put her thoughts in order, because the Protos couldn't live without her. Dracula shed tears of happiness and blushed. She told Wu Yue that it was good that she existed. When Wu Yue left, Dracula continued to stand alone on the balcony. Someone called her again. This time she recognized the voice. Dracula turned to the source of the sound and thought that she still hadn't heard it, and this time it was definitely Xiao Bai. Xiao Bai told her that it was already so late, and she was still awake and asked that she was the only one admiring the moon. Dracula became embarrassed and said that lately she couldn't sleep, so she went out to get some air. She asked why he came to her so late. Dracula asked that he wants it again. She said she wasn't that kind of girl. Xiao Bai said no, and she misunderstood. He explained that he was here for this. He just wanted to borrow some money from her. Dracula was surprised and said that she seemed nervous. Dracula was very surprised by what he said and asked again, what did he just say about borrowing money? After Su Xiaobai told her everything, Dracula said, that's it. If that's the case, then she can lend him money. Xiaobai thanked her, but Dracula said that although the amount was not small, she asked her to do something for her. Dracula blushed and said that she just had three days off, and she said that if he was with her for all three days, she would lend him money. Perversion played out in Su Xiaobai's imagination. He asked that she was asking him to sell her body for money. Xiaobai asked her that she wants him to become a call guy. Dracula shuddered from such a question, and she replied that they would not do such things. She explained that they would just walk with her and eat there. She wanted to go on regular dates. She told Xiaobai to take this money as a gift from her, and he is not obligated to do so. Xiaobai was embarrassed and happy that Dracula would go on a date with him. Dracula asked what's wrong with him. She said that it was all because she was older and why did Xiaobai need such an old woman. Dracula said that despite the fact that she was already a little old, she still wanted to go on dates like young people. It was so strange for her. Xiaobai told her that that was not the point. Dracula told him that if he wants to tell her no, then let him say it directly. She said she would survive the rejection. Dracula looked into Xiao Bai's eyes and said that she could not compete with such beauties as Bai Yumo and Li Soi. Xiao Bai was embarrassed and blushed because of this. He said that Dracula is very beautiful. Dracula asked what he said was true. And she said that then, what she just said about the date. Xiao Bai answered her that of course he wants to, and it is a great honor for him. Dracula was very surprised that Xiao Bai agreed and asked that he was not deceiving her. Xiao Bai smiled at her and told her not to worry. The next morning, Xiao Bai left his house. Zhao Ping shouted at Xiao Bai to have fun. Xiao Bai said that was good and asked her not to forget to keep an eye on that fish and explained that it was very treacherous. Dracula wished good morning to Xiao Bai and said that she had specially come to meet him. Xiao Bai was surprised and asked why she was dressed like that. He barely recognized her. Dracula blushed and asked that something was wrong and asked that she looked strange. Dracula said that she deliberately dressed up younger for today's date. She said that if he didn't like it, she would come back and change. Xiaobai blushed and was embarrassed and said that there is no need, everything is fine now. Xiaobai looked at her and thought that Dracula usually looks like a domineering ruler. He could not even think that she was actually a beautiful girl. They were driving around the city and Xiao Bai asked, what are the plans? Dracula told him that today she would be just like an ordinary person. She said that they would go to a place that she had always wanted to visit, and when they arrived, she asked them not to laugh at her. Xiao Bai was surprised that they came to the amusement park. He said this is where she always wanted to go. Dracula said that she dreamed of coming here at least once, but because of her position, she was afraid of what people would say about her. Xiao Bai remembered his past life and said that she chose a good place. He said that whether she believed him or not, for some reason, he had never been to an amusement park either. Dracula giggled and said that Xiao Bai also had a special life experience. The girls began to whisper, and one told her to look at that person and say that this is Xiao Bai. She asked, what and who is the girl next to him? The second girl couldn't believe they were on a date. She said that this girl seemed somehow familiar to her. Xiao Bai thought that Dracula was too worried about other people's hatred and could not be recognized. Xiao Bai took Dracula's hand and said that he couldn't wait anymore. 
Dracula was surprised and thought about how he took her hand and why so suddenly. They were silent the whole time while they were in the amusement park. Dracula thought that half an hour had already passed and it was quite awkward to walk like this. She wanted to find a topic for conversation. Dracula said that today's place turned out to be somehow boring. It was completely different from what she had imagined. Dracula didn't understand why she said what she thought. Xiaobai was embarrassed and said that their expectations were too high, so they felt a little disappointed. He said that there would definitely be a place near them where they could have a good time. Dracula said that she would trust him. They arrived at the Express Hotel. Xiaobai asked, what is this place to go on a date? Dracula blushed with embarrassment and offered to go have a look. Xiaobai said that anyway, it is not too late. Xiaobai looked around and said that there were hotels everywhere. He asked, is there really no other business in Protoss? Dracula said that she didn't understand either, and when her vacation was over, she would cover for them. Suddenly it started to rain heavily. Xiaobai asked, where did the downpour come from so unexpectedly? He said that there was not even a hint. Dracula said that her clothes were completely wet. Xiaobai asked what to do. He opened the portal and asked that maybe she could return home. Dracula said that her vacation was not easy for her, and she did not want it to be in vain. Shocked, Xiaobai sat on the bed and thought that in the end they rented a room. It was his first time doing this with a girl, and even with the ruler of Protoss, Dracula. He thought that even though they had already had physical intimacy on the murderous island, it was hard for him to resist in such an environment. Dracula was taking a shower at that moment and remembered the conversation with Wu Yue. Yue asked that she was in love, right? She told Dracula that if her heart was burning with feelings, then she should have the courage to confess. Wu Yue said that the guy was popular and she should take the initiative and asked not to let others do it for her. Dracula came out of the shower and called Xiao Bai. He sat turned away from her and looked out the window. Xiao Bai asked that she had already washed. She replied that yes, and asked him to turn to her. Xiao Bai looked at her. She was only wearing a robe. Dracula asked why he likes her this way. Xiao Bai said yes, he likes it. Dracula took off her robe and asked, Do you like it now? She said she wanted to hear a sincere answer. Xiao Bai blushed and said that he liked it, even really liked it. Wu Yue looked at the thunderstorm outside the window and thought that on such a date, would she succeed? She was afraid that if it didn't work out now, then the Protoss support would remain alone for the rest of her life. Wu Yue thought that for the first time she didn't care about other people's opinions and should try for her own happiness. She asked Dracula not to disappoint her. Dracula pushed Xiao Bai onto the bed. He was very surprised and embarrassed. He thought that now he had nowhere to retreat. Dracula said that she was sorry. She wanted to spend all three days of the meeting here in this hotel. Xiao Bai became embarrassed and said that he had not taken a shower yet. Dracula took off all his clothes and told him that she didn't care and that he shouldn't worry about such little things. Purple waves reached the top of a tower somewhere in the desert. The mysterious hooded man said that he sensed Ling Kun's wave, and his wave appeared for a short time and immediately disappeared. A man with long hair asked about the Dark King. He was told that he was trying but did not feel the wave of the Dark King at all. The man took a bite of the apple and asked where Lin Kun's wave appeared last time, and he told me to send him there. The hooded man said that this is a distant dimension, and he thinks that it will not be so easy. He said that it is better to wait for the leader to return and discuss with him. The man said that if Lin Kun was there, then the Dark King was definitely nearby. He had been waiting for information about him for several decades and could not wait any longer. He said that if he did not want to go with him, then let him send him alone. The hooded man exhaled and said he was in. Three days later, a golden ray appeared in the sky above the murderous island. In the middle of it was a man with long hair. He wondered that Ling Kun had appeared in this dimension. He said that he really felt its waves, but these were just traces of them. He realized that Ling Kun had lost. He didn't expect that in this place. It turns out that there were people who could seal the Dark King's ten divine beasts. He flew over the sea and said that since he had come, this would not happen again. He promised that he would bring the Dark King back to life. Dracula thanked Xiao Bai and said that these three days had been difficult for him and said that she thought this was the happiest time in her life. Dracula said she felt full of energy, like she was 18 again, which was a cool feeling for her.
Dracula said that because she absorbed his excess energy, her own strength reached record levels. Xiao Bai told her that in fact, that time on the murderous island, not all of his excess was absorbed by her. He said that after these three days of effort, his internal energy equaled his body's capabilities, and he also became stronger than ever. Xiao Bai said it was like training. Dracula became embarrassed and said that if he later wanted to practice more, he could contact her. Xiao Bai was surprised and asked that she was serious about saying this. Dracula pulled her hand to his face and said that he had awakened the woman in her and she wanted to train with him all her life. Dracula touched him. He didn't understand what it was. His heart jumped. He usually had these sensations in front of an enemy. He wondered if he was okay. Dracula approached him and said in his ear that he loved him. People were filming on their phones and asking that it was true and it didn't seem like it to them. They were wondering when did the two of them get so close. People were discussing that the ruler of the Protoss, Dracula, and Xiao Bai were walking hand in hand. And this is how couples in love behave. They said that they were a very talented couple and said that Xiao Bai knew how to make people jealous. Xiao Bai asked Dracula that it was okay that she was without glasses. After all, they recognized her, and now people would definitely be heatedly discussing her. Dracula walked with him arm in arm, smiled, and said that she didn't care anymore. She told him that when he is around, nothing interests her anymore. Xiao Bai was blushing and listened as Dracula told him that this was her business. No one had the right to interfere in her life. At the same time, on the other side of the continent, the scouts sent by Wu Yue finally found what they were looking for. Long Weiyang said that that primordial predator shot out nine rays and this is one of them. Bululu said that it smells like the original predator, and apparently those nine rays are whale eggs. Long Weiyang told her that a whale is a mammal, and it is definitely not eggs. He suggested that these were the cubs of other primordial predators. Bululu thought that at least there was common sense in his words, but she did not understand why he was showing off so much. She thought that because he helped her on the murderous island, she would not fall in love with him. Long Weiyang told her to get it, and when they take it to Protoss, the task will be completed. Lulu was surprised and asked why she should get it. She said that she was actually a girl. Wa Yang asked for forgiveness and said that he was clean and could not touch this dirty thing. Lulu flew on a broomstick to this egg and was indignant that why did she choose such a partner? No respect for the woman. Wa Yang noticed something hiding behind a tree. He thought about what it seemed to him. Long Yan hid behind a tree and thought that he was great and that other girls should be treated with indifference. She thought that even just getting closer to her native Wei Yang, in the name of a mission, was a crazy dream. She didn't want to let anyone take him away from Mommy. Lulu read a spell in the witch's language near the egg. Using telekinesis, she pulled it out of the mountain and told Wei Yang that she was finished and they were returning to report. Wei Yang noticed someone and shouted to Lulu to be careful, and there was someone behind. Lulu was scared and thought that why didn't she feel anything? Did she think that he also needed an egg? The Dark King's personal guard, Wen Yu, said that just a few insignificant people. He asked how they dared to touch the Dark King's things. Wen Yu said that they would not leave alive and attacked them with his abilities. Wei Yang came to Lulu's aid and told her not to be afraid. He was already here and tried to block the attack with a triple ice wall. Lulu did not chicken out and put up a magic shield. Wen Yu's attack hit Wei Yang and Lulu's defenses. The blast wave smashed the two of them into the ground. Lulu apologized for getting him involved. She said that if he hadn't gone to save her, he wouldn't have gotten dirty. Wei Yang cleared his throat and said that now is not the time to talk about such things. Wen Yu landed next to them and held the egg in one hand. He asked me to tell him for mercy's sake, why do they need the things of the Dark King? How is the one who dealt with Ling Kun connected with them? and his last question was that it was he who ordered them to come. He said that if they answered his questions honestly, then he would consider letting them live. Wei Yang stood up and said that his strength was no match for them. The two of them were not his opponents. Wei Yang said that he would figure out how to detain him, and she should run. Lulu asked how he would do it. He told her to listen to him, otherwise none of them would survive. Wei Yang said that if he died, could she give a few words to Long Yan? He asked me to tell her that he had already forgiven her. Lulu was worried. Tears appeared in her eyes and said that he was a fool. Wen Yu said that apparently they were not going to answer. 
he pointed out that it was not the wisest choice. If they were looking for death, he would help them. An angry Long Yan came out to them and asked who he was saying he would help. When Yu asked that another suicide bomber had come, he told her that she was strong, much stronger than these two. When Yu asked that she was the one who dealt with Lin Kun, Long Yan hit Wen Yu with all her might and said that she was the mother of this child. Long Yan said that if he dared to touch her son, even if he were a god, she would not spare him. Lulu thought about it. Isn't this Long Wei Yang's mother? She noted that Long Yan is brave. Wei Yang called her mom and asked how she ended up here. Long Yan said that she was walking and wandered in by accident. Long Yan was surprised and thought that she had heard correctly that Wei Yang called her mom. She was happy because he had not called her that for many years. She thought it was cute. Even though it was just the word mom, it gave her new hope. Wen Yu said that he had not felt the taste of a blow for a long time. He said that she was able to interest him. He said that she was strong, but she could not defeat Lin Kun. She was not the one he was looking for. Wen Yu said that therefore he had no reason to kill her. Was she thinking about what he wanted? Wen Yu invited her to team up with him, and they could produce a high-quality generation. Light began to emanate from Long Yan, and she told him not to talk nonsense, because he does such things and wants a child from her. She said that one Wei Yang was enough for her. Lulu said that she has a very strong aura. She asked that this is the power of his mother. Lulu told Wei Yang that she seemed to really love him. Wen Yu thought that her energy seemed very familiar. Long Yin switched to the form of an archangel. She said that she had not used her ability for a long time and said that she would just practice on it. Wen Yu was surprised that she was an archangel. He said that it was the power of the gift of light, and now it seems that he has reasons to kill her. At this time, at the Protos Research Institute, Xiao Bai said that Ling Kun's body was already ready. Lin Kun said that it is cool and the titanium alloy layout is beautiful. He was glad that he would have a new body. Xiao Bai said not to rush things, not for him yet. Xiao Bai asked him to tell him everything he knew about Dark Infinity, and only if he was satisfied, Lin Kun would receive his body. Lin Kun thought to himself and asked for forgiveness from the Dark King. He made an excuse that no one could resist titanium armor. Lin Kun said that a long time ago, primordial chaos reigned everywhere, and at the same time, two great deities were born. The first one used the gift of light, the Light Queen. Another used Dark Infinity, Dark Queen. The Light Queen shared her power with all things and brought life into the world. The Dark Queen absorbed the energy of living beings and led the world to destruction. Because they were fundamentally different, the Light and Dark Queens fought repeatedly. Their battles eventually escalated into a war that lasted for centuries. At the last moment, the Dark Queen gave in to the Light One and her flesh was destroyed. In order for her to be able to return in the future, the ten mythical beasts fight with all their might to this day. In the end, having protected the core of darkness, Dark Infinity, they left the battlefield. They did all this in order to find a place where there was life and feed the Dark Queen. However, something began to happen there. In order to prevent the Dark Queen, she was also able to give up her flesh. Gathering all her strength and using the light core, she was able to seal the dark core and them, the ten mythical beasts. Due to the fact that the light core was able to seal the dark one, their abilities turned out to be unstable. Finally, a crack in space was able to open. The light core was able to fly to that world after them. It was because of them that dimensions suffered a slight metamorphosis. Various predators began to be born. Lin Kun's spirit added that after all this, it was they as humans who were able to gain abilities. Xiao Bai told the spirit that he had already been relieved of his duties. He asked him again if he had gotten there by accident, to which the spirit answered him that he did not understand the meaning of his question. Xiao Bai told him that they were able to choose that land because they had a chance of survival there. Local life forms were able to help them revive the Dark Queen. In his assumption, Xiao Bai believed that he was right. Looking at him, Ling Kun could see that Xiao Bai was revealed to be a very insightful person. He couldn't outwit him. Dracula clarified with Lin Kun, saying that the ten mythical beasts he spoke about were exclusively with him in those nine rays. After all, the original predators like them were connected with the Dark Queen. Putting his foot on the aquarium, Xiao Bai told him to answer honestly. Otherwise, he would make sashimi out of the nesho. The spirit answered him 
saying that Xiao Bai needed to calm down and he would tell everything. In the story, he said that they, like the ten mythical beasts, were just the pets of the Dark Queen. In addition, they were also its containers. Dracula asked him again. She said that it became unclear to her what container Lin Kun was talking about. He began to talk about how the Dark Queen's power could take away energy from the world. Although she was a deity, she could not withstand the endless energy. Their job as receptacles for the Dark Queen was to store emerging energy. Therefore, when they needed energy, they immediately gave it away. He also added that once the ten mythical beasts gathered together, their energy would be transferred to the Dark Core. And then the opportunity arose to revive the Dark Queen. After his story, Dracula thought that these containers were some kind of batteries for the Dark Queen. It turns out that Xiao Bai also used the ability of the Dark Queen, but at the same time he treated them differently. She also thought that she was able to drain his excess energy. At the same time, he did not begin to consider it a battery. At this moment, Xiao Bai began to tell him that at the moment he was his master. If he told him to turn to the east, it meant to the east, not to the west. Dracula continued to think. Her thoughts were that she had now become Xiao Bai's partner and was also becoming stronger in the same way. Ling Kun told Xiao Bai that he wanted to remind him of something else. After giving him the go-ahead, Ling Kun added that the power of the double core on his chest was limitless. He began to talk about how their natural gift was also their curse. It was quite possible that the Dark Queen and the Light One could be in their bodies. According to him, this information could completely leak outside the dimension. He added that in this way, they could become an enemy for the army of the Dark Queen and for the army of the Light. An endless chase may begin. This story from Lin Kun made Xiao Bai think very seriously. He was able to come to the conclusion that everything that happens happens because of him. Xiao Bai also said that there are quite a lot of people who want to kill him. Let them not hold back. He can come up with something. At that moment, Sifa approached them. She said that she had been looking for Xiao Bai for a very long time, to which he asked her if she was okay. Sifa told him that there was something wrong with her left breast. She felt her heart beating wildly. Something like this had never happened before. Turning her head towards Sifa, Dracula told her that if her chest was not good, then why didn't she go to the doctor? Why did she need Xiao Bai so much? To which Saifa replied that she misunderstood her. This is not what she could have thought. She also said that she felt some powerful energy appear. That energy seemed familiar to her, and it was similar to her energy. Her breathing began to become labored. Dracula at that moment made sure that Sifa did not come there in order to recapture Xiao Bai from her. After listening to Sifu, Xiao Bai told her that her power came from the same source as his dark infinity. It turns out her energy came from the same place. According to Ling Kun's story, she should also belong to... At this moment, Ling Kun interrupted him. He began to speak loudly that power should belong to the warrior of the Dark Queen. He suggested that Xiao Bai lie low, otherwise it might end. To which Xiao Bai said not to interrupt him. Xiao Bai added that everyone was able to stop the dimension. He had no reason to hide his head in the sand. You just need to show him that warrior, and he can meet him face to face. Hearing Xiao Bai's words, Sifa thought that he was so brave, his will was invincible for her. Meanwhile, events switched to Long Weiyan and Bululu. She told Weiyan that his mother had a very cool ability in the form of an archangel form, so she might be able to defeat that guy to which he replied that since becoming a guardian, she had made little use of this ability. He himself had never seen her fully use this ability. He did not understand what her true power was. For him, it was unknown. Longyan at that moment thought that Weiyan had better look at how she could teach that idiot a lesson now. Having said the word receive, she began to attack that warrior. At the moment of her attack, he thought that this was a complete bluff. This attack will have no effect on him. It has enough strength but it clearly lacks speed. Swinging her leg, she told him not to look where he shouldn't look with his eyes. The warrior thought about how she was able to get to the other side so quickly. Having pressed his face with his foot, he flew to the ground. After which, Long Yan said that she didn't know why. But when she saw him for the first time, she felt disgusted. Just like before, she would no longer be able to resist the urge to kill him. She will beat him with this move. After Long Yan threatened him, 
she began to summon the power of angelic rain. At this moment, Long Wei Yan thought that this turned out to be her true strength. It seemed very cool to him, just like the ninth S rank number. Having used force, Long Yan thought that this time, judging by her strength, she, as his mother, would not be able to fail. He will remain a wet spot for that warrior. Lying on the ground, the warrior began to talk loudly about how he could end up in complete shit. He gave the command to remove the energy lock. At this moment, Long Yun wondered if that guy was still alive. Does he really dare to try any of his trump cards? For the sake of his convenience in moving through dimensions, he was forced to seal part of his power. Just now, Long Yan was able to defeat him, but he only used a third of his strength. Now he can make her feel real hell. Converting his strength into full power, he was successfully able to use his technique against Long Yun. Ultimately, his power was able to pierce through one of her arms. When you tore off Long Yan's arm with his attack, Long Yan couldn't believe it that he managed to do this to her hand. Long Yan told herself that she would not lose. If she fell, Long Weiang would have no one to protect her. Weiang saw what he did to his mother and got angry. He said that he would not forgive that bastard. Lulu tried to dissuade him and asked him to cool down because he was not his opponent. Wei Yang flew at Wen Yu and said that he could no longer hold back and would finish him off. Long Yan tried to stop him, but he did not listen to anyone. She said that he would die. Wen Yu said that they were stupid people and asked that he himself was going to his death. Wei Yang froze Wen Yu in a very large ice flow. Wei Yang wanted to strike with his ice scythe, but the purple beam pierced right through Wei Yang. Long Yan screamed at him to get away from her Wei Yang. Wen Yu destroyed Wei Yang's ice and said that they had overestimated their strength. Even if they united, he would deal with them with just his left hand. He said that it would be better for them to give energy to the eggs of ten mythical beasts. When Yu told them that they could become part of the beast, he wanted them to serve for the benefit of the revival of the Dark Queen, and this would be the highest honor for non-entities like them. Long Yan gathered her last strength and tried to hit Wen Yu from behind. She said that she would tear him apart. Wen Yu was faster and struck Long Yan in the stomach. Lulu couldn't stand and watch and said that she would fight him too. Lulu began to recite a spell in the witch's language. A fireball appeared in the sky. Lulu hoped that she could hurt Wen Yu. He asked what it was. Wen Yu said that it was rather weak and inhaled the fireball into himself. Wen Yu told her to hold back her magic and breathed out a fireball that was several times stronger than the one she made. Lulu realized that things were bad and they couldn't defeat this guy. After the battle, they were left exhausted and on the verge of death. Wen Yu walked towards Long Yan. Wen Yu stepped on the wounded Long Yan's chest and said that those using the Light Queen's power disgusted him. He decided to start the sacrifice with her. Long Yan silently apologized to Wei Yang for not being able to protect him, and because of this, she was ashamed. Suddenly, Xiao Bai appeared out of nowhere and grabbed Wen Yu's hand thereby preventing him from killing Long Yan. Wen Yu asked that who dared to stop him. Wen Yu thought that when he approached him, he didn't feel anything. Xiao Bai was angry and said that he felt like Wen Yu was impatient to die. Wen Yu heard some sound he did not understand what was happening and where the sound came from, then he realized that it was his heart that was beating like that. Wen Yu broke the distance with Xiao Bai and thought that with him, and for no reason at all, his heart began to beat faster. He couldn't believe that he was afraid of Xiao Bai. Wen Yu looked at the hand where Xiao Bai grabbed him and saw that he had bent the armor with his grip. He thought that this guy had very strong hands. Wen Yu looked at Xiao Bai and thought that he looked completely ordinary. But for some reason, deep down in his heart, he was scared. Wen Yu didn't understand that with Xiao Bai's aura, he had some kind of familiar but at the same time hateful feeling. Long Yan, with her last breath, begged Wei Yang not to die. Xiao Bai asked that he was a warrior of the Dark Queen and said that he fought with dignity. Wen Yu was surprised that he knew who he was. Wen Yu said that apparently he killed Ling Kun. To the girl, those standing on Long Kun shouted at Xiao Bai to let them take care of the wounded, and he would punish this bastard. Wen Yu was surprised to see Lun Kun like this. He didn't understand where these two girls were coming from. He looked at Dracula and Sypha and thought that light power emanates from one, and the same from the other as from the Dark Queen, and why are they calmly standing next to each other? While Wen Yu was distracted by the girls, Xiao Bai guessed the moment and quickly struck him. 
Xiaobai told him that he seemed very puzzled. Wen Yu did not understand where such speed came from and how people could even be so fast. The force of Xiaobai's blow was so strong that Wen Yu smashed through several mountains, slammed into the mountain. Wen Yu cleared his throat and said that not only did he have speed, but his punching power was also on par. Xiao Bai landed next to him and asked that after this blow he was ready to respond. Xiao Bai activated endless darkness and asked who is Xiao Bai. Wen Yu looked at Xiao Bai and said that he was really the Dark King, His Majesty the Dark King. Wen Yu knelt before him and asked for forgiveness for being blind and not recognizing him. He said that his worthless servant, Wen Yu, deserved to die. Wen Yu thought that he should have guessed earlier that people cannot have so much strength to suppress him. But if it is his highness, then everything fits, although in appearance he has changed a lot, but his strength is still the same. Xiao Bai activated the gift of light and said that he did not think that Wen Yu would ever go blind and not recognize him. Xiao Bai told him to take a closer look and asked, So who is he? Wen Yu was surprised by the gift of light and said that he was the Light Queen. Wen Yu got angry and shouted at him that Xiao Bai was a bastard and was making fun of him. He launched a magical explosive sphere at Xiao Bai and told him to die. Xiao Bai effortlessly and easily dodged the magic sphere and it flew on. Wen Yu saw the nuclei of light and darkness on Xiao Bai's chest and asked whose side he was on and who was he. Xiao Bai walked towards him and said that he was not his dark king and had nothing to do with the Light Queen. He could not take anyone's side. Xiao Bai said that he is him, the man who will flatten him. Wen Yu was afraid and thought that this guy is just crazy. Now he is using his abilities to the fullest and he needs to be more careful. Wen Yu swung his hand and shouted at him not to rejoice too early and he couldn't just kill him. Wen Yu hit the ground and there was an explosion until the dust cleared. Wen Yu ran away hoping to escape. Wen Yu called him an idiot and thought that if he hid in that forest, then God himself would not find him. Wen Yu thought about Xiao Bai's words and called it some nonsense about not wanting to take sides and thinking that he could fight back the dark guards and light crusaders alone. Wen Yu called it the most naivety. He thought that although he could not gather ten beasts, for now it would be better for him to return and share information, and there would be no wet spot left from Xiao Bai. When the dust cleared, Xiao Bai thought that he didn't even have time to get a weapon, and he had already run away. Xiao Bai hoped that Wen Yu did not think that he would not find him in the forest. Xiao Bai summoned a sword, and a sword came out of Dracula's chest. Saifa was surprised and asked, What is this? Dracula said that Xiao Bai had summoned her bloody blade, and such things must be warned in advance. Dracula's blade flew to Xiao Bai's call. Xiao Bai said that Dracula's sword seemed to like it when he held it. He suggested that the sword once again combine their powers. Xiao Bai cut through all the mountains and trees that stood in his way with light strokes. When Wen Yu saw what happened to the mountains, he was very shocked. Xiao Bai looked at him and said that this is what a dark guardsman he really is. Xiao Bai caught up with him and said that he didn't need to run away anymore because he was already a corpse. Wen Yu thought that he had followed the Dark Queen for so many years, and never during this time had such ridiculous situations occurred. He remembered the saying that, the mighty dragon cannot cope with the local snakes. Wen Yu told himself that there was no way he could die here, especially at the hands of someone using the gift of light. Wen Yu screamed and asked his friends to quickly move him between dimensions and save him. Wen Yu began to move and thought that he would definitely survive and return. He wanted to reveal the secret of this place. He wanted to lead the dark guard and destroy them all. Xiao Bai swung his sword and said that he had already told him that he was a corpse and asked why he didn't believe him. The robed people discussed that Wen Yu not only removed the limiter, but also asked them to open a passage between dimensions. They didn't believe that someone like him could get into trouble. When one saw that it had teleported to them, he said that how is this possible? Xiao Bai killed Wen Yu and teleported only one of his heads with him. One of them said that he told Wen Yu to wait for the main ones, but he again decided to act alone. Another said that Wen Yu's power did not reach the platoon leader, but he was still a strong, dark guard. She did not think that he would die like this. She wondered that there were people so strong in that dimension. She said that he didn't just kill him, he also sent them his head. The right defender of the dark guard, Luo Xuan Xuan, took off her robe and said that this was pure provocation. Except for the crusaders, no one had dared to speak out against them. Xuan ordered to quickly gather all the squad leaders. She said, 
that they are the army of the Dark Queen and they cannot be allowed to be underestimated. Xuan said that when the general returns, they will already return there and avenge Wen Yu. Xiaobai said that this guardsman actually has a lot of strength and he absorbed all of it. Dracula flew to him and asked him that he was done. She said she wanted to help him. Xiaobai told her that for Wen Yu, he alone was enough. He asked how long Wei Yang and the others were. Dracula said that the wounds were quite serious, but she had already stopped the bleeding and their lives were safe. She said that Saifa had already taken them to the hospital. Xiaobai was happy and said that thanks to her, they will be fine. Dracula asked Xiaobai that since he defeated the enemy, could he return the sword to her? Dracula embarrassedly said that he knows that this sword is part of her body and when he squeezes it in his hand, she weakens and becomes lethargic. Xiaobai apologized for taking her item without permission. Dracula said that it cost them nothing to kill the Dark Guardsman, so they declared war on an enemy they did not know. Xiaobai said that they had already discovered them, and even if Xiaobai had not beaten him, nothing would have changed. Xiaobai said that if they were afraid, then their army would have killed them right here. In addition, the entire Protoss would have suffered. Xiaobai said that that is why he sent them his head. They will be scared and they will gain time. Dracula admired Xiaobai and thought that he had thought through the plan so deeply. Dracula asked him how he plans to prepare then. Xiaobai said that for now they should break through this egg, then subdue all the original predators. Xiaobai continued to tell his plan and said that once they get their power, they will have better chances and they will also have the opportunity to contact the Dark Queen. Dracula was surprised about the negotiations with the Dark Queen and asked if this was really possible. Xiaobai said that this is just his guess. If it works, they can avoid disaster. Dracula became inspired and said that she would destroy them, and no one would dare lay a finger on Xiaobai when she was nearby. Xiaobai was surprised and wondered why she was suddenly so inspired. Dracula asked to tell him how to awaken this egg and said that she would definitely help him. Xiaobai reluctantly said that he should go to the land of women for Bayumo. Dracula did not expect such an answer and asked again who should be followed. That same evening in the land of women, Bayumo was swimming in the lake and thinking that so many days had already passed, and for some reason, Xiaobai had not yet come for her. She thought he had forgotten his promise to her. She thought that he promised to come in twenty days and he would play with her as she wanted. Bayumo thought that he was refusing. A portal opened behind her and Xiaobai asked that who said that he would refuse. Xiaobai came out of the portal with the egg and asked that now didn't he come to her. Bayumo was happy and told him that he really came and appeared at the right moment. She asked him if he even knew how lonely she was these days. Yumo told him to throw this big meatball aside because they would now fulfill the promise. She could not stand it for a minute. Yumo asked if he wanted to splash in the water like a mandarin duck. Dracula came out of the portal and said that she wanted too much. Bai Yumo was surprised that Dracula came with Xiaobai. Dracula told her that she and Xiaobai did not visit the distant land of women to watch the two of them take a bath. Bai Yumo blushed and asked Dracula about the three of them playing together. Dracula was indignant and said how could she say such shameful things. Bai Yumo asked what was wrong and was Dracula really afraid. Bai Yumo told her that she had already noticed that she had a thing about Xiaobai and said that she was not greedy and had nothing against triple bathing. Yumo said that the more people, the more interesting it is. Xiaobai thought that this was quite in the spirit of Bai Yumo. Dracula told her not to make her laugh and said that how could she share the guy she liked with another girl? Besides, the ruler of Protoss cannot swim in such a small pond. A few minutes later, Dracula said that she could not think that such a small body of water had its own special charm. Bai Yumo said that it is difficult to describe. You can only feel it. She asked Dracula that she hadn't washed herself with Xiao Bai yet. Dracula told her that swimming was nonsense. They went much further. Bai Yumo asked that the shy Dracula really does such things. She said that it seemed to her that Dracula was embellishing and said that she was not at all like that. That Xiao Bai liked that she took the initiative into her own hands. Dracula said that she is not the same as before. Xiaobai has changed her a lot, and she cannot understand what is between them. Xiaobai asked why this topic again. He said he didn't come here to watch them fight. Xiaobai said that he needed a morning flag and would use it to attract more predators, 
and transfer their power to the egg. This will be the best way to awaken him. Bai Yumo asked that the morning flag was not the ritual object that she took from Xi Peng. Xiao Bai planted a morning flag and said that to activate this flag, fresh blood is needed, so it will begin to attract predators from all over the area. Dracula told him not to worry and to leave it to her. Dracula used his blood magic. The morning flag was activated. Xiao Bai said, keep it up. Now they just need to wait quietly and now he needs energy. No matter how many predators come, he needs to turn them all into nutrients. Xiao Bai said that if they want to fight the army of the Dark Queen from another dimension, relying only on his strength, then they will not go far. Xiao Bai said that not only does he need to subdue all the original predators, but he also wants to share his power with as many people as possible. Xiao Bai said that Dracula, Bai Yumo, and Li Sa will all become stronger. He wants to form a team capable of defeating the Dark Queen. Granite giants came to them. One of the giants said that they smelled blood, but in the end there are only a few people here. He and his brothers are disappointed. The giant told Xiao Bai that he was so small that he couldn't even sink his teeth into him. Bai Yumo smashed the giant's head with one kick and said that her Xiao Bai is not a little thing. He is the best guy in the world. Dracula entered the fight and said that Bai Yumo said well and she agrees. Dracula cut the giant and said that she could say that she could always trust Xiao Bai. Two predators appeared behind Xiao Bai. He said that the high-level guys have finally arrived. The predator said that it was not for nothing that they were inexplicably drawn here. She said that it seemed because of the devil's flag. Twin Cat Bai Lingji asked that they had attracted so many predators here, and why. The Twin Cat Ju Lingji told her sister not to talk to them. They will kill them first and then talk. Xiao Bai said that killing him was a strong statement and asked him to show what she was capable of. Zhu Lingji asked where such confidence came from and said that it was as if he was confident in his victory. Zhu Lingji stood up and told him to see that she and her sister were the strongest attack of a copycat cat. Xiao Bai said that it was quite good and the speed was incredible. The eyes can't keep up. Bai Lingji thought about achieving such speed. Her sister trained a lot. She is the most determined person she knows. Bai Lingji thought that her breasts were huge, and this greatly limited her movements. She was able to reach such a high speed with such large breasts, and it was truly incredible. She believed that her sister could not lose. When Zhu Lingji jumped, she decided to attack Xiao Bai from behind. Zhu Lingji thought that he was an idiot and was so shocked by her speed that he didn't know where to look. She wanted him to meet the Lord of Hell. Xiao Bai easily grabbed her leg. Zhu Lingji was shocked by such a trick. Xiao Bai drove it into the ground and asked forgiveness for overdoing it. Bai Lingji shouted to her sister what was wrong with her. Bai Lingji called him an idiot and that he had completely angered her. She promised that she would tear him into pieces. Bai Lingji attacked him with unstoppable claws of rage. Xiao Bai said that this technique is very cool. Xiao Bai easily dodged her attack and said that he was still too slow. Bai Lingji thought that he easily dodged her attack and it was impossible. She decided to use her last trump card. Bai Lingji was gathering energy for her strike. Xiao Bai instantly appeared behind her and told her not to waste her last strength, and he would finish everything now. Xiao Bai knocked out Bai Lingji with one blow and she lost consciousness. That evening, the predators in the vicinity of the country of women were completely exterminated by three people. The power of these predators was absorbed by Su Xiao Bai. Dracula said how cute cats are. She asked if she could take them home. Xiao Bai said that if he likes him, then let him take him. He absorbed all their energy. That's why they became like this. Bai Yumo thought about how she could love such little ones, because she prefers bigger pets. Dracula thanked Xiao Bai. Xiao Bai said that it was time for the highlight of the program, the egg of the original predator. Bai Yumo asked that if they pulled out this thing, there would definitely be no problem. Dracula said that not only problems, maybe something indescribable will happen. Bai Yumo asked what she was happy about. Dracula replied that she wouldn't understand anything either. Xiao Bai coughed to make them pay attention to him and said that he was starting and asked them to help him. Xiao Bai touched the egg and thought that now we need to precisely control the energy. As soon as it starts to be reborn, it will immediately stop. He decided that it would be convenient to control him after waking up. Xiao Bai ordered the dark mythical beast to come out. The egg opened and from there someone flew up into the sky. Bai Yumo was surprised and asked what happened. Dracula said it was another original predator. The egg contained the original predator, the bird. 
He said that he had not seen the sky for a long time and how nice it was to take off again. He didn't expect that he would have another chance to fly high. They watched the bird fly, and Dracula said that he was so happy that he completely did not notice their presence. Xiaobai said that either the wait for freedom was too painful. Xiaobai called him and asked what he had already done. He told him that if so, then let him come down to meet the owner, because he is the one who gave her freedom. The bird asked that a bunch of people want to command him and asked what they think if they freed him and can now control him. He called them naive. This bird's name was Ruck. He said that he had only one master, the Dark Queen. Dracula told him to first understand the situation because all the energy in his body was collected by them. Bayumo got angry and said that she didn't have enough anger, and whether she believed it or not, she said that she would defeat him in a couple of minutes. Xiaobai said that it seems that he still does not understand who decides here, and he is only giving him one chance. Xiaobai released the power of endless darkness and asked if he recognizes him as a master. Rook was surprised that a person could develop to such a level. Rook thought that power alone would not achieve his recognition. He would use supervision. This power is so powerful that it allows him to see the very essence of things. He can see lies, truth, conspiracy, deceit, past life, and present life. He can see everything. Even the God in front of him will show his true face, let alone a handful of people, because even one glance is enough for him to see their underwear. Rook looked at Bayumo. She said that he had been staring at them for a long time and asked why. Dracula told her that he didn't know, but this look made her feel uncomfortable, as if all her secrets had surfaced. Rue saw that they were just ordinary girls, nothing interesting. Then he decided to look at Xiaobai. He saw that there was both a light and a dark core. He has a light and dark queen inside him. In addition, Rook noticed that this man had practiced so much, it's unthinkable. Every guy would like to go through such practice. Xiaobai asked that he had looked enough and told Rook to answer him the question he asked earlier. Rook thought that terrible pressure was coming on him. He realized that this was the true appearance of the ruler. He had no power to refuse him. Rook was thinking that it seemed like Xiaobai was good enough to compare with the Dark Queen. Rook was thinking that it was impossible to surpass the Dark Queen. Dracula saw Rook rising into the sky and asked why he wanted to fly away. Bayumo told her that she had no idea. He said that his name was Rock and would serve his master faithfully. He is ready to die for his master without hesitation. Xiaobai said that it was wonderful and could be useful. Su Xiaobai gave the conquered primordial predator, the rock bird, the most difficult task to guard the three of them. Xiaobai said that, apart from the energy given to the rock bird, he still had a lot of extra strength left, and said that now it's their turn, he will make them stronger. Bayumo told him to start quickly. She couldn't wait, because she was tired after the whole evening, and she needed Xiaobai to regain her strength. Dracula said that training three could be difficult and asked why they couldn't do it alone. She said that, moreover, she had never trained outdoors and asked if everything would be fine. Bai Yumo asked why she was so boring. She compared her to a cackling quail and asked if she was the one who said that she had become very proactive. Bai Yumo said that she and Xiaobai fell in love with each other just in nature. Bai Yumo said that the grass here is much softer than the bed in her house but if she doesn't want it, then let her do what she wants. Bayumo whispered in Dracula's ear that she could fight Xiaobai one-on-one, -on -one, and she would only look on the sidelines. Dracula shouted that no, no way. Bayumo was surprised by such a strong reaction. Xiaobai thought that Yumo was seriously influencing Dracula. Dracula said that the three of us would also train well, and that she would try hard and asked permission for her to join too. Xiaobai warned them in advance that now he has a lot of strength and difficulties may arise during the training process. He asked them if they were ready. Yumo replied that they had been ready for a long time. Dracula said that he would not give up either. Xiaobai told them that this was great and their training would begin. After a night of grueling training, Bai Yumo stretched and said that she felt like her whole body was filled with Xiaobai's energy. Dracula said that she had never felt so cheerful, and now she could even compete with Musia. 
Xiaobai told them that they all seemed happy with the training, but it was better to evaluate the results. He asked them to concentrate and release as much energy as possible, and then he could see how much they had grown. Dracula told Xiaobai to look at her result and said that she was not lazy at all. Bai Yumo said that she had worked the hardest and she would not disappoint Xiaobai. Rook did not understand what was happening. It seemed to him that it was an earthquake. Xiaobai looked at them and thought that this power is amazing. If he can help everyone prepare to this level, then they will have a chance against the Dark Guard. Bai Yumo was surprised and asked herself, Is this the result of practicing with Xiaobai? She noticed that she was stronger again, much stronger. Dracula turned to Lady Bai and told her not to rejoice ahead of time. Dracula said that it looked like she was trying harder than her. After they released their energy, craters were left behind and Dracula's crater turned out to be larger than Bai Yumo. Bai Yumo said, she was originally stronger, that's all. She said that it's normal that the crater is bigger than her and found something to brag about and that if the result is not good, she can ask Xiao Bai for an additional lesson. Li Sa sat on the roof and thought about how this night was dragging on so slowly, and if only there was a person here with whom she could relax. But she thought that this was the most beautiful view in Shengguang. She thought it was truly beautiful, and even if it was just a stone sculpture, her soul was happy. Lisa found her and told Li Zhi that this is where she was hiding. Lisa blushed and asked why she came. Lisa saw that she was blushing very much and told her about it. Lisa saw Xiaobai's stone head and asked why she admires her own creation. Lisa asked that there are people who blush in front of a sculpture. Lisa looked closely and said that it's really beautiful, even though it's just a stone statue, but it makes my heart happy. Lisa asked that didn't she just say that there are no such people? Lisa told her that it was her fault and she was short-sighted. Lisa said that thanks to the portal installed by Xiaobai in Shangguang, the city has overcome difficult times, and people's lives are also getting better. Lisa said that Xiaobai could be relied upon, and if not for him, Shangguang might already be occupied by those employees. Lisa said that she misses him a little too. Although this statue is well-made, it does not replace a real person. Lisa said that she would like to know what Xiaobai is doing now. Lisa asked Li Su whether she and Xiaobai had physical intimacy or not. Lisa didn't expect such a question and asked why she was asking such personal questions. Lisa told her that she just wanted to ask. She said that since she doesn't want to answer, it means it hasn't happened yet. Lisa became embarrassed and said that they had been physically intimate a couple of times. Lisa was surprised that two times was already too much. She said that Li Shi was enviable. Lisa thought about what she had only during her illness. To cure her, they had that short kiss. Xiaobai came out of the portal and said that they were both here. There was a morning flag next to Xiaobai. She said that it was already so late and they were still awake. He asked why they were admiring the moon on the roof. Lisa burst into tears and screamed at him that he had finally come and said that she missed him very much. Lisa looked at these two and thought that what a pity that Li Sa was ahead of her. Xiaobai asked Li Su what she was doing and asked that she understood where her hand ended up. Lisa thought about what was wrong with her hand, then she realized this sensation and realized that she had grabbed the wrong thing. Xiaobai told her that he was in a little pain in this position. Li Sa jumped away from Xiaobai and asked for forgiveness. She explained that she could not resist. Lisa said that it was her mistake. She hurt him. She said that she really didn't want to grab his belongings. Xiaobai replied that it was nothing. He said that this was not the first time. Lisa was thinking that Lisa had just touched Xiaobai there, and this was not the first time this had happened between them. Xiaobai asked, wasn't she doing something cooler? Lisa turned away from him and told him not to say such things because she was shy. She said that he knows that Lisa is very timid. From their dialogue, Lisa fell into greater shock that they were also doing something cooler than grabbing personal belongings. She wondered what they did. In Lisa's imagination, she imagined Xiaobai and Lisu, that Lisa asked Xiaobai about what was happening between them. Wasn't it too much? Xiaobai told her that they could go even further. At that moment, Lisa's defenses collapsed. 
Lisa looked at Lisa and wondered what was wrong with her and looked devastated. She didn't understand what made her so weak. Lisa thought that she was unattractive and she lost out to Lee C in terms of love. Shobai said that he actually came to her today to ask for help. He explained that he wanted to create an outstanding army and he thought she was suitable. Shobai asked if she wanted to join. Lisa asked that he came specifically to invite her. She said that she couldn't fight. Xiaobai told her that it didn't matter because he could make her stronger. He said that she can predict the future, and if she has more powers, she will be able to see further into the future. Lisa said she had never tried it. Xiaobai told her that they would try it first, and then they would see. Xiaobai explained that if people with abilities become stronger, then these skills can be developed endlessly. Xiao Bai said that, however, before that he still had a matter to deal with, he asked Li Su to borrow her sword. Li Sa replied that there was no problem. If he asks, he will borrow anything. Xiao Bai asked that his sword skill would be good for something. Li Sa replied that it was really cool. Li Sa said that this could not be compared to anything. Xiao Bai carved the faces of Li Si and Li Sa into the mountain. Lisa admired and said that she and Lisa were as if they were alive. This requires not only excellent swordsmanship, but also artistic skills. Xiao Bai was shy and said that he just liked art lessons before. Lisa asked why he captured their heads there. Xiao Bai said that he thought his head was lonely there, so he wanted them to join. Lisa thought that she was too open. She didn't understand how someone could express bold thoughts so casually. She thought that Xiao Bai wanted her to help him cope with his loneliness. Xiao Bai asked that she misunderstood his words. Lisa thought about joining him. She believed that this was clearly a marriage proposal. She thought that the stone statue was his declaration of love for her. She wondered if he really wanted to stay with her forever. Lisa thought about how obviously she and Li Soi were in love with each other just now and fell in love with people in the blink of an eye. She was tormented by the question, is this worthy of a man? Xiaobai looked at Lisa and thought that on this side, the misunderstanding had gone even further. After Xiaobai's explanation, Lisa and Li Zie finally regained their sanity. Lisa asked for forgiveness for not being able to control her emotions. She explained that she had been living in the palace for a long time, so the men had never said such things to her. She said that sometimes she can't hold back. She said that Xiao Bai should understand her. Lisa asked Xiao Bai to understand her and said that she was naturally sensitive by nature and was immediately lost from such revelations, which made sense that she was in such a state now. Xiao Bai cleared his throat and said that he noticed that they both have unique skills. Their desires will be discussed when the main matter is completed. He said that first they need to exterminate all the predators in the vicinity of Shenguang. Xiaobai said that the rock bird saw the egg of the original predator not far from here. Xiaobai needs to collect more energy to transfer to it. And then he shares the power with them so that they become stronger. Lisa asked what they would do when they caught the original predator. She already hoped that she would be able to gain Xiaobai's power now. Lisa said that if so, then they should try to find that egg, and the sooner they start, the sooner they will finish. She couldn't wait anymore. Xiaobai said, okay, and blushed. He said that before these, they need to take swimsuits. The girls blushed and didn't understand what the swimsuits were for. The seashore is somewhere outside of Shenguang. Xiaobai said that according to the observations of the rock bird, one egg fell into the sea they would have to dive and get it. Lisa was surprised that it was underwater and understood why they took swimsuits. Lisa became embarrassed and asked where they should change clothes and really in front of Xiaobai. Lisa said that wouldn't it be too revealing. Although sooner or later they will be together, she said that if you insist, they agree. Xiaobai pointed his finger and said that there was a forest nearby where they would change clothes. Lisa told Xiaobai not to peep. Xiao Bai told her not to worry, he is not like that. Xiao Bai blushed and thought that he couldn't just stand and wait like this. He thought that maybe they were waiting for him to look at them. He decided that he would just look back because nothing bad would happen and they would understand him. Xiao Bai turned around and asked why they changed clothes so quickly. 
Lisa asked him if her swimsuit was beautiful. Xiaobai responded admiringly that he was very handsome. Lisa said that her swimsuit was somehow strange, and if he didn't like it, she could change again. Xiaobai smiled at her and said that he was beautiful and there was no need to change clothes. As soon as they got ready, they immediately dived into the water. Lisa noticed something and thought about whether it was an egg. She decided that she would definitely find him so that Xiaobai would praise her. Lisa found the egg. She was glad that she had finally found it. She thought that as soon as this egg hatched, she would be able to practice with Xiaobai. She decided that first she needed to tell him about the find. Lisa saw in front of her a very large shark, which was very close to her. She thought that she was not so lucky. She had not yet married Xiaobai, and now she was afraid that she would be eaten by a fish. She believed that this was not what her future should be. Lisa covered herself with her hands and thought that this was her end now. Lisa hit the shark and thought about letting this stinking fish go much further. Lisa opened her eye and saw that she did not die thanks to Li Si. Lisa hugged Li Su. Lisa thought that she would die here and thought that it was not for nothing that Li Sa was the pride of Sheng Guang. After such a tight hug, Lisa thought that she could not stand it. Her breathing was about to run out and she was starting to drown. Lisa also thought about it at that moment. She didn't understand what was happening to Li Soi even if she couldn't die. Having assessed the situation, Xiaobai first of all thought that, using a certain force, they should be sent to the surface, where they could land successfully. Turning to the side, towards the egg of the original predator, Xiaobai thought that now it was his turn. He thought of using his best cannon shot technique. Xiaobai, using all his strength, sharply pushed his leg forward and put his vaunted technique into it, which was able to send this egg to the surface. After delivering him to the surface, he asked Li Si and Lisa for forgiveness for being able to send them to land using a crude method, to which Lisa told Xiaobai that Lisa couldn't breathe at the moment. It was all because of her. It was she who was able to drown her. She had no idea how to save Li Su because she could die right there. Lisa will now blame herself for the rest of her life. In a state of shock, Xiaobai told Lisa that Li Si needed to be given artificial respiration. Starting to think quickly, he quickly remembered the clear and correct step-by-step -step instructions. To do this, you first need to raise your jaw and then close your nostrils. Take a deep breath and touch your mouth. At the moment when the chest begins to rise, you need to immediately stop exhaling. Then quickly open your mouth and repeat this continuously about 20 times per minute. Looking at all this, Lisa thought that it was luck. If she had known about this before, then she would have been able to swallow the water just as well. Watching closely as he performed artificial respiration on her, Lisa noticed that Li Sa began to spit out water back. Raising his head, Zhao Bai looked at Li Su with joyful eyes and said that he had succeeded. Clearing her throat, Lisa told them that she did not understand what had happened to her. She thought she lost consciousness and Xiao Bai was able to save her. Lisa told her that Xiao Bai had just hugged her and kissed her passionately, after which she came to her senses. It turned out to be very surprising. Lisa did not believe it. She did not know that people could be saved in this way. She had not heard about this. Was she really able to be awakened by the kiss of true love? as in various legends? After her words, her eyes shone, and she thought about what kind of prince on a white horse Xiao Bai turned out to be. With such a certain fate, this was the best explanation for her. Xiao Bai told her that there was no need to look at him like that. These were just first aid measures. After what he saw, Xiao Bai was practically convinced that no one else in this world knew about artificial respiration. Xiaobai remembered Li Xie when she tried to use obscene language underwater, to which she answered him that he was able to find out about this too, and there was no way to hide anything from him. She was able to learn this in the land of women while studying with Bai Yumo. Besides swearing, she was able to master other arts. At this moment, the egg of the original predator began to split into two parts, and water began to flow out of it with great force. 
Xiao Bai didn't understand what was happening now. He said that he hadn't even had time to use the morning flag yet. Could it be that the sea predators themselves could come for him? A voice came from this egg, which said that they were able to boldly offend her servant. In this sea, no one dares to compete with her. They don't stop messing with her. Xiao Bai found this voice very familiar, to which Lisa told him that she seemed to have heard it somewhere too. Was it really? Without letting her finish, the huge shark on which Ariel was sitting loudly began to tell them that it was then that they managed to disturb her. It was in the middle that the most violent of them stood. The shark said that he wanted to take revenge on them for everything. Sitting on the shark, Ariel asked them with clarification that whether Lisa was their leader or not, she carefully... Without finishing, she also began to remember Su Xiaobai with Queen Shengguang and the leader of the night. Xiaobai told Ariel that she no longer obeyed the employees. Did she really come to them with a reason to find a fight? She told him that it was nothing. She and her little animal had just an ordinary misunderstanding. She took it specifically to apologize. Lisa told her that the apology was accepted. She invited her to join their elite squad. After all, she could control the sea. They will definitely have a future with her. Ariel didn't believe it. She was surprised that they also wanted to take her into the squad. She was amazed that she could become Xiaobai's comrade, just like Lin Long and the head of the employees. At that moment, her shark thought that Ariel had told her that she could take revenge for her, but it turned out that she simply decided to apologize. Xiaobai said that tonight they will be able to clear this sea of all predators. The task will be quite difficult. He also clarified their readiness for this performance, to which they loudly said that they were ready. At that moment, a slime ghost named Ai Ai appeared behind them. She told them that all this time she had been thinking about what smelled so sweet there. She thought there was a swimsuit party going on there. She also added that there was also such a first-class handsome man there who could totally go to dinner. If they have no objections, she is willing to borrow it for a couple of days to play with it. I, I said that her slippery body seemed more pleasant to him than the bodies of his friends. She asked him if he wanted her to be able to hurt him. She encouraged him to come to her. He could remember her techniques 100% for the rest of his life, without regretting it. Xiaobai was shocked that she flirted with him so brazenly in the presence of Li Si. He was sure that Ai Ai was playing with fire. Ai Ai told him that playing with fire sounded like a rather burning phrase to her. Lisa could not stand it, and swinging her sword told her to return to reality. Xiaobai is far from dreaming about her. Taking off from the ground, in a spectacular jump, she was able to successfully cut Ai Ai in half. Seeing all this, Xiaobai said that that sticky thing could still squirm wildly. Similar slashing attacks are useless for her. Hearing what Xiaobai said, Ai Ai told him that she was not some sticky thing, but a whole slimy slime ghost. If he believes it, he can touch her. Taking his hand, she told him not to be shy about touching the slime spirit. Her phrase surprised Xiaobai. He could not be convinced that today's predators could be so gentle and brave. Probably all this is because he was able to destroy all the cruel ones. Touching her, he thought that it really turned out to be very smooth and gentle. It was very pleasant to touch her. Ai Ai said that she saw how much this could impress him. This wasn't the only thing she could surprise him with. Leaning closer to him, she said that cooler tricks would still be waiting for him ahead. To which he asked her again, I don't understand what tricks she was talking about. She said that she would introduce the cloning technique so that he could feel the power of a thousand souls. Xiao Bai thought that she wanted to take it in quantity, but if that's all, then you won't be able to attract him using this method. Ai Ai used mimicry. Ai Ai said that she can not only split her body, but also turn into images from his mind. She said that if he only wished, anyone would appear in front of her, and no matter what his taste was, she would satisfy Xiao Bai. Ai Ai said that even the breast size can be changed according to his preferences. Lisa was surprised and said that they are very big. They can even change their body. Lisa said that it was rude and had not seen such uncouth force for a long time. She said that it was too unnatural. Ai Ai asked Xiaobai, 
Why is she already so sincere and still unwilling to follow little sister? Xiaobai told her that, of course, he couldn't go with her. He still had things to do. Xiaobai said that she is really cool, and if she doesn't mind, she can join him, because now is the time to recruit people. Xiaobai said that she could join his elite squad. Ai Ai asked what kind of squad. Liana's appeared from the ground and entangled everyone who was there. Ai Ai did not understand where they came from and why there were so many of them. They infuriated her that it was so tight and she couldn't even breathe. Lisa said that it was as if all the energy had disappeared from her body. She realized that these vines were emptying her. They were grabbed by a divine-level predator, the fatal dryad, Green. She said she just heard something interesting. She asked if she could join his elite squad. Green showed her face and said that she is very strong. The girls didn't understand what the hell this was. She had a sexy figure, but they didn't understand why then, the face of an old man. They thought that all she had to do to attack was show her face. Ariel guessed that it was a transvestite. Xiaobai was in complete shock and said that she would not get into his squad. He explained that she would not get along with the others in character and said that she was disgusting. Green responded that all her life she has heard people say that she is ugly. She told them that if they don't want it in a good way, it will be in a bad way, and they asked for it themselves so that later they would not beg for mercy. She told them to die and said that she would suck them dry, not a drop left. Green shouted to them that it was useless to repent and to dry up already. Ai Ai thought that if it dries up, then she will lose moisture. Ariel thought that she did not want to be a dried roach. She was afraid that Green would make crackers out of them. Green told them, this is what happens when you make her angry. She told them that in a few minutes, the fins would be glued together. Green felt that something was wrong. She realized that the energy was being absorbed longer than usual. Her breasts became significantly smaller, and she realized that it was not she who was sucking. She herself was losing strength. Green looked at Xiaobai and asked why he was stealing her energy. Xiaobai activated endless darkness and asked what she noticed just now. Xiaobai said that he honestly doesn't know how much he has already absorbed, but she was the first to start. Xiaobai said coldly and calmly that she attacked the wrong person. Green fell to her knees and said that she understood and asked him to let her go. She swore that she would do anything if he spared her. Xiaobai said that she could do nothing for him except become his food and asked her to face it. Xiaobai drained all the energy from Green and she died. Ai Ai looked at Xiaobai and thought that he drained the dryad in an instant and became stronger himself. Ai Ai decided that she would follow him because it showed promise. After everyone's enormous efforts, all the predators in the waters of Shenguang were destroyed, and the strength of these predators was completely transferred to Xiaobai. Lisa said how much energy there is and soon Xiaobai will share it with them. Lisa said she was looking forward to it. She asked what his energy was like. Ai Ai asked why they were so excited and blushing. She wanted to know how the energy they were talking about was exchanged. Ariel replied that she didn't know either. Ariel said that they could join their squad, then they would share with them too. Xiaobai said that his body could no longer cope with the amount of energy and it was time to share with them. Xiaobai looked at them and told them not to worry because there was enough strength for everyone. Ai Ai said that she just arrived and they are already sharing energy with her and this is somehow not good. Ariel said that they had worked hard for several years so they could only become a little stronger. Ariel said that for some owners of superpowers, energy is more important than life. She said that it is better to leave such goodness to them. They are still in charge. Xiaobai told her that it would be good if he pleases everyone. He said that he would treat everyone equally. Xiaobai told them that there is another problem. There are four of them, and he asked who wants to be first. Lisa said that this is the first time for them, and they still have a lot to understand. Ariel said that it would be better to let someone more experienced show it. Lisa came forward and said that if that was the case, she would go. Lisa said that even though she didn't really understand all this either. Lisa was embarrassed and said that compared to them, she actually has more experience and it is her duty. She said that she would show and they would have to watch carefully and learn. 
she told Chow Bai to get started. Lisa watched, blushed, and was embarrassed. She understood how they shared energy. For her, it was cool and even more interesting than she thought. I, I thought that she had a talent for such things, and her abilities were ideal for this. Ariel thought that this was very exciting, and she realized that by doing this, you can become stronger. I, I said that she thought everything had already been sorted out and that she would stop being patient. Ariel asked that she had already gotten used to it. I, I said that practice is the best teacher. She will understand when she tries, because she is not one of those who will wait behind. I, I shouted to the girl for everyone to act together and jump on Xiao Bai. Xiao Bai saw that there were three of them and said that he would not hold back. After an intense night, the transfer of energy finally ended, and those who worked hard all night went to dreamland. The brand of Xiao Bai penetrated deeper and deeper into their bodies. The gift of light changed them beyond recognition. Xiao Bai did not sleep all night, preparing for battle. Xiao Bai opened the egg. The original predator said that he was still young and asked why he woke him up. Xiao Bai said it was him. The original predator, the queen of spiders, Arachne ordered to bow before her. She said that only if he was willing to submit to her would she grant his wish. Xiao Bai asked her to become her bro. Arachne said that this was presumptuous. She asked that he wanted her, Arachne, to make friends with the man and asked that he couldn't wait to die. Xiao Bai remained silent and thought that he wanted to save energy. A couple of minutes later, after Xiao Bai's arguments, Arachne said that her brother is strong and she agrees to become his bro, and from now on, her life belongs to him. While Su Xiao Bai was taming the original predators, a secret threat loomed in another dimension far from Protoss. Light Crusaders are fighting everywhere. The vanguard general of the Crusaders is Rielna, that they lost again, and if the reinforcements promised by the Bright Emperor had arrived on time, the Crusaders would not have suffered such losses. She decided that from that day on, not a single defeat. Rielna returned to the main headquarters of the Crusaders of Light. Residents discussed why Rielna returned alone. They thought that it was another defeat. The residents had already lost count and said that since Rielna was entrusted to the Crusaders, there had not been a single victory. She walked through the whole city. People discussed her among themselves, that she always returns alone. They assumed that she abandoned the warriors and ran away. They said that they could not win as long as they were commanded by people like Rielna. They said that she should be ashamed in front of all the dead. They considered her a disgrace. They said that the Empress also gave her the title of hero. She came to the guards and said that she, sinful Rielna, was asking for an audience with the bright emperor. The guard answered her that the emperor was waiting for her and he had already given orders. The haircut girl said that the emperor wanted her to repent before the statue of the late queen, kneeling all day and all night, and then the emperor would meet with her. Rielna knelt down and thought that as the general of the vanguard, she was responsible for the losses of the soldiers, even if the emperor had not said so, she would still have come here to repent. She thought that every time there was very little time left before reinforcements arrived, she almost defeated the Dark Queen's palace guards, but in the end, they were completely defeated. Residents threw stones at her, shouted at her that she still had the nerve to return, and asked why she didn't die on the battlefield. Someone shouted at her to return her child. One resident approached Rielna and hit her on the head with a club. She told her that her daughter followed her and still has not returned and screamed at her to bring her daughter back to life. She hit her on the head with a club and said that she was a walking disaster and would kill her. She ordered her to bury herself along with those warriors who died in battle. The resident was exhausted and said that she no longer had the strength. The resident decided to leave and said that she would let her go today and warned her not to come into her sight again. If she saw her again, she would beat her again. The emperor watched everything that was happening from the window and said that once the support of the Light Crusaders, General Rielna, nicknamed the hero, has now become a street rat that anyone can scold and beat. He said that the good name of the immortal General Rielna was tarnished forever. 
The girl behind him said that it was all thanks to his majesty. If he had not put a spoke in her wheels, she would not have stooped to this. The emperor said that if she wants to judge, then let her judge. He said that Rielna is too straightforward and not like this girl, because she knows how to suck up to him. Lieutenant General of the Light Crusaders, Bercy asked that if he liked it so much, then why not quickly take her by force? She asked that that stubborn girl was really more interesting than her. The emperor told her that in this world there are no girls hotter than her. Rielna stood up from her knees and said that twenty-four hours had already passed and asked if they could take her to the emperor. Rielna decided that this time she would definitely ask him why reinforcements arrived so late and why they were always abandoned at a critical moment. Rielna thought that the late queen had entrusted the emperor to her to help him ascend to the throne. She did everything because she always does her will. She didn't understand why the current emperor treats her like this. The guard asked General Rilo to follow her. The guard looked at Rielna and thought that the wounds on her body had completely disappeared and noticed that her skin was even better than yesterday. She thought about the fact that the undead General Rielna has an immortal body. Rielna said that this road does not lead to the throne room. The guard told her that she had fought abroad for a long time and was not in the know. The guard said that the emperor had not entered the throne room for a long time to discuss the affairs of the state. Now important issues were being resolved in the bedroom. The emperor threw the girl out of his bedroom and told her to get out. He told her that this was not the first time she had served him and asked why she still couldn't satisfy him. She asked for forgiveness and said that next time she would make ten times more effort and promised that his majesty's soul would be pleased. The second emperor of light, Jack said that there is no next time for her. Jack said that there are a lot of girls in his harem, but only Bursey truly understands what he needs. He said that only she plunges his majesty into boundless happiness, and now he wants her. Jack ordered the girl to quickly bring Bursey to him. Jack saw Rielna and asked that she had already finished bowing in front of her sister's monument and now came for punishment. The emperor told her that they had not seen each other for a long time and said that her forms were getting prettier every day. He said that since Bercy had not come yet, she would take her place because he was hellishly excited and if she could satisfy him, then he would even think about not holding her accountable for the defeat. He asked if it was a good deal. Rielna got angry and asked that the war was a joke to him. She said that every soldier who fell on the battlefield represented the bloody feud between them and the Dark Queen's guard. Rielna got so angry, raised her voice and asked that he wants to get rid of this bloody hatred with one phrase. Jack shouted at her and said how dare she dare to talk to him like that. He said that he was the Emperor of the Holy Crusaders, that he was the second Emperor of Light. Jack said that one phrase from him was enough for her to undress and lie down on his bed. He asked that she forgot her sister's order and said that she wanted Rielna to help him take the throne no matter what. And now she wants to rebel? Rielna said that while the blood of the Holy Crusaders flows like a river, he has only carnal pleasures in his head. She said it was no surprise they weren't receiving support. Jack got scared of her and told her not to come and said that she had crossed the line. Rielna replied that if the past queen had seen what he had become, she would have supported her decision. Rielna told him that she was dismissing him. Jack was surprised and asked that she would overthrow him. He shouted that the blood of a bright ruler flowed in him and that he was a true crusader. No one had the right to overthrow him. Rielna kicked him in the face and said that she put him on the throne, which means she can push him off it. She said that he had discredited the title of the Bright Emperor and would never forgive him. Rielna's blow was so strong that Jack broke through the wall and slammed into the ground. The residents did not understand what had happened. They only understood one thing. Something flew out of the palace. When the dust cleared, the residents saw that it was the Emperor. They were afraid and asked how they could beat him like that and who had the impudence. Rielna said that if he does not want to be a general, let him say it directly, and she will voluntarily take off her armor. She said that he was mistaken, and there is no need to blame tens of thousands of crusader soldiers. 
because this is not what a ruler should do. The residents were shocked that it was Rielna who hit the emperor. Rielna said that the previous one was not such an arrogant lecher and asked that if the late queen was here, would he continue to behave like this? Jack said that she should no longer dare to reproach him in the name of his older sister. He said that he had had enough and they did not understand what he wanted. The emperor told her that his sister used to interfere in his life, and after her death, she appeared, he asked what she thinks, that she received the title of hero from her and can tell him. Jack shouted to her that he is the ruler here. He does what he wants. No one dares tell him. He asked what was wrong with him liking young girls. He asked why he couldn't enjoy fame and fortune. Jack admitted that he deliberately discredited her title of hero. He wants her name to become synonymous with the word defeat. He wanted to take revenge on them for those days when they dared to teach him. He said that they would pay him for everything. Jack asked what she would do to him. Rielna replied that she would take his life. Rielna summoned a magical spear. The resident was surprised that General Rielna showed her trump card, the Holy Spear, and they realized that she was not joking. Rielna directed her attack at the emperor. Jack closed his eyes and screamed for Bercy to save him. Jack opened one eye and saw that the spear had stopped. He saw someone in front of him. Jack thought that this ass seemed familiar. He had seen it a thousand times already and couldn't place his name. He realized that Bercy had come to save him. Bercy turned to the Holy Crusaders and told them to listen to her orders. She announced that the general of the army, Rielna, had rebelled against the emperor. She said that this was a serious crime for which they would not be tried but would be executed on the spot. Rielna was surrounded by holy crusaders. Rielna said that she didn't think there were so many bodyguards, and all of them were from elite troops. Rielna asked Bercy that she knew that today she would come for the emperor. Bercy asked not to talk nonsense. She said that she was just patrolling the area with bodyguards and just happened to stumble upon an attempt on his majesty's life. Bercy asked the emperor what she said correctly. Jack told her that it was absolutely true. The emperor told her that with her breast size, everything she said would be correct. The emperor said that his face was hurting and he wanted her to massage it well. Bercy told him to come to her and she would heal his wounds. He hugged her. Bercy told him to calm down. Here was his warm haven and next to her he had nothing to be afraid of. Bercy saw that the residents were discussing them. She said that they, scoundrels, still dare to discuss the emperor. Bercy threatened to tear out their tongues. Bercy watched as Rielna fought with the crusaders and thought that today she had nowhere to run. She thought that as soon as Rielna was overthrown, all the power of the past queen would be hers. Rielna fought and thought that some of them really wanted to attack her. She asked them if they believed in themselves too much. Rielna knocked out all the crusaders, and they fell down unconscious. The emperor was frightened, asked what to do, and said that she had defeated all the bodyguards. Bercy replied that he did not need to panic, and said that with her she would not raise a storm. Rielna came down to them, and said that the emperor of light would remain in this painful state because of Bercy. Rielna said that Bercy took advantage of the moment while she was fighting, and began to trade her body in order to gain favor with his majesty, intending to control his majesty with her huge breasts. Rielna continued to say that Bercy was slowly but surely inciting Jack to deprive her of power, to get rid of her authority. She said that Bercy was simply afraid that she, awarded the last will of the emperor with the title of hero, would stop her insidious plans. The emperor ordered her to shut up and said that he would not allow her to peck Bercy. Bercy said that she and his majesty have true love. No one will believe her words, but the fact that she rebelled is an obvious fact. Rielna said that even at such a moment, the seductive fox says not to blame her for neglecting the feelings of the late queen. Rielna took off and pierced the emperor with her blade. Rielna said that she was taking the life of the second emperor of light. Residents wondered what happened. They didn't notice anything, because everything happened so quickly. The emperor asked Bercy why she did not protect him. Bercy asked for forgiveness and said that her sword was too fast and did not have time to react.
The life was leaving the emperor, and his last words were that she did it on purpose. The residents were outraged that the second emperor of light died, and Rielna killed him. Bercy said that in the end, she raised her hand against his majesty. She does not understand how Rielna endured until this moment. Bercy said that the emperor is her prince on a white horse. She loves him with all her soul, and she took him and asked what she would order her to do, live alone. Rielna asked if this is not what she wanted and said that to kill the emperor with her hands. Rielna said her expression showed an ear-to-ear -ear smile. Bercy said that this was nonsense and that everything inside her was burning with rage. Bercy flew up and said that she warned her not to throw around words, but a log like her has no idea how to gain favor with herself, and no matter how, but today she will punish her, will take revenge for his majesty. Bercy ordered Rielna to freeze. Bercy's eyes began to glow. After this, Rielna's hand began to become covered with gold. The resident said that this is the power of General Bercy, the golden gaze. Another resident said that everything she looks at turns to gold. Rielna looked at her hand and asked Bercy that she wanted to defeat her with this cheap trick, and if she was underestimating her too much, Rielna cut off her own hand. She said that even if she was caught carelessly, she would only have to cut off the golden part of the body. It would not cost her anything. Rielna said that before her regeneration, her golden gaze was useless. Bercy said that the immortal Rielna still has an ace up her sleeve. Bercy said that even the strongest regeneration has a limit, she asked. What if her whole body turns into gold? What will happen? Bercy activated the golden gaze with maximum power. Rielna dodged her attacks and thought that it was a large-scale attack and she was well prepared, because falling under such a beam was dangerous even for her. Rielna saw that she was attacking everyone. She decided that Bercy would pay for taking the lives of so many innocent people. Riel realized that the battle could not be delayed. Otherwise, the entire city would be destroyed. Riel had only one option to fly up and kill her. Riel flew to Bercy and thought that it was sane or lost. For the sake of the fallen crusaders, for the sake of the queen, she must defeat her. Bercy thought that she could not resist and rushed at her for the sake of these idiots. Bercy believed that for people like Rielna, pity for the weak is their biggest weakness. She understood that Rielna was on her hook. Rielna was pierced by chains that dug into her body. Rielna didn't understand why defensive weapons were attacking her. She was surprised that even now they still didn't believe her. The soldier behind the defensive weapon shouted that she had hit the emperor's killer. Bercy asked, what did she finally understand now? She said that her army lost, and even the emperor was killed right in front of their eyes. She asked, how can people believe what she says? Bercy prepared to attack her and said that she had been defeated again. Rielna asked the late queen for forgiveness for failing to protect her legacy. A bright flash of light appeared. Bercy turned Rielna into a golden statue. Bercy thought that it seemed like she saw some kind of flash, or it seemed to her. Bercy decided that it was just an illusion. Because lately she has been overreacting to everything, one way or another, she is already completely golden. She was glad that her worst enemy was no longer there. Bercy was glad that from now on she was the ruler here. At the same time, in a dimension very far from light, one guy just woke up. Xiao Bai was dumbfounded by what was happening and wondered, is this the ghost of the toilet? Rielna did not understand what happened. She believed that she must be dead. But why did she appear here? She assumed it was hell, but it doesn't look like what she imagined. She saw Xiao Bai in front of her with his pants unbuttoned, and Xiao Bai suddenly forgot that he pissed and tried to quickly clean it up. Rielna thought that this man was very majestic, and in the world of the Crusaders, everyone except the second emperor was women. It was the first time she had seen something so amazing. She thought that were all men really the same as him? Rielna asked that if she was not mistaken, he must be a messenger from hell? Xiao Bai was surprised that she called him a messenger from hell. Rielna asked questions that people who go to hell must go through the ordeals of the messenger of hell, and he was just preparing for the initiation ritual. She said she was already dead, so she couldn't resist. Rielna asked him to test her quickly. Xiaobai did not understand what ritual and what test. 
He said that she suddenly jumped out of his toilet and asked what she wanted. Rielna got down on all fours and said that she wanted to see the past queen as soon as possible, so she asked him to deal with her quickly and said that she would take off his pants. Xiaobai asked him to wait for her quickly and wondered why all the girls want to pull off his pants. He suggested that she talk first. Rielna said that she did not live up to the queen's expectations and must personally repent to her, so she asked Xiaobai to hurry up and not embarrass her. Xiaobai was thinking that if he looked closely at her aura, she seemed a little familiar to him, and besides, she mentioned the queen. Zhao Ping talked to herself that the gentleman had been busy lately all the time subjugating the original predators. She believed that it would not spoil his health for long, and she, as his faithful assistant, should take care of him. Zhao Ping decided that a soup made from a tiger penis and deer antlers should cheer him up. Zhao Ping brought the soup to Xiao Bai and said that it was ready tomorrow. She asked him to let her improve his health. Rielna asked why he keeps going off topic. She said that she got it and he likes to be dominated. Xiao Bai tried to push her away and said that she shouldn't, and to watch her behavior, he asked where she got such conclusions from. Zhao Ping entered the room and was shocked. She asked the gentleman what he was doing. Xiao Bai told her not to misunderstand him and said that he was forced and he is a decent person. After Rielna explained what happened, the three of them enjoyed breakfast. Xiao Bai said, So that's it. She's a light crusader. Zhao Ping asked, What has the gentleman already guessed? He replied that, according to her, it was not difficult to guess. Rielna asked that since he is not a messenger of hell, it means that she did not die and asked why she was transferred to him. Shobai said that it was very simple, most likely someone saved her and then teleported her. Rielna replied that she didn't know anyone in this dimension. She asked who could fool around like that to save her. Xiaobai showed the gifts of light and darkness and asked that there is someone else besides her. Rielna stood up from the table and asked that isn't this a core with the queen's power and asked why it was on him. Rielna climbed onto the table and said that she understood. He was definitely her reincarnation, and he felt that she was in trouble, so he didn't care about the risk, and saved her. She asked that she was right and called his majesty. Xiaobai said that the overall idea is correct, but there are some discrepancies in the details. He said that he was not the reincarnation of the Queen of Light, and she too saved her, not he. Xiaobai turned to Ping and asked why the atmosphere seemed a little strange to him, and said that it was as if the body was heating up. Pin replied that she was too hot. He asked what kind of soup they ate. Zhao Ping replied that the soup with ginseng, tiger penis, and deer antler skin. She said that Bai Yumo told her that this soup would help Xiao Bai stay energetic and turn him into the most courageous and strong of all men. Xiao Bai said that he is already the most courageous of all. Everyone knows this, and he does not need to eat such things but the two of them, on the contrary, cannot resist the life-giving power of the soup. Rielna grabbed the back of the chair with her hand and told his majesty to stop pretending. She said that she knew it was he who saved her. Rielna said that this is why she does not want to recognize her, because she is to blame for not being able to protect his legacy. She asked to be punished for this. Rielna asked to flog her harder and pour out all the rage on her mortal body. Rielna asked why his majesty remained indifferent. She said that she was sorry with all her heart and asked that he really couldn't see her sincerity in her words. She said that if she could not get him to take out all his anger on her, then Rielna would plunge into the abyss of self-flagellation and would not be able to sleep. Xiaobai thought that she had already taken him for her master, and no matter how hard he tried to explain, he would not listen. He thought about what he should do. Rielna asked why his majesty did not want to forgive her if he saved her. She said that it would be better if he let her die at the hands of Bercy. Xiaobai realized that the only way to solve the problem was to do as she wanted. He decided that he would be the emperor of light. She wants him to punish her, so she asked for it herself. Xiaobai slapped her on the butt. Rielna screamed for him to hit her and punish her properly, screamed that if she earned forgiveness, he would beat her as much as he wanted. 
Xiaobai shouted that she thought two slaps on the butt were enough to calm him down. He said that he was simply burning with rage. Xiaobai decided to use his signature two-handed move. Rielna was frightened and thought about whether she could withstand the double onslaught. She thought that this was his majesty's punishment, and she had to endure it no matter how difficult it was. She had to endure it. Zhao Ping watched from the side and was shocked. She said that this was a cool technique. Rielna said that although it was tough, she withstood and suffered his majesty's cruel punishment. She asked that now he can forgive her. Xiaobai said that it depends on whether you admit your mistakes and how you behave in the future. But for now, she is forgiven. Rielna thanked him. Zhao Ping turned to Xiaobai. She blushed, became embarrassed, and said that she did not know how to tell him. She told him that she was still in complete shock at the spanking they had done there. Zhao Ping also added that she wanted to be punished just once. Her mouth was dry and her body began to burn. She was sure that only the master could save her. Xiaobai responded to this by saying that the soup seemed to work well. It's better not to eat such things in the morning. What to do then? He agreed to do it again. Having heard all this, Rielna said that it turns out that the Empress will be able to get tortured. Has she really also managed to do something wrong? Zhao Ping told her no. Zhao Ping said that she did not understand why she called her empress. Did everyone really think that they were in a relationship, but she was his ordinary servant? Getting up from the table, Xiao Bai told Zhao Ping that he did not allow her to slander herself like that. She is not a servant, but his empress. After hearing his words, Zhao Ping thought that this was very romantic. The gentleman was able to admit this to her. Rielna was no less shocked at that moment. She thought about envy, about how she couldn't stop herself from racing her heart. After all this, Xiaobai went to bed. Closing his eyes, he didn't know where he was, whether he was in a dream or not. He didn't understand why he got there. For him, this was all complete devilry. For some reason, his eyes began to hurt so intensely. Someone's female voice, addressing him by name, said that he was frozen. He should come here, because she has been waiting for him for half a day. Xiaobai said that he does not understand who it is. It would be better for her to appear quickly. Games of hide-and-seek with him always end badly, she said, answering him that she had rarely met a person who could dare to talk to her like that. Such people seem like daredevils to her. She also added that he not only managed to be rude to her, but also managed to seduce General Rielna. She began to admire him more and more. Xiaobai answered her that judging by her words, she was the supreme leader of the Light Crusaders. He also managed to notice her essence from the gifts of light, but this was not enough for him to be sure whether she was a Light Queen or not. To which she told him that she was that same Bright Queen. He told the queen that they were in an illusion she had created. He did not understand why and for what purpose she brought him there. She told him not to act so rudely and to be a little affectionate. She doesn't bite. The queen told him that she had been sealed in a meteorite for many years in one of the scientific laboratories. She had suffered a lot there. It was thanks to Xiao Bai that she was able to free herself. To which he replied to her that it turned out to be an ordinary accident and he had nothing to do with it. Coming closer to him, the queen began to look intently into his eyes. She wanted to take a better look at him. For him, he seemed nothing unusual. Placing her hands on his cheeks, she wondered why most of the girls loved him so much. At this moment, Xiaobai thought that the bright queen did not have any evil intentions towards him at all. He also thought about her glowing breasts. He was shocked by it, as it was the first time he had seen such a thing. The queen told him that he was now staring at her breasts. Xiao Bai told her that he was not like that. She was sure that he was lying. The queen said that this world was too stressful for Xiao Bai. She was willing to change it so that he could relax. After her words, Xiao Bai began to think about the bedroom. He couldn't understand what she did just now. She asked him whether he would be more accustomed to it or not. Can he just take it and control himself in front of the head of the Light Crusaders, who is sitting on the bed? If she can't, then she invites you to join as soon as possible. The Queen also added that there is no need to torment yourself like that. 
She knows perfectly well what he wants. Xiaobai told her that she shouldn't try to flirt with him like that. He has immunity to such girls. The queen at that moment did not understand that he was able to refuse her because she was sitting in such a chic image, but he didn't care. Xiaobai also said that he heard from Rielna that among the crusaders there was not a single man except for the deceased brother. There is no need to pretend to maintain your royal dignity. Pointing his finger at her, Xiaobai loudly told her that if he was not mistaken, she was just an innocent girl. At that moment, the queen began to think that she was going out of her way here, and he managed to immediately see through her. She turned out to be a bad actress. He told her that she had been trying so hard to see him, so she definitely had some kind of purpose. You shouldn't dodge, but tell it like it is. Xiaobai asked her what she wanted from him. The queen told him that she wanted him to help her overthrow General Bercy. This way, he can bring back the Light Crusaders. Placing her hand on her chest, the queen added that if he succeeds, she is ready to give him the throne of light. Su Xiaobai told her that winning back the Crusaders and taking the place of the emperor sounded very interesting to him. Since this is a transaction, there should be benefits for both parties. Looking at her, he clarified about her. He was interested in what she wanted most. She told him that even he could notice that the current her was a simple energy body. The Light Queen asked Xiaobai whether he had ever mastered such a magical material as silicone. She would like them to make her a body out of it. After all, she also longs to get a young body. She also added that with the help of the Light Crusaders in the battle with the guards of the Dark Emperor, he would be able to gain many advantages. This deal is profitable for him, whatever one may say. Xiaobai looked at the queen with a burning gaze and told her that this was indeed the case. He agreed. But he pointed out to her the only point that he could not call her the bright queen all this time. He was very embarrassed, to which she did not understand how he was going to address her then. What surprised Xiaobai was that she didn't have a name to just say. She said she didn't understand what name she was talking about. It seems no one has given her a name yet. Propping his head with his hand, Xiaobai told her that since this was the case, he would help her choose a name. Xiaobai suggested the name Fei Fei to her and told her to think about it. After all, it sounds good and is easy to remember. She liked this option and told him that Fei Fei would be her name from now on. After all, it sounded good to her. Xiaobai told her that since everything was settled, then she could release him from this world of illusion, to which she replied that she could not let him go yet, since they had not discussed another very important point. Xiaobai said that he did not understand what point he was talking about. Feifei asked that he didn't say that he would make her a body, and said that he had not yet studied her parameters in detail, because without this, he would not be able to make an ideal body. She said that she wanted an exact copy of her former self, and so he would look at her, and only then could he leave. Xiaobai thought that in fact with the power of Rook, he had already seen everything a long time ago. And no matter how thick the layer of clothing is, he can see right through everything, but she is impatient. Therefore, he decided that he did not want to interrupt. If he wanted to undress, let him undress. Fei Fei took off her clothes and said that he needed to look carefully and not miss a single detail. Xiaobai was shocked by what she did and stammered that she said, okay. Xiaobai looked at her, embarrassed, and thought that although he could see through objects, the Light Queen was standing in front of him completely naked. He thought that he was a little shocked. Fei Fei said that if he looked, she was getting dressed. Xiaobai told her to wait. If she wants everything to be accurate, he needs to look at her feet. She said that not a single detail can be missed. Fei Fei took off her shoes and said that she really said so. She told Xiaobai that then naturally he had better take a look. Xiaobai looked at her feet and said that they... Fei interrupted him and asked that there was something wrong with them. He said that her feet shine very beautifully like a work of art. The fair queen became embarrassed and thought to herself that this was a compliment. After all, no one had ever told her that before. She asked if he wanted to touch. She said that if she relied only on her eyes, she would definitely not remember everything. Xiaobai blushed and said that she was right. 
he thought that obedience was the best politeness. Zhao Ping looked at Xiao Bai and didn't understand what was wrong with the master and why he still hadn't woken up. She asked if he had completely used up his energy. Rielna said that even though he was sweating, his face looked like he was enjoying himself. Xiao Bai opened his eyes and saw girls hanging over him. Zhao Ping was glad that he finally woke up. Rielna asked if he was okay. Xiao Bai blew himself up and said that everything was fine with him, he just had a dream. He said the two of them didn't waste any time. He said that while he was sleeping, they not only took off his clothes, but also straddled him. He asked if the effect of their soup had not yet worn off. Pin said that they got rid of the effect of the soup even before this. She said that she was looking at his red face, sweating and monitoring his temperature, so she had to take off his clothes. Xiao Bai was surprised and asked why he was in such a state. Rielna replied that he was also breathing heavily. Pin told him that they were worried about him. Xiao Bai began to feel embarrassed and thought that it really had such an effect on him that it was all because he touched Fei Fei's feet. Zhao Ping asked what happened to him. She said he was a little strange today and asked if he was sick. Rielna said that she was worried about him. She asked if he had internal wounds and asked to allow him to examine his body. Xiao Bai was shocked that he involuntarily paid attention to the feet. He believed that this was a perversion, and he was not like that. He recalled that Asmodeus used a thousand and one techniques, but they had no effect on him, but she missed this one. Xiao Bai thought that he had always considered himself invulnerable, and only now realized that his legs were his weakness. He thought that if he wanted to become stronger, then he needed to get rid of this weakness. He wished it were that simple. Zhao Ping asked Xiao Bai why he was so absent-minded. She said that if there are any problems, he can share with her. He replied that everything was fine, and he just needed to be alone. Xiao Bai walked along the corridor and thought that his weakness was his legs. He thought it was disgusting. He was wondering how to deal with it. Xiao Bai walked into the room where Asmodeus was lying in just a towel and watching adult films. Asmodeus smelled the man. She thought that Xiao Bai had come to love her passionately. She turned and saw that no one was there. She thought she had watched adult films, and it seemed to her. Xiao Bai hid around the corner and thought that it was generally normal to watch adult films without headphones in a public place. He didn't understand why everyone started walking barefoot. Xiao Bai spied on Ling Long's room. She sat on the bed and thought that she constantly felt that someone urgently needed help. She did not understand who. She thought that she wanted to help. Otherwise, she would not be able to find a place for herself. She looked at the doors and thought that someone had just been outside the door. Xiao Bai transported himself to the Protoss Research Institute and asked Li Xin if she could help him. Li Xin was surprised and blushed that Xiao Bai came to her. Li Xin turned to him and said that he came to her so late and she was not averse to providing this kind of service. She said it was good that she was here alone tonight and could help with anything. Xiao Bai said that he really needs her help, but before that he needs to decide something very important. Xiao Bai pointed at her feet. He asked if she could put on her shoes first. He explained that black stockings embarrassed him. Li Xin was scared and said that her feet stank. She said that she was taking care of her hygiene. He said that it was not the smell. Xiao Bai said that when he sees her legs, he is a little embarrassed. Li Xin was afraid that Xiao Bai was a foot fetishist. Li Xin likes this, because she excites Xiao Bai and her master, of course, should dote on such a mature, educated girl like her. She thought that tonight she would take advantage of the fact that there was not a soul in the institute building and finally get Xiao Bai. Xiao Bai asked what she was thinking about. She replied that it was nothing. Li Xin put on her shoes and said that all the silicone went on the bodies of Asmodeus and Ling Long last time, but she said that there was no need to worry. She said that she, of course, had a stash of such useful stuff. Xiao Bai was happy and said that he could rely on her. They entered the office and Xiao Bai asked, That isn't this her office? Li Xin replied that this was Director Liu's office, but after he killed him, this room became her personal storage room. Xiao Bai was indignant and said that in fact, it was not he who killed Director Liu. Li Xin said that it doesn't matter whether he died because of him. Xiao Bai was surprised and asked what she was doing on the floor. 
Li Xin said that she thought that the remaining silicone was hidden here. She didn't understand why she couldn't find it. Zhao Bai spied and told her not to rush because they have a lot of time and can search slowly. Li Xin remembered that the silicone box was upstairs in the closet. Li Xin asked to hold the chair, otherwise she had moved it too high. Xiao Bai agreed and thought that if it was so high, why didn't she ask to get it, and why so many problems? He also noticed that since his arrival at the institute, she has been so excited. Xiao Bai realized that Li Xin was up to something. He guessed that she wanted to seduce him. Li Xin was happy and said that she got it. Li Xin couldn't hold on to the chair and fell off the chair. Li Xin winced in pain and said that her butt hurt. Li Xin fell opposite Xiao Bai, and he saw everything he didn't need to see. Xiao Bai was embarrassed and said that it seemed like she flashed him. Li Xin covered herself and asked if he had seen everything. He told her that if she was talking about panties, then he saw it. Xiao Bai said that he saw everything in full view, clearly and understandably. Li Xin was embarrassed and thought that he confessed without hesitation. She didn't understand what it meant, she thought. Is this a normal reaction? She believed that he should be embarrassed and nervous if he saw it. She thought that he had very close relationships with others. Why then was he indifferent to her? She decided that she would not calm down. Li Xin took off her glasses and said that she was trying so hard to open up to him. She asked, why was he so calm? Li Xin thinks this is disrespectful. Li Xin was embarrassed and asked why she was so unattractive. Li Xin asked that she should be even more beautiful. Xiao Bai answered her that she was much more beautiful. She is still very attractive. Li Xin asked that since she is so good, why is he holding back? She said he was not in that condition at all. She asked if something was bothering him. Li Xin said that when he saw her stockings, he was embarrassed, and she would remember this for the rest of her life. She asked that he really wanted this. Xiao Bai said that he would soon go to another dimension to win back the Light Crusaders, but right before leaving, he noticed a mortal weakness in himself. He said that he could not resist a woman's legs, and if he did not overcome her, he would definitely die on this trip. Li Xin said that many people like legs. There is nothing supernatural about it, especially since they don't kill for it. Xiao Bai answered her that she was very naive and said that because she did not know at all about the Light Crusaders. Xiao Bai said that they are all women and it is dangerous. He said he was afraid of someone else. They all wore white stockings. Xiao Bai said that if this is the case, he can endure it, but in the worst case scenario. Li Xin was surprised and asked, what is the worst case? Xiao Bai said that the worst thing is their deadly combo, hit with a white silk chain, he will die a miserable death. Li Xin got up from the floor and said that she understood his concerns and said that it could be solved. Xiao Bai asked in what sense. Li Xin sat on a chair and said that Protoss black silk should not be much different from their white silk. She said that this is a battle between white and black silk. Li Xin said, that she would now give him some serious training. Xiao Bai was surprised by the weak point training and said that she wanted to tell him that. Li Xin took off her shoes and said that he guessed right, the wedge is knocked out by the wedge. Li Xin showed him her feet and said that if he had the courage to look at her feet, he could overcome his weakness. Xiao Bai was embarrassed and said that perhaps this training was too difficult. Li Xin said that today there will be a little test because she is a mature office lady. In addition to black stockings, there are many more types. She named all the stockings she has as fishnet, garter, striped, and torn. She said that through this training, they would learn his preferences in stockings and gradually increase the difficulty. She asked if he dared to accept her challenge. Xiaobai replied that he accepted the challenge. At the research institute, Xiaobai and Li Xin's training lasted all night. The employees were discussing whether they were hearing strange sounds. One said that she seemed to hear it coming from Director Liu's office. Others said that it sounded a little like Li Xin's voice. Another employee said she had not seen her since the morning. Li Xin came to them. They asked what happened to her and why she was so disheveled. Another said that she was also out of breath. They asked that someone had offended her. They suggested calling the police. Li Xin told everyone in the office to listen to her. She ordered them to drop what they were doing and follow her. Li Xin said that Xiao Bai needed their help. 
Li Xin said that they just need to join her in training and they can help Xiao Bai overcome his weakness, and only if he becomes stronger, the Protoss will be safe. She told them that if the training was successful, they would become heroes of the Protoss. Li Xin motivated them and told them that they, the Protoss citizens, would never lose to the Crusaders, and the Protoss were the strongest. Xiao Bai, meanwhile, was lying on the floor in the office and talking to himself that he did not think that this training was so tiring and more dangerous than all his previous battles combined. He was afraid to imagine what would have happened if not for his determination. Xiao Bai said that Li Xin's strength turned out to be terrible, and yet one must remain human. Li Xin came into the office and said that he should have rested already. She asked to see what luxurious set she had prepared for him. Li Xin told him that considering how well he had performed during the night, she decided to double the difficulty of the training. Xiao Bai became embarrassed and asked that they would all join the training. He said that he would die. Li Xin answered him that he had misunderstood, and why only them, because this was not her style. There was a line of girls outside the door. They were thinking that this is a great chance for everyone to work for the benefit of Protoss and no one wants to miss it. Someone was thinking about the fact that they would see Xiao Bai for the first time and helping him with such a complex special training. Has anyone thought about what embarrassment looks like on the face of such a famous person? Like him, all the girls outside the door in line had their imagination running wild. Xiao Bai asked why she didn't bring all the girls of the institute here. Li Xin replied that everyone. Li Xin ordered them without initiative. The employees responded that they were very disciplined. Li Xin counted to three and ordered the training to begin. Three days have passed. Li Xin said that they had been training for three days already, and she had run out of stockings, and all the employees of the institute should have run out by now. She told Xiao Bai that this training was over and asked that he had already overcome his weakness. Xiao Bai thanked her for her help and said that he felt just fine. Xiao Bai said that he has reached a new level. Xiao Bai, having overcome his weakness, was finally able to create a body for Fei Fei. Fei Fei asked that this doll is made of silicone? Xiao Bai asked, what was wrong? And she asked, what was wrong? Fei Fei said it was a real copy, but... She asked why she was put in this position. Xiao Bai became embarrassed and said that it was just to test the functionality and nothing like that. Fei Fei asked what the functionality of the silicone doll was and why he turned red. Xiao Bai told her that she would understand later and asked her to try out the new body for now. Fei Fei said this silicone technique was very cool. She said this is what it feels like to be free again. Xiao Bai told her to move around for now and get used to her new body. Fei Fei was warming up and said that the arms and legs were very flexible, just like those that were made of meat, and all the details were worked out. She said he was a real master. Fei Fei said that the decision to let him study himself in the illusion turned out to be 100% correct. Xiao Bai said that this is a simple operation. There is no need to be so surprised. He said that as long as she is satisfied. Fei Fei saw a book on the bed next to her and asked what it was. She took it and started reading a book about a guide to caring for silicone doll too. Fei Fei blushed and thought about how to take care of this body. She was very embarrassed. Fei Fei saw that the position her body was in, she wondered if Xiao Bai had already taken care of it. Fei Fei looked at Xiao Bai and thought that if everything is as she thinks, then the consequences will be unimaginable. Fei Fei was embarrassed and thought that she represents the light and is an immaculate queen and how you can do this to her. She wondered what happened to the rod that she had treasured for so many years. Xiao Bai sat next to her and said that she was blushing. He asked if everything was fine or if there was something wrong with her body. Fei Fei was scared of him and asked why he sat so close. She asked what he wanted to do with her. Xiao Bai said that he was just sitting on the sofa and asked why she had to overreact so much. Fei Fei thought that he was right and she had made up her mind, that Pose was just a coincidence, and if she was so nervous, she would lose her dignity as the Queen of Light. Fei Fei said that she was just a little nervous and said that he didn't make her wings. Xiao Bai told her that he couldn't miss such an important thing and asked her to press the stone on her chest. Fei Fei pressed the stone and wings appeared. She said that she could even control their movement, 
It was very convenient. She said that his skill could not be compared with anything. Fei Fei said that since he made her a body, then her promise must be fulfilled and she must go to the Light Crusaders and sort out Bercy. She said that this could not be decided with a wave of the hand and that it would be necessary to fight for her without sparing his life. She asked that he was really ready. Xiaobai got up from the sofa. He was surrounded by an aura and said that he had been invulnerable for a long time now. Fei Fei said it was wonderful and she made the right choice. She told him that since he was ready, then call Rielna and he could go. Xiaobai said that it was okay to go, but he did not say that he would take the two of them with him. Xiaobai said that he has someone in mind. Fei Fei said that she is a bright queen, and if he does not take her, then who, she asked, that there is really someone better than her. Asmodeus came into their room and said that of course there was, for example, her. Asmodeus asked that didn't she say that all the crusaders were girls? Asmodeus said that she was the best person to persuade her to lose her virginity. Fei Fei was outraged by the words about losing her virginity. She said that she did not notice that she was stronger than her. Asmodeus said that she didn't talk about her and asked that why did she take it personally? Asmodeus told her that she probably thought that she would go with Zhao Bai on a mission and that's why she was jealous. Fei Fei realized that she suddenly became jealous of Xiao Bai. Xiao Bai was thinking that why does she look at him all the time? Fei Fei thought that she had really been overcome by worldly desires. Ling Long came into their room and said that she felt that someone here needed help. Lin Long was shy and asked if they could take her with them. She said that she would definitely need it. Fei Fei watched Ling Long and thought that this zombie looked embarrassed and must have no chips against women. She hoped that Xiao Bai would not take her. Xiao Bai agreed and said that it's good and then the three of them will go. Fei Fei was upset that those two were chosen over her and wondered why she was worse. Did she think she was that mediocre? She recalled that once upon a time, hundreds of people revered the bright queen. But now she was on the bench. They believed that this was the impermanence of life. Xiao Bai looked at Fei Fei and asked why she was upset. She lied and said absolutely not. She said that she couldn't get angry over such trifles, and she didn't care at all. She told him that he could take whoever he wanted. Xiao Bai said that she was the queen of the Light Crusaders and it would be too cruel to force her to hurt her own people. Xiao Bai asked her to wait until he subdued them and then she would rule again. He said that this was just respect for her. Fei Fei realized that he was so caring. Fei Fei hugged him and thanked him. Xiao Bai was surprised and said that it was too early to thank him. Fei Fei said that then she would wait until he returned and thank him well. She whispered in his ear that she would repay him in kind. Asmodeus told Ling Long that Fei Fei is a slut. Ling Long replied that, indeed, Asmodeus was right. After saying goodbye, Su Xiao Bai and the group went to the Crusaders' headquarters indicated by Fei Fei. Xiao Bai, along with Asmodeus and Ling Long, came out of the portal. They were floating in the air above the city. Xiao Bai asked that this is the headquarters of the Light Crusaders. He noted that he looked good. Xiao Bai saw a golden statue of Rielna hanging on chains above the city center. Xiao Bai ordered Asmodeus to greet them and at the same time destroy the statue of Rielna for him. Asmodeus said that everything would be done and called him her master. Asmodeus landed on the city wall and greeted the girls. She said that her master asked her to greet them. The guard asked who she was and how dare she invade the crusaders' headquarters. The second guard asked that she was tired of living. One of the guards said that, judging by her clothes, she was not very correct and knew her place. She ordered her to get lost. The second said that otherwise, she and her master would be in trouble. Asmodeus said that she did not care about their insults, but they hurt Xiao Bai, and she would not tolerate that. Asmodeus raised her voice at them and asked that they want to die. They did not understand what had happened, and their bodies sank to their knees. The guard thought that kneeling in front of another person, she did not feel disgraced at all. On the contrary, it was a very pleasant feeling. The second thought that they had never experienced anything like this, as if a secret desire from the darkest corner of her heart had finally come true. She couldn't stop trembling with excitement. Asmodeus said that they were generally inexperienced. She cast just a little magic, and they all fell down. 
She said that you can't look at this without tears. Asmodeus said that this is for their disrespect for her master. Asmodeus asked Xiaobai, will such an apology suit him? Xiaobai replied that he only asked to say hello, and there was no need to let it come to this. Xiaobai ordered her to hurry up and deal with everything, because he was not very pleased to see his comrade hanging in the sky like a statue. Asmodeus said that she was already on her way. She was indignant to herself that he was so angry with her, and she tried for his sake. Asmodeus realized that he was angry because these were just ordinary girls. Xiaobai didn't even look at them. Asmodeus thought that this headquarters probably has a unique product of the highest quality. When she meets her, greets her properly, she believes that this will make Xiaobai smile. Xiaobai said that Asmodeus seemed to be thinking about something strange. Ling Long confirmed this and asked if she should consult Asmodeus. Xiaobai replied that it was not necessary. Otherwise, he would learn something bad. A crusader came to Asmodeus and asked that it was because of her that her soldiers were in this position. This girl was the general of the rear guard of the light crusaders, Karsha. She said that she had the courage to attack the crusaders' headquarters. Karsha asked what she needed. Asmodeus said that it was unexpected and pleasant that the uniqueness appeared on its own. Asmodeus got excited and said that since the goods had already been delivered, she could only demonstrate her skills to Xiaobai. Karsha asked what this meant and said that he was answering inappropriately. Asmodeus released her power and said that this means that she is the same as her soldiers, will not be able to withstand her techniques, and no one except Xiaobai can escape. Karsha realized that Asmodeus was attacking with an illusion. Asmodeus managed to take control of Karsha. Asmodeus said that she was still extraordinary. Asmodeus said that this is a beautiful picture, cooler than those soldiers. Asmodeus asked to wait for her while she finished her task. She decided to leave her for Xiaobai. Asmodeus decided that if she could capture this girl, Xiaobai would definitely be happy. Asmodeus said that in the end, the decision to take her to battle with the Crusaders was the right one, because not a single girl would escape her. Asmodeus said that this sculpture and chains are made of gold, and it would be a pity to simply destroy it. Asmodeus looked behind her and asked where she was. Asmodeus saw that Karsha stood up. She did not understand how she managed to do this. She thought that her seduction did not work. Asmodeus noticed that the red glow from her body indicated that she was under seduction. Asmodeus recalled that Bai Yumo and Lisa are also very strong, but under her seduction, they still lose consciousness and the ability to move. She looked at Karsha and thought that this was an exception and still did not understand why she could still stand. Asmodeus saw Karsha disappear. Karsha found herself behind Asmodeus and hit her with all her might. The blow was so strong that Asmodeus flew a couple of meters back. Asmodeus stood up and thought that Karsha was using a crude but destructive technique. Even the wind from her fist would knock her down. Asmodeus thought that she had crossed all boundaries and still did not understand how she continued to fight. Xiaobai shouted to Asmodeus that she was fighting on instinct. Xiaobai said that Karsha, just like him, relies on muscle memory. Even without consciousness, his fighting ability will not weaken. He told her to forget about the seduction effect and concentrate on the battle. He said that if he kept fighting, he would defeat her. Asmodeus said she understood and was too fixated. Asmodeus said that she was still the head of the employees from the murderous island and would definitely hit. She said that dealing with some busty woman was a piece of cake for her. Asmodeus decided to train her with the help of this small whip. Karsha attacked Asmodeus like last time, but this time Asmodeus managed to dodge her. The force of Karshi's impact left a dent in the mountain several tens of meters away. Asmodeus told her that her fists were indeed heavy, but she was faster. Asmodeus hit Karsha in the face with her small whip and said that she would get a little lesson from the head of the employees. Asmodeus asked that she was already shaking. Asmodeus said that even though she lost consciousness, her body still felt pain. Asmodeus decided that if so, she would increase her suffering. Asmodeus activated the doctrine of seduction, a cruel rite. Xiaobai blushed and told Ling Long not to look and turn away. She listened to Xiaobai. Ling Long was embarrassed and thought that she did not want to go against the will of the owner. 
but she was so interested in what kind of cruel ritual this was. Ling Long decided to take a peek. She believed that Xiao Bai wouldn't notice. Ling Long was shocked and thought that this was too much. Asmodeus asked that she was already at the peak from such a small amount and said that she had not played enough yet and what a disappointment for her. She realized that this was her limit. A very bright golden light emanated from Karsha. Asmodeus did not understand what it was and whether the busty woman was really hiding such power. Shobai said that this was interesting and noticed that her aura had changed. She introduced herself to them and said that she was Karsha, the rearguard general of the Light Crusaders, and her mission was to protect the Imperial City. Karsha said that no matter how much they whipped her or humiliated her in front of everyone, she would not back down. Karsha said that protecting the Imperial City is the last order given by the Bright Queen, and God himself gave her this assignment. A sense of duty gives her the strength to fight. Asmodeus looked at her and thought that now she does not rely on instincts and is conscious. Her sense of duty is so strong that it can neutralize her seduction. Asmodeus thought she was incredible. Asmodeus rushed to attack her and said that Xiaobai alone, who could resist seduction, was quite enough and asked her to disappear. Karsha also decided to go on the attack and said that Rielna was the emperor's killer, but even at the cost of her life, she would not allow her to touch this statue. Xiaobai managed to catch both of them so that they would not kill each other and ordered them to stop. He said that there was no need to kill anyone. Karsha was surprised that she attacked in six-winged form, and he so playfully stopped the blow, she did not understand where the blast wave from her blow was. Karsha jumped back from Xiaobai and asked who he was and what he wanted. She shouted that she was not afraid of him. Xiaobai looked at Karsha and said that General Rielna is not a murderer. Xiaobai raised his hand. Karsha asked to wait for him and asked what he was up to. Xiaobai gathered energy to destroy Rielna's statue. He said that Rielna is not a criminal, she does not deserve such shame, and he will restore her good name. After that, he fired his ability. A huge and powerful beam was aimed at the statue of Rielna. Seeing this, Karsha thought that this was an amazing force for her. With just one careless wave of his hand, he was able to cause such destruction. She also thought that if he had aimed lower, the entire imperial city could have turned into ruins. Looking a little further, she thought of a golden glow. She told everyone who was below to look up because it sparkles so beautifully. They could not understand what it was. They were sure that the statue of Rielna had been ground into powder. One of the residents said that she experienced strange sensations when touching golden dust particles. She felt as if she was in the same body as Rielna. She also said that these were Rielna's memories, so she did not betray the Light Crusaders. The second resident said that Rielna sacrificed a lot for them, and in return, they only slandered her. This was already too much. At that moment, Karsha told Xiaobai that she did not understand what he did to them and what illusion he was able to use. She suggested that in this way he wanted to control public opinion. Asmodeus answered her that how can she talk to Xiaobai like that? Is she really impatient for the next world? Or she has an itch somewhere she can spank one more time? Karsha told Asmodeus to come closer. She stated that she was not afraid of her. Asmodeus called her busty and told her not to be so arrogant. Xiaobai told them to stop arguing over crap. He was ready to tell Karsha the real reason for Rielna's sad situation. To do this, he told her to reach out and feel. At this moment, Bercy clarified with Jack whether it was true that reinforcements were sent to help General Rielna. Jack told her yes. Once reinforcements arrive, she will be able to inflict serious damage on the Dark Guard. After all, she did a great job. Bercy told him that he didn't think that Rielna's exploits and influence were too great. Reinforcements must be recalled, she can no longer win battles. He told her that the late queen herself had appointed her minister after her death. He is afraid that insulting her would not be the best idea. Bercy told Jack that he was the ruler of the Light Crusaders, not her. You need to get it out of your head and take everything into your hands. The ruler must stand above all others. 
She also added that she was ready to help His Majesty crush Rielna so that all power would be in his hands, so that he becomes a real emperor. She says it honestly. After all, His Majesty will not be able to push her away from this. Jack told her that he hadn't had a chance to thank her yet. How can he afford to ignore her? He will always listen to her. At this moment, Asmodeus did not understand what Xiaobai could show her, because she seemed to be burning with shame. He replied to Asmodeus that he was only able to show the daily life of their emperor. He didn't think it would shock her so much. Karsha was thinking at that moment that Emperor Jack and Bercy were really like that, because the two of them conspired and framed Rielna. If this is true, then she is very sorry for Rielna, whom they themselves hung. She also thought that she herself had become a criminal who helps shooting galleries. How can she now look into the eyes of the late queen? Xiaobai told Karsha that she saw everything she should. Believe it or not, it is up to her to decide. He's just here to sort something out. He added that, first of all, in order to deprive Rielna of her reputation. Secondly, in order to settle accounts with the main culprit and take Bercy's soul. Karsha thought that if he switched to the imperial city, she would not be able to oppose anything to him. It seems his real target is Bercy. She told Xiaobai that if he came for Bercy, she was very sorry. She now commands the army on the front line and will not return soon. Xiaobai replied that it doesn't matter. He doesn't have much time. They are ready to wait for her outside the imperial town. After that, he told Asmodeus that they needed to go and also need to find a place to stay for the night. Amadeus invited Xiaobai to stay in the grove. This way, he and Ling Long could fight in nature. Karsha told them to wait, to which Xiaobai answered her that she really wanted to provide them with housing. She said no. After all, he is in no way connected with the Light Crusaders. Karsha did not understand why he needed all this. And Xiaobai told her that all this was because he promised one of his friends. Her name is Fei Fei, she should know her. Karsha thought that such a name was in the work, get lost in the sense. Why didn't she know anyone else with that name? Asmodeus said that Karsha refused to let them find a place, but she was still able to find it. To which Xiaobai said that this is just a country place, but it's still better than sleeping in the open air. Linglong said that she was sorry. She was extremely interested in what it would be like to live together in nature. Looking at her, Xiaobai said that he had a feeling that she knew more and more. Without letting him finish, she said that Asmodeus had shared a couple of video tutorials with her. Asmodeus also told her that in order to serve Xiaobai, she had to learn a lot. After all, Ling Long has been trying very hard all this time and does not dare to be lazy. If Xiaobai needs Ling Long somewhere, she will be ready to do anything. After listening to her, Xiaobai realized that Ling Long turned out to be very naive. Sitting already in the water, Xiaobai said, that he did not think that there would be a hot spring in such a remote place. In another dimension, taking a bath is also quite pleasant. At this moment, Karsha thought that protecting the city was her responsibility as a general of the Crusaders. It won't be difficult for her to sneak up and watch their actions. Looking out from behind the stone, she thought that she was not a pervert, but was just doing her job. Seeing Xiaobai bathing, Karsha thought that she had gone crazy because of the male body that had been taken away. Her thoughts were about the fact that she had lived for so many years, but she saw this for the first time. Now you can die in peace. Looking at his body, she began to think about the stone on his chest. What surprised her was that there was a gift of light and endless darkness. The queen has not been in this world for a long time. Where then could he get this thing? She thought he was a relative of the imperial family. Karsha thought about his words, in which he said that they had a mutual friend named Fei Fei. Did this name really belong to the late queen? Karsha watched Xiaobai with loving eyes and thought that it was hard to look at a man taking a bath. Karsha saw Ling Long standing behind the tree. She thought that maybe that girl wasn't with them. She wondered what she was up to. Ling Long thought that she had learned a lot of new things in Asmodeus's lessons, and now she urgently needed practice to consolidate them. 
She decided that she needed to come up with a reason to approach Xiao Bai. She needed a good reason. This will give her a chance to swim with him in the hot spring and take a bath together. She told herself that she had to go. A chance is given to those who are ready to take advantage of it. Karsha saw her approach. She wondered if it wasn't enough for her to just peek. Karsha thought it was an abomination, but wondered what she was going to do with it. Ling Long tried to muster up the courage to say something, and then everything would go by itself. She thought that Asmodeus was always like this in the videos. Ling Long said to Xiao Bai, What a coincidence, and asked that there is only one bathing here. Xiao Bai responded by asking why she came. Ling Long told him that she just went for a walk, heard the sound of water from here, and came to take a look. She said that she didn't come to Xiao Bai on purpose. Xiao Bai thought that her lying skills still had room to improve. Ling Long asked if he knew what the biggest disadvantage of swimming alone was. Xiao Bai replied that he did not know. She told him that he couldn't wash his own back. Ling Long asked to be allowed to rub his back. She said that, although she looked fragile, her hands were very strong. Ling Long put on a washcloth glove. She said that Xiao Bai should not refuse because Ling Long wants to help. Xiao Bai smiled and thought, who takes a washcloth with them when they go for a walk, he thought that she was too persistent. Xiao Bai told her that since she was so prepared, let her do a favor. Ling Long climbed into the water and asked if he was ready. Xiao Bai replied that she should rub harder. Ling Long rubbed his back. Xiao Bai enjoyed it and asked even more. Ling Long told Xiao Bai that if he liked it, then she was happy. Ling Long was thinking that if she increased her strength, could they go further? Karsha watched them and thought that she was very cunning. Karsha thought that under the pretext of rubbing her back, she approached the man. Although she was touching him through a washcloth, it was not too different from physical contact. She thought about the fact that she had not yet touched a man's body. She wondered what it would be like to touch such a strong man's chest. Xiao Bai said that he had not washed so well for a long time and thanked Ling Long. She told him that it was just her duty. Ling Long was embarrassed and said that she just rubbed Xiao Bai's back and asked if she could ask Xiao Bai for something in return. Xiao Bai replied that it's good. If he can, he will definitely help. Ling Long said that she was sweating a little and also wanted to take a shower. She asked if he could rub her back. Xiao Bai knew that this would happen. He thought that whatever happens, it cannot be avoided. He told her that since she helped him, he would help her in return. Ling Long became embarrassed and asked, what will really help? She thought that it was just like in Asmodeus's training videos. Ling Long said that she was ready and asked Xiao Bai if he was ready. Xiao Bai replied that he was ready and asked to take off his clothes. Ling Long was embarrassed and said that it was fair to wash in the bathroom naked. She began to take off her clothes. Karsha was embarrassed and thought that she had already even taken off her clothes. She thought that now she really had to come up with a reason to join. Karsha felt something. There was a familiar aura for her. Ling Long said that it was Asmodeus's aura. Xiao Bai was thinking that everyone had come and could now play Mahjong, but he just wanted to wash himself in peace. Asmodeus said that his room was empty, so she went to look. They are here. Asmodeus told them that in the darkness of the night, among the flowers and under the moon, the two of them took a bath behind her back. Asmodeus said that she is a succubus and she might be jealous. Xiao Bai told her not to be angry. He wanted to go see her right after the shower. He told her that since she came, he offered to swim together. Asmodeus told him that she did not force him, and he suggested it himself. Asmodeus came closer to them and said that when he defended that crusader girl during the day, she felt so sad. She told him that he should apologize to her. Xiao Bai agreed and asked how she wants him to apologize. She told him to rub it too. Xiao Bai asked, What's so simple? He said he would rub them both. Asmodeus said he didn't seem to understand. Xiao Bai asked that she didn't want him to rub the two of them. Lin Long said that it is more fun together. Asmodeus told them that she had nothing against showering together. She didn't like that he only wanted to rub her back. She said that this would not heal her wounded soul. She said that she wanted Xiao Bai to rub every part of her body so that she could calm down. Xiao Bai asked what to rub the two of them completely. He said it was her style. Ling Long was surprised and thought that she too. 
Xiaobai said that it doesn't matter how many people are rubbed, if they want it so much, then only together. He said his hands were strong. Asmodeus said that this is exactly what she wants. She likes it rough, and the harder the better. Ling Long was surprised and embarrassed. She thought that what was to be expected from Asmodeus, she persuaded Xiao Bai with a few words, and she realized that she still had to grow and grow. Asmodeus told him to rub, she was ready. Ling Long said that she couldn't wait any longer. Xiao Bai told them that he would proceed then. Karsha appeared and shouted at them to remove their hands. She would not allow them to do this. The girls turned around. Asmodeus was indignant. Ling Long said that that half-dead girl ruined all their fun. Karsha told them how they were not ashamed to do such things in the territory of the Crusaders. She could not just stand and watch. She told them that only if they didn't take her with them. Asmodeus said she quickly blushed. Ling Long agreed with her. Asmodeus said that 100% yesterday's spanking had an effect on her. She saw this scene, and a hidden fire ignited in the depths of her heart. Karsha went down to them and said that if he refused, she would take their house, and they would sleep in the open air and cook food. Zhao Bai asked that she was blackmailing him. Karsha said that she will not back down no matter how, but today she will get to him, she asked if he understood. Xiao Bai said that since she is blackmailing him with housing, it puts him in a difficult situation. Xiao Bai asked the girls what they thought. Asmodeus said that together, of course, otherwise we would have to live in the open air. Ling Long said that since she needed help, they would help. Xiao Bai told her that she heard everything. Karsha was surprised that he answered without hesitation. She thought that they did not consider her a stranger, but did not know what now. She is shocked that she will actually join them. Karsha thought that her mind was telling her that this was wrong, but she still lay obediently waiting for the man to wash her. Xiaobai began to rub it. Karsha thought that this matte grainy texture was simply beautiful. She understood what it was like to have your back rubbed. Xiaobai said that he will continue with all his strength, and his hands are strong, he said to be patient. Asmodeus thought that Zhao Bai's wide palm in a hard glove was rubbing her back, and it was so pleasant. Ling Long felt it. It was so unusual for her. She felt so warm and comfortable. His power penetrated every inch of her skin. Karsha thought that he was too rude. She was slightly hurt, but still pleasant, and felt as if her body and soul had been cleansed. The night passed. Zhao Bai watched the girl as they slept. Xiao Bai grabbed his head and thought about what he had done after taking a shower last night. Asmodeus said that after rubbing, she felt so good. Her skin became so soft. She asked Ling Long how she was feeling. Ling Long replied that she was better than everyone and would never do this. Asmodeus said that it was truly unforgettable, but she always felt like something was missing. Asmodeus turned to Karsha and said that she had surprised her so many times during the day and it must have affected her so much and asked that she probably didn't see everything. Karsha said that maybe she is exaggerating it, but she really enjoys taking a bath. But everything is fine if she can continue. Asmodeus said that in this case, he would give her more energy. She told her to accept it as a gift in honor of their meeting. Asmodeus said it was her strongest charm, the succubus bliss party. Xiao Bai ordered Asmodeus to stop quickly. Karsha didn't understand what was happening to her. She felt it just like during the day, but the sensations were much stronger. Ling Long thought that her body was a little disobedient. It gets hotter and hotter and incredible images continue to pop up in her head. Asmodeus shouted to them and suggested they do it together. Show Xiao Bai what they are capable of. The girls told Xiao Bai that it was time for a counterattack. Xiao Bai was thinking that Asmodeus is really a succubus. She won't stop until he gets tired. Xiao Bai saw that Karsha stood up. He asked that she woke up and did she sleep well at night. Karsha was shy and tried to say something about last night. Xiao Bai said that they did a lot of things last night. He asked what she meant. Karsha told him to stop pretending and he knows what she's talking about. Karsha was trying to say about what happens when two lovers are engaged. She said he wanted to get out of it when he did this. She heard that only couples can do this, and he should take responsibility for it. Xiao Bai said that it seemed like she didn't understand. He explained that it was she who forced him, so she would have to take responsibility.
He told her that she was so persistent that he could not resist. She was surprised that it was she who made him do this. Karsha asked if this does not make her a slutty woman. Karsha thought that she was a holy light, a crusader, the embodiment of holy angels, and she forced this man to do this to her. It is unacceptable for her to do such obscene things. Karsha stood up and thought that she must take responsibility to correct her mistake. Karsha asked if he could go away for a while. Xiaobai asked why. She said she wanted to talk in private. Karsha grabbed his hand and said they didn't have much time. Xiaobai asked where she was taking him. He said that Asmodeus and Ling Long were still sleeping. Karsha asked him not to ask so many questions and go, because he will know soon. Karsha said it was a great place off the beaten track, and suggested we go there. Xiaobai asked, what the hell and what are they doing here? She replied that she wanted to correct the mistake from the previous night. Karsha sat on a stone and said that last time she forced him, but now she will let him do it himself, and after that, they are even. She told him not to be shy, and she promises he won't resist. Xiaobai said that it means she wants to be even with him, but it's not that easy. Karsha asked why he says that. She blushed and asked why she was so ugly and said that she was so sincere with him. Karsha asked that he wasn't even a little interested in her. Xiaobai said that she thinks too much and she is very beautiful. He asked, how can anyone not like her body? Xiaobai explained that he simply did not want to force anyone. Xiaobai said that if she wants to improve, she will never forget him. He wants her to remember him all her life. She said she didn't care and kissed him. Xiaobai was surprised and said that this is different from what she said and asked, how can everything be changed? Karsha said that she was under the spell last night, and now she wants to experience it all again. Ling Lung woke up and asked where Xiaobai and that woman went. She hoped he was out of danger. She said she had to go help. Asmodeus told Ling Long not to be nervous because no one could harm Xiaobai and that everyone needs to be alone sometimes. Asmodeus asked not to disturb him, just to be here and wait for good news. Karsha lay there and said that there was a fog in her head. He doesn't want anything. She asked what was wrong with her and if she was sick. She didn't understand why there was a feeling of emptiness. Xiaobai said that this is called the time of the sage. Karsha didn't know what it was and asked to tell me. Xiaobai explained that it is the feeling of emptiness that the brain creates after something. At this time, the person will feel relaxed, physically and mentally, not wanting anything. The mind reaches a state of selflessness, like that of a sage. Karsha said that this is amazing and asked that how does he know all this? Xiaobai replied that with practice, understanding will come. She said she could find out more with him. Karsha asked if she can do this. Does that mean she matches him? She asked us to go back to where we started. Karsha said that it is just like a dream. She is very happy with him, and as long as she touches his skin, she feels happiness with all her heart. Zhao Bai thought about her words that she felt happy when she touched his body. He thought that now is the same as when he met Rielna. Karsha said that she is not trying to lie to get closer. She said that if he didn't believe it, she could prove it to him. When Karsha touched Xiao Bai's body, she glowed. Xiao Bai thought that this was really happening and similar things had happened before, but now everything was different. Karsha said that he saw everything for himself and she did not lie to him. She said that since this is happening, it means they are destined to be together. Karsha said that from today, she belongs to him and she will do everything possible to be the best for him. Xiao Bai was thinking that could it all be because of the gift of light? In the Xiao Bai mansion, Fei Fei was watching a series where the main character told the girl that he would not allow her to leave him. He said that the person he loves most is her. Fei Fei said that this guy has no courage at all. She wondered why he is not like Xiaobai. She believed that it was happiness to kill an enemy with one movement. Rielna came into her room and asked Her Majesty if it was okay that they had been here for so long. She asked that she is not worried about Xiaobai. Rielna said that three of them are strangers in that dimension, and there is also a clash with the Holy Crusaders and Bersi. She asked that Xiaobai will be okay. Fei Fei told her not to worry, just relax and enjoy life. 
She said that although Bersi is good, she is not worthy of Xiaobai. She also said that the Crusaders would not cause him any problems because of the small gift she gave him. Fei Fei said that she gave him an ability that allows him to talk to the wind and cause a storm. Rielna asked, what kind of power this is? The Light Queen said that all the creatures from the Holy Crusaders are incarnations of her energy. They are all under her influence. Fei Fei said that she has feelings for Xiao Bai in her heart, and they will subconsciously be kind to him. Besides, Xiao Bai still has her Gift of Light energy core. The Crusaders' feelings will only be stronger from this. Rielna realized this and thought that it was no wonder that she had lost her composure when she first met him. Fei Fei said, that just by touching him, you can already feel a powerful effect. If they get closer, the effect will increase. No matter who it is, they can't get rid of it. She said that instead of being afraid for Xiaobai, she should worry about the Crusaders. After a night in the hot springs in the village, Su Xiaobai and his group returned to their residence to rest. General Karsha has also begun to recover from the intense physical exertion but she is still intoxicated by yesterday's scene and cannot recover from it. Karsha said in her dream that Xiaobai was too brave. In her dream, Xiaobai said that all the most interesting things were ahead. She answered him that he was such a naughty person. A resident of the country of the Crusaders came under the house in which they were resting. She told them that General Karsha ordered her to take care of the three of them. She brought breakfast for them. She asked them to open the doors. Xiaobai opened the doors and said that it was very nice of her. He thanked her and told her to just leave it to him. When Xiaobai was taking the food, she accidentally touched him. She didn't understand why her whole body hurt and was so weak. She felt like she was losing control. It was hard for her to even stand. She didn't understand how it happened. She just touched his hand. She is now so embarrassed and can no longer meet other people. Xiaobai asked if she was okay. He said that she did not look well and asked permission to examine her. The girl immediately ran away and said that she remembered something important. Xiaobai thought that there was something wrong with the gift of light. Xiaobai came out of the house and was surprised that there was someone there. The Holy Crusader's medical team came to see him and a representative told him that he was their guest of honor and they would give him a full physical examination. One of the nurses told him to cooperate with them and first take off his shirt and they would carefully examine him. Xiaobai took off his t-shirt and thought that the food delivery girl had just left and they had come to check his body. He feels that something wrong is happening here, but it doesn't matter at all. They won't be able to harm him. He wanted to see what they were going to do. The nurse started bleeding from her nose. She admired Xiaobai's body and thought about such a torso and those graceful body lines. She really wanted to touch him. Xiaobai was thinking that he wanted to take this opportunity to test the hidden effect of the gift of light. Xiaobai told the nurse that since this is a complete examination, it needs to be carried out in more detail. He took the nurse's hand and told her to listen to how fast his heart was beating. At his touch, she fell to her knees. The other nurses were afraid for her and asked if she was okay. One asked him what he did to her. The nurse who listened to him told her colleague not to talk to him like that and that everything was fine with her. She said that on the contrary, she felt very good. The nurse said that his body was just super. She only lightly touched his hand, but her whole body was chilling to the bone. She told them that if they didn't believe it, try it themselves. One nurse said that she didn't believe it and had never seen the man's body, but even so, she would still hold back. The other two said they wanted to try. Xiaobai said that in this case they can check and just touch him. As soon as they touched, they found themselves in another world. One of them said that this was such a beautiful place and had never seen anything like it. She asked why they weren't sleeping, were they? The pink-haired nurse said that she didn't think there were places like this in the world. Before that, it was like she was living in vain. Another said that even if it was a dream, she didn't want to wake up. A dragon flew to them and asked that they were new and didn't want to go for a ride. The nurse was surprised that the dragon offered to go for a ride. One nurse said that this dragon is so fast that it even takes your breath away. The second nurse said that he was also so huge and it was the first time she felt so good. 
A third said she had never been so happy. They said it was the best feeling in the world and wanted to stay here forever. Xiaobai realized that this is definitely the effect of the gift of light. As long as the holy crusaders touch him, they will not be able to help, but the effect is too powerful. Xiaobai thought that everything looked like the holy crusaders were defeated. After yesterday's medical exam, little by little changes began to occur in the holy light of the crusaders. Members of the medical team told others about the amazing encounter, and they told the rest of the army. Thus rumors quickly spread, and the entire city learned about Xiaobai's hidden ability. They learned about the ability that makes them addicted in order to experience the feeling that everyone is talking about. The people of the city came to Xiaobai at will. Two girls came to him and said that they were the most elite maids in the city, and from now on they would be responsible for his food and housing. The other two said that they are the protectors of the holy light of the crusaders and they are responsible for the safety of the young master. They work 24 hours a day. Asmodeus asked Ling Long that when she and Xiaobai were as crazy as them, Ling Long replied that she didn't think so. Ling Long said that at the beginning they had fun with him, but only in the end it turned into some kind of madness. It was a gradual process. Asmodeus said, that the holy light of the crusaders is not like them. The crusaders had just met Xiaobai, but were already paralyzed by his ability. She said that they came to them like zombies, trying to steal Xiaobai. She couldn't believe they were so sensitive. Thus, after a while, the holy light of the crusaders fell to Xiaobai's ability. The crusader city was defeated without a single attack, but General Bercy, who was far from them, knew nothing about this. A soldier from the Bercy army reported to her that the ambassador of the Imperial Dark Guard had arrived. She told her to let him in. Ichikichi, the eldest of the Imperial Dark Guard, came to her. He asked how she could eat her tomorrow so calmly when he was standing in front of her. Ichikichi said that she is the first woman who can kill the king and take his power. He is sure that she is not so simple. Bercy said that the elder Ichiki doesn't seem to understand something. She said that the one who killed the king was Rielna, not her. She just did what she had to do. He answered her that it doesn't matter. For him, it's the same thing. He asked why she invited him. He said he doesn't like to beat around the bush. Bercy replied that as expected from the elder Ichika, he is very impatient. She said that she asked him to come to propose cooperation. Ichichichi was surprised. Bercy continued to say that the Crusader Holy Light and the Dark Praetorian Empire had been enemies for many years, but they had gotten nothing out of it. She said that both the Holy Light and the Dark Emperor are dead. There is no reason to continue the feud. She explained that if two of them joined the troops to create one whole army, then who could stop them? Ichiki said that it's not a bad idea, but they won't make it in time. Bercy asked that they still want to follow the dead man. Ichiki said that the Dark Emperor is not dead. Bercy got angry and said that how could this be possible and that she shouldn't joke like that. Ichiki said that they felt a signal from a distant dimension. They sent Wen Yu there to investigate, but when he returned, they only saw his head. He said that they found two familiar imprints on his body, the darkness of infinity and the gift of light. Bercy was surprised and asked that he meant not only the Dark Lord, but even the Light Queen. Ichiki said it was possible, but at least the existence of these two light and dark cores could be confirmed. He told her that if this problem is not solved, then he is afraid their cooperation is impossible. Bercy said that although all this is incredible, she understands what Elder Ichiki is saying. Bercy asked that if they come to another dimension and fix this problem, is he willing to cooperate with her? Ichiki said that he was loyal to the Dark Emperor and would not do anything like that. She said he must be joking. Bercy said that not long ago, the Dark Emperor's Imperial Guard was secretly training troops, and it didn't seem like it was aimed at them. Ichiki asked how she knew their agreement. She told him that turning one or two Praetorians into spies was not a difficult task for her. Bercy said that Elder G had already started preparing to move to another dimension. She was sure that he was already planning to take care of these two hidden problems on his own. She asked, What is this also for the Dark Emperor? Ichiki stood up from the table and said that was enough.
he would simply return the infinity that belonged to the Praetorian Guard. Ichiki left, Bursi asked, why such a gifted one serves a dead man, and what is the point of living in the past? She said they should all look forward to it. Ichiki turned his head and asked impatiently, what? Bursi said that they are the same. Talented people like them should live for themselves. When they get the cores of light and darkness, then the whole world will be in their hands. She said that if he agreed to her terms, she was ready to sign a contract with him right now an agreement to never leave each other. Ichiki asked how she wanted to do it. She said, isn't it obvious what she is hinting at? Bersi said that she would sign it with her body. Ichiki said that sounded good. Bersi was out of breath and all afraid. She said that he was truly worthy to be Elder G, who leads the Dark Emperor's army. She was surprised that he was still alive. She said that the signing ceremony of their contract was finally completed. Ichiki got dressed and said that he didn't need compliments. He would come back for her tomorrow. Bursi said that he is really greedy. She said that he fights every day and asked that he still can't get enough. Ichiki said that this was nonsense and it was time for them to go to another dimension to eliminate hidden dangers. Dracula was lying on her sofa and talking to herself that Xiaobai had only been gone for a couple of days. But she felt like life had lost all its colors. She couldn't sleep or eat normally. All she wanted to do was lie here and not move. She feels like her stomach is sticking out. She said she has been feeling nauseous a lot lately. She wondered why she still keeps gaining weight. Wu Yu was shocked by what she said. She said that the symptoms she mentioned. It turns out that she... Dracula interrupted her and asked why she was so excited. Wu Ye shouted that she was pregnant with Xiaobai's child. Dracula began to cry. She was glad that she became pregnant with Xiaobai's child. She thought that she and Xiaobai finally had a love child. She imagined that when Xiaobai returned to Protoss, they would have a big wedding. And then they will go to the beach together for a romantic honeymoon. And then they will all live their comfortable and happy lives together. Dracula was happy and said that she couldn't even think of anything more joyful. She said that she would have many, many children from Xiaobai. Wu Yu thought that Dracula, the Lord of Protoss, is an uncompromising love brain. Suddenly they began to shake. Wu Yue asked, What is this earthquake? Dracula said that no, it's not that simple. She feels the emergence of a powerful force. Many purple and golden pillars hit the surface of the ground. They included crusaders and warriors of the Dark Emperor. Ichiki said that they are finally here. He said that this is another dimension where the nuclei of light and darkness were tracked. Bursi said that this place looks normal, but it is so big, she is afraid that it will not be so easy to find them here. One of the soldiers said to leave it to him, he could sense traces of the cores of darkness and light. Bursi said that there is indeed a hidden tiger in the emperor's army. Bodobol said that no matter how big the area is, he can easily find where they are located. Bodobol activated the ability of mental waves of full search. Bodobol said that this is impossible and said that there are absolutely no traces of nuclei of darkness and light. Bersi said it looks like they are using a special disguise. Bodobol told her that in that case they should just work harder. Bersi suggested killing all the people in this dimension and this would solve their problem. Shengguang was burning. People were running away in panic and asking for help. The soldiers of the Dark Emperor said that they were so weak and it was much easier than fighting the Crusaders. They thought it wouldn't take long to kill everyone here. Lisa rushed in and asked those bastards what they thought about the city of Shengguang Knights. She said there was no room for their rampage. Lisa activated her ability, Sword of Justice, Great Ring Slash. Lisa cut into two pieces everyone who was within the range of her ability. Lisa was furious and asked them how they dared to do this to the residents of the city. Lisa turned to the divine light and asked to save them. People were amazed at her strength and said that all their wounds were healed and the pain completely disappeared. Lu Huanghuan told her that she had done an excellent job. She noted that not only her fighting skills were excellent, she could not believe that she also had such a good healing technique. Lu Huanghuan said that she was really strong. She asked that it was Lisa who took part in the murder of left guard Wenyu. Lisa replied that she did not understand what she was talking about. 
Lisa asked that she was the leader of these guys and said not to expect any mercy. Lu Huang Huan said that it looks like she won't be able to talk properly and will have to use force to force Li Su to talk. Du Yechang asked who they were and why they attacked them. Du Yechang remembered that Xiao Bai had this. She realized that her target was Xiao Bai. Alpha Centauri said that judging by her face, she knew something about it. Du Yuechang replied that she did not know. Alpha Centauri said that on the orders of General Bercy, she could destroy everything here without leaving a stone unturned. Alpha Centauri instantly appeared behind Du Yuechang. Alpha Centauri told her that it was too late and she would not evade. A sword flew at Alpha Centauri from above, and she did not have time to dodge. This sword caused an explosion, and Alpha Centauri was unable to hit Du Yuechang. Alpha Centauri did not understand who it was and thought it was disgusting. She said she would never forgive her. Bai Yumo asked that who gave her the courage to say such a thing? Bai Yumo said that she is the master of this hill and no one can control her except Xiao Bai. She said that if they came here to play, then they should prepare for death. Alpha Centauri said that she did not care who she was and said that he was powerless before the holy light of the Crusaders. Alpha Centauri called for help and said that her comrades were already rushing here. She said, once this signal is noticed, all the holy crusaders will be here at the first opportunity. She said it was their time to die. Bayumo said that the fireworks were a bit old-fashioned. The Silver Lance Assassin Legion appeared, their leader saying that those who dare to rebel against the crusaders of light must be punished. The crusader told her that she now knew not to touch her. It's too late for regrets. Who are they trying to scare here? Bayumo clarified with her that these were not just calls for people. She can do this too because the Crusaders are fighting them on their own territory. Looks like they're tired of living. Bayumo loudly ordered her flying sword battalion to destroy them all and leave no one alive. Her battalion shouted back that they were ready to fight for the Lord and for the daughters of the kingdom. They are ready to destroy them. To which, the crusader warriors shouted back to them that they were crazy idiots who would now test the power of the holy crusaders. At that moment, the crusaders were also present on the island of murder. One of them said that she had a vague feeling, that there was some terrifying power lurking on this island. She told her warriors not to dare to underestimate the enemy and to do their best. Seeing them, Tanyu said that a group of some strong people was arriving. Noah confirmed this and said that, apparently, they came for the master. He also said that they could not allow him to threaten their master's life. We need to kill them here. Let's get rid of them for the sake of their owner. Tianyu said that she thought that all their opponents turned out to be women. It would be easy. She is ready to take care of them herself, without help. Noah asked her if she was really going to use that same trick, because it was not the best idea to which she told him not to be so stuffy. She activated her powers and asked that pure and proud little angels like them have another face? Let them take off the mask of hypocrisy, help them fulfill the most primitive desires in their hearts. She clarified that there was something wrong with her behavior. The crusaders began to loudly say that the enemy had released strange smoke. Everyone needs to hold their breath. This smoke may be poisonous. Tianyu said that holding her breath will not help. Her poison penetrates through the skin. Just stop resisting and let me think. At this moment, something incomprehensible began to happen in their heads. One of them said that it was unpleasant for her and that she did not need to do this. She is all wet and covered in water. To which the second one answered her that she did not understand what this meant. Is this how they have fun on the beach? The third of them thought that these individuals were having a good time. She doesn't know how long it's been since she saw them laughing happily. Since the beginning of the war with the Dark Emperor, they have been living in the very epicenter of the war. She also thought that this short period of rest could make them feel so happy. If only at this time a man had applied sunscreen to their backs, then she would have gone to heaven. Xiaobai appeared and said that his heart had answered her call. He asked her if she was the kind of girl who needed sunscreen. He will be very gentle. Does she want to try? At that moment, she thought that her dream had come true. She thought it was the legendary Elysium.
Standing on alert, the crusader said she wanted it too, with every inch of her body covered in sunscreen. Only then can she enjoy it fully. Seeing what was happening to the crusaders, Ariel said that this was a terrible force. Many enemies lost their ability to fight in an instant. To which the seductress fox said that this power is so dangerous that they should stay away from it. Looking at Noah, Tanyayu said that in order to get rid of the poison, she must find a man. She clarified with him that he would not stray from the path of righteousness when he did this. To which he answered her that he was already old and powerless, but at the same time he was faithful to his master and would not betray him. At this moment, Crusader Bones said that they thought they could defeat the holy crusaders with these dirty methods. This is incredible stupidity. She said that a prayer to the gods at the behest of the holy light. Oh, great God, give her strength. She also added that the path of righteousness should be shown to these lost beings. She turned to the holy God and said that she would destroy all the dirt of the world. At this moment, one of the crusaders said that, Where is the guy who just gave her sunscreen? Why did he disappear? After all, he had not yet had time to smear it on the front. The second of the crusaders clarified what kind of feeling this is. It was wonderful. At that moment, the third of the crusaders said that it was so good, she had never experienced anything like this. No need for any pity. Seeing all this, Bone loudly said that this silver spear of the exterminating legion must be stopped. These are just illusions created by their enemy. She also told them that they had forgotten the purpose of their visit. They are here to avenge the death of their great emperor. Turning to one of the crusaders, Bone asked that she was not ashamed to look like that. Bone told Bercy that she did not understand why they should join forces with the Dark Emperor's guard, because they were the sworn enemies of the Crusaders. To which Bercy answered her that she must tell her the truth about the death of the Great Emperor. To stop the Dark Emperor, he entered another dimension. She added that after him, a person in another dimension desired their power, so he brutally killed them and stole the Dark and Light Cores. Bercy said that the enemy, the enemy is a friend, and they must join forces with the Protherians. Only then will they have a chance against people from other worlds who have two cores. Bone said that, but, without letting her finish, Bercy said that there was nothing, but. We must not forget that Bone was raised by the Light Emperor. Now that he died, she doesn't want to avenge his death, does she? She now doubts whether she deserves the Emperor's mercy. Bone told her that she was very sorry. She shouldn't be like this. She's very ashamed. This time, she will fight for her life to repay the late emperor's kindness. Tianyu began to scream loudly that she could not understand where Bone came from and how she was able to dispel her poison. Tianyu hasn't seen enough little angels who can't stop. Noah said that there is no need to take it so lightly. A magic book is not so easy to handle. He feels that she is the same type as him. Tianyu clarified whether she is a magician or not. Bone said that she swears in the name of Holy God that she will kill all this carrion. She will avenge the death of the late emperor. After that, she began to summon the power of the shooting stars. Ariel began to say in a loud voice that it was a meteorite. She sent a meteorite at them. How is that possible? The seductive fox did not understand, clarifying that this is exactly how she is trying to destroy the entire island. At this moment, Bone was surprised. She could not understand that this was really a magic shield. He was able to withstand her starfall. It seems that the magician from that dimension is also not an ordinary one. Activating his shield, Noah said that this would be a great duel. If he had not been here, this island would have been destroyed long ago. He also said that his master entrusted him with the protection of this island. He trusts him. Noah must live up to his master's expectations. Even if he has to risk his life, he will save it. After his words, Noah began to summon the power of the storm. The crusaders in the air began to shout that it was a tornado. The wind is too strong to move. How can they continue to fight? One of the crusaders thought that he was a wind mage. 
she must overcome his wind with one breath to stop him. Otherwise, the entire army will be destroyed by him. Noah said she was fast, able to avoid his wind. She is an assassin who specializes in sudden and fast attacks. She said that a common problem with mages is that they are afraid of close-range physical attacks. Let her break into this position, he finished. At this time, another of the crusaders said that she could not move. She doesn't understand where these shoots came from. It's kind of a shame. The first of the crusaders also said that she did not understand what the hell this was. It's like they're alive. They're an abomination that must be released immediately. She said she was so close to him. If it weren't for that nasty thing, she would have finished him off. Approaching her, Tian Yu said that she was too naive. Does she think she can kill Noah? To which the crusader said that it turns out she did this to her. She said that she needed to be released immediately. Tian Yu answered her that Noah was the only one here from the moment the owner entrusted them with the protection of this island. They now have absolute power. Crusader told her she was a bastard. While in the water, Ariel said that the guardian of the ocean come out. Please help her. After her words, the crusaders began to loudly say that a huge whirlpool had appeared in the sea and something was starting to appear from there. And then a shark emerged and began to attack them. The crusaders shouted that they needed to leave here. This creature was falling. If she lands on it, she will die immediately. Ariel said that she is a daughter of the sea and is not going to fight outside of it. They have no chance of winning. Releasing her magic balls, the seductive fox told them to have fun. One of the crusaders asked, What are these magic balls? They are so big that this jade is not close to bone strength. Having launched magic balls at them, the fox said that now they know what it means to underestimate the enemy. The secret magic of the fox fairy cannot be compared with theirs. Bone told her it was unforgivable. How dare she make the killing Silver Spear Legion look like this? What do they think about the Holy Crusade? They will all pay for this. Get ready for divine punishment. After her words, she unleashed the power of the Holy Light on Tian Yu, Lisa, and Ariel. Bone said they now know what it is. Anyone who falls under the Holy Light will have her soul taken away. Their souls will be sealed in her grimoire forever. She also said that they all fell. It seems the ritual is completed. From now on, their physical bodies are completely dead and souls will forever be tormented in spiritualistic flames until their light fades completely. But at the same time, she remembered that someone still managed to escape. She didn't understand where the magician could go because he disappeared as soon as she performed the spell. Did he just disappear into thin air? How is this even possible? Appearing in front of her, Noah said that it was possible. This is one of their divine invisibility spells. He said that the battle magic is at full power. Phantasm of annihilation. Bone did not understand what he was introducing. Doesn't he think he can defeat her just by using a little more spells? This sounds very interesting. After her words, Noah used the forgotten summon of the ice dragon. Bone was surprised that he turned out to be a summoner of the guardian holy borders. An ordinary resident asked the others if they saw it. The dragon broke so easily to which the second one answered him that yes, the dragon flew straight through the portal. It looked like he had a person in his mouth. Most likely, she is already dead. Lying on the ground, Bone said that she did not manage to activate the guardian boundary in time. She is afraid that this ice dragon managed to bite her. This old fart, she will kill him. Approaching her, he asked her that how could he free his comrades from this book? Noah asked to tell him about this and he would free her life. She told him that he shouldn't even think about it. She won't tell him anything, they are hopeless. Noah told her that wasn't what he wanted to hear. He told her to go to hell and swung his magic staff next to her. At that moment, she told him that he could kill her. His comrades are already dead. Their souls will not last long in this book. Noah replied to Bone that as long as their souls were in order, they could be resurrected. The gentleman will find a way. He also said that how dare these guys invade Protoss. As soon as the lion leaves the jungle, every monkey intends to imagine himself as a king. If the gentleman were here, 
he would not have left a trace of them. Noah began to loudly say that they were foreign bastards and should go to hell, after which he released a stream of his magic balls. Near Xiaobai's residence, the crusader began to shout that he did not understand what was happening. His body floats completely uncontrollably. He doesn't even feel its weight. Zhouping said that in the absence of the master, guarding the house is her responsibility. None of them will take a step into this estate. She activated the power by saying that a hundredfold gravitational field, the fall of ten thousand claws. The crusader began to shout at her that, how dare she challenge the Praetorian guard of the Dark Emperor? Damn woman, is she tired of living? At this moment, the other crusader thought, what kind of impressive firepower is this? Why is she here? There shouldn't have been such heavy weapons here. With flamethrowers in her hands, Lisa said that these were just a bunch of people who wanted to hurt her sister. What is this, a joke? They should have brought an entire army here. Another crusader thought about what kind of strands of hair these are. Was he pierced by a strand of hair? Yin Yu told him that he was a stupid man. Let him feel her sting of love. One of the many crusaders said that it was just a small mansion and they had so many losses, to which the other crusader replied that it was difficult. Before he could finish, another crusader said, what if a bunch of women stopped them? Then how will they be able to look the elder in the eyes? Another one told them that they needed to give it their all to raise this place to the ground. At that moment, raising her head up, Lisa said that she didn't understand who it was. How dare she steal all the attention? To which Yin Yu said that the only one who could create such a thing is. Without letting her finish her sentence, Li Xin looked out of the helicopter. She told them to stand aside. She would not be responsible if someone got hurt by mistake. At that moment, the crusader said that he did not understand what kind of strange and noisy bird this was to which the second crusader replied that he had never seen anything like it before. He asked that this was some kind of special type of summoned beast. Hearing this, Li Xin told him that he was a hillbilly. This is not a bird. This is a G-28 helicopter. It's special development, where G-28 are destroyer missiles. The crusader told her that how dare she bring such shame upon the dark emperor's praetorian guard. No matter what he says, he can't let her live. He will stop her, even if it means risking his life. After which, he took out magic balls with a certain power. Flying over the helicopter, he told the strange bird to die. Then he threw double magic bombs towards the helicopter. At this moment, Chin appeared with her sword. She said that she could not take it head on. This is a sneak attack. She managed to cut through the double magic bombs and the crusader who launched them after which she said that the only one who can use this house is Xiao Bai. Events moved to the top of the holy mountain, where Mu Xia said that it was so cold, and his milk tea was getting cold. The crusaders were already near him. One of them told Mu Zi that he was suspicious, living alone on the top of a snowy mountain. To which Mu Zia answered him that they misunderstood him, he was just unemployed, and that's all. The crusader apologized and asked him if he lived here himself, or was he protecting something special? The second of the crusaders said yes, and the first one added that, for example, the sphere of the dark emperor of dark infinity, or something similar. Musha said that the only thing he wants to protect is his milk tea. The dark emperor's soldier told him not to pretend, and asked who would love milk tea so much? He believes that Musia will not want to explain himself until he gives him a good beating. Another soldier said that old men like this become more cooperative after a beating. Musha beat them, and the soldier asked that why don't he go get another glass of milk tea for Musha? The second suggested moving the milk tea shop to his doorstep. Musha said that there was no need and asked to be taken to their boss. He wanted to compete with him. Lisa defeated her. Lu Huanghuan said that she couldn't believe that there was a swordsman of that level in such a distant interspatial area and couldn't believe that there was a swordsman of that level at all. Lisa said that there are many people here who are much stronger than her, and said that how dare she think of hitting Xiaobai, because it is comparable to hitting a whole mountain with a stone. 
Lisa said that although she could not kill her with this sword immediately, she would die very soon in pain and remorse. Lisa said that this is also revenge for the people of Shenguang City who suffered. Lisa decided that she must now help the Protoss. Bai Yumo said that she had finally finished. She said that these guys were really on to something. Bai Yumo said that since their target is Xiaobai, she is afraid that the Protoss are already under siege. She decided that she needed to go to Protoss and clean up everything there, and when Xiaobai returned, he would be happy to be the first to pamper her. Lisa came out of the portal and told Xiaobai that she was the first one who came to help him. Bai Yumo also came out of the portal with Li Soi, and she told him to quickly return, and when she was done with these guys, she invited him to arrange 300 rounds. Bai Yumo saw Li Su and asked why she imitated her, and came here and thought that she could steal Xiao Bai's heart in this way. Li Sa said that although she also misses Xiao Bai, she is not as nasty as her. Bai Yumo said that she is not nasty and calls it love in her heart, and she bravely strives for it. Li Sa told her that then she would risk her life for love. Dracula ordered the two to calm down and said that now was not the time for jealousy. Wu Yui said that Dracula is pregnant with Xiao Bai's child, so they are fighting for the last place in line. Lisa said that she didn't know that Dracula was pregnant with Xiao Bai's child. Bai Yumo was petrified of shock that Dracula was pregnant. Lisa was also petrified with shock that she was pregnant with Xiao Bai's child. Bai Yumo became depressed and thought about how they tried so many times but to no avail. She thought that it was because they didn't do it that often. Lisa thought that she would always be Xiao Bai's first wife, and it seems that her dream was shattered. Dracula asked to give her a break from them and told them to look up at the sky, because they were in big trouble. There was a closed eye in the sky. Lisa asked, What is this? Bai Yumo said that it was huge. Bercy said that she couldn't believe how many annoying flies there were in this world, and it was too troublesome to squash them one by one. She suggested using this to destroy the city. Ichiki asked how she can say such dark words when she represents light. He said she was a terrible woman. Bercy said that light and darkness are equal and they are one, she asked. How darkness can exist without light? Bercy wished death to the stupid flies and activated the Midas pupil. Midas's eye glowed golden. From Midas's gaze, the entire Protoss was covered in gold. Bercy said that finally all the flies were dead and the world was quiet, and now it would be much easier for them to search. Mushia stood behind Bercy and asked that she was the one who caused this mess in Protoss. Bercy, frightened, turned to Mushia and thought, why didn't he turn into gold? Ichiki didn't understand when he went behind them, he didn't even notice him. Bercy walked away from him and asked who he was and what he wanted. She said she thought he was a thief who stole the light and dark cores. Musha slapped Bercy, and she flew very far away. He told her to speak more politely, because respect for elders is basic politeness. From the force of Musia's blow, Bercy flew through buildings, breaking through one after another. She thought about how he had been told not to hit people in the face. She didn't understand how this old bastard dared to leave scars on her beautiful face. How can she now appear in front of men with such a look? She decided that she had to cut this old man into pieces. Only then could she get rid of her anger. Ichiki looked at Musia and thought that he knows how strong Bersi is, and this old man slapped her into oblivion. He thought that his strength is obvious, and he believes that Musia is the king of this dimension. Musia looked at Midas's pupil and thought that this eye was the culprit that the Protoss turned into gold. He wondered what if it was broken. Would everyone return to normal? Musha activated his ability. Ichiki also activated his abilities and thought about how Musha is an arrogant bastard, how dare he turn his back on him, and how dare he look down on him. Ichiki believed that Musha would pay for his arrogance. Ichiki raised his hand to attack. Musha said that if he were him, he wouldn't do this. Ichiki thought he had eyes in the back of his head. Musha said that if he approached him now, he would first shove the ball down his throat. Ichiki ordered him to stop bluffing and asked him that he thought a small ball of energy could stop him. Musha told him to open his eyes and look. 
he launched his ball of energy at Midas's eye. Midas's eye glowed blue and collapsed. Ichiki was surprised that he destroyed the golden pupil with one blow. This really impresses him. Ichiki believed that he was the strongest in this dimension. He decided that he would just kill him and it would all be over. Musha said that he broke his eye but the Protoss did not recover. He suggested that it was necessary to kill the woman who did it. He said he should have thought better before throwing it that far. Musha turned to Ichiki and told that bald man to stand here and not move, and when Musha was finished with that woman, he would come back to deal with him too. Ichiki got angry and asked what he thought he was doing. Ichiki asked what he thought, that it was a line for the toilet, come back whenever you want and leave whenever you want. Ichiki told him to watch his step. Musha saw a black aura underneath him and asked what the hell this was. Ichiki used dark summoning magic and summoned the forsaken evil god. Ichiki summoned the dark god of evil, Daconis. Musha said that this summoned beast was huge and said that if he defeated him, he would definitely ask Dracula for a pension. Ichiki said that it is known that the Dark Emperor once created ten divine beasts, and this is just a well-known story. In fact, the Dark Emperor's divine beasts were eleven. Ichiki said that one of them was too powerful and too difficult to control, so the Dark Emperor called him a failure. Ichiki shouted that the Dark God of Evil is Daconis, the most powerful beast. He ordered Daconis to show the world his terrifying power. Daconis obeyed him and shot a laser from his eyes. After this ray, only ashes remained. Musha was surprised and thought that he had underestimated his strength level and he could not resist his movements. This black thing was really something. Ichiki ordered Daconis not to think about anything and to release all the rage that he had stored in his heart. He told him that no one else would stop him. After all, the Dark Emperor is no more. After Ichika's words, Daconis began to gather energy. Musia was surprised that Daconis had collected all the energy on the surface of his body. Musia realized that he wanted to destroy all of Protoss. When Daconis collected all the energy, he exploded and the explosion was very large. Ichiki admired this explosion and thought that it was very good. This is how an evil god should be. He wanted to raise this city to the ground in one move. Ichiki said that one burst of energy is enough to destroy the city. He wondered what an evil god with such a level of power was rejected by the Dark Emperor. Ichiki saw a blue aura and realized that Musia was still alive. Ichiki saw that Musia saved all the people who were turned into gold. He did not understand how Musia did it. When Ichiki looked closely, he saw that Musia wrapped his energy around everyone who could not move and controlled it to avoid being hit. Musia was angry and asked that he thought that destroying the Protos was enough to end everything. He said that Ichiki is so old, but he still doesn't understand anything. Musia explained that as long as people are alive, the Protoss cannot be destroyed. Ichiki asked that he wants to defeat the evil god with such a burden. He said it was a stupid idea and ordered Daconis to destroy it. Daconic launched a sphere of energy at Musia. Musha thought that he had already distributed most of his energy to others, and now doubted that he would be able to block his attack. Someone thanked Musha for protecting the Protoss citizens. He recognized that voice. Xiaobai appeared in front of him and told him to take a break and leave the rest to him. Xiaobai stopped the attack and said that the evil god Daconis' name is quite impressive, but his energy level is quite normal for Xiaobai. This is not enough. Zhao Bai asked that it was because he saw the Dark Emperor and was scared half to death. Ichiki was surprised that he absorbed the evil god's attack. He realized that it was definitely endless darkness. Ichiki believed that this kid stole the Dark Emperor's power. Zhao Bai opened a portal and Fei Fei came out. He told her that she had taken Mr. Mu and the Protoss people to a more distant place. He was going to warm up a little here. Xiaobai asked that the people who were turned into gold, can she bring them back? Fei Fei said that even if her powers are no longer what they were before, she is still the Holy Light Emperor and can still cancel the powers of her subordinates. Ichiki didn't understand what was happening. The Holy Light Emperor appeared. He thought that she was dead and this guy was with her. He didn't understand who the hell he was. Ichiki thought that that old man with white hair was the strongest person here. It was his mistake 
and now everything has become much more serious. He realized that the only way to get out of this was to gather all their strength and fight to the last. Xiaobai said that he knows what is in his mind and said that he will not be able to create chaos to escape because Xiaobai does not fight alone. He told the Crusaders of the Holy Light that he would take care of the bald man and the giant. And as for the rest of the enemy army, he ordered them all to be destroyed. Karsha came out of the portal and said that how could he do such a thing under the banner of the Crusaders of the Holy Light? She said it was really disgusting. This time, she would clean up the mess. Rielna said that the Holy Light Emperor and she had only returned to the headquarters for a few days, and the Protoss was destroyed. She said that this was her second home and warned them not to expect mercy from her. Ichiki looked at the Crusaders and wondered how he was able to add the Crusaders to his army. He believed that Xiaobai was playing dirty and was blocking their escape route. Ichiki got angry and told him that if that was the case, then he would agree to fight. Ichiki said that Daconis, in his berserker form, would not lose to anyone. Daconis swung at Xiaobai, Ichiki shouted for him to die. Daconis struck Xiaobai, but the sword shattered into pieces. Xiaobai said that the quality of this magic sword was terrible and decided to show them his great treasure. Xiaobai decided to show the form of Ashura, the descent of the ghostly god. Ichiki didn't understand how he could have such powerful energy. It even made the air tremble. Musha looked at Xiaobai in surprise and thought that Xiaobai could really control spirits and gods. He realized that suddenly it turned out that Xiaobai had become so strong and now he could definitely retire peacefully. Xiaobai summoned the spirit of Ashura. Xiaobai asked, how about this? And asked if he dared to compete with him. He asked who he thought was stronger. Ichiki told Dakonis not to be fooled by this guy because he is not the Dark Emperor and he should not be afraid of him. Ichiki thought at this moment that his only chance was to escape while they were fighting. Ichiki shouted and asked what was wrong with Daconis and told him not to stand like a pillar. Eyes appeared around Ichika. He didn't understand what was wrong with him. He couldn't lift a finger. Ichika had his deepest fears revealed. Ichiki was surprised that Xiaobai also had such strong abilities. He felt like he was a scared little moose facing the ultimate predator. It is the feeling of helplessness that the victim feels just before the end. Xiaobai said that he has not used this form very often, so he hopes it will be stable. He decided to try his hand first. Xiaobai hit with an energy wave. Daconis and Ichiki flew away from this attack and were not even able to somehow resist. Ichiki lay beaten into the ground and said that it felt like all the bones in his body were broken and the power of just one of his splash was so terrifying. He noted that even at the peak of his power, the Dark Emperor would not be able to achieve this level of power. Ichiki saw Daconis fall on top of him. He shouted for Daconis to stand and not come near him. After such a blow and a powerful landing on the ground, Daconis was practically immobilized. Ashura's form, controlled by Xiaobai, moved and began to be directly above Daconis. Xiaobai told him that the price for attacking the Protoss was such that he could not afford to pay it. After all, the price will be his life. At this moment, Ashura's pre-attack form began to gather its immense power into multiple fists, which then successfully delivered the final finishing blow to Daconis. After this, Xiaobai said that their master was still alive. They're fighting for endless darkness. It's pathetic. He just cleaned up the mess behind him. Does he have any problems with this? And then the Dark Empress told Zhao Bai not to talk nonsense. She has no problems with him. Those guys don't deserve to die. But no matter what he does, she forgives him. She also told him that she wanted the same silicone body that he made for the Holy Light Emperor. Hugging him, she added that this way he could do whatever he wanted to her. Isn't he the best at these things? Xiaobai said that she was too impatient. In this kind of matter, one must first cultivate feelings before moving on. She replied that there are no strangers here. There is no need to pretend. She has been inside his body for so long, she knows his tricks well. Isn't it his style to jump on a train and then buy a ticket? Xiaobai told her to wait a minute. It looks like someone is flying here. He told her to return to his body and wait. We need to wait until he deals with this fly, then they will talk about her body. 
Turning around, Xiaobai saw that it was Bersi. He told her that wasn't it enough for her to be beaten by Mr. Mu. When you approach him, does that mean you are looking for death? To which she replied that, don't get her wrong brother. This entire plan was the idea of the Dark Emperor's Imperial Guard. None of this was their intention. She is a pacifist at heart. She said she was so pathetic, he would take her in, right? The whole time she's with him, she'll do whatever she wants. Xiao Bai told her that she was really trying to calm him down? To which she replied that, how could that be soothing? These are her true feelings. A man like him will make anyone who looks at him admire him. Xiao Bai grabbed her throat sharply. At this moment she thought about what is happening. Does he really like such rough games? She can't breathe normally, she has to endure it. If she doesn't get him, she's done. After which, Xiao Bai told her that she wanted to lure him only with her appearance. She lacks the skills to do this. Throwing her to the ground, he said that doesn't she like to sell her own body for a higher status? This is the perfect punishment for such a lewd woman. Everyone who has been poisoned by this poison will experience endless desire in the body. If she doesn't make love to someone in a day, she will probably die. Lying on the ground, she said her body felt more and more strange. It's like being in a fairyland. This makes her so restless and the feeling is unbearable. There is no way out of this situation. Having stood up a little, she added that she needed a man. Where are all those stinking men she manipulated? Apparently, she used them all. They are all gone. She needs them so much. Falling to the ground again, with the last of her strength, she said that there were no men. Looking at her, Xiaobai said that it was all over. This woman really had a lot of energy. He also added that this energy is all dirty. He really despises her. Meanwhile, six months have passed since the victory of the Allied army. Today, everyone was gathered together to witness this historic moment. The very moment in which the new king is about to take his throne. While there, Lisa told Bai Yumo that he was so charming. He looks even more beautiful in a suit. To which Bai Yumo replied that today he looks especially attractive. Approaching Dracula, he said that in the end it was all quite difficult for her. Thank you for her invaluable contribution to this city. She told him that these were all trifles. She was simply doing her duty. In addition, she thought that after retirement, they could live together. So she thought it was all worth it. Xiao Bai told her that it is better not to say such words in public. To which she answered him that she spoke from the bottom of her heart, out of excitement. Standing aside, Asmodeus told Ling Long that they were cooing like doves right in public. She was so jealous. To which Ling Long replied that they all serve Xiao Bai, so let's live in harmony with each other. Dracula at that moment told him that what would happen next would be the most important coronation ceremony. By wearing this crown, he will become the new king of Protoss. The great responsibility of managing and prospering the city will rest on his shoulders. Is he ready to take responsibility? Shiubai said he was ready, after which Dracula gave him the crown. At this moment, all the residents of the city began to vigorously chant his name, and photographers took a huge number of photographs. With a crown on his head, Xiaobai said that from that day on, he was their new king. From that moment on, the news of his coronation could instantly spread throughout the world. Everyone just went crazy with joy. While on the sacred mountain, Mu Xia said that this was excellent. Now you can retire calmly and finally entrust your daughter to him. Upon learning of this news, Noah said, Behold, this is his master. It was wise of him to follow him. That way it wouldn't take much time for him to realize his dream of ruling the whole world. The news reached Lisa. She said that he was her man. He deserves all these achievements. Next, it's time for them to get married, to build a strong alliance between their two countries. After the coronation, Xiaobai said that it was much more convenient to wear his own clothes. Despite the title of king, you should continue to train. It's time for a night run. Walking a little further, he saw Yuan Yuan standing. Xiao Bai told her that it was late now, and what was she doing here? Something happened? To which she replied that it was nothing special. She just wanted to ask him about the fact that their previous engagement was still valid. When he ascends to the throne of Protoss, he must marry her.
She also said that maybe she is not as gentle or maybe she is not as noble as Dracula. Compared to the other girls around him, she is quite ordinary. She said that she really liked him and wanted him to marry her, to which Xiaobai said in surprise that she was really proposing to him. Suddenly approaching them, Bai Yumo said that she did not expect that Yuan Yuan would come to Xiaobai to confess his love. This was the plan she came here with. After all, they got along with him in every way. They are perfect for each other. She invited him to marry her. Then Li Sa suddenly appeared and told Bai Yumo to pull herself together. Their proposals are too formal and they will not succeed. She even put on a wedding dress, it looks sincere. She also asked him to marry her right now. Dracula also appeared. She said that it seemed like she was late. She didn't expect it to be so lively here. She is a high-ranking woman among the guards. If Xiaobai decided to marry someone, then she should be first on this list. Watching this, Xiaobai grabbed his face with his hand and said that he just wanted to go practice. He didn't understand how they came to this again. After which, Zhao Ping appeared here. She said that her heart belonged to the master for a long time. She also asked him to marry her. Xiaobai told them to stop. He knows what they want. Since they all want to marry him, he will marry them all. He wants them all.